Hello, and welcome to Legal Bites. If you're new here, my name is Alita. I'm a lawyer licensed in California in DC, and on this channel, we explain the law one bite at a time. We don't give legal advice, but we do talk about how the law works and try to look into our crystal ball to see how things might turn out. If you're enjoying this on YouTube, we'd love it if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with friends, all the great youtube -y stuff. And if you want to listen while out and about, we're now offering our live streams in podcast form where you can leave a reading and review. Links are in the description below, as well as to our clips channel, where you can find some of the best clips taken from our live streams. Otherwise, if you want to catch me elsewhere, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Locals, Patreon, or by becoming a YouTube member, or by buying some really awesome Legal Bites merch. Again, all links are in the description below. And with that said, let's get into it. Hello and good morning, guys. How's everyone doing? How are we all feeling so far? We are on day six of this trial, and I am super excited to be here. It has been already quite a journey, right? Um, oh, I see I see in the chat 60 plus K, it's 60K plus subs. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see here, it's it's we're at 61.2. It's been a crazy ride, you guys. It really has been. <laughs> I see, I see in the chat, it, 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 we're ready to cause some havoc, um, as we learned, um, how to properly say it during the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. Right. Um, and it, to me has so far felt like quite a bit of havoc, um, <laughs> as well. If you're not familiar, if you weren't watching the, if you weren't with us during the, the Rittenhouse trial, this is a, this is a, a, a particular way that one of the attorneys would, would pronounce the word that we would otherwise maybe pronounce havoc. It's a, it's a protect, particular Wisconsin, 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 oh, hang on, Wisconsinian. I'm so sorry to all the people that are from Wisconsin, um, including my, my friend, my dear friend, Natalie Wisco, who I believe we will be seeing today. Um, so anyhow, it's a, it's a, it's a particular way of, of pronouncing it. So it's now my preferred way of pronouncing it as havoc. Um, Anyhow, I love to see people. Hello from England. Hello from UK. Um, where else did I see from here? Manchester, um, Ireland. It's so great to see people from really all over the place. Portugal too. All right. All right. This has been awesome. 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 Um, <laughs> a question about my, my, my clothing right here is, 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 is all black a choice today or is laundry necessary? <laughs> um, I am, oh, oh my goodness. We've got people from all over the place now. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it was, it was the day to wear this top. <laughs> so, uh, so that's where, where I'm at. Oh my gosh. We've got people from literally all over the place. I see Philippines too, from Canada, Dubai, Scotland, Sweden, India, dude. Awesome. 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 Um, it's, it's really cool that, to see that there are people from literally all of the, just about all of the continents <laughs> watching this. I love to see it. I really, really love to see it. Um, and, uh, I, I think, I don't know, how are you guys feeling about this trial so far about how it's going? I've been, I've been thinking quite a bit about it now. You know, one thing to note is that we are on Johnny Depp's case in chief here. So this is the part of the trial where, you know, and I, I think it was Rick yesterday, Rick Hogue, um, who's been on this channel so many times, guys, shout out to Rick Hogue. How much do we love him? Right. He's been, he's been so awesome. He's been like, like my, like the, the goose to my maverick so far in this, in this trial. Right. Um, but he pointed out very rightly that, you know, at this point you, you do want to feel like it's kind of going Johnny's way because this is, this is Johnny's case in chief. The first part of the trial is where the plaintiff side puts on their witnesses. Typically there's been a little bit of confusion as to which witnesses are for whom, um, because there's been, um, oh, let me see here. Let me catch this, this super chat here. I want to make sure that I'm catching all of them so that I can address them all. Um, you know, there's been a little bit of confusion as to which witness is for is for whom. And a lot of that has come out during the video depositions because it sounds like maybe the two sides are stipulating to allowing certain video depositions that they both want in. So they're kind of calling them at a bit of the same time. So, um, uh, yeah, but but currently the, the, the point here is that the first half of the trial is the plaintiff's case in chief. That means that that is a time when the plaintiff is putting on uh, in this case, his uh, witnesses to tell his story. And so those are generally speaking, going to be people that are more favorable to his side of, of the story, to his 
narrative, his facts. Um, then after the plaintiff rests, so we'll see a, a, a portion of the trial where all of the witnesses have come in for his side, his attorneys say, you know, the plaintiff rests, um, then it basically becomes the defense attorney's time to bring up all of all of Amber's witnesses in this case. Um, generally speaking, and, and the reason for that, by the way, there's a, there's a very specific reason for that. And that is because the plaintiff in this case has a burden of proof to prove, uh, to prove all of their, um, uh, their, their claims. So because of the fact that it's, it's the burden is all on Johnny Depp here to prove that Amber Heard actually defamed him. Um, he's the one that gets to go first. And I see that we have, uh, also started to get some, oh no, not spam bots. Not quite yet. Got it. Got it. Hey, and I have my first guest with me. Welcome. Welcome. You may know her. Her name is Andrea Burkhart. How are you, Andrea? Good, Alita. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So how are you feeling so far about this case? I feel good about it. I mean, I, I think the biggest challenge they have is that it's, it's such an incremental case for them because they're having to both anticipate what's coming and, you know, put on their own version. Um, so there's just so many pieces for the jury to have to put together. Of course, you know, those of us who have been following this case forever know exactly where each piece is going to end up in the puzzle. But I'm sure for the jury, they've been sitting there um, just kind of wondering where all of this is going. So that's really the benefit, I think, of bringing Johnny on at this point in time is uh, he's going to be able to start put, putting that together in, in, a, in a bigger picture uh, kind of way for them. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I think, and so I, I, people, some people have asked why, you know, why we think that um, Johnny Depp's team has placed him now, as opposed to at the very end, because we're not at the end of his case in chief here, right? Like this yeah. feels very much like the middle of his case in chief. And I, I have several thoughts about that, but I, I wonder what your thoughts are. Well, you know, it's a good question. Um, the, the law of primacy and recency suggests that, you know, normally you would kind of want Johnny Depp to either be at the very beginning or at the very end, right? Because mm -hmm. we expect him to be very memorable. If he continues in the vein that he did yesterday, uh, you just have to figure that's, that's going to have a real impact with the jury. Um, so, you know, it is possible that they may have some concerns about, um, you know, how, how he may do on cross-examination, that they're hoping they're going to be able to re rehabilitate with the, the rest of their case in chief. Mm -hmm. But I think it also can be a little bit of a strategy. You know, jo Johnny Depp, we can't forget Johnny Depp is a masterful storyteller. You know, he knows how to give an exposition, the rising action. Um, we're, we're just about to see all, all of this stuff, you know, play out in, in his own story. And the structure of his case can, can kind of follow that, I, I think, a little bit as well. What we've seen so far is evidence that's largely going to the hoax, um, to the fact that, you know, other people didn't, didn't see anything on her um, at times when she had claimed to be seriously injured, the medical records from Dr. Kipper. Um, and so now, now we're obviously getting Johnny's side of things. And then the, the remaining witnesses that come are, a lot of them are going to be the ones who are the eyewitnesses confirming the situations when Amber was abusing him. So structurally, that's what it looks like to me that that they're working with here. Yeah, yeah, it definitely felt like, um, at least at least at this point so far, it's 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 felt like one of the other strategies here is that Johnny Depp's team kind of wants to make sure that the jury wakes up <laughs> because <laughs> we've just gone through a lot of video depositions and those are tough to get through, right? Yeah. You know, even, even if you've got some pretty compelling stuff that's coming out in there, it's really hard to connect with, with a video, right? Because especially with somebody who's not responding to the vibe of the room, not responding to any cues by the jury about like, are they paying attention or are they not? Um, and so, oh, and I've got a couple more guests here. So welcome Nate and welcome Rick. How are you guys doing? We come in pairs. I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. So have you guys, you guys have not yet met Andrea, have you? I have not. No, All right. No, Andrea. Well, Andrea is another attorney and she's been in this space covering this trial for a long time um, on Twitter and on, on other people's channels around YouTube. So she's become like, like a resident in-house counsel <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the Justice for Johnny Depp crew. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, lovely to meet you. Very yes, nice yes. to meet you guys. Yeah, so, yeah. So she's very well knowledgeable about this case, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 what do you think about this? We say knowledgeable. We don't say obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your take on the first couple of um, weeks? Well, the first week of the was it work week and a half of the trial. Um, 
Um, you know, I, I feel like it's going well for Johnny. It's, it is incremental, you know, so it's not like he's had, I mean, for, for those of us who have been following the case for a long time, there have been some brilliant moments and none of those has been better than the moment in Dr. Kipper's testimony where they revealed that medical record, that examination that she got um, by this nurse Tinker, because, you know, now we know that Amber Heard had this medical document knowing that it showed that they witnessed absolutely nothing wrong with her. And yet she still went to the United Kingdom and testified on the stand that he gave her two black eyes, a broken nose, a split lip, broken ribs, tore out clumps of her hair, beat her against a bed hard enough to break it. The, the, the real flavor of Amber Heard is starting to come out. Um, and so those of us who, who know all the, the little pieces little details, of the puzzle man. here are really starting to see that. Um, the jury isn't really in the opportunity to see that yet. And so right. we are just kind of on the edge of our seats waiting for these, these pieces to start coming together for the jury, the light bulb to come on. Yeah, when, yeah. when I... When I following the case just but I, I haven't been deep into it but following the case it seemed pretty odd that um because in the uk it's so much easier to um defamation is a lot easier in the uk so mm -hmm. it's, it was it was kind of strange to see that it, that he would lose in the uk but then have such a better chance of winning here in the united states because i'm like looking at this case i'm like i, I assume that that if you want to sue for defamation the UK is weird to do it, but it seems like it's the exact opposite. Do you know what, what happened in that UK case? Why, why, why did, if, if the evidence is the same, I don't see how he lost that UK case. Do you, do you know what happened? Well, so number one, the evidence was not the same um, because Amber Heard, you know, is just a witness. The uh, ability in the UK to conduct discovery on third party witnesses is extremely limited. And Amber has been resisting discovery in Virginia since its inception. I mean, she, you know, they, they were only able to start pushing on her back on her devices, you know, with, within a few months before trial. Um, so there definitely was not the, the same amount of information that, that was available in the UK. But the other problem really honestly just comes down to the judge. I mean, I have to ask, have you actually read the judgment? Um, because it is some of the most atrocious and appalling, uh, not just legal reasoning that you will see, um, but just uh, factual determinations. It reads like a judge who knows very well that his credibility determinations are untouchable. And he basically flaunts that. Um, he discounts numerous third party witnesses, objective evidence, the audio recordings, the police officers at the scene, um, the, the, the people who you know saw nothing. And he completely credits for reasons that we can't explain you, you know, what, what Amber and her friends have to say, even in situations where he doesn't actually find all of the incidents that she's that she's alleged, right? He clearly mm -hmm. finds that some, even for Amber Heard, some of them are just a bridge too far for him to <laughs> accept that happened. Um, so it just looks like a very outcome determinative decision. Um, mm. I'm a criminal defense attorney, you know. I know that uh, when you plead in front of a judge, it's we call it a slow guilty plea, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, 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 it so much resides with just how the judge wants to decide that case, and so I think that's exactly what they got in the UK. Mm. Well, it's interesting that you frame things that way because I'm I'm the resident person that didn't doesn't know anything about any of the facts behind this and i'm just trying to watch this as effectively a, a legally minded uh juror and yeah it, i don't think there was a highlight in a, in a neon sign for that particular recording from december mm -hmm. from the from the doctor or from the nurse uh because i i don't know the full context there i can i can see the dates i, I know there's yeah. a december 2015 issue uh, but we haven't really gotten deep into that and i think there's an expectation at least that i have uh, that as we headed into the 440 period yesterday uh, into the Johnny Depp testimony that we're now focusing on the relationship as it was, uh, that we're going to get Johnny's side of the story here pretty much in bulk today for those incidents in 2014, 2015, and 2016, and, and why they are or aren't a problem for him. I I, I want to. It's trying. I'm two things. I'm I'm interested in today though. How he's going to hold them on cross examination because yes. the honeymoon period is about to end in the in the morning, right? It's it's all well and good. He's but... not finishing his testimony in the morning, Nate. I agree. I think yeah, he's yeah. going all day today. <laughs> no, I'm talking about in the morning. Well, I'm thinking he's going to finish direct in the morning, and I think the the rest of the day is going to be um. I don't cross. know about that. Yeah. You, you well, think so there's you only think two hours for a couple of days? 
Yeah. No, I think board, I think right? we've got. We're, I think we're yeah. watching Johnny Depp for the rest of the week. The, the problem oh, wow. is, is that Johnny Depp has just barely. He hasn't even. He's been in the honeymoon period. He hasn't started about Amber Heard starting to beat him yet, and there yeah, is going yeah. to be a lot to talk about. Well, no. remember Nate. The rest of the weekend is tomorrow. Yeah, That's true. Yes. yeah. Tomorrow's the last yeah. day. The 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 one thing I, I did want to also ask is that um, I've been watching like a whole bunch of legal commentary on this now, and everybody seems to be in agreement that Amber doesn't have to prove that she didn't abuse Johnny. She, Johnny kind of has to prove that he didn't abuse Amber. So even the fact that, so even though there's a lot of evidence that Amber did abuse Johnny, the fact that it could have been, you know, the, the terms like mutual combat gave as good as we got. This was a toxic relationship. Mutual, so a mutual lot, abuse. Mutual abuse. Mutual yeah. combat. <laughs> Cause well, that could also mean verbal <laughs> and emotional. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> so, but with, with that said, it seems like, you know, the, from my reading the tea leaves, it seems like everybody's kind of thinking that even though Johnny is, could win the public relations night, he can get the, out of the public relations nightmare in terms of she was the abuser, but the defamation piece may be harder to win because it could be, you know, the jury could legitimately think that, hey, it's reasonable to think that they both were abusive in this relationship. So it's not defamatory, but the story that was put out in the press isn't the full story. Now you have it. So in that vein, do you think the win for Johnny is not really the legal win, but the fact that he's actually now getting a story out with all these details as you're talking about? Well, I, I have to think that's a huge piece of it for him anyway. You know, it, it, it can't be the money, you know, he's, <laughs> what's he going to get from her? And he's Johnny Depp. He's made hundreds of millions of dollars, you know. Um, mm. So I, I do think this is this is largely about him having his opportunity to be heard. I, I've said before that you know, in my opinion, a lot of times when a trial is done right, it is a therapeutic process. It's a way for people to, you know, yes, be heard and and get get to get to speak. Um, and and so I, I do think that that's very important. Um, I do expect though that that at least I certainly hope we're going to get some expert testimony about abuse dynamics in this trial. I am contemplating that that is likely to come from the independent medical examiner, Dr. Shannon Curry. Um, she, uh, you know, was appointed by the, the Virginia court to perform uh, a, an independent medical examination of Amber Heard apparently arising from Amber Heard claiming to have been given PTSD by Johnny Depp. So we've all seen these dynamics in criminal cases, in family cases, um, where you have these conflicting accusations. People are saying, you're the abuser. No, you're the abuser. And the court has to sort this out. And so it's very common for them to rely very heavily on, uh, on these types of experts in that situation. So she has all the hallmarks of the, of the kind of person I'm used to seeing if like I'm looking at a, a battered person defense or something like that, where the whole objective is to look at this dynamic and identify, help the court figure out who is the primary abuser here. Um, so I'm not ruling out at all that that we, we are going to get to a point of uh, Amber Heard is the abuser and Johnny Depp was the victim. That would be right. big testimony, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, yeah. Well, and I mean, so far he has said on, on his direct examination mm -hmm. yesterday, he said, I have never hit a woman. That's a strong statement to make because you yes. know that on cross-examination, you can get impeached with a single instance of, of laying a finger on anyone. And especially well, when we have, we have heard, you know, testimony through, through some of these other doctors that treated them both together, um, you know, that, that she had made claims. I mean, obviously we know that she, she's made claims, you know, but, but their, their opinions were that there was mutual abuse. That sounds like physical abuse. It could be emotional and verbal, you know, it, it could be something like that, but you know, it's, it's, you're, you're on the one hand, you know, yes, that is what we have heard so far. But on the other hand, we also have to take a step back and, and remember that this was based off of conversations that they had with their clients, you know, like not because they ever saw any actual violence themselves. Well, and specifically yeah. with Amber Heard, I mean, she was very, you know, they were very effective. I thought at pulling that out on cross-examination that you know, Laurel Anderson's opinion about physical violence uh, is, is based exclusively on what Amber told her when Johnny Depp was not present and not able to defend himself. Um, yeah. The other piece in this, too, that, that we haven't point. seen yet is those those audio recorded conversations between them. Um, I've been, you know, really fascinated with these because they're so critical. They're obviously hearsay, um, but there are multiple avenues, you know, that I've seen to, to be able to potentially get those in. 
Um, those uh, conversations were ostensibly recommended to them by their, their therapists, by their counselors. Um, I think one of the recordings may have even taken place during a counseling session. So there's a part of me that would have loved to have, you know, confronted Dr. Anderson with these recordings and just said, do, do you really, does this sound like mutual to you? Um, obviously, yeah. you know, you, you can't, you can't do that um, in a, in a deposition that may end up at trial, but boy, if <laughs> which is, which which is probably why they didn't agree to, yeah, which is probably why they didn't agree to an actual uh, in, in-person in testimony to say, no, 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 I'm going to leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and you make a great point saying it's coming from the stories that they're getting from Johnny and Amber. You make another great point saying Amber's stories were pointed out to only happen without Johnny's presence. And so that testimony can at least be discounted to, hey, I think it's mutual abuse if I take everything I've been told as true. Yes. Um, you know, yeah. if everything Amber is saying is right, yeah, that's a mutually abusive relationship, but that may not be right. And that's, you know, yeah. that's part of, exactly. that's part and of this trial. That's that why we're here, like, yeah. The brilliance of it was, was tying Laurel Anderson's opinion very squarely on Amber Heard's credibility because Amber Heard's credibility, mm. you know, is, is starting to Position. crumble. It's going to get a lot worse yeah. as the weeks continue. Um, so yeah. that, yeah, I that think I so. think is their way of neutralizing that, that unfortunate piece of testimony. I can't right. wait until we hear from the police officers that arrived on May 21st, 2016. That yeah, is going to be, be very, very interesting to get that testimony. Sorry, so you're thinking I, after I Johnny, it. you're thinking at least police officers, uh, abuse expert. Um, mm -hmm. Are those the are those the big ticket ones that you know the the, the plaintiff side? Um, some of present? the big ticket ones that are still coming from from my perspective. Yeah. Um, uh, Malcolm Connolly, one of the security guards. Travis McGivern. Travis McGivern is one of the security guards who observed uh, the quote unquote staircase incident. Um, and mm. so we we haven't seen that yet. Um, that that one I, I don't can't think I've even heard reference to it. Yeah, I've never heard reference to the staircase. Yeah, it was um, when. Amber or when Amber and Whitney were with Johnny and Amber says that she was trying to protect Whitney from Johnny, but somehow oh, Whitney yeah. was in between them. Oh. Yes. Yeah. And it, it just was referenced very briefly in Debbie Lloyd's deposition because okay. um, Amber had claimed that Johnny threw a can of Red Bull and it, and it hit Johnny Depp. Travis McGivern says, no, Amber threw a can of Red Bull at Johnny. Um, okay. So it's, it's this projection pattern that we see consistently throughout the case that I expect we're going to see in Johnny's testimony um, once he starts recounting the abuse. Um, so, and, and then also um, Tara Roberts, who was the estate manager for the Bahamas, she also was an eyewitness to, uh, to an incident where, where Amber was physically abusive to Johnny. Okay. So we think you that Johnny might be here in the middle of the plaintiff's direct yes. case here. Yes, okay. exactly. Well, the, the strategy of putting him on early is I think they, they, they're they whole, well, it's interesting because I, I was suspected he would have been a, a later witness, but him we had being talked put about on that, so yeah. early, I'm, I'm thinking they, they, they are not confident in his ability to get around the cross-examination. So maybe put him on early and just in case you get any real haymakers, you have these other fact witnesses that can, you know, that can nullify it or even support it. But one thing though, and it's for the rest of the attorneys in the room, how would you prepare to cross Depp? Because I think, like, I've been thinking about it. I was like, well, how would I cross <laughs> Depp as of right now from what he's given me? And I would not be overly aggressive, <laughs> for one there thing. Are two, there are two things that I would definitely point out. I don't have to prove that he's an abuser. I just have to conflate everything to make it seem like it. So, for instance, the, the absolute statements, I'm definitely going to play on. That whole thing is, I've never hit a woman in my life, blah, 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 blah. I've never then taken drugs have, to party. Exactly. You know that's coming have, back. They're going to, at bare the, minimum, they're going to try to twist a text. Yes. But like, but I like, never take drugs to party is coming back. There was one thing in his deposition where he admitted to pushing Amber. And, but he was, he had admitted to pushing her after, you know, they were in a fight and he was almost defending myself. I did push her. I did hit her. That I think is an avenue of attack where I would definitely bring it up. You said you never hit a woman ever, right? No, of course not. Well, let's play your deposition back to try to break down that credibility. So there, there are, I think there are some avenues of attack. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that because there are so many avenues of attack, that's kind of why you want Johnny in day two of a six of day what um, day five of a six of a six week trial, yeah. just in case he doesn't hold up. Right, and I suspect he will hold up. I mean, at least right now he seems to be fully in control of his emotions. This is what he's waited for. We'll we'll see what he can do. Um, I you know I would probably press on the whiteboard incident a little bit, try to talk about lashing out and feelings of violence when put upon. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a little bit of that, uh, you know, you, we've seen how they plan to defend that, which is I was modeled after my father who hit things, but yeah. never a woman and walked away. Uh, but, you know, I'd, I'd like to dive into that a little bit more, remind people of it. We've already seen 
Amber Heard's team cross-examine, like to remind of things that may or may not be related to this at all, just in terms of asking the question. So I would expect them to reference the whiteboard and the cocaine that he admitted to on the stand yesterday because they've been yeah. they've been harping on cocaine. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I would I would expect that avenue. I, I don't know that they'll have much success. He, right now, at least, he seems very much in control of his demeanor. And I do think that slow talking especially since he's established it as his, as his standard baseline, as Spidey might yeah. say at this point in time, <laughs> is useful for cross-examination because you get those pauses built in and you don't even look weird doing it as you think about what you want to answer. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a useful demeanor for even aggressive cross-ex guy and Elaine, which are which is the names that I have them. Uh, I think it's rotten something, isn't it? It's rotten born. Born. No, it's rotten yeah. born. Yeah, so, so it's aggressive cross-ex guy and Elaine. You know, whether or not they start out as a house of fire or get there, there will be a portion where, you know, they're just blitzing them with their aggressive questions. Uh, and, and I suspect he can slow down and and treat it like he's slowed down through even the questions that are the softballs up for him and talk like this through them. Yeah. And then you can get in front of what you would otherwise say and control your emotions that way. So I think he's positioned himself mm -hmm. very well in that Maybe by his entire life experience. I, I don't know. People tell me, hey, go watch his interviews. This is how he sounds. That's totally yeah. fine. But if that's how he sounds, it works well for cross-examination, I think. But Hogue, yeah. as a strategy for, for the, for, as a, for the, if you're cross-examining a witness who you know is this slow-talking, methodical, one of the best things to do is ask simple questions. Early on, ask simple questions that are yes or no. Johnny, you went to the Bahamas, yes, and you want yes. to get them into that rhythm of yes, yes, okay. no, yes, yes, because then it, if, if you notice, they'll become faster. Sometimes mm -hmm. they'll even start answering the question before you finish. And obviously, yep. the the every you know you guys know the best question is the one with one 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 word, right? As, yeah, no, yes, you're yes, absolutely yes. right. That's how they got and the I, security I, guard to put Pennington in the wrong room yesterday. Exactly, and, yeah. and I, that's the way I would roll Johnny. We would start and let him do his nice and slow, but get him into that nice rhythm, and then start the the rapid fire. So you did hit her. No, 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 because then his speed tries to match my speed as mm -hmm. I increase intensity. Very possible. Again. It's it's just it's just a tactic for someone who you know is trying to slow down their you know their answers on cross examination. Yes, yeah, and, and it'll be interesting to see how how he actually responds to that. You know, so. I think the keys for Johnny Depp on cross are going to be to not let them set the rhythm, to be disciplined, like you're saying about keeping mm -hmm. his way of expressing himself. Um, the, the other key is that these are lawyers who just love to build characterizations into their questions. They he sure needs to listen for that so that he can be prepared to correct that and push back on that. I know we normally tell witnesses on cross-examination to um, keep it simple, um, give very little, don't explain very much. Um, but Johnny does have this, you know, strong skill as the storyteller. He can hear he the story that, that, the, that the lawyers are, are trying to tell. And if he can focus and hear that and respond to that, I think it could be very powerful. Mm -hmm. Now, I, mm -hmm. I do want to say one thing to the chat who was giving me crap yesterday about <laughs> me predicting that Amber would come dressed in either all white or some <laughs> light color to make herself look at the nicest person. Look at her now. And let's look at her now for all you people to say. <laughs> Nate doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Nate is a misogynist. She's going to come with black and be just as stone cold as every day. Look at her now. Look at how she looks now. And right? I will point Playing out the also... Game. We, we also, in, in the Law 2 sphere, have a certain nickname for Nate, and it is because he has a tendency to predict <laughs> verdicts. I don't uh, know if we want him to predict the, the verdict in this case, but he uh, has a, a phenomenal win-loss record to the extent that we have decided to call him, or at least I have anyway. I don't know about anybody else, but I also like to call him uh, Nate the Lauracle. <laughs> I have heard Lauracle before, yes. The Lauracle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But this is, this is going to be, this is, this is so funny how you know, because we, we all want to pretend that, you know, and the law is, is so different and we're so above it all. But at the end of the day, you got to do what's best for your client. And I know when they went back there yesterday and told her, you got to start looking more vulnerable. You got we got to put you in light colors because we got to make these people feel for you. And that's exactly yeah. what you see now. That, and that's the reason why you see Johnny looking the way he does. Mm -hmm. By the way, good morning, everybody. Hey, Kurt. Good morning. Good morning. And hello, Andrea. Oh. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Nice to meet you, too. I always so, like meeting a new friend. Yeah. Um, also, um, I know that. 
I know that a lot of people yesterday were asking about split screens. I'm trying to find one that is not Law and Crime Network because I no, don't want to get a bad copyright blah from them. They, they oh, tend to do that when you hate them on a personal level. From the artistic oh. content of selecting which camera to use, you don't want to give them an opening. <laughs> <laughs> But if, if, if anybody finds one that is not law and crime and that doesn't have a, a bunch of like watermarks on it, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to okay. switch at some point if this one isn't showing both of them. Now, technically, he wasn't allowed to strategize at all between yesterday and today with his legal right. team, correct? Right. Correct. Mm, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, Nate. No, but nobody's just, talked to him. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just setting the parameters of what he was told. I'm not saying that they they did. I'm just saying. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if I got a million dollar client going up there without talking. And Amber to has her hair down today, so. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah! Oh no no no! This she she looks the same as she done the past week and a half, right? She looks. Well, she had a ponytail different. yesterday, as Alita pointed week and out. And a half. Yeah, <laughs> she's yeah. She's got her hair down. She looks she looks again better than the day before. Matter of fact, if I couldn't pick her out right now, based on yeah. what she was wearing the other day, she looks totally different right now. Right, she's got a Sunday school best on. She's about to go pray to God. Well, I mean, she's mm -hmm. the only lightly dressed person on Good this morning, side of the. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you can have. Oh, the bar, yeah. yeah. Could you imagine a so lawyer? So just to remind that you're still God. under oath, Mr. Depp, okay? All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Honor. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Depp. Good morning. Yesterday, you told us a little bit about the beginning of your relationship with Ms. Hurd. When did Ms. Hurd's behavior towards you begin to change? Um, I believe, as I said yesterday, there was a, a hint of something with the, um, having to do with the boots coming off and breaking routine. Um, it, it her, her attitude or her, 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 um, the way that she would, um, begin to uh, sp speak to me um, think things first things started coming up and it was I was suddenly just wrong about everything um, if uh, I made a statement about something that I had been familiar with for example in in my work that I'd that I'd been uh, chopping away at for a good 30 some years. Um, I was suddenly wrong. And um, then beyond that, if you tried to um, explain yourself and correct um, the, the, the problem, the, the misunderstanding, it would then uh, begin to heighten um, as uh, Ms. Herg was uh, unable to be wrong. It, it just didn't happen. She couldn't be wrong. Um, so these little digs um, and uh, it, would, it would commence with sort of demeaning name calling uh, uh, she almost looks like she's about to cry. She's totally different. Ray, it's sort of she did yesterday. Made I think it's a good for her. Um, the yeah. sedatives are fresh. And those would escalate <laughs> into uh, a full-scale argument. And in the beginning, as uh, one does, one sticks up for oneself in a in a debate, as it were, or an argument over something to try to prove the point. But when it escalates, and then it's hard to explain, but the the argument would start here, and then it would roll around and become this circular thing of its own. So 
you get back to the beginning, essentially, of the argument. Now it's heightened even more, but it's still circular, and there's no way in or out. You, uh, if, if, if there's a dialogue between two people, um, both people need to speak, but there was no, there was no way to fit a word in. It was, uh, it was uh, a sort of a rapid fire, um, sort of endless uh, parade of uh, um, insults and uh, you, you know, looking at me like I was uh, a fool. And I, I just couldn't, I, I was, I was, I was having difficulty in my mind, of course, and in my heart, d dealing uh, with that sort of um, barrage. Um, and part, part of that is, I, I just, I was confused as to the fact that whatever her age was at the time of these various arguments. She was mid twenties to late twenties and into thirties. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't understand how I had somehow, somehow gotten, arrived at where I'd arrived from where I came from in the beginning of my life and worked for 30 plus years, um, doing these things. It was astounding how wrong I was about everything that I have experienced. Um, so captivating. Within the movie, God, within good. the film industry, or within he's a storyteller. Every answer is a journey. Life so, this was actually when uh, did it start? <laughs> no, I'm I, captivated. I, I, I listened to every word. I was sort of not allowed to be right, not allowed to have a voice. So at a certain point, when that. When, when what enters your mind is you start to slowly realize that you are in a relationship with your mother in a sense. And I know that that sounds perverse and obtuse, but, but the, the fact is that some people search for weaknesses in people. Um, that is to say, sensitivities. Um, and when you've told that person your, your life um, and what you've lived through, and what you've been through, just as happens in relationships, um, the more that became uh, ammunition for Ms. Hurd to um to um to hurt you just say it either verbally uh decimate me or or to um send me into a, a kind of tailspin of confusion and d depression and um uh, and 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 a, and a well it's 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 not a happy day it's not a happy week it's not a happy month when you're constantly being told how wrong you are about this or that what an idiot you are um or or, or, or anything it, it, it just uh, it, it then it then it increased increased and it became an endless um it became an endless, that endless circle. Like, so as it escalated and continued to escalate, I went straight to what I had learned as a youth, which was to remove myself from the situation so that it couldn't continue because there's only so much your ears can hear and never forget. Um, so I would remove myself from the situation as I'd done as a youth um, as much as possible. 
um, because I, 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 I just I certainly didn't believe that there was any need for these various subjects or arguments to come up and, and um, travel the distance that they did so very quickly to ramp up so fast. Um, it was like you were pinned to a wall and had to just listen to it and take it. Um, so I found the only way to find any sort of peace was to uh, try to walk away if, if uh, she didn't allow me to walk away. Um, there were times when um, I would I, I would just go and lock myself in, uh, you know, the bathroom or anywhere that she couldn't get into. Um, and that, that happened uh, constantly uh, over the years. What would happen when the fights would escalate other than going and hiding in the bathroom? I don't think we actually got an answer. Sorry, to what would happen? Well, if, if, if they continue to escalate, um, if I continued to, to try to, um, present my, my version or my side of the story, um, when you, when you, when you're approached in, in a, um, in a kind of, um, well, when you're approached with such, uh, anger and hatred it seemed like pure hatred for me um if i stayed to argue that eventually i i was sure that it was going to escalate into violence and oftentimes it did many times it did and when you say violence what Don't are leave you it passive like that um misheard in her frustration and in her rage and her anger, she would uh, strike out. She would, it, it could begin with a slap. It could begin with a, a shove. Um, it could begin with, you know, throwing a TV remote at my head. It could be uh, throwing a glass of wine in my face. Um, but, but it, all in all, it was a, it was just a um, it was a constant. Uh, it was there was a, a built-in list of of um, as I said, m my personal experiences, which I gave to Miss Heard, those those things were. Those 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 facts were used against me um, as as weapons, um, especially when it you know when it came to my kids. Um, so, so, so yeah, I, I did. I, there was no need for it. It just there was no need for it. it, it too many lines were crossed. You could it was you couldn't see the lines anymore. You mentioned that um, Miss Heard would use information you gave her against you like a weapon. Can you explain that a little bit? Um, I mean, I've, I've said this before in various interviews, but certainly in life, um, my if I have one ambition and amb ambition for me um when you equate it with hollywood has become a very has become a, an ugly word in, in a sense because ambition ambition means i want to be famous at any cost i don't care what for i just want to be famous that's one thing that's one uh part of it if you have a hunger or a need or a drive to 
to present your work. Um, that that to me is is uh, the, the way to go about it. Fame has nothing to do with it. So I was more, I mean, basically, the only the only ambition that I've ever had in my life came arrived the second that my first child arrived in the second in the instant which was to be a good parent to be to be a great father to be the best father I could and um, there were several occasions where Ms. Heard would um, would tell me what a bad father I was, um, and that I had no idea how to parent. Um, and again, it falls into the same category as before. I couldn't understand how, in f fifty-two years or however old I was at the time how I could be so wrong about everything. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, one learns along the road. The result is, the result of the road is not important. It's, it's the road that's important because we don't know exactly what any, what's going to happen in 10 years. We don't know. So the road is what I pay attention to and paying attention to Try, trying to spend as much time with my children uh, as possible. Um, even that, even that uh, would, uh, that could send Miss Heard into a, a monumental tailspin um, where I could, I could hardly ever go and see my kids and spend time with my kids because she, had to have me there at all times for her own needs. So and I, I, that was something that once you realize that that's happening and then there are hassles between the children and her, the situation starts to get a little more grim and a little more dire and um that i was not uh, prepared to uh take i would not hear the words you're a bad father you're a terrible father you're an awful father uh, so one can only take so much of that before bits of your brain start to just bits of your brain, bits of your heart begin to, the valve gets shut off because you can't hear it anymore. And, and you know that it's not true. And you know that it's meant as a web. It's just to, it's to slice you up. It's to bring you down. It's to demean you. It's to bring you into a place where you start to believe that there's something wrong with you. And, um, There's plenty wrong with me. There's plenty wrong with a lot of people. But in all of these uh, situations, my main goal was to retreat because I think in life, most important is pick your battles. If, if there's a battle to be fought that it's grave and important, then that must be dealt with. But small insults and kind of teenage sort of high school tactics. Um, I think he needs to stay away from that. Is bully, well, if you will. I, 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 also, I think this answer is a mistake, but I'll discuss why take. on the break. So why did you stay with Ms. Heard given this type of behavior? He's getting some digs in and that's a bad idea. That's a very complicated answer I, I would I can only say that I, I 
stayed through all that. I, I'm sure that it's somehow related to my father um, remaining stoic as my mother would beat him to death. Um, I'm sure it had a lot to do with having been in a beautiful, wonderful 14, 15 year relationship with Vanessa, the mother of my children, raising those kids was, there, there was, I had no interest in being a, you know, the words that they use that I, I dislike very much, um, a celebrity or an entertainer or a, fame is a strange word because I could never equate it with my self. I pumped gas, I worked construction, I, I uh, printed t-shirts, I dug in, you know, I had many, many jobs before any of this happened to me. So uh, I've been able to live both sides of that life, of, 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 of life. I, I know the, the very lows and I know the very highs of, um, of where my life has gone. And I, it's not, I don't, I don't, again, it would be pure idiocy for me to sit up here uh, as a, as an actor who has been very, very fortunate uh, over the years. And I can only say it's, it's luck in the sense that someone hands you the ball in the beginning and you run with it and you run as far as you can before you get tackled. Um, so I, that's, that's um, what I've always done. But what happens is the word, when the word celebrity or, or, uh, you, when you are a, what do they call it? A uh, public, a public figure. That, that's what it is. A celebrity or a public figure. Um, again, not complaining, but there are things that, that are very uncomfortable. And that is to say that at that point, anybody can say anything they want to about you. And that's happened to me over 36 years or more, that uh, things can be printed in the newspaper that are utterly false. And this is even early on. So this is where that, that privilege, I suppose, that they call the privilege of celebrity, that's, that's where that um, sticks a knife in you. Funny, he um, always discounts it. I think he's under strict orders from his uh, attorneys to don't try not to whine about being rich and your famous. Arms are too short to box with God, yeah. you know. Uh, there yeah, are too many. You don't want to come off of as too uh, coming at you. Uh, um, so the, disingenuous uh, about it too. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what her motivations. In a were, second, I'm going to switch to Court TV so we can see them both at the same time, guys. I know a lot of people want that. Jealous. I'm just waiting for the right moment so I don't cut off his testimony. Maybe just. Maybe just hatred. I don't know. Um, but in any case, the elevation and the escalation of these of these day to day arguments were um, simply unnecessary. It was and the jury's going to be wondering not to face help too. the relationship. This is the third not question he circled back to the experience, to which is fine. But it was meant to feed her um, need for conflict. She has a need for conflict. She has a need for violence. Because this question is ostensibly, why did you it stay here? Right? Out of nowhere, yeah. and. Uh, what I learned, the only thing I learned to do with it is exactly what I did as a child. Retreat, just take a step back, which I told her. It's like improv, you know, you take the prompt, from and then you go like two steps for an hour. 
a day, anything. This isn't feeling like improv to me. This this problem, no, I just can't go the way on. he answers the questions I meant. I know yeah. I can live like this, you know. But why did I stay? This is feeling a little too rehearsed. I suppose because my father stayed. I suppose because I had been in that relationship with Vanessa and that was lost. And I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to fail. That's a good answer. I wanted to try to make it work. I thought maybe I could help her. I thought maybe I could bring her around. Because the Amber Heard that I knew for the first year, year and a half was not this, was not this, um, suddenly this first question. Um, opponent. It, it 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 wasn't my girl it was it was she had become my opponent and everything that i did just didn't fit her um it, it wasn't she didn't accept it uh so i stayed because of course i didn't want to fail i didn't want to i didn't want to hurt anyone Especially Miss Miss Heard, I didn't want to <clears throat> break her heart. I I remember very well that when my father left and m my mother, um, Betty Sue, had uh, that first attempt at suicide that I woke up to, and that visual in my head, and that was a direct result of my father's um, leaving. Um, Ms. Heard had spoken of uh, suicide on a couple of occasions. So th that also becomes a factor. It, it, that's, that's also something that, that always lives in the back of your brain and uh, you, that you fear because when I would leave Sometimes, I mean, well, many times when I would try to leave, she would, you know, stop me at the elevator with the security guards crying, screaming, you know, I can't live without you. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to die. But you had to get out. There were, there were even a couple of times when I did escape and I got to my house, arrived at my house in Switzer. And then five minutes later, she would arrive. In the, in, in the, I don't know what car she was driving at the time, but um, she would arrive in her nightgown screaming in the parking lot in front of, in front of my house, uh, screaming to high heavens. It would be four in the morning, three in the morning. It was ludicrous. I, it was, it was, uh, it was out of control. It was uncontrollable. Did there come a time when you and Miss Heard started recording your um, arguments? Yes. Oh, here they come. Yes. Here we go. Uh, the, here this we go. is it. In fact, yeah. it was. It was. Uh, I, was I will I was say she is definitely looking more vulnerable person. today, though. They they Her definitely do right. us to she yeah. was styled correctly today to uh, yeah. record conversations. Although she's going to have to watch her facial expressions. It's going to be hard for her the whole day. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm turning everybody's mics down a little bit more. She would, oh. she would, we would She's have been talking the night before, now, right? arguing the night yeah, before. Real. She would say something. There would be these, again, not coming these, off the coach to me, demeaning, but, uh, berating have, insults. But it's answers. These, these, so there's this these mix of like jabs that would he's be already thought of and anything to make me feel small. And, I don't know uh, how it's coming off to a juror or and like nothing. Um, Ian, I think they're used to this style a little bit from yesterday. So what I thought was, I'm going to record the conversation. And I told her this. I'm going to record. I'm going to get my phone and I'm going to record our conversation. Ah, so he told because her I want yeah. you to <laughs> hear There's your two -part what consent. And Lang Foundation said to me that tomorrow. That is a true and accurate, accurate representation. So Because she would deny having said those things. What are you talking about? You know, it was... It was surreal. 
she had completely denied things she'd said directly to my face in a heated and volatile way. And she denied it. So I went to her and I said, I'm going to record us. And I did. And we re recorded the uh, conversation, which uh, when she was on tape, uh, The first time it wouldn't it, it, it escalated a bit but she was well it was clear that she was performing for the tape because it was being recorded so the, that was a uh, another clue that something was slightly rotten in the state of denmark as it were what did miss heard say to you about you recording the the conversations between you and her Tell the world, Johnny. I mean, initially she said, sure, go ahead. Did that um, ever change? No, then uh, she, she, um, then she started recording, but um, surreptitious um, without, without saying without telling me that she was recording something which is fine but not so fine if you if you know what i mean <laughs> um what do you mean yeah good question even in those tapes i know exactly what he means <laughs> yeah it never took yeah, me yeah, to a true. place I, I, where I, said. I would um go s switch into some other entity, which is, as she has used the term monster, never switched to um, violence. Violence was unnecessary. Um, He's almost rambling here, though. Why would you hit someone to make them agree with you i don't think it works he is rambling but uh Mr. Depp, you mentioned that he's got adhd monster, so i get it and i think we heard that, about that in the opening mm. statements what yes. what does the term monster mean to you well the term the, the, the term monster means to me um you know in the beginning uh, she had used a different um word to explain the same thing and she she would use the word demon demons that my demons were coming out that she had noticed that there was a great change in my attitude or my um uh aggressiveness aggressive nature or she would 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 um say that the demons had come out and they had control of me and that sort of thing. Um, I don't remember exactly how monster came out, but that word stuck and it stayed, well, until this day. Um, what I believe the monster was in Ms. Hurd's mind was her intense in, projection intense uh, yeah yeah yep, about yep, what yep. monster meant in miss Hurd's mind so yep. no yeah let me ask a different right. question i was, I was wondering projection. where they were when you use the term monster what <laughs> they were listen you to to? in your comments they want all the sentences Sorry. they can gather from when them. i use the term monster with miss Hurd, i was placating they're gonna cross them on this if I, if yeah. if she had referred to me as being a monster. There was no way that I was going to sit there and go through a 45 minute argument about, you know, you're a monster. No, I'm not. You're a monster. No, I'm not. You're a monster. No, I'm not. It, 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 it was it was an impossibility. So what do you do? You accept her vernacular. You accept what the word that she uses 
and then you use that word to to uh, placate her so that it would at least calm part of the part of the aggression it would it would lessen the uh, attacks you know so explaining the monster was for me um, I mean, she, 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 she had told me many times that the monster was, was only me when I was uh, using drugs and, and, and alcohol. Um, but it, even when I was uh, stone cold sober off of alcohol, um, and uh, s substances aside from my meds, the term the monster was still there. When she uh, accused, be, accused me of being uh, high on cocaine or, um, uh, you know, drinking like a, you know, some sort of, um, like drinking like 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 I was a you know some kind of 19th century sailor it, it's uh like a pirate that 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 was <laughs> the word she clung to whoa to whoa, whoa. that's 18th century come on but um <laughs> it was in her mind not mine how did your relationship with Miss Hurd affect your substance use? Well, for example, w when we were on the road, you know, when you're traveling from, uh, if you're on a press tour or if you're making a film and you're staying in a, uh, hotels or this or that, um, I would always have to get a different, or we would always have to book an extra room that I was able to escape to, so I didn't have to lock myself in another bathroom. Um, it breaks you down. It, it, the constant haranguing breaks you down. And, you know, there's a part of you that says, listen, if I'm going to be accused of this, might as well just do it. But, it never exceeded it, it, it never m my substance abuse or use the alcohol that i uh used or uh, drank uh w was again purely it, it's it's that little boy who didn't want to hear or didn't want to feel the pain of his uh, mother turning him into some kind of um, ball of insecurity and pain. So, yes, uh, I was more inspired by Miss Heard to reach out for a numbing agent um because of the because of the constant uh clashes because of the there wasn't there was, i mean maybe a few days here and there but there wasn't a day that you'd wake up and you'd expect something was going to hit the fan and it, pretty much like clockwork it did so yes, I I had to have something to distance me and distance my my heart from those verbal 
attacks, I, I had to have something to to be able to maintain me. And I'm afraid for a while because of because of placation, um, because I didn't want to rock the boat, as it were. Again, you pick your battles. So placation seemed um, the best route if I was unable to escape her clutches. How, if at all, did Ms. Hurd try to support you in abstaining from the drugs and alcohol as she requested? Well, I mean, verbally, uh, and she had been quite clear verbally as, as, as and then been pretty bullish and brutish about um, wanting me to, uh, telling me that I needed to stop drinking. But drinking was basically drinking wine with her um, and I, I, for some, I suppose maybe from youth, I don't know, but I, I've always had um, a pretty high tolerance for alcohol, for especially it's not spirits, you know. Um, I, I, I had a t pretty good tolerance for alcohol substances and things of that nature, uh, but there, there was no, I, I had no. I've worked with, I've worked with therapists, um, drug um, counselors, who have actually said the words to me because I wanted to know. I wanted to know. Am I am I an alcoholic? Am I an alcoholic? Or is this just the same thing that I did as a kid when I took my mom's nerve pill? Um, do I have a drinking problem? And this is first. He gets to ask it essentially came down to this. Stairs, huh? Yeah. Do you have? He's a not doing his own problem, direct. John? Yeah. <laughs> Objection. Calls for hearsay. What the doctors told him. I'm not sure he's saying what the doctors told him. I think that's what's about to be testified to. Oh, if you can, if you can make that clear, I guess. Um, let, let me ask you a different question, Mr. Depp. Um, yes. Let's let him object to another one. Oh, oh. oh. Um, don't do that. How often would Miss Heard drink in your presence while you were in a relationship? Always. Well, yeah, uh, Miss Heard drank, uh, she took a shine to a very nice Spanish wine called Vega Cecilia. She and all her friends did. Vega Cecilia. <laughs> and um, somewhere a uh, vintner just uh, yeah, the wine just had a good came day. out and uh, <laughs> yeah. Miss Heard could uh, sellers all taking notes. Very easily drink two bottles of wine per night. Mm -hmm. well, not a not a problem. Um, what I found strange was when I did um, did get sober from from the uh, well, I was off the um, the opiates that I had that I had been addicted to prior prior, prior to a year or so before, or a couple of years before. Um, she asked me if I would stop drinking to save the relationship, of course. I stopped drinking. And um, I always found it odd that in support of me not drinking, um, that she might stop drinking 
uh, but she did not. She continued. And I, I didn't make a big deal about it. In fact, I would... Well, their Unico is $500 a bottle. Open her... So. I would open her wine. I would pour her a glass. And that went on for many, many months, you know, in, in my sobriety. Uh, like I said, I think I, I was sober for around 18 months. Um, then there was a time when I was asked to... And I'd been off off of alcohol and off of drugs, everything, uh, except for the med medication um, that I'm prescribed. Uh, I, went, I had to go to London to give um, a Lifetime Achievement Award to a, a dear old friend who was an elderly man, great actor called, uh, his name's Christopher Lee. <laughs> Never heard of him. Friend. And <laughs> I was surprised. He was being surprised by my showing up on stage. I'd just flown in from the States. And he was, so he was surprised by me arriving uh, to give him this award. And Christopher um, came up and accepted the award. And we walked. They put, brought us backstage to a, a this beautiful library where we... Uh, the, I was with Christopher and his wife and a, a waiter came up and had three glasses of champagne and Christopher handed one to his wife he handed one to me and then he had the other and uh, there was a photographer there and the, to you know, the glass came up to toast and I, and I just, in my head, I thought, it's just champagne, you know, a little bit tink to toast Christopher in his Lifetime Achievement Award. And so I've had a half a glass of champagne with Christopher Lee and his wife. Um, after that, immediately after that award ceremony, um, I went to pick up Ms. Heard and uh, take her to dinner um, at a restaurant, and I told her that I'd had a half a glass of champagne with Christopher, and I thought, listen, it, 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 it's, it's not like, you know, you're sitting in a pub guzzling pints of snake bites or Guinness or doing shots of Jägermeister or... <laughs> Jägermeister. Yeah. At that point, it wasn't even for need to bury feelings or emotions. It was literally a, a joyous occasion for Christopher. And I said to her, I, 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 I enjoyed it. You know, it gave me the opportunity to enjoy the, the actual so champagne, the, 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 the drink and the, and my appreciation for wine and winemaking and that I've been fascinated with for years and years. And I saw nothing wrong in it. And I said, I'd, I'd like to have a glass of champagne. And she was sitting there with a glass of wine. And she, we were in the restaurant and she absolutely lost it and got up and stormed to the ladies room and i told my security and driver i said uh, i think we have to go we're gonna have to leave so we left the restaurant and uh, went home and the mere suggestion of me sipping a glass of champagne or having one glass or two glasses of wine she she went apoplectic. She 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 she. It was uh. I was weak. Uh, uh, I was a complete mess. I was an alcoholic. I was you know I was gonna uh, ruin everything. My you know your kids, your kids are not proud of you. They they can't stand what you're doing to yourself. All of this can be so turned at around. At that point, I said to her, "Okay, listen." I don't think this plays for him like he thinks. How about it does. this? You want to? You no, want I think to support me not drinking? 
Yeah, there's two sides to every story. I've never asked you this before. Yeah, I can already hear the other side How playing about you? on cross. Mm-hmm. Stop drinking. How about you get sobriety? Like she so the sobriety concerned. with drink that this was a disappointing you know, and help me through this. moment for her kind of what thing. What did she say to that? No. No. <laughs> she said no. She said she didn't have a problem. But I I have never had a physical addiction to alcohol. I don't. How often have you seen Ms. Heard use other illicit drugs in your presence? Several, uh, several times. And what drugs were those? Um, what were, uh, she, she was always quite fond of MDMA, which is, which is ecstasy. Um, and uh, mushrooms um, and she had some medications that she she she, she was on already that were uh, well, one in particular was quite a high velocity um, sp- speed if you will Cold to, I don't know if I can say the name. Am I allowed to say the name? Yeah. It doesn't that's, matter. That's not necessary. The name of the drug. Um, what, um, wouldn't you be able to say how it? often did you see Ms. Heard take MDMA? Well, I, a dozen times, uh, 20 times. I, you know, over the course of the years, through, during the course of the years. And what about um, mushrooms? Um, mushrooms a little less. Mushrooms probably six, seven times. Mr. Depp, do you recall at the beginning of her opening, uh, Ms. Hurd's counsel mentioned that the first time you supposedly struck Ms. Hurd was in response to a comment about one of your tattoos? Yes, I remember. And what is your response to that? It, it didn't, it, it didn't happen. I. I've never struck Miss Heard. As I said yesterday, I've never struck Miss Heard. Um, I've never struck a woman in my life. Um, I'm certainly not going to strike a woman if she decides to make fun of a tattoo that I have on my body. That's like going in into someone's journal and picking out uh, things you don't like. She had made mention, uh, there was no incident of, of, of argument when, she, when the tattoo thing has been, had been brought up many, many times. And I mean, there's really nothing I can do. My, I've always thought of my body as a, as a journal, if you will, to, to, to mark experiences, to mark life experiences. It's, you know, for example, when you're, when my first child was born, I, I had her name tattooed um, on my, over my heart, which is where her little head used to be when I rock her to sleep. Um, I, I marked my boy's birth by uh, tattooing myself him so um no one can go back or no one should go back and rewrite their journals why would i take such great offense to someone making fun of a, a, a tattoo something uh, so deeply personal it, uh, yeah it, it, that, that, that 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 allegation mm-hmm. never made any sense to me whatsoever Are there any tattoos that you had that Miss Heard had an issue with, to your understanding? Um, well, the, the um, what a, a tattoo 
that I believe is up here, uh, which used to say, uh, Winona Forever, who was a former girlfriend. And um, we'd been together for a few years. Um, Winona Ryder and uh, shout out to Winona Ryder. When we when when we Stranger broke Things up, season Winona. four. Um, She's good in that, by the way. <laughs> how do you fix that? I did go back and re rewrite my journal to some degree. I I took off the last two letters, um, and had it say Wino forever, <laughs> um, just because I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was, f again. You could just say you thought it was funny. It was funny, dude. Pain. It's funny. Yeah. Comes He's here. trying to be extremely he, careful what he said. Humor saying. has to come in there so at some point into the pain. And yeah, that's how you that a lot. play it out in your He explains the answer. Mind. And he gives the answer. So yeah. I, I have, uh, I think sometimes abstractly uh, in that sense. So I changed it to wino forever. Um, um, any other tattoos? Um, um, well, she was, she was very encouraging um, in, in, in me getting a, um, a tattoo of, of of her, of her name, or whatever, sounds, and sounds uh, on brand. I waited a while, and then I yes, I did it. I got a full tattoo of her, and it uh, ironically wasn't long after that that the um, that everything started going sideways. I, I I was doing anything I could to bring a smile to her face as opposed to the frown and then the onslaught of whatever um, whatever problems she 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 was seeing or experiencing um, pro tip don't get I, partner's I, names tattooed i even i love advice try to wake her up with laughter um you know, singing stupid songs in her ear while she, you know, I, I generally just tried to keep bringing her mood up. Sometimes it worked, many times it didn't. Um, but I, I, I tried and I wanted to try because as I said, I didn't want to fail. And at the time, not knowing fully, not understanding fully what I was, if you'll excuse the term, up against. Um, I kept trying, I, I kept trying, but uh, to no avail whatsoever. It just got worse. Mr. Depp, I'd like to fast forward a little bit to May of 2014. Um, could you please tell the jury what project you were working on in May of 2014? This is Boston flight. May of 2014. May of 2014. I, I, I'm, I'm, He's going to find a way to make this a 20 minute answer. The number of films that I made in succession. I, I, I can't remember if that might have been works. Pirates. <laughs> No, we've lost Ian, and it's not even been an hour. Mordecai, or um, may have, I don't remember what, what can, can you remind me what May of 2014 film was? Yes. I've got to touch it. It's refresh your mass in Boston. Of May of ah, yes, okay, yes, yes, excuse me, yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, I we was might be uh, discussing a flight to Boston. I was filming that, Black, if that refreshes a film called Black Mass in, in, in Boston, and um. Well, I'd love to be black. Sure, did come with me. Um, um, and I had to, for the film, I had to 
there was the, there were very early calls to work because I was I had a, a number of prosthetics um, glued to my face and uh, blue contacts, um, so th so that I could resemble the the, the actual. It was based on the true story of uh, James Bulger, James Whitey Bulger, mm -hmm. and so I had a, I had to go in quite early to get the prosthetics glued to my face and all that and uh, work and you'd work you know the whole day and then at the end of the night uh, the uh, they would remove the the prosthetics which takes a, if it took three hours to put them on it took about an hour to take them off and so on top of a what could be a anywhere between a 14 16 17 hour day of work you know what with the, the application of the of the makeup and then the taking off of the um, applications was miss heard staying with you in boston during the entire time that you were making that film yes yes she was and who from your staff was in Boston with you during that time? Jerry Judge. Uh, Keenan Wyatt, Stephen Duders. Nathan Holmes, I believe. And I believe Malcolm Connolly was there as well. So I would have um, assistants, sound technician, um, security. I believe, I believe that was it. I appreciate his cadence because it helps me. Mr. Depp, we heard yesterday from Mr. Wyatt about a flight that you and Mr. Wyatt and Ms. Heard were on from Boston to LA in March, excuse me, May 2014. Do you remember that? Yes. And could you please tell the jury what you remember about that specific flight? Um, I remember that as I was still shooting, uh, filming Black Mass, um, before, I, before I did Black Mass, the film, um, my sister Christy um, and I were talking about the um, the Roxy codons that I had been again. You know that that was the monkey on my back. Uh, that she, she came to me. She told me she had read this book of uh, Dr. Kipper's book, and uh, I read. Uh, Dr. Kipper has Dr. a book. Dr. Kipper's mm -hmm. book. He showed it. A good majority of it. And um, you can tell I you see Cowan's that book. I would uh, do the detox. I would kick the uh, the opiates, but there was no time to do it before the film. Um, so um, when when the nurse. Uh, which was nurse Debbie Lloyd, when she came to Boston, um, she she had asked me, uh, "What is your dosage? What are you? How many of these are you taking per day?" And you know, someone who had been under, uh, you know, under the kind of lock and key of 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 a prescription drug that is highly highly addictive i mean with built-in barbs that this drug does not want you to stop taking it um she asked me how how many i took per, per day or, or my dosage and of course as 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 any uh person who is addicted and um, essentially a uh, 
uh, a fool to the drug. And you know how important it is because you have felt the sting when it doesn't, when you don't have it. So I'd agreed, I'd agreed to the um, detox. And I, she asked me how many I, I took. I told her, obviously, more than I was taking, purely because when you're in that frame of mind, the one thing that you do not want to, a situation you don't want to find yourself in, is having no access to the thing that will make you not high. It will make you, it gets you, you only get better from it. If you start to get the, 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 the shakes and the tremors and the, uh, the, the, you know, you could feel this traveling into your system. Your, 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 your um, receptors are out in mass and your receptors are demanding that drug. If you, if you don't give the, the drug to the, res, to the receptors, you're going to, you will start going into a pretty nasty withdrawal and, um, and it could, uh, which, you know, could, uh, and has ended in, you know, sort of seizures. You, could, you, you can go into pretty nasty seizures. So um, I had told Debbie Lloyd uh, more than was necessary so that I could always have one or two in my pocket on the just in case. So I didn't find myself you know, on a plane or anywhere without one in my pocket to stop the, the, the inevitable um, body cramps and nausea and, and, and stomach cramps and seizure of the bones and shaking. And I can respect the storytelling, and also the, but, it, but in adding an emotional to this, ride he's added, well. I lied to my nurse in non-responding so, to what happened on that flight. Yes, I, 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 uh, before well, that's going to come back to flight, um, Amber and her assistant, Savannah McMillan, wanted to be. The problem with these long winded stories uh, is they get boring. Picked up and they lose attention. That's the problem. New York. Yeah. And then have the plane fly to Boston to pick me up to bring us back to Los Angeles. Yeah. Now he's getting sure. to his answer. Uh, I sympathize because I've also. Uh, we already... had spoken the night before. We had argued the night before. Um, she was most definitely um, looking for a. She was looking for a fight, um, actively searching for a way to instigate a fight with me. Um, and I had taken two of these um, opiates, these roxycodones, um, and I can I can tell you now. Some of you may be very very well aware of this. Opiates um, are extreme downers. So if you have enough opiates in you. You will essentially go on what's called the nod. You'll just drop into sleep. So, I've heard I've heard the words blackout used, and um, there's a grave difference between a blackout um, from 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 um, uh, alcohol abuse, because that is a person who has. Has 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 inge ingested enough alcohol um, to render them. Um, they they can still behave and they can still stand and talk and scream and yell and cry and do whatever they do. Just don't let him testify to this. Um, and yeah, never remember like a thing. Um, and sounds generally, like they're testimony. always embarrassed by it. A blackout is a very very different animal. 
I don't think it's an awful to, thing for the defense to have um, Johnny saying, I know what an alcoholic blackout is. The opiate taking you into dreamland. So when I arrived on the plane. Also, he's taking the jurors uh, into dreamland right now. So I was you might not know feeling any pain. Objection. And I knew that she was ready for a, some kind of brawl. And I, uh, I sat on the plane drawing. I was drawing in my notebook. Um, she would verbally heckle, hassle, accuse, uh, poke, prod physically, you know, poke, poke and prod psychologically, emotionally. It just, and, and, and finally, you know, as was my, uh, the one thing I learned, if you're going to hide someplace from somebody, go straight into the bathroom. So I walked back into the back of the plane. Um, I grabbed a pillow and I went into the bathroom, locked the door and lay down on the bathroom floor and went to sleep. And that's where I remained for the rest of the flight. Now we know How Elaine has very different thoughts of what happened on this flight. On I, I honestly don't recall having any alcohol. I mean, maybe there was the sort of glass of champagne when you got on, on, on the plane or something like that. The initial thing, you know, people order glasses of wine. People also tend to, to uh, have a few drinks before a plane takes off because some people don't like the turbulence and the this and the that. So it's a little bit of a liquid courage, you know. Um, but I, 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 I certainly, after, after ingesting two of the roxycodones, um, alcohol was not necessary. So I, 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 I can tell you now that I, was not drinking uh, to excess, certainly not. I mean, if I had, I'd probably been in the bathroom hugging porcelain as opposed to sleeping on a pillow. And sound technician yeah. said he was drinking on this flight. Who else was on that mm -hmm. flight that you can recall? And the combination um, of alcohol and opiates. I remember uh, Jerry Judge was on the flight. Savannah was on the flight. Ms. Heard. Keenan Wyatt, Stephen Duders. I believe that's it. What do you recall happening after you arrived back in LA? Come on, stream, fix the sound. I was starting to wonder if it was just on my end. No, this happened yesterday, too. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Sorry, guys. No, it's I not I think you. the sound goes out on their end sometimes. Yeah, I think so. It, it happened yesterday, like on. Um, and also in the close. Let's go back. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Home together after that flight. Uh. No, I don't believe. No, we didn't. I don't believe we did. I think she had decided if, if this is the time. Pretty sure. I believe she had decided to check herself into the Chateau Marmont. If the, there are so many of these, it, it's hard. It's hard to sort of uh, keep them all straight. Who would have paid for Miss Heard to stay at the Chateau Marmont? Um, I'm, I'm, I would have paid for it. Um, if she wanted to go to the Chateau Marmont, I wasn't going to let her pay for it, no matter the circumstances. I, I don't know what that is, but it doesn't sound cheap. Pay yeah. for it you know they need it's a hotel. My 
they it's need a fancy to hotel story about the chateau marmont get expensive yes. uh, it's quite an for, institution for, in la it's where john belushi died. I, uh, yes i would do i would very fancy take hotel. care of things of nature and why did miss heard tell you why she was staying at the chateau marmont no well i, I mean she was she was clearly upset and she was uh, irate um, and uh, I, I can't say that it was a bad idea for her to stay at the Chateau Marmont at that time. I don't know why she went to the Chateau since she still had her apartment on Orange, I believe. And the penthouse, because I, I could have gone to Switzer, but she went to the Chateau Marmont. Mr. Depp, do you recall why you were flying from Boston to LA in May 2014? I can't remember if it was a break from the film or if I had finished the film. And that was before we went, um, well, before I was supposed to go to the island to uh, to um, the, uh, to detox from from the uh, opiates. I, I think it's, it's I'm a, about to switch gears, okay, so if this that's, is a good time for a break. All right, oh. ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and have our morning recess. Please do not do any outside <coughs> research. Don't talk to anybody about the case, and we'll see you in fifteen minutes. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, watch this stream. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right. So other than that, that audio glitch that we got, um, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I know that I, I, I said that I was going to put court TV up. I, I, I don't want the, 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 any kind of watermarks on there. Um, because I, even though this should not be copyrightable by any of these companies that are, that are putting this up on YouTube and elsewhere, and so again, since you're still on the stand and not discuss your testimony, there's still a possibility that we could get okay. an improper right. we'll takedown notice and that would just be oh, devastating. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, today they are showing Amber. I'm sorry that it's not side by side. Um, but I just, I, I don't want to risk getting an, an improper takedown notice and then, you know, not being able to stream this until tomorrow or later. Yeah, or later. I mean, I, if people don't realize, if they put up an improper and decide to hold it, it can be, you know, a week or more. Yeah, yeah. So I could lose the ability to improper? live stream entirely. Never heard of that before. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. All right. Well. Thoughts? Me, thoughts on that? Well, but I'm thinking I might have to start up a new law channel and start doing these streams. And then when law and crime does it, strike them and see how they feel for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because then it, it, it'll it'll let them know that you can, if you want to play the game, we can play the game too. It's it's, it's sad, but if YouTube is going to allow this, then that might just be what we have to do. You, you we'll pretend we didn't hear this start our own network. Plot, <laughs> yeah, you can't. No, you can't. You can't copyright a public trial. They know that, but they strike. You know, just to, see if to, I to, to if I devil's them. advocate this right. If they have a different feed, then they're doing some kind of artistic addition to to pick the cameras. I mean, that's what they would claim in order to hold that strike up. Yeah. But they yeah. don't in this case because Court TV is the one that has the agreement with the court to be in the courtroom and everybody is sharing the same pool. Yes. So the, the pool same of camera cameras, pool. right? But that's the one yeah. that they yeah. license out. So like you're, you're just, you're, you're piggybacking on somebody's editing. And I agree yeah. with you. It's all fair use. You're fine. But in terms of defending it, um, uh, you, could, you could put a colorable claim in front of YouTube that says the artistic decision to side to side show these and yeah. then to pan over this way and to select this edit, that is that is our additional, you know, whatever. Anyway, no, we no, don't have to talk it's, about it's long not, crime or court yeah, TV, it's fine. No, well, it, it does just, to, well, my response to that would be, it's not YouTube doesn't decide fair use, it's a court, right? And if they want to, then let them sue me, right? Let them let them sue me in court, which I know that they will not do because I would destroy them. Please, You're gonna drag please, me into a half hour DMCA dis discussion. No, <laughs> no, we are not doing that. We are going to talk about Johnny Depp taking yes, let me out. Yeah, yeah. You don't like what I have to say. Let's so, talk about Andrew, it, the good, the bad, like and about, the ugly. You're not gonna like my thoughts on Johnny Depp's first hour and a half today. <laughs> Well, all right. I, I think I probably I agree with some of them. Stuff because somebody did mention um, not not liking that Johnny Depp, um, you know, is is talking about alcoholic blackouts, 
And uh, I'm going to push back on that because, you know, Johnny Depp is in a band with Steven Tyler and Alice Cooper. Johnny Depp used to own the Viper Room. Johnny Johnny Depp is a rock star, okay? And he, he has a rock star company. He knows the scene very well. So I don't think that this necessarily translates into Johnny Depp is, is describing his personal experience with, with alcoholic blackouts, you know, in, in presenting that testimony. It's just it's just something he's obviously going to be aware of. Because okay, of but let me, let me, the thing let is, on crack, you go there, and he's going to either have to weasel out of the question or look like he's weaseling out of it, or he's going to have to admit he's had you know, blackouts because he's talking about how it feels and so forth. Yeah. So. And he tries to use third person a couple of times, but it, it, but he's definitely gonna get asked about that. And let me, let me push back on your pushback a little bit, which is, <laughs> which is this, when, when he's framing out the situation with the wine and the champagne and Christopher Lee, um, you know, there's a version of it that sounds exactly like he just presented, but certainly as, as having personal relationships yeah. with people that have had alcoholism in their past, Opening your answer with, I'm definitely not an alcoholic. Here, I was sober for 18 months, and my wife got very mad at me when I sipped champagne and said, I just want more wine. I'm not an alcoholic. Don't worry about it. Sounds yeah. exactly like what an alcoholic, an alcoholic that potentially has a problem would sound like. Does that make Amber Heard right to be doing Jaeger bombs next to him? No. no. But, but that particular sequence of events, I'm like, it is so easy for me to see Amber as the beleaguered wife that's trying to keep him in the monster at bay and he just wants a little bit of champagne and it's not going to do anything that that yeah. framework, that framework easily slides into the other direction for me yeah. listening to it just, just out there in the wild. So I, I thought that whole sequence came up. He finished that answer with, I'm not an alcoholic. And it's like, yep. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what you would say. Well, and I'm going to push back to your pushback on that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I we're here it. for. Because what I think that Johnny Depp is doing very effectively is he is acknowledging addict behavior. He came out and, ex and expressly talked about lying to his provider about the, uh, about the number of Roxy's that he's, he's taken. He's admitted the Roxy addiction. He's denied yeah, basically he everything else. the Roxy addiction, and he's admitted the addict behavior as it relates to the Roxy addiction. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's precisely the type of thing that people who have experience with addiction or with a person who has suffered from addiction, that is absolutely going to resonate with them because we, we, all, we understand that addict behavior um, is, is extremely problematic. Um, it's just such a powerful driver for, for how people behave. So I think he is setting up a, a uh, an awareness of, you know, it's not like he's not aware that, that these types of things are going on. And he, he's willing to acknowledge that with, with the opiate addiction. Um, and, and so that does draw a contrast and potentially makes it a little bit more credible when he says, you know, yes, I'm admitting this to the opiates because it's yeah. true. With the alcohol, it's not. I do agree. When you, when you do admit to... I mean, it, it, it even seems like, <clears throat> like that would be a, a worse thing to admit to is being addicted to opiates as opposed to being addicted to alcohol, because alcohol is so readily accessible to every adult over 21, right? For, for opiates, you, you have a, an, an accessibility issue, which it, not a socioeconomic one, obviously we know about the opioid epi if I can talk <laughs> epidemic, you know, in the United States. Um, but there's a certain, there's a certain stigma attached to it that is different from alcoholism, you know? So it's almost, it's almost worse for him to admit to, to be, being addicted to opiates as opposed to being addicted to alcohol. So by, to me, I, I tend to believe him if he says I'm not an alcoholic because he's admitted to something even worse. I mean, well, the that, thing that, is, that, I don't know that opioid addiction is worse than alcoholism. I mean, I, I just don't yeah. necessarily mm. agree in the context. In and, this, and the context. problem I have with it is, well, I can certainly appreciate Alita and Andrea that you have more information and, you know, more behind the scenes and stuff like that. Uh, you know, we're just coming at it as it comes. Of course. And, and, and that story ran false to me. It sounded exactly like what you would sound mm. like if you were alcoholic. And, and it's not that I believe Amber Heard or anything else. I'm saying that what he describes there in two ways, strategically, what is that story doing? Well, I, I know you're, you're rambling and you're a storyteller and this kind of thing, and that's fine. How does that help you? Because it didn't Get introduce in anything facts. related to what your presentation is. And it did put in my head, okay, that, that really does sound like defensiveness. And I can imagine, maybe not Amber Heard, maybe a different relationship where all of those facts are exactly the same. And the wife getting up and storming out of the restaurant because he says, I just like champagne now. I'd like two sips of wine. It's not going to cause any problems. 
yeah. is exactly the kind of thing a wife would react to properly by saying, yes. this is ridiculous. I'm trying to get you to beat your demons or whatever else. Uh, and, is, and so since I can frame it mm -hmm. that way, I, you know, this is his direct testimony. I, that that was just one of the things that jumped out at me as that that ju that just really sounds defensive. And you could say, I yeah. believe him. And he admits to Roxy. He's also simultaneously not admitting to any other substance problems when we've got Dr. Kipper having him test positive for everything under the sun for the next four years. So I, I'm not saying he beat anyone. I'm not saying the defamation claim is destroyed by this. I'm saying yeah. that that combined with a couple of other things in the testimony. I mean, the fact that he can't remember what movie is on is coming up in cross. You're, you're telling me you can remember what happened on the plane flight for the movie you don't remember filming. Is that accurate, Mr. Depp? You know, I mean, that, that's, that's coming back. Uh, yeah. And so I, I just don't think this was a strong morning for him. And then I have one other beat, but I want to let other people talk because I mean, Chad al already yells at me for my verbosity. <laughs> I, I thought on this is I found him to be uh, when he was initially coming in and talking about the abuse. Um, when you're sitting there watching the whole trial, because most witnesses don't get to do that, um, you start thinking in advance of what you're going to say. And so he had a mix of what seemed to me to be stuff he thought of ahead of time and moments of like deep vulnerability and which jurors see which parts of that is going to be an open question because some jurors are going to say, well, that looked like a canned answer to me. And some jurors are going to say he's talking from the heart here, but at that alcohol exchange, I mean, I don't know that he's, I don't know one way or another, whether that's a, like a problematic thing where he's denying an actual issue, but I could, just see myself writing the cross examination in my head. You know, yeah. she was so worried yeah. about what you would do when you got back on the alcohol that she was, you know, up like this is a cross examination path that writes itself. And I mean, he might have been very much honest there, but I'm sure that his lawyers were probably wincing inside, anticipating what's going to happen on cross. Well, he, I, I, I think when. But one, one thing I, I think we all should recognize, too, is that Johnny's doctor made it very clear that drug addiction and alcohol addiction were kind of the same thing. And when you're treating them, you're trying to treat the, the addiction piece of it, not the real substances. So you're treating both the substances, but you're treating the pattern, what you do, why, you know, the, the habitual piece of the addiction part. So the drug and so. If you are addicted to drugs and alcohol, you're trying to refrain from both. And Johnny was doing that. He was following yeah. that plane. He was just restraining from drugs and alcohol. So drinking the alcohol really is just not about I don't have an alcohol problem. It was based on the whole addiction process. So I, I can so if your wife is saying, Well, hey, you're treating your addiction problem is about drugs and alcohol. It's like, well, I had an, a glass, a glass of wine. I would expect the response like that. Because it wasn't it wasn't just like I don't have an alcohol problem. No, you you have an addiction problem, and alcohol is part of the addiction problem. So that that's the way I saw it. But again, I have a little bit, I have some knowledge on addiction and all that type of stuff. So so that's the way when I when I saw it based on my knowledge and what I know, that's kind of how I saw it. Now I do think Johnny didn't hurt his case this morning, but he left so much open for cross examination. It's really yeah. it's it's, it's going to be a horror show. And I also want to say, and, and just be honest with, with what I've seen, yesterday, the novelty was letting him sit there and talk. And it was like, oh, my God, Johnny Depp is the, today, it's kind of like, oh, my God, get this guy off the stand and let's get to something that I, because a lot of times he's answering questions. And I don't even know what the question is anymore at the end of his answer. I don't know what he's talking about. But mm -hmm. I believe him. I believe he's being sincere, right? Yeah. That, that part I agree with. Yeah. But the substance of what he's talking about, I lost it after, like, the the, the second paragraph i'm like i don't even know what he's always going with. yeah i think this is kind of to his benefit in some ways though because you're probably right but it's probably a good thing because the overall narrative is what sticks through and this is true of the whole trial as i said before the whole problem with the six-week trial is expecting the jurors to remember any particular piece of testimony or a particular thing is just insane in a six-week trial how are they going to remember anything to be quite honest, all that's sort of left is this overall impression, the overall impression of the narrative and the story. And this is why we talk, or at least I talk about the importance of it in the opening. It's to set out the narrative. You want to set out the narrative architecture so that as you bring witnesses, it falls within the narrative. You hit your points. And even though you, even though they might not remember what you did, they remember that the story made sense consistently throughout. 
And so they're like, okay, well, he told me he was going to tell me a story. He did. He made it along the way. I may not remember every element. It's like remembering every element of a movie. Do you remember every element of a movie? Of course you don't. But you remember the all the overall narrative. And that's what sticks through. So and I think the other thing, I think in that sense, what Johnny Depp is doing makes a lot of sense because he's telling an overall narrative. I agree with you that there's some weak points. Uh, as to that, two things. First of all, this might be somewhat deliberate in sort of drawing the sting because these mm -hmm. are elements that are already known. And so bringing it out makes him look more honest. And, you know, and, and overall, I thought his story was good in talking about how Amber Heard was controlling, how he used drugs and alcohol to self-medicate. Um, the fact that he couldn't remember exactly which movie he was doing was kind of a hilarious moment because I'm involved in so many movies. How do I know which one? That's um, kind of what he, I took away from it is like, I don't know. I've been yeah. on so many movies. It's not memorable to me, but this fight is yeah. memorable to me. But, you know, once you once you have a, a, a context to remember, oh, it was OK, that was it. Now I remember I can talk to you in detail about it. It's like prime the mind. I, I found it all very persuasive, charming, convincing. I found it to be while rambling and um you know i agree with you that no one can remember what the question is i'm not sure how much that matters <laughs> at this point i wrote them down so, so i'm like oh this yeah. is why did you stay now that we're on minute 15. Yeah, well, okay let me stay? so chat's already called me the big grouch that hates everything johnny depp yeah, says so i'm gonna dig in here <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna steer into the skid um so i'll tell you one thing that was really bad and actually might make me change my vote about whether or not cross x can get to him or not is him side commenting, yes, you should ask your next question. They're just going to object to it anyway, or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he said. Or is let, like, them, let them get to their next objection or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it, uh, that's, that's okay. All right. So that's fiery. That's a little aggressive. Let's, let's, and, and Elaine and, and aggressive cross X guy are saying, okay, well, well, maybe we get him on tilt because uncivil, you're exactly right. Nate's right. Ian's right. Impressions abound. The specifics here don't matter as much as if you can get Johnny Depp angry at you on the stand yes, that's from it. the Game Amber Heard side of the team, Game then the, the case is over. Yeah. Well, but on I mean, the other hand, on the other hand, if he maintains his composure while they are trying to poke him and prod him, that is really good for his case. Yes. So it, yeah. There's a I lot mean, on either side that can come out for really, really strong through his cross-examination. I read just, on this right it. now is that yeah. he did a really I think he did a, a good enough job on direct and he's rambling but that just illustrates that some people aren't great witnesses I mean I've seen people in the chat saying hey you don't know about attention deficit well <laughs> I know about it. oh my gosh I don't Oops. Ian's pulling out uh, evidence <laughs> so, <laughs> like, <laughs> what that means is you know he's going to be rambling and there's nothing you can do about that because he's got to testify and i think he came off as sympathetic i think he came off as genuine in a lot of places the problem the only difficulty i have is how many openings he left across examination and how much this is going to come down to his cross examination because i mean amber heard's team is gonna try to piss him off and you know they're gonna be disrespectful they're gonna be snarky they're gonna try to bait him because if they can get him to like get pissed off and have some angry outburst he's done and i think he that they left him he left a lot of potential avenues for attack oh, on the table God. there and is so it'll really come down to how well he can deal with that when they start throwing things in his face and that's the concern i have like when i watch this guy i believe him i think that I do too. Um, I mean, I've I deal with I a lot them. of people who make up domestic violence stuff and people who are genuine about it. And the people who are bullshitting it tell different stories than the yeah. people who are genuine. This guy comes off as genuine to me. And I when I when I'm being negative here, it's not because I think he's, you know, a bad guy. It's because I'm worried that a good guy might be about to be hit by a train. Yeah. And sure. that's what's bothering me with this well, so I, yeah i would i would frame that commentary that we give a lot that way you know you hear us reacting to these things for the most part I, at least my perspective is i want to see the best version of the direct mm -hmm. i want to see the best version of the cross i want to see you know the truth come out of this process so I, when i say these are these are potentially trouble spots i if you weren't here in the opening i said i thought johnny depp could handle cross x fine i still mm -hmm. mostly think that 
But that that little tiny outburst says, well, there might be a crack. There might be a fissure that you could mm-hmm. potentially get through. And, you know, they will they will be keyed on that. Um, you know, the only other thing, and then I will stop talking because chat's already angry at me, period, uh, is, uh, you know, I, I, the rambling nature of this, I did want to comment on a little bit because we forget what the questions are, but they do create kind of weird situations because one of the questions was, you know, could you describe what you mean when you say violence? Okay. Well, you get, you, you don't have to listen to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rick, we love you. We, we, we love hearing your oh, stuff I'm not, because it's like, I'm not upset about it. I know, I know you're not, but I, <laughs> also, I, I just want to say, I love having all of these different perspectives. It is so helpful for the stream and we get such a great commentary um, on this and such great conversation. Before, so. before, before he starts, I do want to say, we've been hammering Amber for the past week about mm. courtroom etiquette and how she looks. <laughs> She's killing it today. I'm she talking about every, her. I'm talking about, I'm looking at her. She looks like the battered, sorry woman who, you know, I'm talking about, she's almost she, no eye makeup. Chops, yeah. Her acting. I think she's got really, something on her skin, but no eye makeup. She's, she's, she's playing the role today. She's being a better actress. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like I, I, she's only playing a better role today. Wino, if moment. the role is the heroic victim narrative that she's consistently uh, presented throughout. She does exactly. not present like somebody who has been terrified and victimized by this. Yes, thank you. that's true. And yeah. I don't think she can yeah. at this point based on how she's right, appeared so question. far. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Depp, who's Dr. Kipper? Uh, Dr. Kipper is a... Um, Fish? Uh, he's, he's been my doctor uh, since ever since I'd uh, met him and I believe it was that May of 2014 around around there in uh, in Boston. And why were you connected with Dr. Kipper? Um, my sister Christy. Uh, oh, smart! Thank you so much. Knew, of course, that I um, had had been um, uh, addicted to the to the uh, the opiates, and uh, she was concerned. And she brought me his book and uh, talked to me heart to heart and asked me if I would be willing to um, go through the, the detox. And what was your answer? Yes, of course. And you mentioned um, Debbie Lloyd. Can you please explain to the jury who she is? So okay. Amber bought him? Uh, De- Debbie. Amber? Debbie Lloyd is a, a, is a, n- a nurse um, who my doctor, Dr. Kipper, had assigned to, uh, to my case to, to be the, uh, um, to, to oversee um, the detox and uh, uh, deliver the, the meds, the medications to me that would help with my... Uh, with the the uh, the effects of withdrawal that that uh, that one goes through, the uh, to to essentially try and knock you out so that you don't go through um, the the nastiness of the uh, affair. Did Miss uh, Did Miss Lloyd stay on after the detox process as your nurse? Yes, she did. And when you were under Dr. Kipper's care, how often did you see Miss Lloyd? Um, on location every day. Um, yes, on location every day. Um, even when a- after um, a year or two, I would, I would, I was still seeing her at least on a bi-weekly basis for two to three times a week. When did you start the detox process that you mentioned? I know, I know that it's, it, I believe it was around, it was in August, July or August 
of uh, 2015, 14, I cannot remember the year, 14, I guess. And where, were, where did you do this detox process? Um, uh, we, we, we did the, we, we, we were, the detox process, uh, um, happened on, I have a, a place in the Bahamas, um, as one does, I'm never comfortable saying this, but it, it's an island, <laughs> very strange thing to say. I have a place in the Bahamas, an entire island. <laughs> Just a humble brag. A humble brag, baby. And place I mean, where I would too no, if I could. Um, worries of I mean, we've all got one um, just one paparazzi or any of that so it was it was a place where i could literally be the only place where i can have actual uh, anonymity so i thought that would be the best place to to do it who came with you down to the island for the detox um debbie Nurse Debbie Lloyd uh, traveled with me on a, on a plane. Um, uh, Ms. Hurd. And I, I believe I believe that was I believe that was it. Um, the plan to, to go to the island for the detox. I was not bringing um, security. I was not bringing assistance um in, in in fact initially my sister christy uh, was was going to uh, go there um to help miss lloyd and the doctor through the detox which made perfect sense since that the, the whole thing had um been born out of her uh desire for me to get clean. Um, so initially it was supposed to be Christy coming um, in place of Ms. Hurd. I, there was a, there was a great part of me that was uh, very uncomfortable with Ms. Hurd coming along for that um, detox uh, because as as things could fluctuate very rapidly in our relationship um, I, I was I was wary that that those things would come up during what needed to be a very straight um, detoxification of, of, of these substances. And I was well aware that it was not going to be pleasant. I, I was well aware that, that I was going to go through quite a bit of uh, uh, physical changes, physical um, Yes, I, 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 I was I was afraid that it would be too much for her. And I also felt that she might be too much for me at the time. So then why did Miss Hurd come down to the island with you during the detox process? Um, she insisted. And she switched places with uh, Christy. Could you please describe for the jury, Mr. Depp, what it feels like to go through a detox from, from opioids? Ooh, that's not fun. Um, I would say the best, way, the best way to describe it is it's, it, it feels like you're, you're, it feels like the inside of you, the very inside of you is trying to escape the body so it's um it becomes 
obviously very physical. It's going to be very and poetic. So therefore, that, I think. you'll go into a withdrawal would would mean that you're you would go into um, you'd have immense cramps in your stomach. Your muscles would seize. You, my body would shake. Um, the pain is uh, like nothing I've ever experienced before. Um, part of it was so the, the best way to explain it. For example, there was a situation that uh, when we were on the island and I was going through the detox uh, and it was hitting pretty hard at that point. Um, and Ms. Hurd had made a deal with um, nurse Debbie and Dr. Kipper to, to stay at their end of the island and that she would administer the drugs to me, it, it administer the medications that, 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 that I needed to not go into um, the, for lack of a better word, the, 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 these intense, uh, sharp, painful heebie-jeebies. Uh, um, and there was a moment when I could feel my body starting to tense and I could feel the withdrawals coming on and they come on quick. And uh, they're not... Uh, they're not discreet. Um, they go straight for the jugular. I mean, the, 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 like I said, when when your receptors are in full bloom and begging for the the the, the substance, the drug, the, the the opiates that they that the, my body had become used to. The, the, these um, receptors that were being fed by, um, there was a moment when uh, it was it, it was coming on very fast, and I and I I, I I was sitting on a couch in in the little house that we all saw on the island. Miss Heard was at the uh, she was in the sort of kitchen area, and she was chopping vegetables I remember and I, I, I can't I think it was around 2 30 in the afternoon and the effects of the withdrawals were really coming on and I said to um, I said to Miss Hurd uh, I'm gonna need the meds now and she said uh, she looked at the clock and she said it's not time and I said no 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 you don't you don't understand. This is this is not about clocks and watches and things. I'm going, I'm going into uh, the ship, and it was visible. And uh, I hate, I hate to have, I hate saying this, and I hate to have to admit this. But that was, uh, I believe that was about the lowest point in my life. That was the lowest I'd ever felt as a, as a human being. Because I had to say, please, please, may I have the meds? because it, it, it's really kicking in and she was adamant. No, it's not time. It's not time. So in, in explaining how these, these uh, withdrawals start to take over your body, when I was begging at that point for the meds, I found that I had sort of rolled off the couch and I was sitting on the floor crying. I mean, 
tears streaming down my face, begging another human being to please, please give me the meds that will take this away. And she would not. She was adamant that, nope, it's not time, four o'clock. So the only thing that one can do in that situation is you have to trick the body. You have to, you have to manipulate your body out away from those, well, you have to trick the body to get away from the receptors. So the only thing that one can do is you go straight to uh, the shower and um, you put it on scalding mm -hmm. water and you stand underneath the scalding shower now, was he begging for opiates or something else? You're here? burning. I think the medicine to detox. Yeah, the top, you know, your skin is. Yeah, I'm just wondering if they've got him on a scale the down system or if it was some other medication. Or, uh, there's various the things nerves, they use. For that. The nerves. Because if it's away opiates, from then the she's in the right holding had, him on the schedule. Now they had an immediate problem that needed to be dealt with. It was um, the, the phenobarbs so and the, does, uh, the scalding um, shower sedatives. Would we would, would reverse right those holding the schedule there nerve endings and they would go up to Which the is terrible top of the skin uh because that's probably why he called her nurse sharp, right yeah. so that's that's how you that's how i was able to bypass um those those withdrawal symptoms at times it, it doesn't fully take them away but but what it does is it tricks your body into into thinking that there's something going horribly wrong on top so it keeps them away from the receptors um and um after that i had a conversation with nurse debbie and with dr kipper and i said uh <clears throat> i don't believe i told them that she had uh denied me the meds when I was in need. And uh, then I told him that I don't think that this is going to work here anymore. I think we have to leave the island and I need to be, we, we, she can't be with me while I'm going through the rest of this detoxification. So I told, I told them we should leave the island. Um, I told, I asked them if uh, they under if they understood what I was doing, and they did. So we went back to Los Angeles, and then I asked Miss Hurd if she would please uh, allow me five days, seven days, whatever it took to get and out of to get nurse. done with finished with the rest of this 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 horrific detox and the pain did miss her give you that time she did reluctantly yes i was uh, i was immediately accused of throwing her out i was accused of um abandoning her um i was accused of not appreciating all that she had done to get me to this point where I was, which was kind of an interesting argument for me. Uh, I begged her, please, can I, can I get a place at the Beverly Hills Hotel? I'll get you and your friends a bungalow at the Beverly Hills Hotel where you can all stay together and have a grand old flag. You can have fun, you can do whatever you want, and you don't have to sit around Mr. Uh, Shaky. And uh, she wasn't happy about it, but uh, I, it was very necessary. So I, she did eventually um, leave for about five, five days or so. And I sat in a, uh, after a few days, I sat in a, 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 just a metal chair with one song on the, uh, one song on a loop 
that I could focus on the lyrics and the, the, the power of the song um, to help me get through it. And uh, even, even once this, the, in, the, de, the, the, the uh, effects, you, you know, started to go away, that is the pain, I was still in this, something strange that happens. You feel, you feel electricity in your body. You, you feel this electric, um, very foreign. Um, and you're just sitting, sitting there like going through it. And I didn't understand what the electricity was um, until probably, and this lasted for the electricity, that, that, that feeling lasted for a month, two months. And I finally realized at a certain point what that electricity was. And um, I was feeling, is that's what it was. I was actually feeling um, without the aid of the drug without the aid of any drugs. Uh, I mean, I had, I had refused with Dr. Kipper and Nurse Debbie and Amber at the table before she left uh, for the hotel with her friends. I, I had re refused to continue taking um, the phenobarbital and the lithium. Uh, Look how unmoved she is by this. Because to me, it was just another drug in the She's way. She's had the same RBF the whole time. It, it seemed like it was just another hurdle to get over. And I would rather just get it out of my system now and, and move forward. Maybe I wouldn't have had the electricity. Maybe I wouldn't have felt as quickly, but... Um, I didn't, I didn't want to take phenobarbital and lithium and Seroquel and Neurontin and all these other things. Uh, and the worst of the two, I believed, were, were the, were the uh, phenobarbital and the lithium. So I, I went through uh, that. I've never seen a parent or a spouse who's watched somebody go through that false? kind of withdrawal who could here? sit there like that. Because the emotions just for somebody watching it would be really high. For some yeah, reason, think. there's something going on with this feed. He is paused here. Uh, Amber stared at him and froze him. <laughs> no, what's going on? Hello. She got her Medusa on. Little Rebex here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, shoot, 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 shoot. Let's see if maybe I can refresh it. Maybe Long maybe. Crime went after Sky News. Give me a second, guys. <laughs> I Sorry. Believe it. I could see them doing that. Yeah, right. Go after Rupert uh, Murdoch's legacy. Oh, it's still frozen. Oh, shoot. I'm so sorry, guys. God. Well, uh, what else is going on? Okay, well, this is going to be nothing. Nothing else is going on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Give me a second here. Oh, God, I know I could. And Uncivil, that's a great shirt. Uh, which reband facility did you just get out of? <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like the orange that they use for like prison, prison jumpsuits here. <laughs> It, it looks uh, like we have that same orange here, too, for Uncle. It's more like a salmon color, but okay. Oh. Court TV oh, is saying we'll be right back. Your lighting so... is... Yeah, they just had a technical issue, maybe. I picked, I picked uh, contrast lighting. I have a maybe feeling, yeah. Teal, put teal with the orange. Kind of thing. Yeah. I, I thought so, about it. Intern tripped over the cables. Yeah, long crime is also frozen. So I think everybody is. Good. I'm glad they're suffering, too. Yeah. <laughs> maybe they struck themselves. Yeah, yeah. their chat is before, their is chat hilarious. is saying that they're frozen. So oh, that would so make my day. <sighs> okay. So... Okay. Yeah, it's down. Yep. 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 Okay. Um, we will meet this. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna keep keep watching until 
get something up. Um, but what do you guys think so far? <clears throat> I find it really interesting that she's sitting there on a, like having no reaction to that because it might yeah. be she just really dislikes him at this point. But like I've talked to parents who've had their kids um, like physically rob them at knife point and beat them over drug, you know, over drug addictions and still break down in tears thinking about their kids going through the withdrawal. You know, yeah. if you cared about somebody and you saw them suffer through that, um, I don't think the emotionless thing is doing a good job for her here. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm really questioning the medical personnel here. Like why it sounds like a terrible idea to have her be anywhere near this detox process. If he's going to be going through this and then having yeah. to, having to like then have her administer them. Like none of that sounds like a good idea. Why none of that at all. Over his hey Alita. <laughs> yeah. Um, the big nosed guy is apparently using CBS and he's the feed still going. Is it working? Oh, it looks like it. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> I just thought yes. I'd throw that out there. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. Okay. As much as I want to hear myself talk. I know. I know, right? <laughs> okay. CBS. Ah, you're right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. 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 Uh, whoops, not that one. There we go. Okay, okay. All right. The, the, the Sorry, guys. Here we go. Wedding that, uh, that goes down on paper. On Reddit? It was Reddit. February 3rd at my mom's <laughs> oh, um, at Betty Sue's house. And then uh, we all immediately left for the, the for the island for the the um, well, the dream wedding, I guess. Who's what, whose idea was it to get married at that time? Amber's. Well, well I, I had proposed to Ms. Hurd uh, a couple of few, a couple of years before, I believe. And um, so we talked occasionally about when would be the right time in terms of between schedules and how could we make this so that we could actually have a, a, a wedding and a honeymoon and, and then go on to do the work. Um, at, at first, my sister Christy was, was uh, handling all the, um, all the, all, all of the details and, and, and things uh, Where do you go on honeymoon when you got a private uh, island? That, 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 for example, for, that Miss Heard wanted um, for the wedding and what she and Raquel had decided that they were going to design or what the wedding was going to be like. Um, at a certain point, Miss Heard um, was getting very, very. Uh, um, she 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 started to get very upset with Christy, my sister, um, and accused me and Christy of uh, trying to slow the process. Um, Were you trying to slow the process? I, I, no, I. I no, I, I wasn't trying to slow the process, but what I couldn't understand was when Miss Heard suddenly, Miss Heard and her friend Raquel Pennington had decided to take all that away from my sister, and then they uh, they jumped in and Objection, made sure that Your Honor. testimony about what Miss Pennington had decided is hearsay. We can move on. All right. More speculation is more like it. Good one. Not offered for the you to the uh, celebration mm -hmm. on the Fair. island. Fair point. Um, who was invited to that celebration? 
close friends, family, obviously, my father, my dad came. Um, my son was there. Um, he was my best man. Um, my daughter, uh, Lily Rose, did not come to the wedding. Uh, hmm. She and Miss Heard were not um, on particularly great terms. Red flag. Uh, for several reasons. Um, there were a number of a number of Miss Heard's friends and her family. Um, so I, I'd say all in all, maybe there were, it seems like there could have been no more than 20 people, 25 people, maybe. Was there any alcohol served at the wedding? Yes, I'm sure. there was alcohol served at the wedding. It was champagne. A wedding, a wedding, so drinks all around. Accoutrements, and then- um, Cards of the Caribbean. <laughs> yes. And Open bar, or I'm not interested. Drugs at the wedding. Yes. And who was who was doing that? Well, there was a there was a schedule that was uh, written out and printed out and sent out um, so that everyone would know exactly the time that everything would happen. Um, and on that on that sheet um the schedule it, it would it there was um uh, like some kind of rehearsal type thing there was also um um there was a there was a great dilemma in who was going to be who that's where the um, argument between uh, Ms. Pennington and uh, Io Tillett Wright. Uh, Mr. Depp, who, who did you observe taking drugs at the wedding? Um, a number of people uh, were taking um, MDMA. As I said, the, the, the list, there was a, after the wedding, there was a, a, a it was like dinner, dancing, and drugs. <laughs> um, on the on on the schedule uh, it was literally on the schedule that, that's hilarious uh, it was came yeah miss heard and miss pennington um so amber um raquel um a couple of friends of mine um, Savannah, her assistant, um, till it right, uh, all of her, all of her, uh, all of her gang were all, um, Partaking in the of the MDMA. What if any MDMA did? And what if any drugs did you take that day? Again, to, to be honest with you, um, I was I was I mean, I don't know how much MDMA they had, but uh, for me, that was. Um, For me to have taken MDMA would have been a waste of the drug. If you if you understand what I mean, it would have been essentially taking someone else's high, because I it wouldn't if it wouldn't have an effect on me. So it how many how much how many drugs did you actually take that day? The day of our wedding. Yes. Um, I smoked marijuana. And um, Satan. I don't remember drinking. I don't. I don't remember if I, uh, that I was drinking then. This was right. 
this was right before she was going to London to do, I believe, London Fields. And I was going off to uh, Australia to do Pirates 5. Um, I'm pretty positive at that point I wasn't... Uh, uh, partaking of alcohol. Um, my drug of choice is, uh, or was, and it is marijuana. Uh, um, it's, that's all I, that was fine for me. Um, so so dipping into a, a, a little tiny baggie of, you know, licking your finger and dipping into a little tiny communal bag of MDMA. It, it wasn't gonna, it was pointless for me. When you and Miss Heard got married, did you have a prenuptial agreement in place? No, we did not, no. And why not? Um, they're always, seemed to be some reason or another why she wouldn't, either wouldn't discuss it, or if we did discuss it, it became an issue that would turn into a, um, it would springboard into unpleasantness and then arguments. Um, and, and then it was also too late at a certain point, it was just too late. So then the idea of a post-nup agreement was brought up to Miss Heard, and that was in Australia. That was that was the beginning of uh, the Australian well, let's, let's fight. Talk, let's talk about Australia then. Um, but first of all, why were you in Australia? I was I was working on Pirates of the Caribbean five. And who from your team was with you in Australia? J uh, Jerry Judge, Malcolm Connolly, uh, Nathan Holmes, Stephen Duders, Keenan Wyatt. I believe that was it. Oh, uh, and, and yeah, yeah, no, that's it. Well, we know Debbie was, was there. Miss Lloyd in Australia with you as well? Oh, yes, yes, sorry, yes. Miss Lloyd, yes, Miss Lloyd traveled to Australia with us. And did Dr. Kipper come down to Australia at any point? Yeah, he, he, Dr. Kipper down, came down uh, a bit later. Um. Mr. Wyatt testified yesterday that he observed you have a meeting with Sean Bailey in, in Australia. Do you remember that? Yes. And could you please tell the jury who Sean Bailey is? Sean Bailey at that time was, I believe he was the, I believe he was the number three, uh, the number three man at Disney in terms of hierarchy. He was a uh, upper echelon Disney. So he was, under Bob Iger um, and initially under Dick Cook, who was removed from Disney um, for some reason. So yes, he, he's, uh, he was number three man at Disney. And why were you having a discussion with Mr. Bailey? Um, the discussions that I would, uh, was having with Mr. Bailey, with, with Sean Bailey were um, they had to do with, well, as, as I think we've established, you know, I have, uh, always from the beginning of those, the set series of films, I would, I, I had always rewritten, um, my, my character's words and jokes, if you will. Um, and situational comedy and things that I would add. And uh, Mr. Bailey was very complimentary about 
some of the things that I'd done, he'd, uh, you know, he, he'd come over to me laughing after Jack, a take. Calls for here, sir. Your Honor, this is just discussing generally what they were talking about. He, he was getting specific. I'll sustain that if you want. Continue. These defenses are terrible. Mr. Depp, was Miss Heard in Australia with you? She came a little later, yes. Do you recall when she came down? I don't recall. Oh, 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 well. No, I do recall. It was March. It was March. And what happened when Miss Heard came to visit you in Australia? Um. Ms. Heard was upset because, uh, 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 as I stated earlier, as it was too late for a prenup agreement, there there was a uh, discussion of postnup agreement. And I had called my lawyer at the time and asked him if, if he could have one of his, uh, one of his lawyers sit down with Ms. Heard and, and give her a, a basic rundown of what a postnuptial agreement uh, meant. And, and they sh I was told that they showed Objection. her. Objection, hearsay. Your Honor, this is what a, 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 something he asked an attorney. It's not a, a statement of fact that's being offered for its truth. Yeah, I'll sustain the objection. What did Ms. Hurd tell you she was upset about when she arrived in Australia? Ms. Hurd told me that the attorney that she met with was um, rude and dismissive and all she was being shown was a uh, an example of a, a postnuptial agreement. Ms. Heard then stated to me that she was very upset. She stated to me that um, that she, she what she had said was she said to the lawyer, the woman, that this. Um, Johnny can't, he, he must not, he, he doesn't know about this. He, he's never seen, he doesn't know that this is what this is. He, no way he would agree to this. Um, and what Ms. Heard then expressed to me was that the lawyer, the woman, had laughed at her and said, oh, he knows. Yes, he knows everything. Um, which sent her into a, a tailspin. So by the time she arrived in Australia, that was uh, sunk very deep into her her psyche. Um, I mean, so much so that what really what really surprised me was that she kept saying, "I'm not even in your will." I'm not even in your will. I thought that was an odd thing to say. Um, especially since I, I, I don't think anybody had had time to change wills or anything of that nature. Um, so th those things just didn't, it felt uh, wrong. And, and she could not let go of the fact that uh, I was in on this uh, post-nup agreement and that I was trying to trick her into uh, essentially getting nothing if, uh, if something were to happen. And how did you respond to Ms. Hurd? I, said, I just told her those were not my intentions, uh, it, you know. And at a, a certain point, you don't know what to do. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, 
the person is telling you, she's telling you, you don't trust me, you don't trust me, you don't trust me. And um, I, I can't speak about legal documents. I can't speak legalese. I can't explain to her these things. All I could do was try to calm her down and say that I was not out to screw her over or, or, or put her in a position that was uh, was uncomfortable. Did that these work? These were stock, normal things to do. It did not work, no. It escalated and escalated and to, turned into uh, madness, chaos, can you please violence. Can you please describe that chaos and violence? Yes, she, she, she was irate. She, she, she was irate and she was possessed. Uh, and when I tried to remove myself as I normally would from a situation, and that is to say, you know, as she's hammering me with, with uh, sort of brutal, brutal words and, and, uh, you know, you know, I, I don't, pardon my language, but I remember that uh, it wasn't nice sort of being called an ass kisser to lawyers or or a, or a, a pussy um, that didn't fight for her or stand up for her. Um, um, I, again, tried to remove myself from the situation, um, but to no avail, as I, I, I literally, the house that they had rented for me in Australia was quite a large place. It was quite a bit of a labyrinth, you know, and a lot of rooms, a lot of extra rooms. So I would go to, well, I'll, I'll just cut to the chase. I, I think that I ended up locking myself in about at, le at least nine bedrooms, bathrooms that day. Um, as she was banging on the doors and screaming obscenities and wanting to uh, have a physical altercation. So how did it come to be that your finger became injured? There was at one point where I'd, I'd stayed in one of the, you know, sitting on a bathroom floor, door locked, she's banging away, banging away, screaming, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly she stopped and I could hear her walk away. I could hear her sort of receding into the distance, if you will. And I, I, I you know, yes, I, so, 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 yes, it became very emotional because I, you can't win for losing. There was nothing I could do to to make her understand that I had, if that lawyer had in fact done that, and I did call my lawyer uh, at the time, Jake Bloom, and I had him get these people on the phone, and I, uh, I'm ashamed to say that I had taken. At that point, when, we were, when I was on the phone with him, I had taken Miss Hurd's words to heart, and um, and I laid out a ration of of um, very. Uh, uh, I was very upset that she was pushed to that limit because I had believed it, um, and. Uh, in fact, none of it had happened. So, uh, 
it was all getting too crazy. And again, I had been sober for many, many months from alcohol and substances, aside from the marijuana. Um, and I got, I left the place, the, the room that I was hiding in, or not hiding, locked myself into. And I went downstairs in the house. There was and downstairs in the house. As soon as you walk in the house, you can go upstairs or downstairs. And downstairs, there was a sort of a rec, rec area, pool table and such. And, uh, and there was a uh, bar. And uh, I was, uh, um, I was a mess. I was a wreck. I was shaking and I just didn't understand why all this was happening. So I went behind the bar. I grabbed a bottle of vodka that was there and a shot glass and sat at the bar. She was nowhere around. And I poured myself two or three stiff shots of, uh, of the vodka, first taste of alcohol I'd had in a long time. And um, then she came down to the bar and found me there. And of course started screaming, oh, you're drinking again, eh? the monster and all that. Um, so she reached, she, she, she walked up to me and reached and grabbed the the bottle of vodka and then just uh, kind of stood back and then hurled it at me and and it it uh, it just went <laughs> right past my head and smashed behind me uh, so I stood up and I walked behind the bar and there was a larger bottle of vodka, the kind with the handle, you know, on it. I grabbed that and I went and I sat in my seat again. I opened the bottle and I poured myself a shot, and drank it. Ms. Erd was flinging insults uh, left, right and center and she then grabbed that bottle and, uh, and threw that at me. Um, and the way that the, the way that the bar was situ situated and w w where Miss Herb was. So if, 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 if I could show you, so if, There, she went there, and so I was leaning like this in the chair, looking at her. First bottle went, then got the other bottle shot. Takes the second bottle, which was the larger one. I'm in this position again, and my my hand is on the edge of the the bar, like like that. And, leaning over the fingers like that. And uh, she threw the large bottle and it made contact and shattered uh, everywhere. And I honestly didn't, I didn't feel the pain at first at all. I felt no pain whatsoever. What I felt was, um, I felt heat. I felt heat and I felt um, as if something were dripping down my hand, you know. Um, and then I looked down and realized that the, the, the tip of my finger had been severed. And uh, I was 
looking directly at my bones sticking out. Ow. And uh, the, the, the meaty portion of your, the inside of your finger. The, um, and it was, it, blood was just uh, pouring out. And at that point, I, 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 I think that I went into some sort of, I, I don't know what a nervous breakdown feels like, but that's probably the closest that I've ever been. I didn't, nothing made sense. And I knew in my mind and in my heart, this is, this is not life. This is not life. No one should have to go through this. And, and as I said, this, this feeling of nervous, of being in, a, in the middle of some sort of nervous breakdown, I started to write with my blood, in my own blood, on the, on the walls. Um, little reminders from our past that essentially represented lies that she had told me and lies that I had caught her in. Um, and, uh, and, and then there's Look at her face. the next thing, Look at her uh, you know, face. I, she looks pretty horrified. Nothing makes her as sad as being called and, 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 out for her lies. Again, hide in uh, yeah, that's not a good bathroom or wherever. And I texted Dr. Kipper and I said, you might want to come over. Uh, Ooh, look you know, at that face. I've got my finger off here. Let the crocodile tears flow. Which finger was, was cut, Mr. Dabco? Um, it's the, the middle. It's the funny looking one. <laughs> it's the middle finger here. You can see the well, you can see all the sort of. Give that her the ketamine. finger, Johnny. <laughs> From the. <laughs> that ketamine or whatever she's on is really holding her up pretty well. All the she hasn't cried yet. Here were crushed, and it looked like a it looked like Vesuvius, you know. And um, I wish Spidey were here to see her so face. This, this. I want to get his take. <laughs> this part of my finger now is so that because of not having use of the tip here uh, this is um basically uh, arthritis that kicks into the joint once that once that uh, upper part of the finger is mangled so is that the right middle finger right middle yes and is that your dominant hand uh yes it is yes mr deb after miss heard through the vodka bottle at you and severed your finger. Um, what, if anything, did she say when she saw the injury? I don't recall anything, but just, uh, it was almost like white noise, or just someone yelling, or just a, it was just a high pitched, constant, um, attack of, of insults. Of, it was just jumbled words to me in, in a very high frequency. And I, 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 I was in a bit of shock, you know, I was in shock. <laughs> you mentioned that you reached out to Dr. Kipper. Did you receive medical attention after that? Yes. Um, uh, Jerry Judge Malcolm Connolly, I believe Debbie Lloyd was there. Yes, Debbie Lloyd was there. Um, ben King had arrived as well. Who is Ben King? Uh, ben King uh, was, he, he's, he's essentially, he's a house, so, so sort of a, an estate manager. And he, I, we worked together in London a, a few times and the, uh, uh, he's a wonderful guy, so I brought brought uh, Ben 
along to Australia to, to manage everything. He's very, he's very, very good and very nice. Um, and then there was also a, Oh, uh, yeah, I mentioned Malcolm and Jerry. Yeah, they were there as well. Which, if any, of the medical professionals that you saw that day, did you tell what happened to your finger? I... When Malcolm and... Um, Dr. Kip, when, when they took me to... First, first we went to Malcolm's... Apartment where he was staying while we were shooting the film, uh, and tried to clean uh, my hand because I had worked the day before, and obviously when you're playing a pirate Captain Jack or whatever, they you're you're covered. You're, they paint with on with alcohol, um, with rubbing alcohol. They paint dirt all into your hands and into your face and everything. So they were, they were worried about getting my finger clean. So they tried doing that at Malcolm's and then Chipper said, no, we got to get to emergency room and we got to get hold of the tip of his finger. So we went to the emergency room. Um, the doctor asked me what happened. <clears throat> and uh, I lied to him. Okay. I said that I had uh, smashed it in, um, in in these large accordion doors that it got caught in the. I want to hear why. Well, that's a different door. lie. Why uh, would you lie about that? Here we go. Because he's protecting her, like every victim of domestic violence. I ever. lied because I I did not. I didn't feel I, I didn't want to disclose that it was. what it was. I, I didn't want to disclose that it had been, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to disclose that it had been misheard, that it had thrown the, thrown a vodka bottle at my, at me and then took my finger off. I didn't want to get her in trouble. I didn't want to, I, I tried to uh, just keep things as copacetic and as as easy as possible for everyone i I did, I did not want to put her name in that in that mix did you tell dr kipper what had actually happened to your finger yes after you returned from the hospital where did you go i went to malcolm connelly's um apartment uh, and uh, slept on his couch. Didn't Dr. Kepper and testify he thought it was a knife? You know, where was Miss Heard during this time? He said that was what he told um, the ER doctor. Okay. He didn't say Ms. anything else about what he heard. Multiple stories, including uh, the, the bottle. Was, okay. Thank you. I, I wasn't there, but I, I had a, it was clear that she had to, uh, she needed to leave. And uh, I'd asked them to get her on a flight from Melbourne or Sydney or wherever back to Los Angeles. Why did you ask for that? I I didn't want to see her. I, I didn't I didn't want to see her. I didn't want to have any more arguments. I was uh, for all intents and purposes I was just done. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you a picture. If we could please pull up plaintiff's exhibit. The finger. 145. Show us the finger. Is this going to be the finger? We're going to look at the finger. I think so. So if you guys, this is going to be gruesome. Just Here we go, guys. Mind. It's the money shot. I'm glad they're going to the photos because he skipped the part where she put a cigarette out on his cheek, didn't, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, that happened in Australia? Yes. yes. Same oh. incident. Put yeah. off his finger, then put out a yeah. cigarette on his what cheek. What is this a picture of? That is. Um, 
That's me in the emergency room. It's probably not going to be blurred out, guys, just so uh, you know. I see. Uh, so if that's bad for you, just be I prepared. see a detail that I forgot. I've forgotten. Which is the... Put away your meatball subs. <laughs> they might not show it. Ms. Erd had pulled, taken my cigarette <laughs> from the ashtray and uh, stomped it out in my face here. Do you, you mark you, on the screen where you see that? Um, That's a map. Right <laughs> above that green dot. Do you know who took that this picture? I do not know. Uh, can we please publish this to the jury? Do you want to enter into evidence? Yes, please. The objection. Sorry. All right. One forty-five and evidence. Published. Published Come on, let us see it. Now the jury's seeing it. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> and so, Mr. Depp, now that the jury can see the photograph, can you again explain um, what that green dot is identifying? Um, just above the, well, just above the green, the green dot is, a a, a, a wound, uh, from, uh, Ms. Hurd taking my cigarette and, and, um, at, this is after the finger had gone away um and she stubbed it out in my in 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 my face in my, on, on my cheek so uh, that's the um, result of that if we could please take this um down and i'd like to show you mr depp um plaintiff's exhibit 144. this is the actual close-up of the finger so this is the first time I've heard the details of this story. This is horrible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I told you it's going to get worse for him. This is why you can understand now the outrage that has surrounded this case. Yep. Yeah. Um, people who have gone through experiences Oof. like this and why they find it so obscene that Amber Heard purports to be a representative of, of domestic violence victims. And the remains was this taken shortly after you were injured? I, I, I believe this was taken at the uh, at the emergency room. I'd imagine. Um, I'd move to this into evidence, but I'd like to also warn the jury and the people in the Sorry. audience. That We're I'm actually going to see it. Back. Yes, right. it's going to be. It's quite really graphic. gruesome. All right, one forty-four. Ooh, ooh, that's a nice cut. We can take oh my. This. Look at that face. Mr. Depp, how She's long looking cold now. Did he say how that LA? happened? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, the bottle smashed. The yeah. we'll, emergency room. We'll cover it on the next break. Um, the following day, uh, I, I was sent to a, they'd found a, a, a surgeon uh, in, uh, in Australia. Um, so that I could go, they wanted me to take have X rays taken and and uh, all that. Uh, so we went to that doctor, the finger surgeon, um, and uh, he asked me what happened to my finger, and I again lied. And I stuck to the story that uh, it was smashed in an accordion, a large accordion door. And he looked at me as if I were uh, lying. It's not a smash wound. And yeah. The next thing I heard was, sir, that is a wound of velocity. And... Um, of course, I was waiting for it. This is a communication in the context of medical treatment. I'll sustain the objection. Well, they heard it, though. Yeah. Um, so, so, Mr. Depp, th this was a surgeon you saw in Australia? Yes. 
Um, when did you return to Los Angeles after seeing that surgeon? I believe it was probably the next day um, where it might have been Kipper, someone who, who had hooked me up with a, a, a wonderful, sir, a great uh, expert in um, reconstruction of, uh, you know, hand, uh, hands, fingers, digits, whatever. Uh, so I went to see the surgeon and um, we prepped for surgery, uh, you know, pretty quickly. And what type of surgery did you have on your finger? Um, the, the majority of this was all uh, missing. Um, and essentially to some degree hollowed out, if you will, because the bone had shattered. And um, then there was the bone that was sticking out down there. Um, so he had to take, take, do a skin graft from, from this part of my hand um, and graft it um, onto my finger uh, to 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 uh, to give me a finger again. Anything else that was done to your finger to stabilize it? Um, I, I don't think it was initially that they put the pin in. I think the pin feels like the pin came later. I can't. I, I'm not sure, but. Um, you just, uh, I had to go after the surgery. Um, it was bandaged up and they, you know, they give you all kinds of things on what to do, what not to do, keep it elevated or this or that. And, uh, I just, uh, walked away with a very large, uh, middle finger <laughs> it was all wrapped up to like this and then you know uh, Medicaid they've they given me shots in there and such how long did you wear that bandage that you just described well the, ba the bandage was f from the time of the surgery all the way through the remainder of finishing parts of the Caribbean, which was, uh, I think I finished the injury took place in March, finished parts of the Caribbean five, I believe in August, beginning of August, end of July. So there was a bandage on it the whole time. What I had to do was, um, where b because of um there's a special effects um a trick that they had planned basically the whatever bandage i had on as long as they could they would put more uh, little green dots for example on the you got a rendered middle finger for half that movie splint and the finger and all that and the bandages so that in post-production they could use what's called uh, com computer generated imagery cgi to to erase the bandage uh and put a replace it with a normal finger i hope that guy won an academy award for that work that's how we finished wow. the film wow if we could please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 61 <clears throat> and if we could scroll to the second picture or third 
can keep going one more, please. Uh, another. Sorry, this is a series of pictures. And to spare everyone, I don't think I'll show you the, um, the immediate injury again. This was right one right here. Thank you. Um, Mr. Depp, do you recognize this picture? Yes, I do. And what's reflected in this picture? Uh, this was taken in the uh, surgeon's office. Um, where I'd go in, well, I had to go in every couple of few days to have it checked out um, for infections and such. Uh, and this, this, so the, the, the finger, finger and non-finger was uh, wrapped quite heavily and there was this medicated uh, kind of greasy medicated thing on, on top of the wound itself. Um, and this, I believe, seems like when the pin was in here uh, and the, the wrapping is, uh, the bandage is, uh, well, I had my choice, you know, and uh, I thought, well, may as well take the kitty bandages, you know, <laughs> dinosaurs and hearts and unicorns. That's his sense of humor. As again. I said, you know, at um, least, at least to uh, have some humor uh, to deflect the pain. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to move um, Plaintiff's Exhibit 61 into evidence. Do you want the whole exhibit or just this picture? Um, if we could publish uh, the whole exhibit. You want the whole picture, the whole the exhibit. The whole yeah. thing. Any objection to 61? No, Your Honor. All right, 61, but you just want to publish this part of 61. Yes. Okay, thank you. It does look like he's flipping them off. So how long after the your injury was this picture taken? After the initial injury? Yes. I'd say no, no, no more than, it would seem to me, no more than five days a week. And how long was, was this bandage on your hand for? Uh, well, I was wearing bandages all the way up until I finished the film and then Um, yeah, through, through, up through August for sure. And then beyond, I, I had to keep it, uh, I had to keep it covered. I had to keep it protected. Do you recall how long after the injury that the, excuse me, how long after the surgery, the pins were removed from your finger? I would say Maybe, I think it was about two or three days because I remember that there was maybe more, but I just remember that the pain seemed to be getting worse and worse as Debbie would rate it, you know, from a, is this an eight out of 10? Is this a three out of 10? That kind of thing. Um, at a certain point, it, 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 it became, uh, kind of a 12 out of 10 because it, it felt it felt hot very 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 hot and it felt uh, there was there it was there was throbbing it was like a th it was throbbing and the pin in there uh, it was like I could feel the pin in there so I, I, I we called the surgeon I called the surgeon told him, actually, I think it might have been Debbie Lloyd, actually, called that, but uh, I knew I had to see the surgeon again because something felt very wrong. And I went there and he removed all the bandages and he found that, um, that my finger was indeed infected uh, and that I had uh, contracted uh, MRSA, uh, MRSA, um, which is like a, I believe it's like the flesh-eating disease or something. It, it, it was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty grotesque sight. Um, after what the 
with the pin in and what they had to do to save it. Mr. Depp, um, while your finger was injured and healing, did you ever take any opiates during that time? No, ma'am. No, no, no. No more. Um, Your Honor, I was, I'm about to switch gears, so if right. it makes we sense to take that. our lunch break. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our, our lunch break. <clears throat> One hour. Come back at 2 o'clock. Just make sure you do not discuss the case and do not do any outside research. We'll see you at 2. <laughs> Well, at least now we're getting to some actual objective evidence in terms of photos and stuff like that. So, yes. Yeah. Uh, wow. We, yep. We this is stuff full to talk flavor. About. Yep. And again, sir, since you're still testifying, you cannot discuss your testimony with your attorneys or with anybody else. Okay. All right. See everybody at two. It was my first time seeing those photographs. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And this is why I love having people that are fresh to this case on here because you guys, we can get your fresh reactions to it <laughs> and how this impacts your view of the case. Mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, it's pretty, pretty horrific. I'm pretty sure my facial reactions were pretty good during that section. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. Uh, yeah. Wow. Hey, Alina, so? is my voice better now? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be blowing everybody out. Just in yeah, general you seem, or volume? You seem normal. Okay. <laughs> yeah, every, yeah, everything sounds good on all on all fronts. <laughs> all right. I, I, I suppose my reaction was less extreme than Richard's or some of your guys. And I'm not sure what it says about me or my personality uh, on this level. But I, I, obviously, there's a serious gash in his finger. Um, mm -hmm. And then, the, the, but I don't know. It just seemed like the kind of the kind of wound that could happen. I could oh, let me put it this way. I could imagine a similar wound occurring through purely accidental means or purely like, you know, nonviolent means. It didn't strike me as particularly egregious kind of wound that, you know, you that you you know, I've I've done stupid things before and, you know, cut myself or harmed myself accidentally. Um, so it, it struck me as evidence of something, but perhaps not as like damning as I thought Richard's reaction was. So for whatever value that has, I offer it. <laughs> Why am I the centerpiece? I'm not testifying. Hey, uh, yeah. well, look, I, I, I will say this. If it's exactly as Johnny Depp just depicted, and I don't know what Amber Heard's defense is. I don't know if they're adopting the vodka bottles. I don't know if it's something completely different. If it's exactly as Johnny Depp just, pro just projected it, I, that is the most compelling piece of testimony I have heard in seven days about what the situation was between their relationship, especially, especially I, that the, the add-on of a cigarette being put off in his face. Hey, yo, that part. Are you agree. kidding me? That, that part I'll agree to for sure. <laughs> because yeah, that, that's that, not that, accidental. That, that, to agree to. Yes. that is, that is her coming that is back, not the kind of coming back and being like, you know what, <laughs> this too. Yeah. Well, in terms of accidents, you take on the risk when you throw glass vodka bottles. I mean, if that no, were happened, you took that that's on. Recklessness. Yeah. <laughs> No, that, was, that was such a critical piece of information. And I, I have to give kudos to the lawyer for not letting that slide, knowing which photo she really needed to get up in front of his face to remind him to get that detail in, because that just goes to the heart of who this woman is. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I, I think that this was a, 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 a very, very damaging testimony so far um for amber heard um and i think uh it's well the goddamn audacity right yeah. like if that's what happened to go to the washington post in that framework i don't care if it's defamatory so you're gonna hear me a little passionate here uh -huh. the damn audacity of going out in that position is freaking crazy i yes and yes. that's why and i said i said that the jury is, is gonna have yeah. Don't think you'll the get caught. The jury is going to have their their emotion, their their sense of justice, their sense of self. Oh gosh, hang on. Oh, is Sorry. The, is that the lunch ring? <laughs> yeah, it's the. <laughs> I think. Hang on. Okay. Cool. We're good. <laughs> um, because this is also going to impact their emotional sense of justice, of fairness, of self defense, of all of these things that that you know. We, we kind of think of in, in very legal terms, but people also have certain concepts of them outside of the law as well. And there's, there's a reason why we have those in law and that's because there's, there's some parallel outside of law. 
But, you know, this is one of those things that like, you know, the jury may find this kind of testimony and say, how can we not find in his favor here in some mm -hmm. way? How can we not do something to remedy this, this situation and what has happened in their past? Well, because it's a completely inaccurate depiction of the situation in terms of the framework of the stop at the top of that article. I, you know, lawyer in me says that's still not necessarily defamation, Rick. But I, if that's. I, if I, the jury you know, thinks I'm, she's I'm, a liar, I'm, I'm, I, they're going to say good enough. I'm very I'm very rarely mm -hmm. at a shortage of words. But, I, you know, to me, there's two things that happened there. It's the second damn vodka bottle. So I didn't know there was a second vodka bottle. I, you know, we had heard some potential references. It, it, it's the second that adds the intent and the recklessness. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the cigarette burn. I, I mean, if those are accurate. No, the, cigarette he, burn, I... the cigarette burn, I'll give you all day long. Cause that is not normal. That is not an accident. That is a very deliberate act to, to, <laughs> to put a cigarette out in someone's face. That's a deliberate act. That's not the kind of thing that's accidental. That's not the kind of thing that's a misunderstanding. That's very deliberate. So I'll give you the cigarette burn all day long. Yes. Yeah. Well, so and then, you guys, oh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to give any spoilers here um, to any major <laughs> degree about what you can expect um, Amber Heard's account of this uh, of this incident to be. Um, but you can. Uh, well, uh, let me ask you, I guess, um, what what sort of uh, explanation would you want or expect to hear from he her? He did it to himself. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, I mean, tri he tripped himself. and fell smoking. We've heard it. Her cross ex <laughs> suggests that they're leaning on he did it to himself. They really emphasize that the text message to Dr. Kipper is, I cut my finger off or, 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 or something along those lines. They emphasize that that was him admitting to doing it to himself. Um, and it has yeah. come out in, in prior testimony that there was also this explanation that it happened with, it, with him slamming his cell phone. So it's like he, he was being aggressive and in that aggressiveness, he ended up self-owning, okay, you know, so like he, <laughs> yeah, like, like devil's advocate. So he says he's stone cold sober, except for marijuana, which we can put aside for a second, right? At this point in time. But he also admits to using the blood from his finger to write the lies that Amber had told him on the wall in his blood. And yes, talk like about that's his testimony. So devil's advocate, like I said, I thought this was enormously effective. But devil's advocate, presumably Amber's team is going to say, I'm sorry, are you not high as a kite when you start writing edicts in blood on the wall? I mean, is that you're really going with sober on this? Well, he also and, said and that he had he was the closest to a nervous breakdown. You have you have jumped on that because they they alluded to this in their opening statement when they talked about, oh, if you're in a blackout, how do you even know what you did? Right. There's yeah. going to be a, a, a massive um, story from Amber Heard that you're going to hear surrounding this entire incident. I'm not going to get into the big details yeah. of it. Um, but that that is a big part of of their line is that Johnny Depp, Depp is in this alcoholic you know uh, stupor and and does this crazy incomprehensible stuff. What I am going to wait to hear from the psychological experts about is trauma related dissociation. He could not have painted a better picture of that experience um, if, if he had a script. Um, this is something that is, again, very common. You will see anytime somebody is talking about post-traumatic stress disorder um, and, and some of the signs and symptoms that you look for in order to be able to diagnose that. The dissociation from the trauma is, is a key one and a, and a critical one, very common. Um, and you identify that by peculiar behavior, freezing up, distancing, um, all, all of these different types of defenses um, that, that the mind puts in place. So I do think that, yes, as we're sitting here right now, that that sounds a little odd and um, maybe like there's some openings there, but I do anticipate that they are going to be able to explain that in the context of him as a survivor of trauma. And I'd like to hear that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I would, I would be, I would welcome that kind of testimony because I, I could only sit here and say that's a, as I'm listening to it, but that sounds freaking crazy. That's man. crazy. It does. It does. But it does. I've, you know, I've heard clients lose their, you know, the police roll up and one of my clients has lost their mind and, you know, they're taking a piece of glass and trying to autograph their own face with it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, when you finally snap, I understand the idea of, you know, Writing on the walls. I mean, that makes total sense. I, Andrea, am I wrong? But is it Amber's testimony and their story really going to be? Oh, Johnny just hit the door a bunch of times. He ran into the doorknob a couple of times. 
as well, a defense. We don't, we don't know exactly what it is because mm-hmm. as with everything with Amber, there have been a few mm-hmm. different versions. And so okay. we know exactly what version we're going to get in this particular trial. <laughs> um, that, but, that's uh, just what it sounds like to me. Alita it's going to be like, to, um, <laughs> you know, she, she has um, previously testified that there was a telephone, a, a wall telephone, a wall mounted telephone in this area that he in his rage grabbed and began to smash and um, broke it into bits, and in the course of that, somehow his finger got damaged. She has also testified that she wasn't around when his finger got damaged, so she didn't even know until the next day that it got damaged. Uh, Amber Heard has cast all of this as occurring over what she has characterized as a three-day hostage situation, where um, she was, yeah. you know, once again, allegedly brutally beaten and dominated uh, in, in various ways by, by Johnny Depp. Uh, and yet, you know, as we've already yeah. heard from Kipper and Lloyd and, and the other folks there, no evidence of, of this injury whatsoever. Uh, and, and there's not, you know, there's just there yeah. are many, many problems with, with this particular um, story that she's told. Yeah. So, yeah, they are definitely going to try to pin it, I, I expect, on the he did it himself, you know, not, not and nothing to do with me. I, I wasn't even there. Um, so that that's that's what we can look yeah. forward Isn't to. Isn't this the one where Am- isn't this the one where Amber claims she got all cut up and slashed at? Yes, walking nobody through knows. broken glass, cuts all over her arms, mm-hmm. cuts all over her feet, bruises all over her body, slammed mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. the into the um, pool table. Um, except, uh, I, I think she said like so hard that it broke, you know, which uh, is yeah. just is one of those things. The 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 appeal to exaggerate mm-hmm. is just so over the top yeah. with her. Um, that that she describes these things that just completely strain mm-hmm. fragility. Like, you, you know, these are four inch, you know, like inch thick pieces of slate. You don't break that, you know, without a crane. Um, right. I mean, when it comes to different stories, though, we've already seen some of that from Johnny Depp by his own mm-hmm. testimony. When he went to the doctor initially, he said, oh, it was because of an accordion door. And no, it's not. Now it's something else. Or he's admitted to the fact that he can take on any role and play any part and adopt things that are not him. Or he's testified to other things where he he misled the nurse about yeah. how many opiates he was taking or whatever, right? So I don't th- I don't think Amber's the only one with multiple different stories problems. And, you're you know, not Johnny she, Depp is told inconsistent stories. But what you're gonna find is that Amber Heard will never acknowledge telling an inconsistent story. Johnny is being open Ooh. and being direct and acknowledging that yes, he did want to protect her, so he did lie. Yes, he did want to feed his addiction so he did lie amber oh, yeah. Heard will never admit that she lied that, yeah that's then she's gonna have a really you. tough time on cross when we ever get there because the cross yeah. just writes itself right it's like well didn't you tell this story this time or this story this time yes and it's like if she's coming sometime no. in the she's summer of 2022 but the another, explanations no. are plausible so i i'm not saying that you can't i'm not saying that you can't say oh these explanations for why he lied make sense he well, lied because she lied he, to he lied because he wanted to protect her he lied because he wasn't ready to admit the truth to himself or whatever. So it's not like you can't get past that. I just wanted to point out there were problems. And if Amber Heard isn't willing to do the same thing, I don't know where, she, where you go with that. Now, another thing that I want to talk about is her reaction while he was talking about the finger incident. Um, her face was the most expressive that we have ever seen. And I don't know what you guys were reading. I read shame on her face. I, I, to me, she looked like she was like trying, I don't know, either, either maybe trying to put on a face, maybe trying to hold it back. I'm not sure, but she was definitely struggling with her face. One way she or another. definitely wasn't angry. She was struggling. I, I, I think it, you, you, I think we're kind of bringing what we want to the party on that. You think I, so? I would say, I would say it was shame, but I could also read disgust at the lies this man is putting forth because we, mm. he knows this never happened. Um, right. And I'm not saying that that's accurate. I'm saying right. that I, 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 I was listening to you. You're, you're pointing out the face. I'm looking at the face. I'm like, I mean, okay. I, I, you, if, if you think she's a liar, yep. I think that backs that up. If you think she's not, I don't know that you get to a different place. Could be. Uh, okay. But fair. yeah, very expressive. Yeah, definitely very, fair. Very expressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but, but very, very interesting to, to see that, um, and um, I mean, we'll see. We'll see if 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 she shows more more emotion like that moving forward, um, or if she's going to try to try to go back to her her normal normal RBF. Uh, Alita, since you have the awesome notes, I, my I, I want some confirmation on this or or rejection of it. 
Did Dr. Kipper testify that he had to delay taking Johnny to the hospital because he wasn't sure he could be admitted for surgery in the condition he was in? That was what he said. He said okay. he was That's what I thought I remembered. About the 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 level of of, you know, the amount of drugs that he had taken or something and so he he was concerned that if he went into surgery all kinds of problems could happen because of his overall health condition. That's what I remembered. And his and his testimony right now is outside a pot, stone cold sober. Yes. Well, except for his prescription medication. Except I for think... his medications is what he yes. said. Yes. And he had, and he had drawing that distinction. And, yes. and we've seen that, that Kipper point. is maybe a little, a little pushy on the meds, you know, so mm -hmm. who knows what those. Could don't get be. me wrong. I don't trust Kipper very much. I'm just, <laughs> that's what he said, yes. right? No, you're right. Okay. Well, it's also not Especially... just the medications, but his mental state. If he's that, you know, you just had that big of a mental break. You were finger painting on the wall, you know, trying to sedate that person is probably not a safe idea. When Kipper wasn't as careful as Lloyd and during his testimony, he was adding color all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I don't, I just wanted to make sure I was at least remembering. We've got a lot of hours of testimony now. Um, and, and I thought he had said something along the lines of, I, we had to delay him because I wasn't sure he could be admitted under, in, the, in the condition he was in, in reference to a drug line of questioning. I really hope at this point that they're going to extend what they've just started with, like the, the finger thing and the finger cut and, the, and the, the thing on the cheek. I really hope at this point, this is where we're going to get into tapes of her admitting to things. This is where we're going to get into what we might call other objective evidence, because I think that yeah. this is one piece. And I think it's the powerfulness of it or not is debatable. Um, as I've at least made it debatable for You're just discounting you, my little experience. They'll, when you bring fine. in multiple different things and you just start stocking them, <laughs> yeah, right? No, this yeah. is like you want to emphasize, emphasize, confirm, confirm. It's like, if, if they play this right by the end of the day, right. And you stack multiple different things, they'll be like, Oh, you know, we'll feel, we'll, I feel really, really strong about Johnny Depp's case at that point. Yeah, if he if they can hit him with if they can hit Hurd's team with crap like that mm. for December and then May again, um, this is a hell of a day for Johnny. Could yeah. be. I'll be I'll be right back. I've got to take the doggo out for like two sure. minutes and then I'll be yeah. I'll be right back. So uh, continue talking amongst yourselves. <laughs> Guys, I, I got to bounce too. I got to. Oh, God. I gotta, oh, yes. oh, okay. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming. Nice um, meeting you, Andrea. Really nice Guys, meeting see you, Andrea. Guys. <laughs> Guys, make sure if you haven't already, follow her on Twitter. She has got to oh, be linked in the description idea, below actually. by I'm now. Do that right now. Because she has been tweeting a ton about this case and about her thoughts all throughout this whole process. She is a great, great resource to be following throughout this whole thing. Um, be sure to follow her there, and you can find her other places where she pops up around YouTube um, through there as well. Um, so on that note, I'm going to let let Indy out for just a minute, and then I'll I'll be right back in just just a few. It's doggo break time as well. Yes. See you, Alita. See ya. I, I also think part of the reason that Johnny Depp, in some sense, needs to continue confirming what he's already done is because of societal perceptions about women on men domestic violence and the fact that men's domestic violence is not treated as seriously. And the same exact evidence. I mean, just as a reality, let's just admit, let's just admit reality. This is a juror, jury of your peers. These are people. And people come into these with biases, for better or worse. And we can, you know, without without looking into it more, we can just assume stereotypes would be prevalent in the jury. Because, like, why wouldn't you make that mm -hmm. assumption? So I think that, you know, generally speaking in society, the idea that men are supposed to tolerate more, men are supposed to absorb more, that this isn't a big a, big a deal for a man as it would be for a woman, is part of the reason I was making the comments that I was. I just wanted to clarify that. Because I, I think that when you're looking at this in terms of the court case, in terms of what this jury is like, likely to conclude, what this court is likely to conclude, you have to consider baseline presumptions. So this evidence of you know this finger cut and this thing on the cheek is something, but given societal norms about how people perceive these things, is it as much a slam dunk as it would be the other way around? I mean, if this was a picture of Amber, Oh yeah, right, that'd be this. It. Would the reaction of the jury be the same, or would they be more outraged by a picture of the exact same picture, but it's Amber? Would they be more outraged or less outraged? My bet is they'd be more outraged if it was a picture of Amber. So I'm trying to fold that into the calculus as I'm trying to assess these things. Oh, you're not you're not wrong at all, Kurt. I mean, I've defended a female 
client and I know it's criminal, so it's not the same, but we won a domestic violence case and I, you know, really just hammered on. And for the jury, I ended up talking to them afterwards. They really had a hard time wrapping their head around that concept that, yeah, you know, there may be times where it could happen, but they've never heard of it happening. Or yeah. if they've heard of it happening, you know, okay, well, the guy's just got to suck it up. Um, I think, thankfully for Johnny, this is so extreme that, you know, stubbing out a cigarette and then splitting his finger open. I, I think, thankfully, those are severe enough injuries. People will, it's not going to be that big of a leap for them. Now, if he just had a bunch of bruises and just the scratches from before, yeah, I, I think I think that might be a harder sell. But the severe injuries like this, I think, you know, really get across to the jury. This wasn't just a, you know, Amber Heard acting like a spaz. Like she was being very dangerous. Yeah, I I I I I, I think I think this is again a start a start of an overall picture. If mm -hmm. this is where it ends, I don't think you're where you want to be as Johnny Depp. Fortunately, yes. based on what I know, this is not where it ends because <laughs> although I've never heard the tapes and I really haven't. Uh, because I haven't been following this, I didn't follow the UK case at all. So a lot of this is brand new to me, just like Richard. So it's new, as, it's new to me too. As we get more of this in the evidentiary record, then my assessment would would change, right? So it's like, well, if this is where it stops, I don't know that you're where, you're where you want to be, because I think the the willingness, the possibility of people willing to excuse this conduct by Amber, even if they wouldn't excuse it by Jan, Jan, Johnny Depp, is a real possibility. But they don't have so to, I, see, and, and that's why I think it's so important. It's a defamation case, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I, I agree that if you're suing over Amber Heard's domestic violence, yeah. then maybe you've got a problem with what exactly what you're saying in terms of perspective. Mm -hmm. But to me, this really, this is a thunderbolt this, this, this morning of the depiction in the Washington Post, what Amber Heard was going out with mm. and, and how reverse that might be e even if you get into a kind of you know mutual toxicity situation i going out as mm -hmm. the white knight for this kind of stuff if you did put a cigarette out in your husband's face if you did throw not one vodka bottle which thankfully didn't hurt him but the second vodka bottle and 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 as i said i agree with you that it's not done yet if they have stories like this or tapes or anything more objective hell if they have an admission against interest from amber somewhere mm -hmm. that'd be a big freaking deal um, and if yep. they do that for the big ones that the other team has highlighted, right, which is Australia, we got the December stuff, whatever that is this, this year, 2015. And then of course, everything that happens in May of 2016, uh, that, that would be an enormously useful. And I, I take it with the same kind of grain of salt that I do. As I said yesterday, there's no witness that will be more biased for Johnny Depp than Johnny Depp. OK, and that's why, as you say, the objective evidence is so important. That's why an admission would be so important. Uh, but I not knowing the details of this, only hearing Australia, 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 Australia for five days. Yeah. You know, seeing those photos, having that description, mm -hmm. if that is remotely accurate, that casts a entirely different light on the entirety of the relationship. Um, so I hear exactly what you're saying. And I think there would definitely be trouble potentially saying you know, this is a domestic violence situation. I think Amber Heard could get up there and say she didn't mean it if she admitted to vodka bottle stuff. I don't. I don't necessarily think the intent is to chop his finger off. You're 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 expressing yourself emotionally, but in a very dangerous way. Um, mm -hmm. And then you add the cigarette, and I, if that's true, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I, as as we've all commented <laughs> before, I'm not sure that this isn't a domestic violence case. In reality, I mean, as mm -hmm. a de facto domestic violence case. Yeah. So I, what what the jury's actually what the the question the jury's actually going to ask themselves when they go back in that room, who knows? But the odds, the question they're really asking themselves is, "Geez, was this exact statement defamatory?" I don't know, man. I'm not sure that's the question they're asking themselves. I don't think they. I, I don't think yeah. they necessarily will either. But I do think you look at that. You just go and read the Washington Post editorial, and you come to certain fact conclusions on everything you've been told. And and this is what you decide is that roughly Johnny Depp's depiction of let's just say yeah. this event is roughly accurate. You say, well, I mean, all of this in terms of stance, in terms of depiction, is BS. And, and mm -hmm. then you go from there as what box you're going to check on your verdict form. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a right way. They they also might just look at it, just oh my god, this Amber Heard lady is a complete psychopath, and I mean that's gonna 
that's going to push it, make it easier for the jury to say, you know, she probably is lying. You know, if we think she's the aggressor and that, you know, she's got a heck of incentive to lie. Also, a bunch of people have been commenting there were audio. Oh, yeah. Every, this made. Well, I wasn't aware of those. 600 so. pieces of evidence and there might yeah. be. Uh, but we don't know what will be entered. We yeah. don't know what happened. Oh, yeah, no, I, I don't know either. But it looks like apparently she did not admit to it. So Yeah, no, um, and I would be very interested in hearing that. And and even, I will, even, too. And even I, if I did know about it, I'd try as best as I could to ignore it because I, I try to assess cases based on what's presented in the record because that's, at least theoretically, that's the how it's supposed, supposed to, to go. They're not supposed yeah. to know anything outside the record. So if it's on the record, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So, so until I mean, it's presented it, in court, it's mm -hmm. a little improper to really consider it in some well, sense. Right, and that's, I'm not. I'm not doing extra research on this. I am oh, trying yeah. to keep. No. A, a it blank. just sounds like there, there's more to come. Yep. Yep. A lot of people have said there's a lot of tapes. There's a lot of those kinds of things. One other thing mm -hmm. that I thought was interesting, I thought this was at least strategically advisable. Hopefully, also true, uh, was the framework that Johnny said uh, Amber's insults were coming in. I, th I I paid specific note of a whole section where he talked about. The primacy of Amber's insults were essentially you're not a fighter enough, that you're not aggressive enough. You don't defend me. You don't, you don't do fight for me. You don't yeah. fight for me. And I'm like, well, this is a very interesting set of insults because, you know, you're 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 calling him less than a man or what have you. But in this framework, in this trial, he needs to be seen as an aggressor um, that is doing these bad things. And so his, if the primary insult is you're not you're on too many downers and you don't fight enough. Uh, I think that's enormously yeah, useful. That's really, that's uh, yes. It's kind of the direction. And there's actually, there's actually audio of that, of her saying, you don't fight for me. And he says, we can't have violence. And she says, you don't fight for me in response to that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, that is not good for her case. If, if anything, of, of course, that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. better for his. Yeah. That would suggest um, she's oh my a gosh. conflict oriented person. Ah. Yeah. Hey, Natalie, how's it going? Hey, hey Natalie. Natalie. You've just Hi, been Natalie. sitting here silently for like five minutes waiting for you to get back. I'm so sorry. Day. I okay. stepped away and then I came in. I know. Only I have the power to let you in. <laughs> That's okay. Um, um, I and, have um, not been watching much of anything about this, so I've been um, enjoying learning things from the gentleman on screen right now. So <laughs> wonderful. I'm 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 glad to have you on. Um, so I, I really would love to at some point get some of your take on. Um, on you know the 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 lawyering in this case i mean having having been someone who's been on a legal team that was on a case like this not the not this this area of law obviously but that has been you know in the media and the kinds of things that you have to consider that are maybe different than a normal case that is going to be in front of a jury um outside of of the media um, well, I mean, but you know yeah it's it's hard to describe it's something you know how is it different it's 100 percent different doing your job with people watching and then 100 percent different doing your job with like a million people watching there are nine thousand or some people alone watching your stream right now and that's just this stream i mean it's very very easy to question yourself um that is something we had a lot of problems with was i mean especially with rakita's stream being so big is you know we had, we're inundated with people who were trying to tell us what to do. And it's really <laughs> hard. I'm well, I mean, and God, no, that was one of the reasons that we found out about Rakita's stream to start with is because we started getting inundated with emails about how there's nine attorneys on a panel on the internet that are telling us what morons we are. And, oh, no. Whoa. Yeah. No, we oh, literally got that. most of those emails. A lot of those emails. Oh, no. And okay. part of it I was is, not on you know, at that point. You have to commit in a way because- yeah. You know, so much of it is the jury and we don't get to see the jury from this standpoint is, you know, yeah. if the jury yes. is feeding into something, you don't want them to stop. If they're not buying something, you know, from depending upon what side you are, you know, you have to go with your gut and the actual people in the room as opposed to everything else, because, you know, the, the difference is, you know, watching it from the outside you get the benefit of seeing the motion hearing, seeing all these other things, having the factual background. And you have to remember that the jurors, at least ideally, don't know anything about what's going on in the case. That's who they want to have there. 
So right. it's very hard, I think, for jurors to separate themselves from the media in a case like this in general, just because, I mean, when you turn on Twitter right now, you know, Johnny Depp's trending type of thing. It's very difficult for those people to, you know, separate themselves, I think, in a lot of ways, because there's so much risk of accidental exposure that as an attorney in that situation, you have to commit to the theory that you had to start with, because that is something that, you know, how much time and energy have they put into this case? Uh, the first rows themselves are full of, uh, you know, additional lawyers is, you know, you have a theory, you would don't adapt it based upon public opinion as much as you do juror opinion, because the public opinion has the added benefit of having so much additional outside context sure. that, right. you know, you have to commit to what is actually happening in happening in the courtroom. And speaking of things actually happening, happy birthday, Natalie. Thank you. What? Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. I'm 34 years old today, even though I have a that's lot of weight here. <laughs> well, you, you wear I know that your, feeling. <laughs> your, your rogue hair very well. Your, your, Thank your rogue you. It is my superpower. I <laughs> no, I mean, I haven't, unfortunately, haven't had a time to watch a lot of the trial. I mean, work itself, I have a full-time job and I'm actually closing on a house on Monday. So things are Amazing. kind of nuts around here because I'm in the middle of moving. But I've been trying to, you know, catch your recaps at least. And I did watch Isaac Barucha's testimony because he was just a delight. But amazing. So much. I, I would rewatch his testimony so many times if mm -hmm. I could. Um, I don't have time right now, but at some point, probably I will um, just to learn from it, you know, to learn mm -hmm. like how somebody can be so effective in a courtroom to really be that charismatic and to and to I mean, I, I say sell a story that sounds that sounds bad or jaded or something, but truly like that's what every witness is doing is they are selling some kind yeah. of a, of a story of a narrative. And he was such a great choice. I mean, I believe Barouche in general is a Hebrew word for blessed. Like this just kind of seems like somebody's Zadie that's telling that's a story. And you know, that comes across very legitimate and sincere and he had real emotions at the time. And you know, that's something that, you know, a lot of people I've seen, you know, different, bullshit news articles about Johnny Depp's testimony yesterday and stuff, you know, being cold or whatever these things are. And you have to remember, these are real people. And this is very difficult to deal with, um, you know, even if the whole world isn't watching. So, yeah. um, you know, for the most part, it, it is hard to tell at this point. Everything seems to be coming up Johnny, but that's because it's his case right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, oh, my gosh. Thank you so much to Phoenix for the super generous super chat. Um, they said with Australia incident, there, uh, was there not a problem with the dog permits with the government? So being not in their country, having a DV incident could have caused JD more trouble being in country. So maybe that is why he lied to doctors. That is also true. They haven't touched on that at all, that, that there was also a whole kerfuffle about bringing the dogs to Australia because when Amber came in, she had brought the dogs and what I have heard is that there, uh, she had kind of lopped the responsibility of those permits onto her personal assistant, um, who we heard from earlier in the week. Um, but I think like at the last second, like to the extent that like there, no one could have gotten it done in time. Um, and so there was this whole thing that they had to show up in court because they were smuggling dogs in technically into the country and, all this, this, this whole huge mess. So I, you know, that, that could have been, that could have been a factor in his decision not to tell people about, you know, the truth about what happened to his finger as well. I could, I could totally see that happening. Um, and by the way, I also have been completely neglecting these, these super chats today. I will be going through them for sure. So everybody that has sent a super chat, thank you so much. I will absolutely be getting to all of them before the end of this live stream. Um, That's two reds up, today, isn't it Alita? That's yeah. two red super chats today. I've never yeah. seen the color red in my life. So <laughs> thank you very much to the very generous chat folks here. Yeah. If you're liking this, I see 2.6 thousand likes. I see 9,000 viewers. So I'm a little disappointed <laughs> in you. So if you could please smash that like button. And I only say smash in respect of like buttons because I, I'm told it's very hip and that my drip is very strong. Uh, so <laughs> Please do that. Like this video. Subscribe to Alita. Aww. She's putting in 100 million hours of work here. I think I saw you cross 61,000 this morning, which is fantastic. Yeah. Getting close we know we to can 62? do better. We know yeah. we can do better, chat. Yeah. So like and subscribe to Alita. 
And my Thank God, you. red red super chats. Didn't know yeah. they existed. I'm just calling dibs on the next <laughs> national media circus trial. Okay, Kurt Kurt wants in on on the next ridiculous live stream. I'll join you over there. Uh, well, I mean, I'll join and, you too. as an added incentive, if those subscriber numbers go up, I mean, I might be able to convince Richards to make an appearance. No promises. That would be amazing. But I do see him every day. Could he so, say have it? Um, he yes. says have op. Yes. Yeah. Could, um, could, he, could he say that? Because that would be great. See, if look he at, did, he would. Stretch I mean, gold he... now, folks. Stretch goals. Okay. That's the thing. Is that's that's the know that I can get. Stretch goals. If there is a direct correlation between me saying that in numbers, I mean, I could probably convince that it's his idea to come on. So how big a number for Sharafasi to come on? Yeah, that's. Yeah. You know, that's they're perfect. actually. That's different. Sharafasi is really humble about all this and he doesn't think he's interesting enough that anyone would actually want to hear him talk um, there's a reason why he's called like, he want to hear about this yeah he's very subtle <laughs> but, yeah i mean and that's just who he is too they both are speaking at a seminar tomorrow in wisconsin dells so i mean i guess if you are in that area you might be able to corner Corey Tropsy. but look at this there you this go. is great natalie and if you don't know that's natalie great. she's on twitter you could follow her there She's very hip. She she we, she likes my video game tweets. It's, it's I it's do, awesome. and I like post pictures of my cat and shit. So cat pictures. Yeah, absolutely. And I think let's see if you are linked in the description. Yep, you are. You're in the description below as well, just like everybody else that has shown up on here. And of course, by the way, you know, as I've said before, everyone that has been showing up. Um, and, and spending their time with us and giving their thoughts on everything. They are doing it. They are volunteering their time. And I'm so, so grateful to everybody. It, it makes the conversation so much better. It makes the commentary so much better. Uh, we all learn together from each other as we go through this process because what I see might be different than what Rick sees or what Kurt sees or what Millibytes, <laughs> what Natalie yes. sees, you know? Uh, same thing with, with into uh, it, potentially so. criminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's the friends you make along the way right absolutely uh, yeah and and so so you know so the the if if you guys have not already be sure to check out their channels or their twitter profiles like with natalie and with andrea um mm -hmm. who we've, we've seen today um check them out and follow them subscribe to them you know if they've got videos watch their videos like them share them it really helps our overall community because the, the bigger that our community grows as individual content creators as individual you know lawyers with followings the more we can dedicate time to doing this kind of stuff um because we can do oh my goodness there's another one he said crap. easier it is to justify certainly oh come yeah. on people oh, michael gone so thank generous. you so much pounds. that's thank real you. money yeah, yeah. Yeah, to the uh, Michael Gaunt says, I feel like they have also laid foundation for Depp being unable to grab and throw the phone due to the size of the bandage and how long it was on. It felt very deliberate how he mentioned the side and the pick uh, to the to back it. Yeah, because he was talking about, although, well, no, well, because the there were, been the, there's the a year been difference. The incident, wouldn't it? There's, there's a year difference, though, between the, because I, I think what you're f referring to is the, the phone throwing incident that was May 21st, 2016. The yeah, Australia right. incident was uh, was March 2015, and so he's he so far has shown that he had the bandage on through May, but I think that what he meant was May 2015. Well, he um, said through August, right? He said he had the bandage through the end of filming Pirates right. of the Caribbean. That's right. That's right. So Which... so I don't know. He he may he may have had the bandage on his hand, but okay. But maybe maybe what you're referring to is not so much the bandage, but the actual injury um, to his finger that he can't quite grasp it like someone would be able to, I'm not sure, possibly, possibly. Um, but thank you so much for the, for the super generous super chat. Um, so, um, yeah, but, but like I said, subscribe to everybody, follow everybody. It really does help. Um, we're having fun conversations and now I'm super self-conscious about whether or not I've called anybody a moron who might otherwise watch it. It's not usually my vernacular <laughs> as is the word of the day and yesterday. Uh, I'm also but, paraphrasing. Uh... So <laughs> I think we did ah. get a, a moron text. I mean, it's just, there were so many people invested in it and it is something yeah. that, you know, it's like, you know, sports commentary type of thing as well is, you know, you can talk about it as much as you can. It's just completely different to be in it. So, Absolutely. Yeah. You don't get the same oh. vibe that like the actual physical vibe in the courtroom is something that is like intangible and very, very real. 
My my biggest memory from that in terms of the actual personalities on the council side was us uh, losing our minds about how cool it was when you were explaining metadata to people. Oh, but yeah, that was, I'm talking, but we started getting emails long before that. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. The well, end. And, oh, I bet you and, did. That was at the end. And to be, <laughs> so. and to be fair, I mean, I, I don't know about, about you guys that were also on the panel, but I, I was also getting, uh, getting my own, my own comments from people in, in DMs. A lot of them were nice. Some of them were very much not nice. Um, talking about how I was like messing up the whole stream and like sure you're talking too loud God, this isn't about you. but we always talk too loud we always do that yeah, that's that's, yeah. i've yeah. started the I owe, I owe emily baker a note because i've started to get dms about my sweaters and this is making me increasingly uncomfortable so you know <laughs> hey that's really funny but but you're absolutely right natalie that you know and this is something that i haven't really pointed out enough yet on this stream is that for us pointing out what we see, it's a lot easier to sit back and, and comment, right? It's so much easier to be the one saying, mm, I wouldn't do it this way. I would do it that way. <laughs> but to be the person actually in the stadium, you know, like, like being the one holding the football <laughs> and running with it is a totally, totally different game. There's so much going on. You have so much information that you were trying to hold together. You've got a performance that you're trying to put on. You've got clients that you're trying to please. You've got all kinds of information behind them that we don't see. You know, obviously, like like Natalie mentioned, we can't see the jury. This is why this is one of the reasons why I really would like to get somebody in uh, on the panel at some point, either during a recess or afterwards, that is actually in the courtroom. I've talked to some people, and I'm I'm hoping that at some point I can get somebody on because I really want to see what the jury has looked like at, at various points in time, not just demographics and stuff like that, but like when are they paying attention, when are they not? Because like I said, it's 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 evidence in front of a jury is a lot like a tree falling in the woods. You know, if there's nobody there, does it really make a sound? If evidence comes out in front of a jury but they're not paying attention, does it really exist? <laughs> um well, and that's, that's always, a that's that's a concern that's always a mm -hmm. huge thing like we made that point during the rittenhouse trial is we're saying okay we don't know if this is working or not but they're the ones who get to see the jury's face and yep. we don't 100 well, and you from the with the benefit of you know television you also get so many multiple angles of everything kind of happening simultaneously because i mean you know Amber, Amber, you know, cold stares, things like that. You know, you don't know as much of what the jury can see and can't see. But as attorneys, I mean, we only have one set of eyes. You can't be watching every single thing at the same time. Sure. So, I mean, there are some things that, you know, you have to remember to keep that in perspective is, you know, you're getting the benefit of watching this, like, through cameras that are specifically placed to, you know, maximize your appreciation of what's going on, too. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and all of that can be impacting the decisions that they are making, uh, that the attorneys are making throughout the trial as well, um, that we may or may not know about. I mean, cause I remember, I remember one of the, one of the points that, that came up a lot during the Rittenhouse trial was, was the, the, uh, the lack of objections, you know, when, when there were certain, certain points in time where mm -hmm. somebody could have objected. And there were a lot of people on the panel that were like, why don't you object? Why not? Like everybody's like jumping out of their yeah, chairs. Like, no. Why don't you object to that? And the reason, I mean, one of the reasons that I remember was, and I remember thinking about, it, I was like, hang on, this cross examination is going for a very long time. And an objection can sometimes wake up a jury when they're already asleep. So there might be oh, a good yeah. reason for them not to object now. hundred percent. That's if people aren't paying attention, why am I going to make them pay attention all of a sudden? You know, Wait, I'm sharing a screen with you. You have to see sure. this headline. Yeah. The danger of waking up the jury. Oh, come on. I love these. Headlines. That's not necessarily. That's, yeah. uh, that's just not really a great way. For vodka fueled that. binge. Yeah. Was that Not a the written house trial? Bench? Yeah. Speaking of defamation, more than anything is <laughs> speaking of defamation yeah. exactly. Oh yeah, the don't, written house headlines were. <laughs> it's don't <laughs> believe a headline. Oof. Don't believe anything written about a document unless it actually links you to the physical document, because yes. then they allow you to check their work effectively. Yeah. Is yeah. if yes, you know, if you can't watch it for yourself, if you can't read it for yourself, don't believe it because it's all going to be tailored to meet a specific end. Yeah. I, I got it. I got to say, I, I understand. I, I oh, Okay, I'm sorry. My wife approves of that, Natalie. She just yelled through my office door. So yes, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, I, I got to say, you look at this headline and I understand clickbait. I understand trying to make things provocative, but mm -hmm. that seems so wildly 
off of yep. base for, yeah. for how anyone would describe what we just heard. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's offensive to me. I'm not gonna, not gonna yeah. lie. I mean, yeah. but, it I doesn't mean, surprise me at all, though. After be- what I with Rittenhouse stuff, and yeah. that's I, I use you always use this as an example. Is there's the big deal about the calling people victims thing, which is not anything we asked for, and it came up six months beforehand in a different hearing. It's the media was looking for something that's going to catch people's attention and feed into a narrative that they'd already created. So if they've already created a narrative that Johnny Depp is, you know, X, Y, Z person that he's only involved in this because he's a crazy drunk drug person, you know, they have to continue headlines like that to support the narrative that they already had. Because God forbid the media, you know, retracts itself and corrects itself. They commit to what they've already done. And we would have so much more trust in the media if they would admit to those kinds of mistakes, just like anybody Mm -hmm. else in life. You know, it's just the fact that they are doubling down on that narrative when evidence is coming out, we literally available to everyone to show the opposite that we're like, you're, you're, you're gaslighting me now. I, I, I have, I have, I have, I don't care. I don't care, but you're gaslighting me. Like, why are you doing this to me? You know? And it's just, it's just in the, in the long run, it is, it does such a disservice to the public and to our judicial system and to just so, so many, so many parts of our, of our overall culture that I just, it, it, it really upsets me. So well, seeing, seeing these kinds of headlines. Yeah. I mean, like Natalie said, I, I'm not surprised, but it still pisses me off. And well, I mean, and, I tell yeah. people the story when I was a junior lawyer, or somebody, I was reading in the newspaper and I was reading a story that was kind of shocking me and you know, it, the facts in it were wild. And it wasn't until they mentioned the person's name that I was like, this is my file. Like, <laughs> I'm running this. You didn't file. even recognize it. That's hilarious. And I, yeah, I literally could not recognize it reading this, the story in the newspaper. Uh, but you guys in the States have the advantage of being able to see coverage like this, where there's, you know, intelligent commentary from all the rest of you guys. And I'm also here and, uh, intelligent commentary you know, from you too. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you can actually have like somebody who wants to be an informed viewer can check their work. But in Canada, we've had a number of trials where um, that's not been possible. And some of them I've got transcripts of. And when you read the transcripts and you look at the news coverage, they're completely different trials. it's and it really harms people's perception of the justice system. They see right. these verdicts and they think they're unfair, and they don't realize that had they been sitting there watching it, they probably would have come to the same conclusion. Uh, yeah. As with Rittenhouse is a prime example. Yeah. It is. Yeah, that's what drew me to it in the first place was seeing the reporting not matching up with what I was seeing. Um, but yeah, I just it's 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 always I, again. I'm an optimist. I know people don't believe that. Uh, but I'm an optimistic person, and it's every true, single time, every single time this kind of thing happens, like I'm surprised. It's like I just listened to it. <laughs> I just, I just reacted to this. I, yeah. I don't, I don't know how you get to that headline. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I, I wanted to share that with you. I saw someone, someone flagged it in the chat, so thank you for that. And then I just went and found it. Uh, yeah, so, I thank don't have a logo here. I'm hearing it's Court TV though. Yeah, I think I, mean, I think it is. Things- it does look like it's Court TV. <clears throat> Also so frustrating when you consider how many people out there actually are victims of domestic abuse because all this stuff just belittles everything. And I mean, it's so triggering. It's, it's a travesty because it it makes, you know, that's something I think that, you know, Dr. House used to always say is everybody lies and, you know, you really want to believe people, but you know, People aren't perfect. You, people don't tell the truth. People are mean. And, you know, it makes every time I deal with bogus B, DV cases, it makes me really sad because you think about how many people, you know, actually are dealing with this stuff. And it, it's just a shame. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, let me get some super chats here so I can hopefully get, get caught up. Um, I'm super backed up. Uh, Love Weiner Dogs. Welcome to YouTube memberships. 2012 Jameson says Tug has breaking news on the time issues. Big news. We'll have to check it out later. This is from this morning, um, hours ago. 2012 Jameson says, I did send you a DM. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Dragon's Treasure says, Mrs. Bites keeps growing, so I must keep shilling. If if sales increase 
enough, I'll increase the percentage she gets back. Come on by to the Dragon's Treasure and use Amber Turd as a code to get 10% <laughs> off some loose leaf tea. <laughs> So you get 10% off and I get a, a, a portion, a small commission. And of course you get to um, support a really great independent tea business that has really, really good tea. So for sure, go and, go and check that out. Um, Charlie Eckert, thanks so much for the super sticker. Renee B says for the wedding party fund. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How much uh, ecstasy are you planning on having at the wedding? I don't think zero, I got an answer for that. Zero ecstasy. Yeah. Zero. Okay. We will only have legal alcohol. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, legal in California. How can we not have weed at the wedding? Here? Okay, yes. sorry. Weed is ca we okay. It will not be be provided, but you know, if somebody else has it, and, it so and just it, to be know. clear, it won't be on the wedding party schedule for the event. Okay, will it be in the cake? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, no, no, it won't, won't be. be. Oh. Edible Bruce cake. Smith says hello from us from australia or austria australia probably uh That's how much money do you think each side is dropping for the six-week trial alone and yes. hi andrea um andrea andrea had to had to pop out but it, yeah it was, it was so wonderful having her um i mean a lot seven figures a lot a lot a lot of money i i i, I hundreds of thousands at least yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. multiple That's hundreds right. of thousands million. Per, well, they, per they side. a million you, you got for both sides it's got to be a million for a six-week trial at least a million yeah. for, this is trial for than... that many attorneys with yeah, that much crap and stuff and that like many documents. plus the people behind <laughs> yeah. the scenes yeah think about it's the, like they're sorry go ahead go ahead no no i'm just saying think about this this trial is what three three times longer than rittenhouse and that was a yeah. two-week trial so this is crazy they, 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 yeah. they work money. fridays and, they did work Fridays, uh, but you know, two weeks. So, so two extra days, uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't make up for the extra four weeks, <laughs> but um, a, a lot, a lot of money is being spent on this. Mia Mina says, I watched law talk with Mike's video on Johnny's testimony. Do you think they let Johnny talk too much and lost the jury? Did he lose the case? By the way, he testified. I don't think he, he lost the case. <sighs> Um, by, by the way that he testified at least yesterday, I felt it was very engaging today. It's maybe a little bit harder to pay attention, um, to a lot of his stuff because it's like, he still has a very slow kind of cadence. Um, I don't think that that ruins the case though, because you still get, you still get nuggets here and there and you, you're left with the overall impression. And it's like, even, even if you kind of get this impression of a Van Gogh picture of, of, you know, generally speaking, he was calm. He was fine. You know, he was getting attacked verbally. He was trying to leave. She would come and follow him, you know, and then, I mean, who wasn't paying attention during the finger incident, right? Sure. Like that's going to be something that, that is that super horrible. important for him. It sticks out like, like a sore thumb, Ooh. sore finger. <laughs> ah, I like that. Uh, I like that. Uh, <laughs> um, so, Every time you hear Australia, I perk up. Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. A hey, quick question with the with the finger thing. So she, so she, she, the finger gets cut off, and then she puts the cigarette out on his cheek. That's the testimony. Johnny was a battered husband. If I yeah, let's be was. honest right here, if if it's Johnny was a awful. woman, this wouldn't it, have been any. There, there wouldn't even be it would be unquestionable. It's the mm -hmm. fact that he's a guy yep. that's got everybody spinning because usually it's the woman who's the who's the person who's being abused. But here, he was literally the abused husband. Well, yeah. And I'll allow space for, you know, it might, you know, it's Johnny's story. So, I, you know, I, I want to hear a little bit more. But, yeah, if that's accurate, it's awful. Awful, awful, awful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. But I, I just, just look at the pictures and testimony, right? Uh, yeah. the, 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 the oh. As soon as I yes. saw the the burn to the mm -hmm. face, I was like, ah, she's she's got a lot to explain. Now she's got to get up there and sell a story. Because right there, right after I saw those pictures, John, I was sold. Johnny's yep. a victim. She's not got to sell me a story. Like, right now, I'm team Johnny no 110%. Intended. Yep, I think so too. Uh, now, now you're starting to understand, Nate. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's why you have a trial, right? They gotta put exactly. Out the place. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, uh, Lada B, thanks so much for the super sticker. Um, Jay Phillips, 4400, says, J "Can JD be easily tripped up by defense with these long answers?" Yeah, there's there's inevitably going to yeah. be something that they can latch onto, and we we talked about that quite a bit during during a couple of the recesses. Um, when he starts to, to really uh, elaborate on these, on these long trends. But the thing is at the same time, I also have been thinking about it that because he's been kind of long and winding, you know, during, or, you know, meandering during his responses with that, it might be harder to sound, to make it sound like he's being contradicted on, uh, on a cross, on a cross examination question at times, because, the jury may not have even heard a particular detail in a response. Anyways, they may be like, 
Okay. This is just information. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if they start out with one of their questions that says, you just testified to X, Y, and Z, right? And he says, I, I don't, maybe. <laughs> I mean, like. I could see that. I, I could see that being the answer. Um, yeah. I don't know if you guys mentioned this, but when he called up, when he called down the Thunder when they were first starting, saying, I'll let them get their objections in. Uh, I, I, you yeah, know yeah, what? Yeah. I, you know, they may come. Uh, I think even for Rotten Bottom or Rotten Born or whatever his name is. Um, Rotten Man. <laughs> yeah, th that stuff can get to you as an attorney when you know, like, I've had that happen to me before where the witness has gotten me a little fired up. And I, you know, it's it's hard to keep your cool sometimes. So you think I so? wonder if he's hoping to yeah. get them and a little he... offset. I, could, I think looking angry is the wrong look for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, That's they have <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree. I agree, and, and I would, I would hope that for his sake that they don't, that he doesn't get anything more than that. I mean, having, having. <clears throat> now he also could be detecting what the jury is is feeling as well because he's right next to them. He sees their reactions to that. Stuff, was my thought as well. A number, gotta read. There were a number of of objections at that point, and sometimes, and and a lot of those had been overruled too. So sometimes when when you have a lot of objections to testimony, the jury can also start feeling like, you know what, I'm trying to listen to this story and you are interrupting me with your objections, sir or ma'am. With okay, but like Johnny's answers are are way far afield from what we're used to getting here. And I would say of that course, Amber Heard, I, Amber Heard I agree. has been very generous, I think strategically, with I think they could have objected to a six thousand different things while he goes on a while he goes on a soul journey yeah. with any given that answer. Is, that is true. My 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 point though was that we don't have the the information yeah. on what the jury looks like 100%. when he made that quip. Yes, so, Johnny's having so, an interview with the jury and they're ruining it. Yeah, <laughs> could be. Yeah, could be. Could very well be. Isaac Baruch is wholesome. Gabagool art. I still love that name so much. Uh, says Nate. It's Wednesday. We wear black. Combo breaker. Ah, uh, nice, nice. But she, she's not wearing black because we've been saying don't wear black. She came out today. Stone Where cold, all nice cream. Wet. One thing, maybe though, they are watching the stream. Uh, maybe they are. I, I would. I want to know, like the strategy. Like I wish I was the uh, attorney crossing Johnny this because my strategy would be so succinct. Like we would start off nice and slow with just mundane questions. Isn't it true you did this? Just to get them to start saying that yes, get no, going. yes, no, and then we start getting faster and faster. It, it it would just be so easy. Did when you said you didn't abuse her. What did you mean, you know, and just get those yes or no's, but then you, but then there's, because there's so much in his testimony that can come back to haunt him from the depositions, from all the, the video that I think, you know, this, this, I expect him to be up there for maybe two days on cross because it's just so much that you can get. He's just left so many doors open. I, I'm but, honestly a little, a little, a little concerned about cross examination. But a, a long cross examination, I'm not, I'm, I'm never in favor of a long cross examination because you start to lose the jury. You start to lose Commando their attention. Um, I mean, that was oh. that was exactly what happened in Rittenhouse when 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 Kyle was was on the stand and and they they cross examined him for like hours and hours and hours and and I just I remember I was losing focus. I was like, you know, I'm I'm super interested in this. I'm I'm you know relatively knowledgeable about the law and about trial and and these kinds of questions. Um, and I was like, I, there's no way that the jury is picking up any of the potential zingers that are coming out on cross. Yeah, but I think in so. Rittenhouse though. The, the DA had absolutely no facts on his side. So all he had wow. was to try to get written house. So it was like, that was, that was like his all or nothing. Either I can get him well, to, once, to give something up or I lose. So once there yeah. was, once there was, you know, Gage Groskowitz admitting on the stand that he was pointing his gun at written house yeah, at man. the moment that he shot him, you know, and we saw other stuff about like, you know, of, of, you know, uh, what's his name? Well, Jojo uh, rushing at him. <laughs> um at the same time there was just once we saw those pieces it was like okay how how effective will this kind of stuff be well mission, uh, Tammy, oh, mission sorry, one ahead. on cross x will definitely be to see if they can get johnny angry but they should be feeling out that process very carefully yeah i i think you're right though nate this is gonna have to be set it up but then get after it quickly and hit them hard because if it goes on too long we see we we saw what happens before when they try to go too long with these witnesses it all falls apart on them. So, yeah, it, like you said before, it's got to be in and out and get it done. I think so. I think it, it has to be a faster one. Um, Tammy S., thanks so much for your super chat. 
2012 Jameson says, Evil Nate stopping in, Goose Hogue <laughs> in Nate. too. Yeah, Rick, Rick has really been my my goose this this trial so far. I mean, you've been you've been like my my right hand man so far. I appreciate the goose reference, but I know how goose ended. So you know, oh. we're gonna have to we're gonna have to watch this kind of thing. Well, they, I mean, they hate me because I said before. I want to marry Amber Heard, so they they're upset at me for that. <laughs> Life Sanders says, "Do you think Amber Heard is going to dress like a hitman again, or do you think she's going to dress similar to Johnny to screw with him?" Um, as we found out, she, she's dressed much softer today. Tammy S said, Depp is trending on Twitter this morning. Hey, good for him. Ivy Jewel says, Legal Bites, you probably already answered this, but will they play the infamous audio tapes of Johnny and Amber? They've referenced it yet. They laid They've foundation. referenced it. Yep. But they, they haven't yet introduced it. I am waiting for that moment. I'm waiting for it. I think that it's going to be, it's going to be a, a very good moment for him. Well, if they do Jillian have an admission on this vodka bottle, if they have one of those, like this is if this is about the I don't time know to play about, it. Well, okay, there there is there is audio from Australia of her being apologetic um, afterwards. Mm -hmm. I, that uh, would do a lot for me if I heard that coming from the other side. Yeah, yeah. So so those. Yeah, those those would have to come in as well. I, I really hope that those come in sooner rather than later, especially now that we've seen like we are we have that image of his finger and of his and of his his cheekburn um, as well. Jillian J says, but the issue that is she lied about it. She said she was innocent, only hit him once in self-defense. Changing that narrative now would be damaging. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Morning T says, ladies in law, love seeing women lawyers represented with your fabulous expertise and commentary. You all are unicorns. Thank you. Thank you. That's really kind of you. And and we had Andrea here as well. She's she also, also wonderful. Um, Jackie Joe 15. Thanks for the super sticker. Isaac Baruch's wholesome Gabagool art says confession through projection slowed Viva style. I think that maybe maybe you're referring to Amber, I believe. No, maybe? No. Or no. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because there has been there has been quite a bit of projection coming from Amber Heard that has been outside of what has come out of of this trial so far as well. And, and also, you know, her her weird her weird dressing and all that kind of stuff. J. Phillips 4400 says if J.D. proves Amber Heard abused him, she deserves the same Hollywood treatment J.D. got. Can we support JD by buying Sauvage Dior? Don't know another way because that is that is the one brand that has stuck by him through all of this. They said, you know what? I know that there's been uh, there's been a lot of people that have that have left him behind. We're sticking with him, partly probably because of the fact that he has such a strong fan base of people that have said we'll buy we'll buy it. <laughs> you know, just like just like the super chat, like let's let's all buy you know the perfume. Hey, is so. it is it true that she was that that she was um, supposedly nude in another famous actor's? trailer Kevin Costner has Amber? said that before is, is oh, wow. what I have seen reported is that that he showed that she showed up in his trailer naked <laughs> oh, wow. so, so, so she was trying to get like a big name Hollywood star to all oh, right uh. could be could be if, if that's true yes according to hearsay for me you know I haven't confirmed that so don't don't nail Not that saying on she's me. a gold digger <laughs> I'm, I'm making a video citing legal bites as factual truth. Yes. No. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Full no. attribution. <laughs> oh, no. Ignacio Campo says, Nate, there's a difference between pushing and a hit, mm. which that well, I think I, I expect mm. them to 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 say that coming out of Johnny Depp's side. I disagree with that. Up to We're talking about abuse. I think he actually said him. lay hands on yesterday, by the way. So Yeah. I, I, cause I, I have, there was a lot of DV cases where he pushed me and I fell and hurt my pushing and hitting. When you're talking about abuse, they, they're virtually the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Lakeith says, was it made clear whether this is a libel or slander <laughs> defamation case? It's so in, 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 the, in the United States, you know, generally speaking, we'll, I mean, some States have, we'll like divide it specifically. Um, if you, to, to quote, uh, to quote the original Spider-Man movie, um, uh, slander is spoken, libel is is written. Um, I thought you were so, going to do J. Joe and Jameson for us, Alita. I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, when he says that's slander, it is not. I resent that. <laughs> slander is spoken. In print, it's libel. So there you go. There's the actual quote. That's good. No, I like it. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, so, yes. So, but generally speaking, we refer to it as, as defamation generally as, as the umbrella term. So, but here, because it's in print, it technically would be libel. Um, but that's really neither here nor there as far as the outcome of the case is concerned. 
DDDK says, if Johnny wins this, what options does that leave for Amber with legally? What uh, And what could come out of this if it is established that Amber has given false testimony and produced false images? Basically, ju just the outcome of this case. We're not going to be looking at any kind of perjury um, charges or anything like that. You know, we've, we've talked about that a little bit before. So um, so I, I, I doubt that we would be seeing, you know, anything beyond the actual verdict of this case. Um, Shell Carey, welcome to YouTube membership. Ignacio Campo says, Nate, he's going to match your speed. He talks slowly. No. <laughs> or he's not going to match your speed. He talks slowly. That's probably true, actually. Mm -hmm. um, actually Stephanie, thanks so much for the super sticker. 2012 Jameson says, Nate doesn't know that it is evil Nate that knows. I'm sure. not sure I understand sure. what that means. Why do people hate me so much? What the no, hell no, is Nate, I get He's trolling. Yeah, when you switched cameras yesterday, you became evil Nate. It's a whole thing. Don't worry about it. Oh, that's right. That's right. Not, okay, yeah. 2012 Jameson is my, 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 I'm about to say my boy, but I'm not sure the gender. So sure. Yeah, yeah. My, my person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 2012 Jameson is, is a dude as far as as far as I understand. Uh, Canna Claus uh, says, I see you, Nate, equals Lost Radamus. It's a good one. <laughs> we got to start splitting these super chats because it's like Nate, 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 Nate. What did I, I say know. to these people? <laughs> I know. And, and, Kurt, and Kurt has gotten some that are like compliments on like videos that he's made. Poor guy. <laughs> Guys, I got to head out, but it was wonderful. Okay. I'll try and stop in sometime soon. If okay. not later today, I just got a meeting. Okay, thanks so much for joining Natalie. us. Bye, Natalie. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, let me get some more while we're while we're going. Carla Marie 83 says her contour job isn't very blended and she is showing off that fake bruise. <laughs> so Silas said she also doesn't have darker eyeshadow like the days before. It makes her look younger and more feminine. Yeah, her she like she she's, she doesn't have as much makeup on because it, her it yeah. doesn't seem she doesn't seem as made up as she did. Or at least her eye makeup. She I I think she's still wearing stuff on her skin. P Dub says Court TV website has a split scene. Yeah, I know we were we were trying to get that get that in. Stephanie says this is proven in every single audio recording. She said you always leave when I want to fight. They need to play it. Amber Heard says it over and over in her own words. Yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah. people people I think people fail to realize. Amber doesn't have to show that he right, beat her, that, that, um, that he was abusive right, all the time. Question? She really just has to show one time, and I think she wins. Um, I don't know about Dad, that. I'd like to show you a document that's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 146, and I believe this was entered into evidence previously. So if we could publish it to the jury as well, please. Damn, even his glasses look cool. Yeah. He wasn't wearing those before. Yeah, you're right. He had different glasses. Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury what's reflected in this photograph? Um, I believe that's, uh, well, it's definitely me. Um, uh, after, uh, receiving a kind of a a, a, a roundhouse um, punch um, from Miss Hurd. I believe that this is uh, it's March. Uh, I believe that this is from what's been called a staircase incident. Am I correct? Am I right? So it you said you think this is from March of 2015? Um, I'm just looking at the top. Do you remember who took this photograph? Uh, Mr. Bett, Sean Bett. And relative to when you had injured your finger, when was this photograph taken? Sorry? Relative to when you had injured your finger in Australia, when was this photograph taken? Uh, the injury to my finger was sustained uh, uh, I believe it was a couple of weeks or so before this because I was we were back in <clears throat> Los Angeles for the surgery and rehabilitation of the uh, digit. 
So I know you can't see your hand in this photograph, but what was, what would your hand have been like given its injury at this date? Um, well, it, it was, it was still a very, um, it was a very fresh wound um, when that amount of um, when the tip of your when your finger is uh, severed um, that's not going to heal up for a very long time and uh, so my finger was still it was still a very fresh wound um, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm pr I'm pretty sure that, that uh, the the this might have been around the time of the pin. In uh, the the pin that was uh, that was uh, put into my finger to keep it together, I guess. And what type of cast would you have had on at this time? It, it, it wasn't a cast per se, as it was a, it was a, it was bandaging. Um, uh, when the, when the, when the bandage was out to sort of here, um, that was extra padding for the, uh, for the tip of the finger, uh, protection and, and also because of the, the, the pin that was in there. Um, so. As I said before, there were there were when D Nurse Debbie would ask, you know, give me, you know, on on a scale of one to ten, your pain. Uh, when the fingers started to feel differently and hurt a lot more, and it became like a twelve out of ten pain. Uh, that, that that was uh, uh, yes, that was right around then, and and the reason for that was because of the the infection. The MRSA had already uh, been um, working its way for a number of days. Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury the circumstances that led to you having um, the bruise that's reflected in this photograph? There again, there was another confrontation, another another confrontation, another argument about something or other, and we were uh, we, we were in we were in in. Um, Penthouse five area, which was where uh, Ms. Hurd had her office at the top of the stairs. And so the, the stairs came down and then there was a, a landing and then another set of stairs went down the opposite direction. Uh, and uh, this took place on the landing um, where she was uh, coming out, you know, trying to, uh, well, trying to get to me, trying to hit me, trying to do anything she could. And, um, and then Whitney, her sister was there who, <clears throat> who stepped in the way. And, uh, interesting thing that was, was that interest was interesting was uh, now is that Whitney stepped in front of Amber and was facing Amber to stop Amber. And, uh, and uh, when she was in between us, Amber snuck in the, she reached, got the roundhouse in and, and uh, just nailed me on the, on the cheekbone. Do you call, recall what Miss Heard was upset about at this time? I do not. I really don't. And was anyone else in the uh, pen, in Penthouse Five with you and Whitney and Miss Heard? 
um, by that time, Mr. McGivern had been called. I believe that um, um, actually Debbie, as I remember, Debbie Lloyd was at the front door of Penthouse Five, standing by the door. Mr. McGivern was kind of at the bottom of the last uh, group of stairs. And uh, And then the thump happened and um, I got myself out of there, out of the situation and I walked down the stairs to Mr. McGivern just to say, let's, let's get out of here, you know. Um, and I, I remember that something was thrown from up there. I don't recall what it was but something was uh, thrown at me. It, was, it seemed like it was like a, I don't know if it was a, a bag of like pens or, 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 but it was, it was from her office area. <clears throat> if we could please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 343. <laughs> For the record, this is an audio recording. And we, it's um, quite lengthy, so we intend to play certain oh, some portions there of it. There you go. Okay. Any objection? No objection other than we'd just like to know what minute, second portion they're going to play. OK, but the entire audio is in evidence, correct? Yes. Sir. And no yes, objection? Sir. OK. All right, and 343 and evidence. If you'd like me to read the specific minutes now, or we can provide it to council afterwards. Hey, if you want it now, or as you go. Or, OK. okay. Uh, we intend to play minute 25, 37 seconds through 26, 28. Um, one hour and 57 minutes, 21 seconds through one hour, 58 minutes, 54 seconds. It's over two hours of audio now. Two hours, 38 minutes, 52 seconds through, excuse me, two hours, 38, 52 seconds through two hours, 39 uh, minutes, 43 seconds. And then two hours, 46 minutes, one second through two hours, 47 minutes, 20 seconds. It's four Those clips. Four clips. Thank you. Here we go. This is this is this is the, the case right here. It's just audio. I don't think they're getting across today. I think we're going to get a lot no more direct to get through. A heck of a lot. We haven't even touched on half of the incidents. But it was okay. That's that's the promise you gave me a little while ago. I'm I'm telling you, if you if you lost memory last night of kicking me out the door with the fucker hitting me, again, and you and your memory is gone from uh, you kicking the the bathroom door and, and hitting me in the skull as Again, I was bent down. I Wait, sorry. if you have those memory uh, 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 fucking, you know, di divots. I was upset. There was a lot like, going on okay, and I was well, in, on an ambient. Okay, like, why, well, like, why are you obsessing over the fact that I can't remember it the way you remembered it? I said I was sorry. Okay, I didn't deny I it. That. I'm not talking about that. What I want Now they're going to the next clip. <clears throat> no, it's, it's, it, it, it's not to get you mad. It's not to get, it's just to get out of a bad situation while it's happening before it gets worse. 
in Australia when we had the big fight where I lost the tip of my finger. At least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. To 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 avoid talking to me. To, to avoid working the, out. That's to the escape problem. the fight. You don't escape the fight. You escape the solution. No. You escape the solution. No. You escape figuring it out. We cannot work it out if you run away to the bathroom every time. Listen to me. Listen to me. A boxer can't go 12 rounds without a fucking minute break. I'm not, not giving you a minute break. You do it at minute three at the beginning of an argument. No. There are rounds, man. And when it gets too fucking hairy... The ref splits them apart or whatever, but I'm, I'm, all I'm saying is you, 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 you can't have a solution if the argument just keeps mounting and mounting and mounting and mounting. I fucking go to the, into the bathroom and sit on the floor. Bam, bam, bam. Here you come. I come out. Fight, fight, fight. Crazy. Escalated. I go I split again. I go to another fucking bathroom or a bedroom or something. Knock, 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 bang, bang, bang. You kept coming to get me. Yeah, the, these this audio is damning, totally damning. I'm not the one who fucking throws fucking pots and that's a diff that's different. That's different. That's different. That's one does not <laughs> negate the other. That's irrelevant. It's a complete non sequitur. Just because I've thrown pots and pans does not mean that you Basis. come and knock on the door. Just because Boom. there are bases does not mean that you come and knock on the door. Really? I'll just let you throw. I'm not saying that. You're saying that. You're putting words in my mouth and then making non sequiturs. I'm giving you a situation. No, you're trying to justify how you don't or do come to the door no, based I'm on whether justify. I throw a positive hand. It's irrelevant. No, I'm justifying how you, you, you seem to think that there's this cowardice this is her case in me that runs away and I don't fight for you. And you're justifying that by saying I throw pots and pans? Okay, cool. Let's no, talk about everything you do wrong. I'm not the one who... Boom. That's the sound of her case blowing up, in my opinion. Yeah, this is not good. This not is not good, good for at her all. at all. But yeah. I said to Travis, I said, no, I said to you, hey, tell Travis what just happened. You oh, you told me to do it. You yeah. told me to. You said, go do that. I said, no, tell, tell him what just happened. And I lied. And that you punched me in the You're fucking right. thing. And you you figured it out. Face. And you said, no, fuck it. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about? And I, I watched punch you lie. And then I, I didn't said, punch you, by the way. You, I'm sorry that I didn't uh, you uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe. You're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, even a lot of fights have been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah. No, I, when you fucking have a close You didn't get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this. But I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was. But you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? How, oh what am I God. supposed to do? Do this? Yep. I, I'm not sitting here bitching oh, about it, am I? Game you over. Game over. Yeah. Me and you Stop the fight. You. Stop the fight. Yeah. Well, I told yeah. you. This is it. Oh, Her case is oh, done. God, yeah, the Joe it. Rogan voice going, oh, oh. Ah! Because, yes, you did. So you did the right thing. This is like a machine thing. gun. You know what, she just said you did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. This is Mr. Dad, could drop. you please get that checkbook out, Amber? Just start writing. Turn on those audio recordings. Start writing them zeros. Yep. Um. He smiles. He's great. <laughs> he knows. He's like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What What was just played on the audio recording? She's like, wait, what? You guys heard that? 
that was recorded? Was um, very much the tone and the aggression and the attitude um, and the need for a fight from Ms. Herb. That was, I don't know if that was some need for attention, but um, I don't, it, that, that, that was, that was a sound that I had gotten very used to. The, the squabbling, the, the, you know, the, the raising of the voice to, to essentially excommunicate anything that I had to say about uh, the situation. Um, but then, uh, and I, I do remember the, <clears throat> that incident. I believe that, that that's from the, um, when I was, um, I was in the bathroom and I, I was in fact taking a shower and the, th this was in penthouse three and she came banging on the door, banging on the door, banging on the door. I didn't answer. I was in the shower. I couldn't deal with it. I didn't want to deal with any more of, uh, of that. sarcastic, demeaning, um, aggressive, violent, toxic spew. Uh, and so I was taking a shower and I didn't want to answer the door. She kept banging. And then I finally got out of the shower and I opened the bathroom door about just that that much just so I could have a a good hold on the door uh, in case she tried to burst in and I was right she did uh, she tried she was bathroom doors go in uh, she was pushing her all her weight on the door trying to get in and I was pushing back because I, I didn't want to let her in because I didn't obviously didn't want the confrontation. She was not in the best of moods. You can you can hear. Uh, so when I was pushing the bathroom door, trying to close it, and was almost closed, she suddenly kind of yelped in in pain and she she screamed out ow my toes or my foot or something and so in that second i thought possibly her 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 foot had gotten caught under the door which would of course not feel great on the foot or the toes so i thought she was maybe injured so i i knelt down to have a look the, the door was still it was it was still pretty well about that much open and when i knelt down uh on my hands and knees to look at her foot to see the injury um she kicked uh the bathroom door uh into my head it so it it, um, yeah, she kicked the bathroom door into my head. He, and, he uh, was the battered woman. He's, was, he's describing yeah. battered woman syndrome. Wow. Exactly. Taken Jeez. aback by such a, 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 a corrosive, horrific move. So I stood up and I believe I, I stood up and I, at the, but but this at this point the door was open. I stood up and I said, I think I said, I think I said, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? 
and um, the next move was just a bang. It just uh, she clocked me in the jaw, and uh, that was another shocker. How so long she, after that did you start recording? Sorry. How long after that did you start recording that audio recording? That <laughs> the lawyer got to cut him off with that, a question. That, that <laughs> audio recording was about. Her uh, trying to make less of what had happened. In fact, trying to make less of what had happened by repeating some story to me that didn't make any sense. And it certainly didn't make any sense since I was there and I was the target. Um, so I wanted some confirmation from someone with some semblance of a uh, a mind that could understand what was happening. Uh, I wanted Mr. McGivern to come up and I asked her to tell him what had just happened. And her answer was essentially, I don't know what he's talking about. Nothing happened. He's fine. And um, once again, uh, I told Mr. McGivern Time to uh, leave the premises. <clears throat> Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you now what's been marked as plaintiff's exhibit 162. Okay. This is quite the day for Johnny Depp. Yes. Yeah, today's, today goes in a win column, a big time win. <laughs> yeah. Big, big fireworks wow. win. Yeah. It's interesting when he started talking about the beginning of that fight with her. You know, he started talking about a boxer. He even fights poetically, which is kind of funny. Um, could you pull up? <laughs> he loves metaphor. Guys. <clears throat> you know, Nate, if you switched out Johnny for Amber, this would look like any number of DV cases you probably ever dealt with and that I've ever dealt with, too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, just the whole story and the history of the abuse and the and the gaslighting. You know, you've made me the... do this, yeah. And the gaslighting. What is this yes. a picture of? Uh, that's that is a <clears throat> that's a photograph of uh, the blade of a of an old like a Bowie knife. Um, that's the photograph of the blade with an inscription on it to me from. Ms. Heard, who at the time I referred to as uh, Slim. Um, Your it's... Honor, we'd like to move um, Exhibit um, 90, Plaintiff's Exhibit 92 into evidence. Inscribed on it, there's no oh. way out. I will cut you. <laughs> Mr. Duff, what does it say on this knife? Well, that's a nice Hasta knife. La muerte. And what does that mean? Until death. And then what does it say after that? X, X, Slim. And who is Slim? Miss Heard. When did Miss Heard give you this knife? I, well, it was a present from Miss Heard. I, I believe it was around 2015. Nice raindrop pattern on the steel. That is we really take creepy. This down and pull up plaintiff's I was joking, and I didn't know I'd be right about what was going to be on the knife. 93, yes. I guess I'll just chart out the rest of the trial for you guys at this point. Mr. Depp, what is this a photograph of? That's the um, knife in full view. That's the full um, side of that knife. Uh, we plaintiffs would move plaintiffs exhibit 93 into evidence as well. All right, 93 yeah. in evidence. The one I'm working on does not look that good. Oh, that's that's fancy. Yeah, Mr. Nice Depp, I have you recall the occasion so. on which Miss Heard yeah. gave you this tonight? Yeah, mine is not going to look that good when I'm done with it. Uh, I, I don't recall exactly the occasion, whether it was uh, my birthday of 2000. Um, 
15 or if it was a Christmas gift. Um, you can take this down, please. Thank you. She also referenced the fact that he um, didn't put Mr. her Depp, in his I'd will. I'd now like to show you what's been marked her. as plaintiff's exhibit 65. Those two pieces to me are like, Whoa. And, and the, the prenup, postnup thing too. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Feels very um, Haunted Mansion-esque to me. The woman it's that a, keeps going up and yeah, up. I believe this has yeah, already been killing her husband's too. along the way. It's a bit so scary, it isn't it? Published to the jury. Thank you. Mr. Depp, what's reflected in these photographs? Um, there were some scratches. Um, I, uh, another altercation, and there were some misherded uh, come at me with uh, her nails or hand scratch scratching at me. And who took these photographs of you? Once again, I believe this was Mr. Pett, Sean Pett. And when were these photographs taken? Uh, uh, seems to be Christmas or ten, 10 days before Christmas, the 15th of uh, December, 2015. Mr. Depp, do you remember what led to um, you having these scratches on your face? This was... Um, Yet again, another confrontation where um, as was my regular practice, there had been a, an altercation. She, she, she was, um, <clears throat> she had some rage issue with me. And um, I remember that I was trying to go to my corner as it were, which is, I went, to, I was going into my office in, in the, in penthouse three, which is upstairs. And as I was approaching the door to my office, um, Miss Heard ran out of the master bedroom or our bedroom and uh, started uh, just throwing wild punches at, uh, at, at me, at the back of my head, at the side of my head, at my anything that she could connect with, and um, I had to, uh, I, I would have to show you uh, sort of the, how I tried to avoid the uh, attack. Please if do, it's, if it's all right, you yes, know? sir. If, if 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 I'm walking this way to the Love door of my office, evidence. the bedroom door is where you are. I, I walked across the the mezzanine there, and, and um, as I'm approaching the door, suddenly I'm just getting cl clobbered from behind, and and one's natural primal instinct is to is to kind of duck and cover. So I ducked and covered, but they didn't stop. So I I came up this just like this, um, sort of protecting my face, but at the same time, with their arms swinging wildly, I uh, I put my arms out and I and I was able to get her into a uh, like a what do you call a bear hug or something, just to to stop her from hitting me anymore. Um, and while holding her in that position, uh, she was still trying to, you know, she had her legs, she had her, she could kick, she could, you know, she could knee me. She, uh, 
so she she was still um jump you know kind of very angry and very animated <clears throat> and uh yeah it was unpleasant what happened at the end of that situation because of the grabbing of the arms and, and and holding them to her side so that i didn't receive any more blows um and and she was still fighting i believe there was some kind of contact with our or heads or foreheads as would happen if you're trying to uh, calm someone like that um and then that was when she uh, accused me of head headbutting her uh, of, of, of giving her a, a headbutt and uh breaking her nose but um there was there was no blood there was no i i didn't hit her nose I, if there was anything at all it was a it, it was a bump of uh well i'm trying to restrain her she's trying to get out of it there's going to be some contact here and there accidental contact but not a headbutt how did you uh, escape this altercation After she'd made the remark about the fact that I headbutted her, which which was just impossible, um, she she split. She she huffed off. I, I let her go. She huffed away, and she was gone for about seven or eight minutes. And then when she came back, I was in the, I was, then I was in the bedroom of penthouse three, our bedroom. And then she came back about seven or eight minutes later. And she had a Kleenex or a tissue to her nose. And, um, and she, then she pulled it away from her nose and she showed it to me and there was red there was indeed like red color on the on the tissue but me i know that there was no connection to her nose n no part of my body made connection to her nose or eyes or anything like that. so she said uh, she took it away and she showed it to me she said way to go johnny you broke my nose you broke my nose and I knew I hadn't. So I said, in you go into sort of placation mode, which is, oh my God, let me see. Are you okay? What happened? Let me, let me see. And she wouldn't let me see anything. And so I just tried to calm the situation as best I could. Um, all the while, I was waiting for her um to dispense with that kleenex because i didn't trust it and so i waited and when she dropped it into the waste basket in her bathroom <clears throat> or in our bathroom and uh, left the room went somewhere downstairs i think i don't know and then i pulled the kleenex out of the out of the trash uh, bin and I inspected it pretty closely and realized that it was nail polish. It was nail varnish or polish. <clears throat> Mr. Depp, shortly after December 15th, 2015, where did you and Miss Heard go for the holidays? Um, 
we, there, it was uh, had been planned for a while that we would be going to the island, and we would be going to the island with my nail polish um, on the tissue man, my kids, um, Lily Rose and Jack, and Lily Rose's boyfriend at the time, uh, and and. Um, uh, there, there were. Uh, there was, there's a friend of Amber's called uh, Alice Temperley, I believe her name was, is, and her boyfriend Greg Williams, who's a, uh, a very well-known photographer, and uh, both very nice people, and their kids were going. To, she, she told me they were going to be coming to, to the island, and I thought, okay, great. Um, and so, yeah, that's. That's, that's so that's where we went for the holidays. And what happened on the island in December 2015? Yeah, many things. Um, Was there any violence by Miss Heard against you? Oh, yes, there were there, there was uh, there were a couple of incidents that were again just each time the one of these incidents would occur it it seemed to get worse and worse that is to say as opposed to fists or anything like that um i'd set up on the on the back porch of the house i'd set up an area um with a an easel and oil paints and a, a can of mineral spirits linseed oil brushes everything so she wanted to paint so i had set it up for uh and, and for some and again i remember I was sitting at the table where most of the uh paint brushes and the can and all that stuff was and uh, the argument again escalated, 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 and she simply reached down and grabbed a can of the can of mineral spirits and uh, and uh, chucked it at my face. She threw it at my face, and it it, uh, it 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 struck me right at the bridge of the nose, sort of the forehead, bridge of the nose area. And uh, it hurt. Who else was around when this happened? Well, thankfully, my children and uh, Lily Rose's boyfriend were over towards the cafe. Um, I, I, at that point, I didn't know that anyone else had uh, was around or had witnessed anything. Uh, I thought it was just Amber and I, but apparently um, the, 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 there are four staff who, who, who work on the island. I, I don't no. think it's hearsay. I don't think it's a statement. No, it's not hearsay. You can go ahead and continue your answer. saying who was there. Okay. Um, Objection. I want to interrupt this because it's really damaging. Um, Sorry, I mean, this, the staff that work on your island, Mr. Depp. Yeah. He's beating the brakes off her right now. So that there are indeed four staff who work on on the island and live there uh, all year round, um, who take care of everything. And uh, two of them happened to be in that area and witnessed the uh, uh, violence. I'll, I'll sustain those two. I mean, unless you can lay a foundation, how he would know Certainly. that if it was not hearsay. Mr. Depp, how do you know that these staff members witnessed part of this altercation? These people, as I said, there's they, they're, they're staff on the island, though I consider them family and very dear to me. And uh, I, I believe it's, it is mutual. I've known them a very long time. Um, they were visibly 
um, they were visibly shaken by what they'd witnessed. Jackson. Again, if you can lay a foundation, if he saw them there, or if this is something- Mr. Depp, did you see any of these individuals shortly after you had this altercation with Ms. Hurd? No, that's not the, that's not the proper. Were they, did he see them actually there? If he didn't, if it was something they told him, then it's hearsay. Mr. Depp, did you see any of your staff members at the house when you and Ms. Hurd had that altercation? Once Ms. Hurd had stormed off, um, I sort of sat there dazed and confused for uh, hey, that's a movie. A few minutes, and then I walked around the house, and I saw Tara and. That's fine. Okay, I'll sustain the objection. We move on. You mentioned Tara. Who's Tara? Tara is the manager of the island. Mr. Depp, I'd like to discuss April 2016 now. Um, oh, when is, when is Ms. Hurd's birthday? Today. 22nd of April. And in 2016, how was Ms. Hurd celebrating her birthday? All she's thinking is I should throw something um, at him. We'd set up a, a dinner for her, which was, she wanted to have a dinner um, with her, with all her friends. And uh, Josh um, drew um, Rocky's, Rocky's boyfriend, who uh, was some sort of chef, uh, told, uh, he asked her what she would like for him to cook. That's hearsay, I guess. <laughs> Sure, Don't object to yourself. <laughs> but it's coming off actually very endearing, though. Uh, Let me put it a different way. Mr. Drew, who was a chef, which I don't believe is hearsay. Uh, Mr. Drew has He's made becoming an expert now. He's learning. Ms. Hurd's favorite. That He's going to turn to defense counsel and say, I think I laid foundation properly there, don't you? <laughs> I love it. Um, What's your complaint now, in room, Elaine? Uh, for many, many hours with uh, this might be a hint of how cross is going to go. A group of accountants, uh, new accountants, and They were going through uh, uh, essentially the situation that I was in financially, which was uh, um, a, a real shock to me. I, I had no idea, and I know this sounds ridiculous, but I prefer to think of the work as opposed to how much I'm getting paid. So I. I had no idea how much money I'd made. I, I, I just didn't. I just figured if I was working, it was money, so everything would be all right. Um, they informed me that uh, I had been um, well, that quite quite a, a an inordinate amount of sum of money had been um, was gone had uh, disappeared and uh, after having worked 30 something years in the industry, um, I'm sorry, I could hear Ms. Brett. No, you're oh, fine. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, He's doing the opposite of what Sean Bett did. I was pretty shocked at, 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 at where. Totally uh, willing to stop if someone even whispers. I was to learn, I, 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 I was exactly financially and uh it was a very long meeting and i knew of course that ms hurd's birthday dinner was to start at i believe 8 30 and uh i texted her a number of times uh from the meeting saying 
it, 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 this is this is uh, probably going to go long, and I think I might be a little late. I'm sorry, but it's you know important, and I'm I'm I, I'm going to be a bit late for the dinner, and I apologized all over the place, and <clears throat> so when I left um, and picked up something at the house, which I believe was her gift. Um, on the way down town, I received a text from Miss Hurd asking me to bring, um, asked if I could bring uh, some wine and some weed. And I texted back, sure. And then by the time I got to uh, arrived at Penthouse Five for the party, I was about an hour and 40 minutes late, maybe something like that. Before you arrived, how many drinks had you had? Oh, I think I'd had a glass of wine with, there was, there was one bottle of wine that uh, Ed White had brought to the meeting that <clears throat> we, between I don't know how many, five or six of us, we had a we we had a glass of wine. Could you tell the jury who Ed White is? Oh yeah, sorry. Ed White was my at the time he was my um, uh, new business manager, um, and he was quite a um, stick. He was quite a professional, you know, nearly forensic. Uh, uh, business manager, and he had shown me things th uh, that uh, from 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 my former business managers were quite Jackson disturbing. You're saying? I, I believe he said he showed him. Uh, yes, he. Sh uh, yes, I looked at papers. Maybe they're hearsay papers. <laughs> 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 So, oh, well, that a boy, Johnny. You may very well be. You're trying. Say, You're trying, honey. Next question. Did his prior manager rip him off? Um, Is that part of this background? Mr. Depp, when you arrived so, at the yeah, party, his prior he got, he got financial screwed by his his financial guys. Yeah. Yeah, okay. they took like a couple hundred. Very cool. Yeah, six hundred million dollars, something like that. Yeah. What yeah. did she say to you? Where to go? In their pockets. Not much. Yes. They bought Not a bunch much. of Funko Pops. Except. Occasionally, she would tear herself from the conversation that she was in just to lean towards me. I was, I was sitting to, <clears throat> to her right, and I would get a quick earful of, I can't believe you, I can't believe you've done this to me on my birthday. I can't believe I'm so embarrassed, um, you know. Which I found odd because I'd kept her informed all, all, all day. And the last text that I'd received was a request for wine and marijuana. So when I got there and received that uh, attitude, I, what could I do? Um, so I just made the best, best of it and talked to her friends and uh, because they were all her friends, except for, I believe, Nurse Aaron. Aaron was there, I believe. What's Aaron's last name? Uh, Aaron Borum, Nurse Aaron, who had been the nurse assigned to Miss Hurd. I mean, she has to come in. It's I just, I, I just had conversations with the various people there. Her makeup artist, um, Melanie Iglesias, was there with her fella, and uh, I remember speaking French with them. Um, and um, I didn't really eat, wasn't feeling it. Did you have any drinks at the once you arrived at the birthday party? Uh, uh, wine. How glass. many glasses? Uh, I don't, maybe two, maybe because they were like large, you know, the large sort of 
um, Bordeaux glasses. So, yeah, maybe two two glasses of wine by the time it started to uh, wind down. How many um, wine? How many yeah. drinks did you observe Miss Hurd consume after you arrived at the party? Sorry, I, I really couldn't say because I I I all I saw was just there was she had a, she was drinking wine. And did it seem to you that she had been drinking wine prior to your arrival? Um, I was sure since I was an hour and 40 minutes late that Miss Heard was well into the wine before I got there, yes. So. Yes. How did the party come to an end? Uh, um, and it was kind of you know, one person would say, well, I better get out of here. And then two more couples or two more people would say, yeah, time to go. And then it just Ooh, uh, over 10, wound people watching. down. There was <gasps> we broke 10, uh, Mr. Drew, oh Sorry, Ms. Okay. Pennington. Smash that um, like and subscribe, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Whitney, possibly Whitney. Um, and that was about it. It was sort of left. <clears throat> there. And what happened after the guests left the party? Um, she was free to uh, to commence with the uh, the usual um, verbal barrage, and I at that point. There was so much in my head from the meeting. I thought it was a bit much that Miss Hurd had. I'm sorry, it, it seemed quite bratish. It seemed quite childish that Miss Hurd was holding uh, such a grudge against me for having been late to her. 30th birthday party when she knew very well she was well informed that I was in a, an intense meeting that had a lot to do with not just my life and my future but my children's and um, what would I you didn't know, know what was going to happen to See, for the record in a different context I would also get a talking to for showing up an hour I didn't, was gonna happen. I didn't know if houses were going to start going away yeah. I didn't yeah. So um, <clears throat> it felt. After you found out you lost six hundred million dollars, though. It, it, I'm sure, of course, you felt something, but it you didn't felt have the money to lose. Unfair. <laughs> it felt small, comparatively. If your loved one or your husband uh, uh, has had uh, some very serious issues brought before him. Um, so uh, when she engaged in her normal kind of banter of uh, trying to poke at me and get me to react, I literally just got into, I got into bed. And I remember the television was on and I, and I was reading and I said, uh, suppose Miss Heard was down in her area taking off her makeup and changing into sleep clothes, whatever, and uh, she entered the bedroom <clears throat> while I was laying on my side of the bed reading, and she was still rattling off all the wrongs I'd uh, done to her in that particular day and and how unreliable I am and uh, what a, you know, what a horrible person I was. Um, and I and I did not, I did not engage verbally nothing. I sat there or laid there 
reading my book. And when that, and she didn't get a jump out of me or a jolt out of me, she got out of bed. She walked around the bed. She came to my side. And uh, again, the, the, you know, you, you, you've got uh, you've got a person who is uh, throwing multiple shots at your at your face, Wait. at your head, at your neck, at your at anything she could hit. So I I got up out of bed. And I grabbed her by the shoulders. Nope. And I sat her down on the bed. <clears throat> and I said, I'm leaving. Please don't get off the bed. Please don't follow me. Please don't try and stop me. I'm leaving. And she got up off the bed. And she squared off at me in the doorway of our bedroom. And I said, what do you, what do you want to do? Hit me again? Would you like to hit me again? And I said, go ahead, hit me. <clears throat> and then I just said, did that, is that what you wanted? Would you like another? Bam. There's the second one. And I said, good. Now you're done. Grabbed her by the shoulders, walked her to the bed, sat her down and said, don't follow me. Leave me alone. I'm out. I'm gone. I went, I grabbed a few things and I got out immediately and I went to um, my other house on Sweetser, as Ms. Heard was, she was leaving the following day for uh, Coachella, which is a, 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 it's a, Coachella is like a, it's a big event, a concert, you know, many, many bands. We're and, Virginians, Johnny, not um, Martians. Yeah. Out in the desert, she, she, she and her friends His were going to Coachella His reality is so different, he probably isn't sure what people know about and, the he knows um, about. <laughs> I'm just joking. I know. It's like, it's I really recognize cute, Coachella. Was, was, the least it? hit person on the stream. Mr. Depp, after <laughs> April 21st, 2016, when was the next time that you actually saw Miss Heard in person? I left Miss Heard, well, I left Penthouse 3. I left at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, on it was actually April. It was actually her birthday. It was four, uh, four thirty in the morning, April twenty second, and that's when I left. And from that moment on, I did not see Ms. Heard until May twenty first. And why was that? Um. I had received some news that was as absurd and grotesque and cruel. Um, and then I was shown a picture of what the problem was. I had gone to Mr. Bett and said, uh, she's in Coachella, she's at Coachella. I think it's a good time to go downtown so that I can get some of my things, you know, and uh, get them out of there, especially the things that were uh, precious to me, you know, children, things, things from friends, Brando, Hunter, Thompson, whatever, things that were important to me. And he said, I don't think now's a good time to go. And I thought, it's the perfect time. She's not going to be home for two days. And then he showed me a photograph <laughs> on his telephone. Deuces. Of, uh, Objection, Your Honor. Also 
It's, it's a photograph, Your Honor. Yeah, it's what he saw. Relayed to him by Mr. Beck. No, he says he no. looked at he it, on, he his saw it. on his phone. Oh, yeah, the objection as the photograph. Yes, it's coming in. Poop is oh, coming in. A photograph of Mr. Depp. <laughs> this is quite the day. Yep. It was a. It was a. It was a photograph of the bed, our bed, um, and on. My side of the bed. Um, was human fecal matter. Um, so I understood why. I it wasn't a good time to, to go down that. there. Um, Is this the photograph? She really you shit saw? the bed, didn't My she? My initial response to that was. I mean, I laughed. I, I, the, yeah, you almost laughed just now. It was so outside. It was so bizarre and so grotesque that I could only laugh. Makes sense. Um, yeah, no, it checks out. And um, so Amber I did not turd, go everyone. down there that day. Mr. Depp, how was your mother's health during this time? Um, Did they admit that photo right there or not? Not good at all. My mom, my mom was in no, um, they didn't. Cedar okay. Sinai Hospital, and uh, she was. She was on her way out. She was dying. Makes everything so much How worse. How often were you going to see her during this time? Excuse me? How often were you going to see her during this time? Um, as much as I could under the circumstances. Um, but the, the, and uh, when I, when I, when I did go go and get to see my mom, um, she was pretty much incapable of speech. Her speech had left her at that time. Her she she was she seemed to she, her eyes were still open. And she was she could kind of react with her eyes, but she couldn't speak. And then not long after that, um, once her eyes closed, she lay there for the duration of her, of her life, which ended on the 20th of May. Um, the, the, the night before I saw Miss Hurd, for the last time, well, essentially. I'm so sorry, Mr. Depp, but how did your mother's death affect you? As it would anyone, I suppose, it was one thing that I couldn't fathom was, I, I mean, I, I brought my kids to see Betty Sue in the hospital and uh, at that time she was not functioning she was not responsive she, she, uh, she was alive still she was fighting still inside but she was she was uh, lying in the bed um, and what excuse this uh, analogy but all I could think of was how if if she's conscious of, of if she's conscious of everything that's going on around her but has no ability to speak, has no ability to move. Um, I I knew that 
the one thing, as far as Betty Sue was concerned, the last thing that she would have wanted was to have ended up lying there on a, what, what it was like, there's my mom lying there on a deli platter. And it was a, it was a horrible image. But I brought my kids in to say goodbye. And we all spoke into her ear. And, uh, and then she passed away later. Makes everything else so, so much was, worse. Uh, it was painful, but there was some side of it too, at least to me, that in, 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 in a way it was, uh, I was happy for her. Why because was that? I, I can't, because I can't imagine Betty Sue or my mom, I can't imagine anyone lying there in quite probably quite possibly was a, uh, a, a kind of a locked in syndrome. And if she's surrounded by 10 people looking at her lying there in that, on that deli platter, if you will, mm. I was happy for her that she was out of pain, out of frustration, out of I, I, I was happy that she'd moved, not happy. I was relieved that she was no longer in that situation. Though when those you love leave, we're the ones stuck with the, uh, with the pain, with the grieving. Um, but, but I was glad that my kids got to see her and give her her, 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 her send off, I suppose. And, um, but it was, no, no, it, 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 it opened my eyes quite a lot to a number of things. And what were some of those things that your mother's death opened your eyes to? That life is a bird song that that what feels like a hundred years is in fact a second, millisecond. Nobody can count those things. You know, so I had made peace with Betty Sue because I understood where she came from and I understood how difficult her childhood was. And I understood that she had had not had the uh, proper training or proper teaching or the proper background to to be anything other than what she had been when we were younger. I I forgave her for all that, um, as one would should. So I was. Uh, It opened my eyes to the fact that, 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 that yes, if you try in relationships, whether friendships, whether courtships, whether marriage, whether this, whether that, try your best to try. If it's not going to work, it's not going to work. And it, and, and more importantly, if you're going to get out of it, if you're going to make an end, which I had decided that I, I, I it was, somebody had to call it, and I decided that I would call Amber and tell her that my mom had, had died <clears throat> that day. And then I very calmly said, look, 
I've, I've made a decision and I think it's the best thing. I'm going, I'm going to file for divorce, but I'm not going to, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to cite irreconcilable differences. I'm not going to cite uh, any violence. I'm not going to, I'm going to state this. We simply, the two of us, we simply don't want to feel as though we, we have a, 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 a collar around each other's neck and a leash attached to it. And then this piece of paper that proves that that's true. So what I thought was best was we want to end this in love and take the idea of um, ownership, ownership of one another out of the picture. And, and that's how I approached Ms. Heard. Um, with that, and uh, so so, why did you go over to the penthouses on May twenty first, two thousand sixteen? Miss Miss Heard had requested uh, that I come over to, to to have a talk to explain. She wanted to explain things, and and uh, so I went there. But I, and I also had to wanted to gather up some of those things, you know, precious things that you live with. Um, so, so, yeah, so I, I went over there to have a discussion, what I thought would be uh, calm understanding. I, thought, I figured she understood as well as I did, that, that there was no way back. And I, I also felt that she would understand that um, it was the best thing for both of us. And there were no, uh, there was nothing to, there, there should have been nothing to fight over. It was clear. I told her that I would take care of her and uh, all that. and. Um, and then she <clears throat> she started to she was telling me about the uh, she brought up the situation of the uh, fecal matter on the bed and i uh <laughs> uh and she tried to blame it on the dogs but why didn't you why didn't you think it could have been the dogs the dogs we the they're teacup yorkies they, they weigh about <laughs> four pounds each um he's incredulous the with photograph the i wonder if he's going to try to do cross x with humor and, and i think so uh, that's how he, that's what he does when he's uncomfortable i lived with those dogs for many years my dogs are also housebroken. Um, and yes. so did Hilda Vargas. Um, my, she's a, she's a woman who's been with me for 30 plus years, you know, from the very beginning. And she was the one who photographed it. Um, it was clear she knew the dogs as well as I did. That, that was not. I was in the middle of something. No, we haven't seen the picture yet, have we? A dog. Yet. Okay. Nope. Was not admitted. Just didn't. Mr. Depp, could we back up a little bit? Who went over to the penthouses with you on May twenty first? I went to the penthouses with Jerry Judge and Sean Bett, and I had asked them on the just in case. It, Please pay particular attention and stay as close to the door, you know, stay at the door, or if you got a split, come back quick, you know, if they went down to the 
security shack or whatever it was. Come, don't don't linger. Get back, because if you hear anything, if you hear uh, uh, screaming, you got to get in there. So leave the door unlocked, and and spring in there if you hear something. Why did you want them to be able to get into the penthouse quickly if they heard anything? Um, just based on my past experiences with Miss Erd, when when you say something that that she uh, either didn't agree with or swore up and down that it was a complete falsity and there was something wrong with me, I'm crazy, and the, you know the escalation. If, if, if anything was going to start to escalate, I did not want to be there. So I had them waiting by the door um, to get in there in case anything went down. So when you walked into the penthouse, what did you see? When I first walked into the penthouse, you, you, you walk in and then make a left, uh, and then you're in the kitchen area. And then beyond that was the living room. Um, uh, I saw Miss Heard uh, sitting there on the couch. Um, and I went over to talk. I went and sat down on the couch. She was sitting on the couch was kind of a, you know, a square or a half square, you know. She was sitting on one side of the couch. I was sitting on the other. She, that's when she was trying to explain a few things about Coachella and then the fe fecal uh, delivery. Um, delivery. And say, saying that it was the dogs. And I, I could, I'm sorry, I could not agree with her. I'd lived with those dogs. I picked up their fun. It was not the dogs. And so what happened was I called, I said, let's call Kevin Murphy. Who's who Kevin had, Murphy? Kevin Murphy had been, he was, he was in Los Angeles. He was, he was uh, the, um, the house manager, uh, over um, the places in West Hollywood, and he was also um, taking care of the the penthouses downtown. If any work needed to be done, or this or that, and he would schedule the the girls who would come in, the the ladies like Hilda, to do their work. <clears throat> and uh, he'd had a conversation with Ms. Hurd. Say, Your Honor. Let's move beyond the All conversation right, that one. Kevin Certainly. Murphy had with Ms. Hurd. Um, so after you called Kevin Murphy, what happened? I asked Kevin if Amber and he had spoken about the incident. He said, yes, they had. Okay. And um, it appears that Ms. Hurd had told- Hearsay, Your Honor. I was gonna say that was a hearsay wait from Johnny. Um, this is a, yeah. apparently a statement by Ms. Hurd. Or that he was, that he heard from Kevin Murphy. That's, that's what that's the second level of hearsay. You yes, need, every level want. of hearsay, you, you need an exception to it. After you hung, when did you hang up the phone with Kevin Murphy? Um, right about the time that Ms. Hurd was screaming obscenities at him and calling him a liar and that he was a scumbag. And I, I told her, I said, listen, don't, don't speak to this man that way. Do not disrespect this man in that way. And then Kevin Murphy just hung up. And so at that point, she was riled, of course. And I went upstairs to gather belongings. 
When I came back downstairs, she was on the phone with Io Tillett Wright, and they were making a, a wonderful point of just how funny it was that um, I thought that some human being had actually dropped a uh, <clears throat> grumpy, pardon the term, onto the bed. I've literally never heard and they that. Were yakking, they were Sound yucking vernacular. it up. They were laughing about the whole thing. And uh, it, 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 it was, it was, you know, it was, a, it was, it, it was a tough couple of days and I really didn't feel like I deserved that kind of treatment. And uh, I went over and I said, let me talk to her. I grabbed the phone and I said to Io, you can have her now. She's yours. She's all yours. Right? And then I took the phone and I just bang like that onto the I mean, that side of the couch was eight feet long. The other side of the couch was about six feet long. I flopped it onto the couch and I was walking towards the uh, kitchen to uh, exit. And then suddenly Rocky Pennington um, ran in uh, to the penthouse and started, you know, leave her alone, Johnny, leave her alone. And I was, I was by the refrigerator at this point. I was 20 feet away. Where was Miss Heard at that time? She was still sitting on the couch. Um, and that's when the screaming, you know, the, um, the screaming started with like, again, I'm 20 feet away. She's still got Io on the phone. She's got Rocky there. Stop hitting me, Johnny, she's screaming in, in her best um, freaked out, upset voice, high pitched. Stop hitting me, stop hitting me. Jerry Judge and Sean that entered the room and as they entered the room and she was quite surprised to see them she said that's the last time you'll ever hit me that's the last time you'll ever do that to me and again i'm i'm a good 20 feet away by the fridge um that and sounds then so Jerry crazy said, boss i think we should mm -hmm. just leave and then we left that was the last time i saw miss heard until um, until she asked me to break the restraining order, uh, or not break the restraining order, I get, yeah, break the restraining order and talk to her in July later. Mr. Depp, where did you go after you left the penthouses on May 21st? I went home. To, to which home? Oh, to Switzer. And then where did you go? Did, where did you go after you were, went home to Switzer? Um, I was due to, um, I, 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 I had to go to, I had to catch a flight to New York um, where we were doing, uh, the, I was this group, the Hollywood Vampires. <clears throat> we, were, we were about to set out on a two or three month tour of Europe and we we were rehearsing in New York and then we played one show in New York as a as a warm up gig and then we were on the plane and we were uh, we started the, the shows in in um, in Europe and I was on the road from then which was May on through July, uh, August or something. 
Ms. Myers, this is a good time to take I our was, afternoon break. I was just going to okay. suggest that. Thank good. you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Let's go ahead and take our afternoon break, ladies and gentlemen. Please do not do any outside research and do not discuss the case. Thank you. Yeah, she definitely sounds cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, right? I, if you had asked me, Rick, what do you bet will be the explanation for May 21st? It wouldn't have been she's standing 20 feet away from me, shouting into a phone that she's called herself, stop hitting me, stop hitting me. She's trying to, according to Johnny, she's trying to present a, a hoax fight, hoax beating live in real time. Yep. That's that's a that's a plot of a of a bad Cinemax recess, movie. Mr. Depp, you know what I'm going to say, right? You're learning, right? Okay. Unfortunately. Uh, 45? Second. I mean, it sounds it, like it, it's real life. If this is accurate, if this is all true from Johnny, he, he, I, it, she's a crazy person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but they didn't admit the picture of the poop. No, which I don't think that, that they needed to. I don't think they needed but, to. You know, the only reason why they were why they were even talking about it was because that was that was his impression of like why he wouldn't want to go. I back. would say uh, there's a usefulness to assessing it uh, as against a dog excuse. Uh, I don't want to see it. I got. I got. I can't lie. I'm not interested in it. But if if the if there's going to be a fight coming from the other direction, then it's just a dog. Is probably usefulness to the photo. Yeah, because of just overall trend of truthfulness or not truthfulness. I hate to say there's usefulness to a poop photo, but I think there might be. Uh, I think they should have got that admitted because it'll be fun listening to Amber explain that one away, like what happened. Maybe that's why they haven't shown it yet, <laughs> because maybe they want the, the full effect of it when Amber has to explain it. Mm. Could be. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it'll come in. I mean, they say they have the photo, so, it, you know, yeah. I, I think it'll come in. But, wow, what a day. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't spoken any of this recordings, for you. have we? I mean, the, the, the recordings were after the last break. So we got the recordings. We got poop. Uh -huh. we, got, mm -hmm. we got fake beatings being shouted into a phone. Yes. Um, we got, I didn't realize I, that he apparently lost a bunch of money to prior managers that sets up the April 21st situation. Um, and his mom died. His mom week. dies in May. Yeah, I mean, he. So, so outside of oh, all yeah, this, sorry. that's a that's a tough thirty five or so days for for Mr. Yes. Johnny Depp. You you don't you don't have the money you think you did. Your mom dies. Amber Heard is apparently being Amber Heard. Um, that's a rough month. That is a that is a an absolutely insane month. Um, and and you know, and it's funny because like, he he was talking about how. Like early on yesterday, when he was talking about fame and how it can kind of just like affect your sense of like reality in a lot of ways, like it's just things just don't really make sense to you anymore. The fact that that happened and then he was kind of like, he said you can never really get used to it, but it's like mm -hmm. thinking about somebody trying to get used to that brand new life after having been in Hollywood for 20 or 30 years or whatever. Um, and then you have a partner that is also gaslighting you on top of that. I can understand somebody, you know, well, number one, gaslighting is, is unfortunately an effective strategy for a lot of abuse victims. And number two, I can, I can sure. see it being even more effective in this kind of a case because you already have somebody that has a very strange sense of reality just by the circumstances of his life. Yep. So mm -hmm. I, I could see him being even more like, I'm not really sure what's going on here. You the know, recording oh, very much so. Sense. The recordings make total sense in that context, mm -hmm. which is his description of it is I, I needed to be accurate about what I was hearing and what she was saying. And potentially I needed to tell a third party because I, I was getting, you know, this was confusing. Um, and it's, it's like, yeah, yeah. Although I will say by the time you have to record your spouse for accuracy, pro probably, probably time to move on. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, I thought it was important that they got, even though I didn't answer it well, they got the question out early, which is like, people are going to ask, right? We're going to be talking about events in 2014 and 2015. How does it get to May 2016? How, how do you stay? So I thought, I think in retrospect, especially framing it that way was important because I thought it, the, once he got to an answer, the, mm -hmm. I didn't want to fail is, is, is perfect, is powerful, is absolutely comes across yeah. as sincere. I entirely get that. I, I didn't want to fail. Um, yeah, but wow. Wow. I mean, I know, chat. I know you've been yelling at me for recordings that I haven't listened to before. I know y'all <laughs> been warning me about these kinds of things. We've got four clips admitted. Actually, I think I think we got three hours admitted. 
and then four clips played. I think that's what it sounded like happened. You yeah. all hear that the same way? Yeah, yeah. It was okay. it was over at least two and a half hours of of audio, um, yeah. based on the timestamps. So so let me help me out here. We've got um, her saying I'm sorry to the Australia incident stuff. Yep. We've got I threw pots and pans. She admitted got, to it. We've got a defense against I didn't punch you because I hit you. Yes. Um, I think those are the three. The three. She big also ones. said you were and right. And the door, kicking oh, yeah. the door. The door thing, okay. yeah. Kicking the door. Well, the you were right. I can discount a little bit because she immediately follows it up with you figured it all out, which yeah. I can at least put in the. Sounds sarcastic. Okay, she's being sarcastic. Yeah. Um, but I think it's but, another yeah, statement. I, as soon as she though. said you were right, I was like, about what? And then she goes, you figured it all out. I was like, okay, I've heard that argument before. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> You're a uh, genius. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. That's a big deal. I mean, I know you, I, I could I could see you in the corner. I think making explosions. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a big deal. I asked for an admission against interest on this stuff, and I I got I got four. <laughs> so. Yep. Yeah, I thought yes. they did pretty well in the uh, after break with uh, giving some more objective evidence. You know, getting some of those tapes in, referring at least referring to objective things like photograph of the poop, right? Less subjective impressions. Um, things that other people can testify to about him being across the room with this this incident, things like that, that I'm sure will be emphasized later, and a lot more um, things that would go on to show a pattern of conduct mm -hmm. that shows this to be abusive by her and not so much from him. So mm -hmm. I thought they did a reasonably good job, all things considered, um, and hopefully they'll pick up with the last bit and really clutch it home. I mean, yeah, I think it's a big, strong day for them. I, and again, you know me, I like the devil's advocate. I, I I, think you could listen to some of those things and say, you know, she's trying to demure because she's the battered person. I expect that on mm -hmm. her case. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, you know, the problem with these emotionally fraught arguments. And, and, and the one weakness I would say for even the I'm sorry, the apology admission, which I still think holds, is that m most of it is is essentially Johnny like testifying as to what happened and then her apologizing for it. And it's like, okay. But so, she doesn't deny it in the, in the face of that. that she doesn't, one of the things she says, she, one of the things she says she's sorry for is not remembering it the same way as him. Um, and, and it's like, okay. So again, I think this is a big day for Johnny folks who are yeah. going to evaluate my statements on this. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a big day, but I'm just trying to think about how this looks next because I do, I do want to say we're, we're in Johnny's direct case. All of this should be working for him. Um, she's going to yeah. present something. All of this is super powerful evidence. And I, I think Johnny's stuff is very strong here. But I can see how you're, you're going you're gonna to try to frame some of those statements um, as, uh, well, he said all this stuff. I even said I didn't agree with that, but I apologize to defuse him, right? Because mm -hmm. he said he's trying to placate her a bunch of times. Placate is his big word on this. And I think mm -hmm. it's a very effective one. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, I, and, then you, and then you use the word for her in the future, talk about demure. That will yeah. be exactly her argument too. So they both have this idea of I was only trying to placate, disarming, I'm to, disarming, I'm disarming, and stuff like that. So he's a crazy yeah. monster. I'm disarming. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I I can see that happening. But you know, but he he did get evidence in about the hoax issue with the nail polish on the tissue. Um, her good. shouting like into that. the phone. He sure did. I, it sounds it it I I'm not hyperbolizing. It sounds like a bad suspense thriller. And the thing, the thing that, just that like gives Jesse Smollett, you some sense of reality oh. on it. Yeah, yeah right. It's, yeah, like Jesse Smollett, totally. I'll it's actors that, trying to do writing. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, the, how, do, the how would I is, do it? And the thing that makes this whole crazy thing seem realistic is it kind of reminds you of Dr. Anderson's testimony when she said that Amber had said she would rather get violent rather than be left behind, rather than be separated from him. And so this idea that he comes in on the 21st and says, we're having a conversation about how it's over, about how things are, it's inevitable. Like it, it's better for both of us. And then she says, nope, ultimate violence. Nope. Like, like this is that, that's it. Like, you know, like, like if, if you are going to separate yourself from me, that is ultimate, like I'm explosion. Nuke your life. Story. I'm going to yes. nuke your life. Yes. Because she knows the effect of going out with this publicly. She knows how this looks in, in broad strokes. It, it, I, I will say other, at least potential weaknesses. These aren't weaknesses in what was said. You know, the April 21st incident where he describes her battering him. 
hitting hitting him in the face and neck and and all this stuff. You know, he's very careful about saying exactly what's appropriate for that, which is, you know, he lets her punch him twice and then he takes her by the shoulders and he walks yeah. her over to the bed and he plays her down. I'm like, okay. Yeah, it, at first it sounded like it was going to be like, okay, what kind of physical contact is this? What are you doing to her? And he, he says, I take her by the shoulders, I put her in the he bed. He says what's appropriate. The question is, it's like, you're in a very emotionally fraught circumstance. You've just described why it's fraught. You're getting hit by your wife a bunch. You're in clearly like the, the worst parts of like the War of the Roses. Hit me again. Hit me again. Are you satisfied yet? And then you delicately place her on the bed. Maybe he has that total control. I, th that's what he testified to. Uh, but it, it does say, okay, it, it, it's hard to believe you didn't match any of the energy she was sending your way. Well, he, he learned it by watching his dad, which seems a pretty credible explanation for yeah, why he behaves that way. And that's yeah. why we have two days of that background, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that was exactly why we had that. Now, I did see some people in the chat angry at the judge. Did, did any of you really disagree with any of her rulings? Because they all sounded right to me, but I'm... Yeah, yeah. yeah to, to there me, was they, one. they did. There was which one where one? she said, go like... Oh, shoot. Uh, well, Rick. Again. <laughs> Jeez, we don't have to get on the profanity already. Yeah, I thought <laughs> Alita was taking care of Rick there. Wow. <laughs> That's what I'm called for. Uh, yeah, no, there was there was one. I can't remember the details where I was like, I don't know. Uh, although I do think I do think Johnny earned himself a hearsay objection because I don't think if he pauses on that, I don't think I don't think um, aggressive cross sex guy actually jumps up. He 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 actually heard the pause and then said, Oh, uh, hearsay objection. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like he looked over at him like, oh, no, you're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, oh, I better object, um, which 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 means that everyone in that courtroom, including the opposing counsel, is is like engaged in his story, which means that the yes. jury is also engaged in the story. Oh, this is great stuff. Yes. Uh, this is the day this is that you've been waiting for this day for a week if mm -hmm. you sat on the jury. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, it Shadi needs to be careful, though. Of? Uh, when he started, when he he's starting to get a little cocky with the whole like I oh, guess damn, here damn papers. straight he is, and and oh. and that uh hey I'm catching on I'm learning this stuff like yeah yeah that that actually worries me he's gonna I'm not Spidey run I'm his not mouth go too full, hard I'm not gonna go full Spidey but he he he's been tilting forward for three hours he he is he is deep mm -hmm. into what he's doing right now this is what he bought this is he wanted to talk about April he wanted to talk about May he wanted mm -hmm. to talk about Australia. This is this is this is his day in court. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just he needs to be careful because I he's <laughs> I don't want him to lean too far. Well, I think <laughs> he's going to get out of today with direct. So I I I think mm -hmm. I think he's going to back off. He, he I I see I, as an arrogant person who's confident without reason very frequently. Yes, I, uh, me too. I, I recognize <laughs> I recognize this feeling. He's feeling it. He's he's where he, he's where he is. He's having fun. He's getting little laughs when he does the thing with the objections. Mm -hmm. He's an entertainer, of course. We know this. Yeah. So I I think actually the break is going to do him great because I think he's going to come back neutral again. Yeah. And we're going to go into cross sometime early tomorrow. Hey. Oh, Spidey's here. Ah, hmm. there you go, Spidey. Him. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I, All right. So I, so every, I, every time I, someone I, pops I, in in the second row, I'm like, ah, I I, I, I miss them. I'm so right. proud of Vogue. He's nailing that. I was just. Oh, I, was just I, got, I said one thing. On. I was like, You're going to say 60 things. I said one thing. He's. I, I'm like, Spidey would note that he's leaning in for the last two hours. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's great observation. I only caught the end of it. I got here maybe 15 minutes ago, but it's a great observation yeah. that he did seem to be more like, this is important to say. Whereas a lot of the other time he's holding back words, he's rocking back and forth. He's self-soothing. A lot of what I saw there towards the end was like he's he's trying to get this message out. I'm excited. I just got here. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. I'll, I'll I'll have more comments later, but I'm really enjoying listening to you guys discuss this. Um, and if you haven't, if you haven't so far, I I really want to see your your reaction to Amber's face throughout his testimony because she's made several expressive faces, and I can't tell if she's trying to put on a restrained face or if she's actually restraining her face. Um, maybe either maybe way, there's, there's some let, kind of constriction. Yeah, when they're when they're back, I'll take a look and I'll definitely try to pay attention to that. It's really hard to know exact. You know, it's yeah. so hard to know if she's because we don't even know what's going on in her head. You know, yeah. she's there, she's listening to him. She may have zoned out. She may be thinking about something else. She may be thinking about what she's going to say in response to that. There's a thousand. So it's so hard without her speaking and letting us know what she's thinking in that moment to know mm -hmm. what these are responses to. 
but I'll definitely take a look and let you guys know what we're seeing there. Yeah, and maybe Sounds we could good. grab, I mean, I know, Alita, you, you, the big one you pointed out was her reaction to specifically the fingertip story, because we got a yeah. lot of evocative, emotional face work there. To me, it looked like shame, but I seem to be the only one that was reading that, and that totally could have been playing off of my conclusions that I had made. I don't, I don't think anybody really agreed with me on that. <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's disgust, but it could be, it could be either direction of disgust, right? Like I, this lying bastard is trying to fight me on this and he's, you know, he knows what he did. And also, uh, oh yeah, that, that totally happened. Bummer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so her face has been really interesting. Obviously there's a lot in, in Johnny's body language he has gotten very comfortable. And I think that, you know, I think that his, his comments about the, like he's objecting to his own hearsay. It's, it's funny. And, and it, it also kind of softens my concerns for the quips that he had earlier. The, the one quip that he had when he was like, yeah, let him have another opportunity to object. You know, like it's, it if it, it, it feels more like he's just like, yes, I understand that it's, you know what it is. He is, um, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's breaking the fourth wall. It feels he like is. he is, he's, he's, he's talking about the process in, in addition to giving his testimony. That's how he, it feels right now. He's been a Phoenix Wright witness this entire time. <laughs> I mean, he, he's just, he's just going off in his own direction. Absolutely. I uh, will, I will throw this in. I will throw yeah. this in, which I thought was really interesting. And again, I just caught the end of it, but I think it was a really good part to catch when he was talking about her being on the phone, saying things that aren't actually happening. Yeah. And so a lot of the things that we look for is, and this is science, like, like studies have proven this. I'm not just making this up. Truth tellers are more concerned with giving you the facts. Liars are more concerned with your perception of them. So someone who's making something like that up, especially someone who's intelligent like him, knows it's crazy. Knows and how you crazy it sounds. Things, you might hear things like, I know this is crazy. Bear with me. I know this doesn't make sense. He's not saying, he's just giving the facts. As crazy as they sound, he's just laying it out. It sounds insane. I, it's, I don't know if you guys agree with this. I saw this very truthful because specifically because he's not buttering it on thick as to how yes. crazy he's this sounds. He's not overselling it. Is, yeah, he's not overselling it. He's just saying, this is what happened. If you don't believe me, that's fine. Which is, yeah. which is generally his demeanor. And I'm very okay with that because it seems like here are the facts. Whereas I think from her, we're going to get more sales pitches. No, I actually agree with you entirely. I, I like that fact. But he didn't he didn't try to sell it at all. In fact, if, if you were zoned out or you were thinking of something, you got a text message at the same time, I, I don't even think you'd realize the importance or the craziness of the sentence he just said, yeah. right? I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not within 20 feet of her and she starts yelling this. I, I mean, I, I did a double take. I was like, wait, what's happening now? I mean, like, this is a full-on setup? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you, yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. And he didn't, and he didn't preface it. You know, usually liars, if they're going to sell you a whopper, they're going to give you this big lead in to like, get you ready for it. He's just laying out the facts. And, and it's, it's listen again, I, I keep saying this. I will keep saying this. He's a terrific actor. Can he sell this the way it's meant to be sold? Yes. I don't think that's what we're seeing. I think there was a legitimate thing there where she was having some sort of crazy episode and he's still sort of trying to figure out what's going on there. Well, it's legitimately yeah. and, hard to believe. I mean, like, I will say, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're, you're the host. Go, go. Uh, no, okay. It. I was just going to say also, I think it was very, very, very smart of his legal team to start off with the Australia incident where they were able to show the craziness of that injury. Like, it's just, it's insane to hear about it. And then to see it with objective evidence, to see the cigarette burn on his face. It's like everything he says after that, you're like, okay, this might be crazy, but that was completely real according to these photos and according to, you know, the, the surgeon that you talk to, like it's so far, the things that I'm seeing, there's a lot of objective evidence. And then you hear the audio tapes and then he goes and talks about April back, 22nd and May 21st and these other things. It's, it's like you hear, you hear her defenses and, and, you know, the audio tapes and everything. And then he goes and describes them and you're like, how, how can I, how can I not believe him? With a poop mystery in the middle. Yes. I, I tell yes. you what. Poopgate. <laughs> Well, what did he call it? A grumpy? Yeah, grumpy. Is that a that's, thing? That's a nice one. 
It might be a British. A, hey, there, if there are any Brits in in the chat, I know that there were yeah. earlier today, at least this morning. So if there are still any yeah. any Brits in the chat, is that is that is that a British kind of term? Grumpy gate that just flows. I've heard a lot of names, but yeah, never grumpy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and also, people are talking about the knife, the knife that she gave him How either for Christmas or his birthday. That is terrifying. That was so the creepy. Fact that it says "until death." X X Amber. Ah! That part after all this has started, right? It's not. You can't even oh. give it a benign. You can't even give it a, a fully benign explanation, other than reconciliation. No. But it's after all of this kind of stuff has started to cascade. It's like that. That. that oh, scary. it's it, terrifying. That looks scary. It does. It does. And it just. And it's like. And especially when you look at all of those facts, kind of all together. It's just, mm -hmm. it looks like he, he he gives the impression like he could have died in this relationship. Like yeah. we could have been, we could have been talking about a, a murder story. Come on, man, we're stropping back, it up. Alita. What's that? What'd you got say? got a bunch of trial is back. Oh, do we really? Oh. Um, Not according to CBS. Are they liars? Let, let's try. Are, are there other some Amber liars. Herds in the, in the chat? Let me see. Hold on. Let's see, <laughs> see here. Let me see if there's another, another really feed that might be showing something different. We're trying to make sure you don't miss any trial. Oh yes, you're right. You're right. He is. He is back. Thank you. CBS I, News is lying to I me. I regret accusing you of being liars and rescind the previous comments. <laughs> it's the chat, you know. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Sorry, guys. Okay. Is it back? Yeah. Jack's stepfather. Sorry, guys, I'll show it Hey, in that's good. You gave me some shit about my kids, just like in London that you designed. This is, this is different. Never taste. again. It's a recording. Stay away. You don't exist. That doesn't sound you like will him, not though. be getting Where is my it? words. I think it might be a little inebriated him. Maybe. Mr. Depp, could you please describe to the jury what they just heard in that audio recording? I don't I don't know when I don't know when that if there's a date on that, <clears throat> but um um, clearly there was, uh, some, uh, animosity and, uh, another clash and, um, Ms. Hood, once again, um, felt it necessary to uh, bring my <clears throat> bring my kids my 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 son into the into that argument and say that she hopes that uh, my son's stepfather can teach him how to be a man Oof. since i couldn't um uh, and I believe she says something about more man in the stepfather than would be existing in my, I believe the term was left nut. How often did Ms. Heard bring your children into your arguments? Too often. And at the end of your relationship, how was Ms. Hurd's relationship with your children? Non-existent. They, my children, my kids are far um, more intelligent than I am. And they, they broke. They they wouldn't be around Ms. Heard any they refused to be around her <clears throat> anymore. They didn't like uh, 
the way she uh, treated me, which was written in a, 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 a very elegant letter by my daughter, actually, to, uh, <clears throat> to Miss Hurt. I don't know if that's in evidence, but I remember the, uh, my daughter sent a text to Miss Hurd. Objection, Your Honor, just hearsay. It's one thing for the witness to tell his story. It's another thing for him to tell other people's stories. All right. Okay, we can move, we'll on. move on. Okay, that's fair. I'm sorry, I read the, I read the email. Yeah, I understand. Next question. Um, when did you learn that Miss Hurd had filed for divorce? Well, it was, let's see, Betty Sue was the 20th. That night I spoke to her about the divorce. 21st was the um, kicker. I believe it was on the 23rd and I had already left town for New York to prepare for the tour. Did Miss Heard know that you were out of town at that time? I don't know. <clears throat> when did you learn that Miss Heard had made domestic abuse allegations against you? Um, the 26th Seventh of May, which is in fact my daughter's birthday, um, I saw that she had gone to a uh, court. It was I don't know some court, and there were paparazzi everywhere, and her and a um, <clears throat> brown mark on her face. Um, and it was also happened to be the day that Charlie and the, no, Alice in Wonderland 2, um, so the looking glass was opening. And that's the day that she chose to uh, uh, get the, uh, go, go to the courthouse and get a TRO, a temporary restraining order against me. But I was in Europe already at that point. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you what's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 487. And just for the record, this is a very long document um, and we will be showing pages 470, or excuse me, uh, 492 through 494. Okay. There's no objection to the document 487? I see. Are you entering this in evidence now, or are you just showing it? We, I can I can give them an opportunity okay, and go sure. through it with Mr. Depp if that's okay. Um, Mr. Depp, do you recognize any of these text messages that are on the screen in front of you? vague memory of, of these. And who were these communications between? Uh, it looks like myself in the, it's me um, in the in the green <clears throat> and Ms. Hurd's words in the blue. And do your communications reflect that Ms. Hurd understands that you're in New York? I'm sorry? What is the date of your text messages here on this page? Um, that's the 23rd of May, 2016. And hers are the 24th of May, 2016. And based off of these communications, does this refresh your recollection that Ms. Heard knew that you were in New York on this date? Um, 
in her text, you know, when do you leave? Um, what was clear that I was leaving um, right away, but uh, I, I, I'm not sure that I wasn't already, because I wasn't in New York City. We weren't playing in New York City. I, we were we were playing, uh, we were rehearsing in a, um, like a casino, a big casino. And that was where we did our first uh, show um, to practice, you know, first show to practice for the, the, uh, the tour, the uh, European tour. So I don't know if I was either leaving for New York, but I don't, I think I was already there because New York City, uh, we weren't, uh, I don't know, recall that we were playing New York City. So maybe I was su suggesting going, going there. Uh, Could we please go turn to page uh, 940, excuse me, 494. And Mr. Depp, do you see the text message um, from Ms. Hurd on May 24th, 2016 at 633? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. And do you understand what Ms. Hurd is referring to in this text message? Uh, um, is it all right if I just take a quick glance? Please do. Thank you. Thank you, that's better. Oh. I remember, yes, <clears throat> I recall this. And what do you recall about this? That it made no sense to me. It, 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 it just didn't make any sense to me, especially about, well, as long as you don't file, nobody will know. No, it just didn't, I, Again, I'm not all that familiar with these types of things, but if, uh, I mean, if it's two people in a relationship and the relationship is ending um, in any case, the outcome is divorce. So I, I, I didn't understand these explanations of this can happen or it cannot happen or and I only did this because my lawyers said to um, um, to, to just didn't make any sense to me and and uh, it looked like uh, <clears throat> she was kind of grabbing at straws trying to figure out what in fact to do Mr. Depp I'd like to just ask you about a couple statements Ms. Heard makes in this text message she first says, just to confirm that the cover letter is completely private and has nothing to do with any public record. Do you see that? The first sentence in the text message? Yes, I do. Do you know what cover letter Ms. Hurd is referring to? No, I don't. Okay. And then she says, and only included the domestic violence slash restraining order stuff because I called the lawyer when the cops were here and I didn't know what to do or why that happened and was scared. Do you see that? Yes. Do you know what Ms. Hurd is referring to when she said that? No. And then dropping down to the bottom, it says two lines up, I thought you filed. Do you see that? Yes. 
And do you have any understanding as to why Ms. Hurd thought you had already filed? No. I had, I had on the, the night of the 20th uh, was, was when I told her on the phone that I was going to file. Um, for divorce and in the way that I had explained it to keep everything nice and calm and even um, but on the 23rd chief filed and um, so I, I, I had I, I hadn't had a chance to file. Um, Your Honor, I would move um, plaintiff's exhibit 487, specifically the portions from page 492 to 494 into evidence. So you just want page 492 to 494? Yes, Your Honor, it's a it's a 700 page document. Okay, so just, I just page 40, well, <laughs> Are you gonna ever put more 487 in, I guess is the question. I believe so, Your Honor. So this is 487A? Certainly, that would make sense. Okay, so 487A, page 492 to 494. You gotta love it when exhibits have sub-exhibit numbers. That's right, good times. You here. don't want to hit the jury with a 700 pager. <laughs> 490, that would be three pages, if that's correct. That's correct. Okay, 492 to 494, okay. I have to be honest, I've never had that one with the, the sub-exhibit oh. numbers. That's the first. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I wish we could get a zoomed in image of this. Holy wall of text. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, blue, we have, I don't think we got anything hers. on that one. Blue is hers, green is his. That checks out, Mr. right? Jack, <laughs> her did no, Amber, you don't look crazy from this. Order against you, correct? Yes, she did. She's got those and, crazy girlfriend and texts. What did, I believe you already said this, but some people like text messages. What date was that? There's a lack of emojis. That's is true. This is very Kurt, true. that's a treatise. That's not a text. And where were you when you learned that Miss Heard had um, actually filed a temporary restraining order against you? I don't. I don't recall if we had left for Europe as yet. Um, that is the Hollywood vampires for the tour. So I was either um, in New York State rehearsing and uh, preparing to go to Europe or I was already in Europe. I'd have to check the, <clears throat> the, the tour dates. Did you find out on the 27th or a time, uh, shortly thereafter? No, I found out on the 27th. It was everywhere. What do you mean when you say it was everywhere? It was... Um, It was multiplying and multiplying and multiplying throughout media, throughout. Going viral. Um, social media throughout um, so-called sort of straight media or whatever. <laughs> um, and uh, I was taken aback a bit. Um, if we could take this down and please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 411. Mr. Depp, is this some of the media coverage that you were referring to? M many things of this uh, of this nature, yes. Many. And do you recall actually seeing this specific article? I, I don't remember seeing this specific article. Um, but there were already plenty. Um, uh, and certainly more than I was happy to go through. I, I think w w once you read one or two of them, 
um, the general idea is is uh, I mean the the point had been made um, clearly. Your Honor, I'd move um, plaintiffs' exhibit four eleven into evidence. Any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, four eleven in evidence. Oh, we're bringing in the media effects. Yep. Goes to damages, right? Um, sure does. Take this down and pull up uh, plaintiff's exhibit 414. That's the damn Hollywood reporter. Mr. Depp. Yes. Do you recognize this article at all? Um, I, I, I remember yeah, I don't know if it was this one in particular, but I do remember seeing all the various uh, reasons behind the or re her reasons behind um, her uh, needing to to get a temporary restraining order, uh, a TRO against me, um, which they just started to uh, um, metastasize into these. Uh, uh, there were the abuse allegations, then there was al alcohol, and then there was drugs and violence and. It just, uh, it was uh, already <clears throat> right then and there before my eyes spinning out of control. Uh, and there was not a word that I could uh, say. Metastasize is such Your a Honor, great word for that process. It was nice. Oh, yeah. 14 into evidence. Yeah, so good with words. Oh, yeah. He is. Oh, and if we could a half take admission this down of the now, photo I should put expect. Up plaintiff's exhibit 409. Yep. It does invoke cancer chat. That's why it's so good. Mm-hmm. And Your Honor, um, if I could move Plaintiff's Exhibit 409 into evidence as well. Any objection with 409? No objection. All right, 409 in evidence. Thank you. Mr. Depp, do you recall seeing this People magazine article? I remember. Man, that looks like a tab yes, to people. And when did you see it? Right when it so young that photo was released, right when it he's aged a lot in the last came out. five or six years. Did you speak to anyone about this article? Yes, I'm sure I did. spoke to lots of people. Who did you speak it? to? Heavy mouth blocking, mostly friends in my. Sister Christy, mostly friends, um, and certainly the the, the band. Um, uh, and my and my kids. I had to uh, alert them that there might be some ugly. Ugly, ugly things coming out um, <clears throat> that that were most assuredly going to put me in the position of um, uh, some violent, drug-addled, alcoholic, uh, uh, you know, um, just reprobate 
and I wanted to warn them before uh, they were approached with the People magazine cover in school from by other kids. You know, sure. I, I, I wanted to be able to tell, explain to them that this was going to be visible uh, and it's going to be everywhere. And uh, I apologize to them that this was happening. <clears throat> Had you ever been accused of physically abusing a woman before this point? No. No. Honest. How would you describe the impact of these allegations at the time they were made? And Arnold, if you could please take this down. I, I've, I've, I've felt ill. I felt sick. I mean, I sick in a sense that but I there was no tr truth in it there was no truth in it whatsoever and the fact that it was coming down on me so hard um, and so quickly and how it it, it gained momentum around the world. Um, and then you notice people looking at you differently. And then you notice calls start coming from agents. And that was the line we were producers. waiting for for a week. Yep. Um, that sort of thing. This was, this was a, this was a, bef this was before, in fact, the Me Too movement had uh, had uh, come around. This was a while before that, so I, I couldn't have expected the Me Too movement to happen. But um, once that happened, then it it just went into skyrocket mode so you're you're showered with uh, uh with, you know you're, you're running between drops of lava you're trying to run between raindrops that are that 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 kill you um and destroy you so I was very confused. I was I was very hurt because, um, as I said before, when you when you're in a relationship and you you do give your your truth to to intimate truths to to that person that you're with. And then they start to use all that information that I, and, and stretch it out into something that is completely shocking because it, as I said, it, it, it just didn't, it just didn't happen. And so I felt like it was incredibly cruel and treachery. I felt it was treachery. It was, it, it, it was, uh, I don't know if she wanted me to just be erased or drop dead or, or, or just uh, let me stick around and allow her to ruin my life for a while and um and 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 uh and uh go out of her way to shame me and um, hurt my kids and hurt people who I've known for many many years um no it was uh 
I mean, to say that it was unfair is, 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 is about the largest understatement that I, <clears throat> it's actually the smallest understatement. I mean, the, the, it, 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 it controlled my every waking second from the moment that I woke up until the moment that I dropped, even on the road playing shows, you'd go out and you'd play for an hour and a half or two hours and you'd do your best to get through that. And I, I can remember getting off of the, uh, finishing the show, getting on the bus with the other band members and just going to the back of the bus and uh, just, it's just, you know, you had to get it out. So I just sat back and in the back of the bus and uh, cried and hid it from people. Mr. Jeff, did you ever have, did you ever discuss Ms. Hurd's domestic abuse allegations with any um, producers or directors in the, in the movie industry? Um, only if they fell into the category of friends, for example, Tim, uh, Tim Burton, who was uh, one of my dearest friends and uh, known him since we made Edward Scissorhands together in 1990. We've been <clears throat> very, very, very close friends ever since then. Um, Surprised you didn't say this man named Tim Burton. Um, yeah, just. <laughs> friends, you know, uh, I, you may have heard of him. I, uh, and and then, of course, as we were on the road, uh, you know, the, the, the fellows in the band, you know, Alice, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Alice Cooper is the singer of the vampires, who's a dear friend, and um, Joe Perry from Aerosmith is in the band and he's also a dear friend. And then the, um, a couple of the other members are just, are just yeah, very close friends. And uh, I was uh, bereft of any, I, you just don't know what to say anymore. You just know what to, so I, I, I Tried not to talk about it very much at all, but <clears throat> just to friends. Mr. Depp, when did you and Miss Heard divorce? When was the divorce final? Yes. The divorce was final January 2017 on Friday the 13th. And he would take note of that, wouldn't how he? Were, how were your totally divorce would. proceedings resolved ultimately? I'm surprised he didn't get a tattoo of it. Mm -hmm. My you don't team know. of uh, <laughs> lawyers, which included uh, two of my entertainment lawyers, uh, a divorce attorney, um, and, two, and two more attorneys that were on uh, Blair Burke and... Uh, someone else uh, they they I wanted to I wanted to for lack of a better word I wanted to fight it I wanted to fight it because it was there because there wasn't an ounce not a grain not a molecule of truth to it so I wanted to fight it they He was speaking about what he wanted to do in the context of the divorce. I understand. I, I think the next one was going to be, they said, I don't know if that's different than that. So, okay. You can do your next question. Sure, certainly. Um, did you pay Ms. Hurd any money in connection with your divorce? Yes. And how much was that? Seven million dollars. Um, her settlement, she wanted uh, seven million dollars. I believe that was the settlement, wasn't it? Uh, uh, yes. 
seven million dollars. And was there a joint statement that you and Ms. Heard released? Yes, that's what I was getting. Um, the advice that I was given was to not to fight. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Um, who wrote the joint statement? I have no idea. Lawyers. <laughs> That's how we roll. Did you approve the joint statement before sure. it was Accurate. issued? I'll put it this way. I, I wasn't given much of a choice. Could we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 408? And Mr. Depp, do you see um, the second paragraph from the bottom of this page? Is that the joint statement that you and Ms. Heard released together? That's the joint statement that was released, yes. And could you please read that joint statement for the jury? Our relationship was intensely passionate and at times volatile, but always bound by love. Neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. There was never any intent of physical or emotional harm. Amber wishes the best for Johnny in the future. Amber will be donating financial proceeds from the divorce to a charity. What happened after this joint statement was issued, Mr. Depp? I'm not sure any of those sentences are true. <laughs> right. What happened after that? Um, I, 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 I suppose, suppose, you know, the next move was to start making um, payments. Man, she's smug right now. Miss her, um, is that? There were scheduled payments. Um, and then at a certain point, um, Ms. Hurd had, uh, Ms. Hurd had made statements to the press saying that the seven million was going to be, was the seven million was the settlement and that seven million was going to be split up between two, sh two charities. One was the ACLU and the other was the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, which it, in, in, in fact was a, a, um, a breach of the agreement. Neither one of us were supposed to speak about details, money, anything of that nature. So when Ms. Heard breached that agreement, that was when I asked Ed White, my business manager, to send the first payments directly to the charities in we Ms. Did. Heard's name. Um, and after I did that, um, Ms. Ms. Heard, uh, <clears throat> Ms. Heard was very, very angry that I had made those first payments. And she went into a kind of a tirade about how I should be charged. She got double. mad. He actually did his charity Seven. work. I should be charged yeah. 14 million. So well, that, uh, because she I mean, that's that self help on a contract. There's all a, sorts of uh, tax break. <laughs> yeah, well, she thought she was going to get a tax Mr. break. Depp, between yeah. the time that the joint statement was released and the time that the op ed came out, how many movies did you work on in that time period? If you can recall. Good question. Uh, 
uh, when did the joint statement come out? Was it, uh, I'm sorry. Could we scroll up, please? I'll withdraw the question for the moment. In the time leading from the divorce through the, um, excuse me, in the time period between when your divorce was finalized and the release of the op-ed in December 2018, do you have an estimate as to how many television or movie projects you worked on? I. I don't exactly, I don't exactly. Um, I believe there was another, maybe a smaller tour with, with the vampires. Um, and I, I can't, it's, it, I don't remember, it's hard to remember. Your lawyers are trying to set the movies. baseline for how That's much okay. the op-ed damaged Sorry. you, Johnny. Uh, Your Honor, I apologize. Can we please move into evidence exhibit 408? Sorry, the objection to 408? That's why his IMDB yeah, or something. Right. I was going to say, refresh his recollection. Yes. <laughs> yes, you okay. need this. All right. We can redact that in okay. and put so it in So we have redacted 408 with just a statement then? Is that what you're talking about? Just that statement. Okay. All right. I mean, that 17, 18 is at least like Grindelwald, right? All right thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we could please pull up plaintiff's exhibit one. Mr. Depp, do you recognize this document? Excuse me, yes, I do. And what is it? Um, this is Ms. Hurd's uh, op-ed for the Washington Post that I believe came out in uh, December of 18. You got it. First try. I, I recognize. It. Yes, I certainly remember this. <laughs> and have you actually read this op-ed? Yes, I have. And what do you think of it? Its contents? Bullshit. <laughs> what do you think of it is such a broad question. Well, it was a hell of a start, I'd say, in terms of the um, the title. If you could, if you could, can, can we scroll down a, a little bit, uh, just for a sec? Um, Because, because I'd like to make a, a point. Going, reading it and reading the words that uh, she had uh, written um, about what was obviously, um, it was, obviously referring to our relationship. It was obviously referring to me two years ago. Uh, you know, yes. uh, it, it all matched yeah. up. And so it was clearly about me. Um, and then I read the rest of the article where she talks about, if you could go down, uh, scroll down just a little bit. <laughs> After the Imagine a Powerful Man is a Ship, um, Please get past because the she goes into mm -hmm. she, she she talks about in 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 this section of the piece she talks about the plight of 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 women uh, not just in Hollywood but in 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 general in the world and there were. There were many things that I did not disagree with in terms of this 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 part of the article. Um, sure, I, I I understand um, 
anyone's passion to right the wrongs um, that have that have been done for countless years against any any being who's suffered uh, uh, at the hands of domestic violence, be it um, women, men, children. Um, that's that's something, of course, coming from my background, that I I I, I am very very against sure. any bullying of any human being, any forced violence, any any any. Any, any, any injustice committed against any human being. Um, sure. So all this part of the article was strangely. I mean, I, it, it was. It, I understood it very well, and I, um, I, I can applaud some of this. I can, I can absolutely say that I believe. That it was it was very well um, done with regard to violence against women or violence against anyone. Um, it, it just it just seemed kind of the strange other side, like a you know like a two headed coin. Uh oh. Mr. Depp, um, did you experience any consequences after the release of the op-ed? Absolutely. And what yeah. were those? Oh, I, well, I believe it was, uh, I don't think it took Disney very long, maybe a couple of days to, uh, announced that uh, that uh, that I had been uh, um, removed from the Pirates of the Caribbean um, films franchise um, which I learned about reading in a, in reading one of these type of well, some magazine the article where Sean Bailey was quoted, which was very she odd to me. Anyone who's in pain. Who's in pain? She stares at me. Like conversations in... with. Oh, she's hiding Disney a smile people, at this part. Um, yeah. Even to the point of where they were well, asking me to yeah. come uh, back and write pirates. Yeah. Sorry. We can move on. If you want to, if you want. Yeah, it's like she's admiring so, her uh, handiwork. Uh, but, so I can read it out of yeah someone's article, but not from the man's mouth. So what happens? Next uh, question. Oh, okay. Yeah, would be right. Dev, what do you what to what to your understanding is the status of Pirates Six? Uh, at this point, rules of the yes. court, John. Um, oh. I believe it's in dangle mode. <laughs> What does that mean? Mr. Depp, have you ever uh, limbo. physically assaulted? We, we might refer to it as limbo. Have you ever yeah. sexually assaulted Miss Heard? Never. Certainly not. What have you lost as a result of Miss Heard making these allegations against you? Nothing less than everything. Nothing less than everything, because when the allegations were made, when the allegations were um, rapidly cir circling the globe, um, telling people that I was... Uh, That's actual sadness. 
Why? Think so? uh, a drunken. Yeah. She can't fake that very well. Cocaine fueled menace um, who beat women suddenly in my 50s. Question, um, what exactly is it she's sad about? <laughs> It's over, you, you know. You're you're done. So, um, what did it do to me? What effect did it have on me? I'll put it to you this way: No matter the outcome of this trial, the second the allegations were made against me, the accusations. The second that more and more of these things, as I said, metastasized and turned into fodder for the media. Um, yeah. Once that happens, uh, or once that happened, I lost then. That is to say, I lost because th th that is not a thing that anyone is going to just put on your back for a short period of time. I will live with that for the rest of my life because of the allegations and because it was such a high profile case. So I lost then no matter the outcome of this trial. Oof. I'll carry that for the rest of my days. And uh, it never had to be that way. It never had to happen. And I don't quite understand why it did in the way that it did. I have no further questions, Your Honor. I think we're gonna end early. Yep. I think it's... I see we'd rather start tomorrow morning. Yep. I'm perfectly happy to start now, Your Honor, or tomorrow morning, whatever you want. Why don't we go ahead and start a little bit today, just oh. because okay, then. time is not on our side. Okay. Certainly. All right, thank you. Cross-examination. Cross did uh, did Hurt's team reject starting tomorrow? Is that what happened right there? <laughs> no, no, the judge wants to. to do more. Okay. That was really effective. I missed like all of today and I was really hard on him yesterday, but that I come in for this little bit and I'm like, this is really good for him. You missed a hell of a day, man. <laughs> that was like a roll. That was like good a roll. Good Mr. Robin Bourne. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that in the last little bit, we've, we've gotten to the reason why we're here. And I'd like to start with that. Um, if you could please pull up plaintiff's exhibit two. Michelle. Yeah, interestingly, by the time we got to the end of his questions, it almost okay. became apparent that he didn't care so much about the defamation or the damages that those components. Your Honor, of the I believe story he was this is either in evidence or has been stipulated uh, as part of the opening. I assume no objection to two. No objection, Your Honor. Okay. Permission to publish? Yes, absolutely. This article, this opinion piece in the middle of the page there, Mr. Depp, this is the opinion piece that Amber Heard wrote in the Washington Post that was published on December 18th, 2018. Correct? It's a different title. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 doesn't that say December 19th on it? You, At the top of the page, doesn't that say December 19th, 2018? Go ahead and blow I believe that, out, that the Michelle. 2018 was the online, is it not? Okay, so December 18th, December 19th, this piece in the middle of the page is the opinion piece Ms. Heard wrote, right? Um, it, could you make it a little bigger? Uh, my eyes sure. are getting smaller. <laughs> my eyes are getting smaller. <laughs> and this is what you're suing her over, correct? Um, I'm suing her over 
um, defamation um, and um, the various um, falsities that she used to bring my life to an end. And you understand, Mr. Many Depp, things. you understand, Mr. Depp, that you cannot, you, you are not suing her for any damage, alleged damage, or any accusations she made prior to writing this article. You're, you're aware of that. You'd agree with that, right? Could you say that again, Mr. Rottenborn? You are not His name. bringing a lawsuit against her, bringing her into court in Virginia for anything that she did prior to writing this article, correct? You know that you can't do that, right? I, I have to say that I, I as I said, at the top of this, I've never seen this version of the op-ed piece. Uh, the version that I saw was the other one that I identified that was on the 18th. This is on the 19th, I believe the 18th. And two years quite before- Quite possibly, sorry, was quite possibly, um, Maybe that was the online version that came out first. Two so years before either the online different, or the print. I'm sorry, I was just no, I think I think answer. you answered my question, sir. Thank you. Uh, oh, no. Two years before the online and the print version came out, mm -hmm. in 2016, Amber obtained a domestic violence restraining order against you from a California court, correct? Yes, sir. And in obtaining that domestic violence restraining order in May 2016, she accused you of domestic abuse, right? Yes, sir. And Michelle, if you could blow up the. Um, and this is these statements the are true no matter what. Down, this please. is what I. This is this is what we said at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had a pretty solid uh, rise. And in, in the opinion piece that's before you, published in the Washington Post, she wrote, "Then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse." Correct. I can't say correct. She she wrote it. And the or piece doesn't did. contain your name, correct? Don't fight that. No, it does not. Dude. And other than mentioning the fact of abuse accusations that were made two years prior to the publication of this article, the opinion piece doesn't contain any details of your time together, correct? Oh, I, I think that her, um, I, I think it's very easy to write a piece and put the finger on someone without saying their name. Uh, there are Implication, sneaky exactly. ways of um, writing things. Good answer. And as I've Excellent. seen also um, what the ACLU uh, and their team had to say, uh, they clearly described to Ms. Hurd that I'll move to strike this as hearsay, Your Honor. Yep, 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 yep. And, yep. and, and, and I appreciate- <laughs> Sorry, it's evidence. Next, next, okay. Johnny, keep going. Ah, stop playing lawyer. Thanks. Like yeah. I said, that's, Mr. that's Depp, a bad road to go down, Johnny. You've gotten a, 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 to go. a lot of chance to talk and, and I'm trying to be respectful of the court's time and the jury's time. So I'm gonna ask you that that question again, because I think it's a it's a pretty simple yes or no question, which is- You'd like other it to be, sir. Other, other than mentioning the fact I was going to say of pissed. abuse accusations the made two years here, prior. Here. This is this awful opinion about, piece man. does not contain any details of your time together. Yes or no? It refers it back to the headlines that came out. Fragments. There you go. This piece here. I don't know. Is this word for word with the other piece? And the article discusses proposed legislation that which you just talked about. Correct. You'd agree with that, right? Well, well, yes. Yeah. And it discusses, discusses Amber's experiences after she had separated from you. You'd agree with that, right? Two years ago, I became the public face for domestic violence. 2018, <laughs> 2016. <coughs> it seemed to me that it, uh, 
the puzzle was going to work no, no matter your angle, sir. <laughs> so, so there you go. I'll take that response as a no that this piece does not discuss. Uh, that, that this piece does not discuss anything I'll prior give credit. That was a good to Miss Hurd separating battle. from you, and it only discusses her experiences, her biographical experiences after she separated from you. Correct? Uh, I, I can't say that. Okay. Now, you're claiming that yeah. due to Amber's allegations of abuse, you can't be in Pirate Six, correct? Um, I, I'm, I'm saying that after uh, everything had uh, um, basically hit its media targets and the hit pieces kept coming, it would be, I mean, I would be a real simpleton to not think that there was an effect on my career based on Ms. Hurd's words, whether they mentioned my name or not. You became aware prior to the publication of this op-ed that you were likely out for Pirate Six, that Disney was considering dropping or, or dramatically shrinking your role, correct? No. Can you pull up uh, Defense Exhibit 113, please? He was looking for that no. What does he got? Yeah, does it? but does it actually support the statement that Ron Bourne is saying? <clears throat> yeah, he's saying Disney has made their decision before December 2018. I'm bet Disney would go for it now if they thought um, they could do it. Yeah. yeah. Too much money I, to pass up. Mm -hmm. But what he one. now? There's so much pain associated with it now. Are you changing on me? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Your Honor. But it's the next one, so it's... Okay, 114? Right. $50 million buys you a lot of comfort. <laughs> sorry, one more. Let's 115, please. 115. Twenty-fifth October, two thousand eighteen. Hot is in the room. <laughs> Mr. Depp, do you personal see personal dramas? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> do you have any questions, Ron? I, I I did. I was just giving him time to to read. Do you see the 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 date of this article um, beneath those bullet points is October twenty-fifth, two thousand eighteen? Do you see that? Yes, I do. And. Do you see that the headline, Hide the Rum, Johnny Depp is out as Honor, Jack Sparrow in Disney's Pirates of the objection. Caribbean? Yes. Objection, hearsay. It is hearsay. It totally it's, is hearsay. I was asking if he Very became much. aware. I'm not offering an article this for the a, truth. This is his an awareness. article from the Daily Mail, Your Honor. Uh, you just read it right, to the I'm jury. Asking his, his awareness <laughs> that he was likely I'll out. I'll allow that question. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Depp. Yes, sir. Were you aware that as of October 25th, 2018, about two months before this op-ed was published, he's offering that, that for the being truth of the matter asserted by the it way, is in this article that Johnny Depp <laughs> is out as Jack Sparrow in Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean film franchise as actor battles financial issues and personal dramas. Were you aware of that? Um, I, I wasn't aware of that, but it doesn't surprise me given that two years had gone by of just That's why he's trying to get you to say 2016 doesn't count for um, this. Worldwide talk about me being this wife, Peter. Understood, but so you would I'm say I'm sure that Disney was trying to um, cut ties to be safe. The Me Too movement was in full swing at that point. Right, and to the extent they were trying to cut ties to be safe, that was as long as two months before you wrote the op-ed. Objection calls for speculation. I'll allow it if you can answer. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, the question. To the extent that Disney was trying to cut ties with you, as you say, to be safe, mm -hmm. that was as much as two months prior to you publish or to, to Miss Heard publishing the op ed in the Washington Post, correct? Objection uh, lies uh, foundation. I'll allow it if you can answer. October is two months before December. That's correct. That's the right, that's the right answer. Um, <laughs> it's odd that they were going to release me from my role as Captain Jack Sparrow, but yet kept me on every ride across the world in the Pirates of the Caribbean rides. Good Probably point. should have shut him up in, before uh, this. Los Angeles or the Hollywood one or whatever it is. Uh, Jeez, even he's falling into the trap of letting Johnny talk. Um, 
for sure. Yeah, yeah uh, you, would, you, know, you would think he would have said so thank you for responding to my question. I didn't get it after any of this. Arrives, it didn't stop, so an he's going to move to strike. He's going to move to strike at the end of this, right? But it's not going to matter because the jury heard it. The barrel didn't stop selling anything. They just didn't want there to be something trailing behind me that they'd find. And you aren't aware, you said oh, Pirate 6, in, in your view, is dangling. You're, you're not aware of if or when Pirate 6 will be made, correct? Uh, no, sir. I, I, and, I, I, no. and the fact is, Mr. Depp, if Disney came to you with $300 million and a million alpacas, <laughs> nothing on this earth would get you to go back and work with Disney on a Pirates of the Caribbean film. Correct? That is true, Mr. Robinborn. Objection, okay, so why does no Johnny harm. like alpacas? And you couldn't identify so there's no a harm single in movie that you did between the divorce and the op-ed in response to Ms. Meyer's oh, questions just now. You said there was a small tour um, for, of your band between that, but you couldn't Alpacas. identify a single movie Alpacas that you did in, the chat. in the Alpaca year watch. or two prior to the op-ed. Yeah. You can make correct? me look up Johnny Depp IMDb here. Uh, I, uh, it's from his deposition. You, he made that reference. When I'm oh, working okay. on a film, I do my work. And when I'm around on that film, I've done my work and I move on to the next. So I, I, I haven't seen the majority of my films. I've seen a few only if I had to. But uh, so I, 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 it doesn't come right. He's got the way 12 to my listed head. here for 17 films and 18. Films are not the first thing that I think about. And you spent a long time talking about the impact of the abuse allegations um, made in Ms. Hurd's obtaining the temporary restraining order in, um, or the domestic violence restraining order in May 2016, right? Sure. And you said, you testified that you wanted to fight it, right? But the fact is, you never fought the allegations in court in 2016. It was only after Ms. Hurd published this op-ed in 2018 that you, that you fought them. You never tried to fight him in 2016, did you? I was advised by my attorneys not to fight. In fact, you signed the not only the we, we read a statement, but let's let's pull up. Um... Now, how are you going to use a statement slash non disparagement and also justify her op ed in 2018 at the let's same time? Up, this is some um... dancing he has to do here. Uh, DX 1458, please. But that would make him that would make her in violation of some that's sort what of I, yeah, that's what I meant about defamation. They got to dance a little sidestep on this one. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Mr. Sure. Depp, you see that this uh, this says marriage of Depp, uh, correct? I see that it's a, it's, a, it's a legal document. Can you scroll to the signature page, Michelle, please? Is that your signature? This was a document that you signed as part of your divorce proceedings, correct? That's my signature indeed, yes. Okay. Um, your Honor, move for admission of this document. Any objection to that document? No objection, Your Honor. All right, 1458 in evidence. May we publish, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Depp, that is your signature on the right, correct? Yes, it is. John dated August 15, 2016, right? That's what it says, yes. And um, this is you, you, you were, um, this is a document you signed, right? Yeah. For the third time, that is my signature, yes. Yeah. Go to paragraph 27, please. He did ask it a number of times. Yeah. Paragraph? Paragraph 27. Okay. And this paragraph is a joint statement that both sides agreed to release. And if you look in the, the block quote there, it contains the quote, or it contains the statement, neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. Neither party has made false accusations. For also says neither gain. party shall make any public statements right. regarding the marriage, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, okay. No, I, I Get think that on read against this, Richard. I really do. <sighs> on a like, that, that was, was not so effective. signed in August of 2016. 
correct? Is that the same one that I signed three times before? No, yeah, come on. Well, I just I wanted to make clear that you, you signed that clear. in the summer of 2016, <laughs> two years before <laughs> Ms. Heard published her op-ed. I don't have anything else for the for the day, Your Honor. Okay, Your Honor. Okay, all right. We'll go ahead and take our evening. If that's okay. It's probably okay. best to go calm down, for Johnny me. Depp. I was the yeah. at 5 o'clock anyway, right. so that's fine. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's the that will conclude our day today. Again, don't do any outside research. Help. Do not talk to anybody. We'll see you in the morning. Okay. All right. Have a good evening. Yeah, no, I I, I like what he's trying to do on the law, and I think he's right on the law. And you think he's right on the law, Richard? I or do think he's right on the law. No, and I think actually I thought I thought Johnny Depp was actually winning that a little bit. I was I was wondering who's going to win this fight because. Johnny Depp effectively refusing to answer the question about how the defamation claim works was clearly getting under his skin. And I'm sitting yeah. back here thinking, I wonder Again, if he's going to get your under his skin first. You're still testifying yeah. um, to include your attorneys, okay? We'll yeah. see you in the morning, okay? 10 o'clock? Because I think the first to, the first to lash out or be aggressive loses uh, uh, in terms of Rottenborn and, uh, and Mr. Depp. Yeah. But God, I, that belligerence and smugness and, and need to control the situation, it's so easily read against him, in my opinion. Yeah, he was. Well, I, I, he could have also been very tired at the end of the day. I mean, he's been Absolutely. testifying for seven hours. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, definitely very tired. So, you he know, it's, it's held his own, though. I almost feel like it's good that he got a little bit of a taste of cross examination because then he can kind of say, "Okay, this is what it's gonna be like." This Recalibrate, to prepare for tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, he can get, he can get. Uh, oh yeah, because now that he's done with direct, he can he can talk to his attorneys, right? No, 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 no he can't. No, not until he's no. done testifying entirely. Oh. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't mean they won't do it. <laughs> oh. Never um, suggest an officer of the court would uh, um, tamper with a witness. Roller suitcase. I don't know. I would suggest officers of the court suitcase. officered falsified evidence. <sighs> that that roller suitcase to answer your question, Spidey. That is one Sorry. of the attorneys. Uh, the, the legal teams always roll in with all kinds of suitcases and bankers boxes and all kinds of okay, stuff. So, I saw your comment earlier about how it looked like it was like a suitcase, like she was ready to run or something yeah, so right she, she already has she already has constantly this look of like i'm i'm above this on her face a lot of the time i've commented on this in my videos to where she has this thing that she, her eyes are always sort of shifting like this and she's always looking around and sort of doing a lot of this and this is something we see a lot in like snobbish people who just don't, you know you, you can't hold my attention so it i'm not saying it's her thing to have that roller bag with the handle up like that but it's just a bad look when they cut to her and already yeah. she has this sort of um uh what's shifty the word eyed look yeah sort of already like i'm above this i don't want to be here plus there's this bag that's really selling that image if i was on her legal team i would make sure that that handle is all the way down and we can't see it because it's just not a good look overall for how invested she is in this yeah yeah but that, good point. you know i'm We've already admit that I'm I'm crazy and I look too much into things, so maybe it's cute. Go. She's that's, got her that's own. What we like about no, you know, the juries do that too, though. They look at those kind of <laughs> details, um, and and th those leave impressions for them. You know, I, I've I've heard stories of where there's you know in in a criminal case where they show the evidence of you know the room where it happened, and then there's some little item off in the corner that no one has talked about, no one has indicated, has nothing to do with anything, and yet the jury is like, why did no one talk about this? <laughs> you know and then that that becomes a whole like 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 sticking point for them for some reason yeah yeah um, juries yeah it's like for me whenever like someone takes a meeting and they keep their jacket on the whole time it, it like like not i don't mean like a blazer i mean like a jacket jacket i'm, I'm canadian oh yeah they keep their jacket jacket on the whole time I'm like can you sit down take it off can we get Spidey you judge the crap out of me in every business meeting i've ever been in i i would be so self-conscious <laughs> Oh, I love those. So, yeah. um, what did what did we think I've about? Had a couple of let's, notes. Okay, yeah, let's let's get some of your notes, Spidey. Okay, quite a bit of mess here, but let's let me just blast through all this, and if you guys have any questions, let me know. So, uh, okay, um, so when they were talking about um, the article, they were so when I'm I'm back when his team was questioning him, so his lawyers were okay. questioning him. This is before the cross. So, direct examination, yeah. Direct examination. When they were showing him, I wrote article. I guess it was the article, not in People magazine, but was there one before that that they showed him? 
Uh, there were a couple. Yes. They did the Hollywood Paul Reporter. And then that's the one. Maxine. That's the one. So when they showed him that, that's the first time I noticed for almost the first time ever that Amber was holding her gaze on him. Usually, if you look at her almost in any witness up until now, it's very rare that she keeps her eyes on someone. Typically, she's looking down, writing something. She looks up for a second and like it's almost like a pit stop. She looks up and then over to her lawyers and over and back here. She has a hard time really looking at people. This is something we see in people when they don't want to face what's being said. So it's very normal that she would do this. I'm not saying it indicates deception, just that obviously so far we're seeing witnesses that are on his side. So she has a hard time facing that. When this article came up, she was looking at, at him, you know, dead focused. And a lot of people said in the comments that at some point we saw a quick little smirk. I think she's enjoying twisting the knife. Like I, I planted this article, you know, this article hurt you. And I'm now twisting the knife. And, and it's I was actually, kind of great. I was, I was kind of wishing that we could see her face when he was talking about how for so long afterwards, it was like morning until night, it was on his mind. It was like basically just consuming his entire brain. Basically. I kind of wish that they would have cut to her to see her reaction then, because that sounds very much what somebody like a, like a total narcissist would, would absolutely love hearing is like, I am, I like, I'm living in your head rent free forever. <laughs> I agree. And, uh, and I, and I do think, although we didn't see it in that moment, we saw moments of that. Um, even during the people magazine, she's focused on him. There was a really cool moment where when he was talking about in a relationship, you share your truth with someone. I don't know if you guys remember when he said that line and he moved the mic closer to him and he moved closer to the mic. This wasn't deliberate. There was no indication that this was planned out or that he was doing this on purpose. But as he said, the line, you tell your truth, he went closer to the mic. It's very rare that someone thinks of the concept of truth when not being truthful and does a move like that to make sure like to commit to that truth. So that was, that was really great to see because typically the concept of truth makes liars nervous. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah. Really? yeah. So, and it wasn't like, I'm going <laughs> to say this. It does. <laughs> it's not like he's going to grab the mic and go, I'm going to make sure and say this. It's just as he spoke about the concept of truth, he got comfortable and moved the mic closer, which was really awesome to see. Um, here's another thing about, about Johnny Depp. If, if he wanted to be more convincing in his anger or in his sex, a lot of people say, and I've, I've said this myself as well, they're both actors. Um, I think a lot of people give her way too much credit for a lot of the more micro expressions that we see like, Oh, come on. She's an actress. It's some of this stuff is not easy to, um, simulate in his case, if he wanted to make a more compelling case, he, he knows how to do that. Like if we look at this mm -hmm. slow cadence and I was going through his things and he's hesitating, he knows how to not do that if he doesn't want to. So I do believe that we're seeing a lot of true emotion there. Um, almost done with Johnny. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. When, yeah. When it's he it's like, about, he's, he's not overselling it. Like I said before, yeah. when, when he talks about Disney and how we lost the contract, uh, Alita, we do see what you were talking about. We do see again. She's looking at him, and there's pride there. She's leaking. She holding back on that smile. pirates contract. She does exactly. Did you? Oh, did you see that as well? Oh, I saw her. I saw her smile specifically on the point of the pirates contract. And I, I don't know I, exactly. I, I'm not as good as you. I can't guess as to that. But she definitely smiles. She tries to hide it, hide it, loses, and then like smiles into her attorney's arm. Yeah. Uh, thanks, guys, in the comments. Jay is saying, take your time. I'm, I, I just want, I, I want to hear from everyone else. I'm excited to hear everyone else. I'm just mm -hmm. going to get through this. Um, at some point after that, I commented on this in the comments. We do see genuine sadness from her. At, at one point, right after this, I'm going to go back, do a deep dive and see what's being discussed, what could have caused this. It's really hard to know what's happening in her head at that point. But we see a genuine um, uh, expression of sadness. And again, to everyone saying, She's an actress. You clearly haven't seen Amber Heard movies. Um, this is not something that she's extremely good at doing. If she could, <laughs> she would have done it earlier in the trial. There was other times where it would have been the right time to sell sadness. When he's talking about how their lives fell apart, that would have been the time to fake that if she knew how to do it. But we saw a micro expression we rarely see in her. We saw the inner corners of the eyelids go up. This is very difficult to fake. Some really experienced actors can do it. Jim Carrey can do it, for example, famously. Johnny Depp can do it. But when that, those inner corners go up and we see the grief muscle up here folding down and she had moisture in the eyes and we had over here tension as well. This is real sadness and it's not really easy to fake. And there are moments where if she knew how to fake this, she would have done it. 
Um, yeah. Really quickly, a couple of notes on the cross. Um, when when the article came up that he was made to look at, the one that the lawyers were really focusing on the fact that his name wasn't mentioned in there, we saw mm -hmm. a steady uh, rise in blink rate from Johnny. Even if he was wearing his sunglasses, we can see through that. Blink rate is something, you know, it can happen randomly, uh, typically associated with higher stress. It, it's not something... Nothing in body language is some like means anything alone. You know, you want to see other things supporting that. Well, you um, specifically got combative there, right? I mean, like that's yeah, I, and, I don't know what and, that means in body language, but he's he's no, you're, he's prepping for battle. You, I mean, you could see it in a change in demeanor. And, I don't know what that means. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a couple of clues to exactly that. Hope, Hope, I think you're becoming an expert. I think something ha something's happening here. We're like, I yield the floor. You need to no, start no. a second channel. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Uh, he, every now and then he throws something and go, yeah, dude, good job. Thanks for, yeah, that was giving me my thing. Um, he does get very <laughs> sassy. He, he gets very sassy, which is very rare for him. And we see genuine anger at some point because Johnny often uses eyebrows to illustrate. They go up a lot. They go down a lot. He's very, he's very uh, active with his eyebrows. But at some point, and again, I have to go back and deep dive and see what's being discussed at that point. But we see the eyebrows come down and we see two distinct lines over here that form. And this is something that even when, because he often goes down with the eyebrows, but even when he does that, we don't see that musculature here. So this is tense and we see tension in the jaw. So he's upset. His cadence is approaching normal human levels for once. Because typically right. he's really slow, really hesitating, really thinking. During the cross-examination, I'm, you know, I'm sure you guys must have noticed this, he had a normal cadence. He was answering yeah. things at a normal rate and speed. So I think he's 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 agitated, he's aggravated. There's something he wants to get out here. He wants, that's another thing. He wants to answer these questions. He's ready to take these questions and he's hitting them with aggression. Liars tend to get defense, to get offensive. And there was a bit of both here. There were, but I did see quite a bit. He went on the offense. Like, yeah, this is the third time I'm oh, saying this. He, yes, he knew damn well what he was being asked on that op-ed and the 2018, 2016 stuff. I, he was, I think he was messing around a bit. He yeah. well, right, and and the thing is, he also he's indicated that he understands what the objections are all about. He understands a lot of like you know he's he he was he was breaking the fourth wall so to speak by by talking yeah. about like objecting to his own hearsay, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and and so I think I think that you know you're you're absolutely right. Like he 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 yeah. understands what he's saying and he also understands what's being asked of him and why it's being asked of him and so, so yeah, i think so, that so, so, sorry, it sorry, sounds sorry. like like he was going to be it sounded like he was going to be giving he was going to be asked to to give some kind of like like a legal response almost like like what is defamation? I, I actually thought you were going to get an objection that says calls for legal conclusion at, at some point there because uh, yeah. they're asking him <laughs> about like the, the the details of how the defamation law yeah works in virginia I agree. and i'm mm -hmm. like dude uh, she defamed me. My life was ruined. Ask the lawyers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought yeah, that was a bit much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's a good point. So in criminal interrogation, which is, you know, where a lot of my background is, we see when, when someone's accused of something and there was the, the lawyer did have a bit of an accusatory tone here. Um, oh. Although he never directly accused, we see people who are being deceptive get defensive for short bursts because they're putting on a plane. They go, how dare you suspect me of this? I, I would never. And they start doing what we call resume statements, which is building up their own or convincing statements, which is I, I'm not the type of person who would ever do this kind of thing. Defensive, But then they calm down because now they want to help you again. Someone who's innocent will usually take the offense and we won't see that fade because you have effectively pissed them off and now they're pissed and they don't care what you think of them. So there's so little perception management happening with Johnny Depp, whether it's in the way he's presenting his stories, whether it's in the way that he's not showing emotion that he knows how to show. Um, there, there isn't much care about how he's coming off. He just wants to lay down the facts. I believe personally that the court of public opinion is more important to him than how this trial ends up. I think he wants to protect his reputation more than his bank. If that makes oh, sense, yeah. I, I yeah, think I laughed. the facts that came out at the end. That's mm -hmm. he, he yeah. didn't know what I, movies he was in because that's it's so important. <laughs> His attorney is trying to be like, okay, this is what the op-ed did. So we set up what this is, and then we're going to say there's nothing after it. And her client goes, I don't know what I was in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I don't care. I don't care. I, I don't. I, I don't know what's going job. on in her brain, but she's got to be like, okay, <laughs> uh, we'll table that one. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we'll get an exhibit in and we'll, we'll show it anyway. Go, but I, I laughed go. at those, Heidi, I, I laughed when you said, uh, when you talked about the, the resume diatribe, I laughed at that because I've, I've actually gotten that from opposing counsel before. And it's always fun when you get it because you know that they have nothing better to argue with. Yeah. It's not that when you build character based on nothing, like you're not, it's just, it's a fake, it's a fake appeal. Uh, one last thing I'm going to throw at you guys that I caught again, I'm going to do a deep dive on this on today, later tonight, film that. But um, one last right. thing I caught when he was talking about Disney and I think he was talking about, I just wrote Disney. So I don't remember the context. Again, I will do a deep dive on this, but he was mm -hmm. talking about in, to some respect about Disney and what their position was and what they were saying. He used the word wife beater. And that was yeah, really interesting. That was really that that word choice was so so uh, interesting to me for two reasons. First of all, psychological distancing. So psychological distancing is again in in criminal interrogations, we often use words that are less bad than what the crime itself is. So you hear when uh, people are being uh, questioned about murder, they might say something like, uh, "I didn't hurt. I didn't touch." I went nowhere near, as opposed to I didn't kill, I didn't murder. So they use, to soften the blow of what they did, they use smaller words. Famously, when uh, Bill Clinton said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, that's that woman. two psychological distancing. One is sexual relations, not sex, not an affair, you know, not these dark yeah. words, just sexual relations. And then that woman, that is literally psychological distancing, not first name, not Monica, that woman. So in this yeah. case, wife beater like he's using that word it's unlikely i'm not saying it's impossible but it's unlikely that someone who actually hit his wife or beat his wife would use such a dark word to describe it he's just throwing that word out there because he doesn't connect with that description yeah um, and I, it, was, it was also specifically the word that was used by the son when he filed his defamation case against them as well yeah. Sure was. Right. So. And, and, it's, and it's crazy that he embraces that term because somebody who, who did this and wants to start putting distance between these acts would say things like, you know, uh, aggressive or angry or, you know, sometimes I lose my temper. He's going with wife beater like that is a that is that you are you are owning that title. In other words, you're not owning that title. Well, against um, advice, I would say. I don't know. That, I, I think any lawyer would have said, you know, try not to say things like the words wife beater in front of the jury. At least yeah. Easy. Yeah. But exa to? exactly. And he's not an idiot. But for him to say that term is that, he's, you know, he's not connected to it. But it also, also, um, sort of like if I'm playing devil's advocate and I want to argue both sides, which I often do. Um, yep, love it. Yeah. The other, the other thing about using that term is it is very specific. So he's not denying being aggressive. He's not denying losing his temper sometimes. He is specifically denying beating a wife. So I do believe, personally, I've believed this from day one. I do believe that he can get hot tempered. We see this often in these sort of introverted artists when something happens, like it's because it's bottled up, so it might come out. So I do think he does throw tantrums and he does get upset and he does get angry, but I believe that he do, does not connect specifically with the title of a wife beater. In other words, no matter how bad the aggression gets, I don't think that he considers himself someone who is uh, abusive, physically abusive. Mm. That's what I got so far. Well, I think your couching language there was important, right? Because you started out saying that he didn't beat his wife. And then I think, I think what's really important is he doesn't consider himself someone that beats his wife. Because right? I, don't, I don't have the There's answer. There's a distinction. Yeah. No, I know yeah. you don't. Yeah. yeah. I, but but I, think, I think when, we, when you're reading body language, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, isn't it, it, isn't it part of it is he doesn't see himself that way. He can use that word. He can use those, sure. that language. And the law could potentially look at it differently. I mean, I think there's an argument that Amber heard might have a self-righteous view of X, Y, and Z. That doesn't mean that that's necessarily how it went down. Yeah. So, so let's, let's talk about the, the direct, the direct examination that we saw after the break, and then we'll get into the cross-examination. How, how do you guys think that the rest of that direct examination went? Can you remind me where we started back up on direct? Let me see here. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Um, going back to my notes. Well, I have a different perspective. I only saw a little bit of it today okay. and I was, and I was out, but I thought it was night and day versus yesterday. I thought Johnny Depp was doing so much better for, for a couple of reasons. One is they were fronting bad things like drug addiction and that. So you, you're just going to take your hit. Yeah. And two, he just had too much room. He was better off with specific questions or even cross 
he sort of gets to the point and answers the question. And like somebody mentioned, the cadence is up. I didn't, I didn't think about it until you mentioned it. But yeah. that's yeah. night and day in term to me, I believe you a lot more just in my soul. When, when your cadence yeah. is more normal, I think that's more believable. Yeah. That's my thought. So, so the first <laughs> thing that they talked about after the break was why didn't you stay? Or no, that was, that was after the break. Sorry. This was, uh, do, 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 do. Oh, you know what? Right after the break was when there was an audio recording that, um, I didn't, I didn't quite catch because we didn't get, yeah, we didn't get any intro for that. Yes. But um, but there was something about That's there was right. animosity and another clash. Amber once again felt it was necessary to bring uh, to bring his, uh, Johnny's son into it into that Kids. argument and to say that yeah. that she hopes that, that his uh, stepfather can teach him how to be a so man. It's all post Johnny game. It's all it's all divorce. It's joint mm -hmm. statements. It's Washington Post. It's temporary it's restraining the, orders. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And then it's uh, let's see. Oh, and the fact that it, it consumed his brain. Um, uh, the fact that the call stopped coming in. So the damages from that, um, oh, and the settlement, the settlement, the, the, the $7 million settlement that, that she pledged, she would pay half of it to the ACLU and half of it to the children's yep. hospital of Los Angeles. Um, and, and the fact that the story metastasized, metastasized, yeah, metastasized cancer. Great word, yeah, Such yeah. a great Alina, word. No, did I understand it right? She got mad at him because he actually went ahead and did some charity. And she's like, oh, my On God. I thought we were... Yeah. See, and he's so, like, look, look I, I, I'll back up the logic mm -hmm. and the morality of what Johnny Depp did. Mm -hmm. But the commercial yeah. lawyer in me says, you've got this deal. You owe her $7 million. You're going to make payments. Mm -hmm. She says something out in the press that you don't mm -hmm. like because you thought you agreed not to say specifics. And then you send her checks somewhere else. Yeah, no, that's not how that works. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know, I, and I and I I agree that is an <laughs> issue. But I was just she got so mad, like how dare you actually fulfill the promise I made? <laughs> Alita cuts me. That's down, what I thought was a, great about it. Eh, eh, <laughs> yeah, at least that's the way <laughs> I, I understood. That's the way I understood it. She got pissed that he carried out this thing she promised to do that she was yeah, never going just... to do. It's like, it's like the, the reason, I mean, what are the reasons that she would get pissed about that other than a tax break? That's what a selfish is her reason, tax break? <laughs> but, it, but it also, it, it supports what she says she was going to do with it. Right. Because she and the, still and ostensibly, it. ostensibly the statement yeah. that she made was that she's going to be doing this thing and she, and she made it for, I mean, why would you make a statement like that for, right? You would make it for the accolades for the the warmth and the oh you're such a good person obviously the divorce wasn't about money you know like all of that so it's like if if you really meant it you should want that to to be facilitated directly by your ex so that it can be done even faster you can have that organization come out and say yeah we already got paid the money awesome this person's great you know i think but you can really mean it and still want to see uh, your ex uh, spouse send it to you first. I, I there's a lot of things that I think Johnny won on today. Doing that particular thing, even I think he's even smirking when he testifies to it. Like it's you know that cheeky. you're going you're going around the horn uh, on that. It's it's a cheeky move at bare minimum. And so I, I just don't I just completely discount. And then she got mad at me for doing it because I'm like, yep, I tell you what, I would have been <laughs> mad. Like that's that is not how the contract worked. Um, no, so it's fun are, though. It is. It's definitely provocative, but, yeah. but you do it and it's like, yes, I'm doing this and I know it's going to irritate you, but you complaining about it makes you look horrible. But <laughs> yes, you know what yeah, It's going to look, you it's gonna look even that. worse. It's going to look even worse for Amber because they also have um, in, in evidence uh, on Johnny's evidence list is a, is a recording from when she went on a Danish talk show and she says, I donated $7 million. And she uh, hasn't. Yeah, I, so. I, I totally get it. Big day for Johnny. I'm just, I'm just saying. Yeah, self help, yeah, hey. man. Self help's never gonna look good on that in this yeah. context. Well, I don't know. It, I feel like like Chris it, Rock it, says, it's heads or tails. Yeah, it's like Chris Rock said. You know, I don't condone it, but I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to talk about the legal aspects of the cross. I don't know if we're that far along. Yes. Well, yeah, because let's... they start on the def defamation stuff. Sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah, let's, I, let's I, do I thought the cross, uh, the, the the ten minutes of cross we had or whatever was was really good from from the technical legal aspect yep because he's right in what yep. he says he's yep. like this lawsuit is over this op-ed that's what this lawsuit is about it's mm -hmm. not about what she said in 2016 i mean on its own on its own terms 
It's not about anything she might have said or, you know, the many, many articles that derive from that. It's about this one article, maybe the things that derive from that. So when he's asking about, okay, so you understand October of that year, two months before December, you understand they've already said they're not looking to hire you. And he says, well, I'm sure not because of the two years worth of stuff that she said up to this point. But that doesn't help him legally because the question is the op-ed, right? So his, his, his yeah, answer of like, I, well, yeah, but it's the two years worth of defamation. But legally, it doesn't matter. I, I don't know this. I had this question in my mind, and I don't do de defamation, so just yeah. full disclosure right there. But I thought, you know, you're putting all this in play, though, because that op-ed is going back in time. That's what they're trying to yes. do, but it doesn't work for me. Uh, On the legal aspect, it doesn't work. But that's, I, but that's what, my mind, though. but I'm thinking that's what I'm arguing if I'm the plaintiff yes. here. Yes, yeah, and, and he question. did a good job responding to that. Too, I thought well. his you responses know, saying, were good. Saying, you know what? Oh, were good, he's but... saying two years ago, that's 2016. Sorry, yeah. I'm not agreeing with you. Yeah, well, Kurt, here's my question, right? Because yeah. from a legal perspective, I agree with you. I, I, you know this. I tend to be on your side on the technicalities here, the defamation. I, the fact that it's in trial, I mean, the fact that it's in front of the jury mm -hmm. uh, and that we're discussing domestic violence from 2014 and 15 and 16 at least implies to me, especially if I'm not a lawyer and I'm just sitting there, that that line doesn't fly. That that, that we're not we can't yeah. be we can't be wasting six weeks talking about stuff that isn't legally recognizable, or the court wouldn't have done it. This exactly, way. the court would yeah. have kicked it out. I, I um, think if so, I, I don't I couldn't say for sure because I didn't read all the preliminary stuff, but it yeah. could be the it I could be the idea that, that maybe theoretically there's some way to get to where he wants to be, but as the trials actually progressed, not so much because you can't I, only dismiss on the summary judgment if there's no fact and dispute that would lead to it. It's like, well, maybe there's some combination that would get you there, but I, I'm not sure he can get to where he needs I, to be by the end. Well, the jury may wind up finding oh, for him. I, I don't know why they didn't allege it. So, sorry. Yeah. Why, did, why didn't you I, have a count to the statute of limitations? End, but this gets overturned on a few years, probably. Me. Well, I, I think they had to piggyback. I see where you're going, I, I see where you're going Kurt. Yeah. But I, I agree with Richard though. You know, in her article, she talks about the, you know, this long-term issue that had gone on in her life. So, you know, her, her defamation is what threw this all into play and makes it all, you know, because if he didn't do it, then she's completely lying and she never went through an experience. And she says this experience yeah. was years and years and there's trauma and, you know, big mad, big sad. Oh, woo, I'm, you know, poor me. Yeah, all, you're right. You all the back. prior does go to the veracity of the op-ed. It goes it to the defamation. Does. But what I think that Kurt's right on, and I think the lawyer is right I think on, he's got a point. It doesn't though. go to damages. Uh, yeah. If, yeah. if we're discussing 2018's article and Disney's cut bait in 20, mm -hmm. uh, well, earlier 2018, then this wasn't affected yeah. by the Washington Post op-ed. It was affected, regardless of whether this is defamation in 2018, it's mm -hmm. affected by yeah. what happened in 2016. Mm -hmm. oh, so I, I, I Pirate 6 part. is irrelevant. So part, yeah, if, if Pirate 6 is irrelevant. But uh, the anything that happens piece. in the interregnum period is irrelevant. Yeah. Isn't that damages. the issue? Isn't the Fantastic, Fantastic Beast. Beast movie that's that's the one that came out that Fantastic got killed? Fantastic Beast. Beast. He was dropped in 2020. Yeah. So was, yeah. Yeah. Well, it comes out in 2018. Hmm. I, but I don't he know was he was dropped from the next one in 2020 after hmm. the Sun Trial. I'm just gonna have to drop a black Ended. pill video on my on my channel. So no, I no, Kurt. I think you're, I think I think you've got a very compelling point there. I just I think the argument is she brought it all into play herself. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. On the dollar win the, basis, the, right? Like, yes. By, by, by reaching back to those events that everybody knows about. Yeah, but you're so, trying to so like public. basically, th at that point, you're trying to do a republication. So that's basically what you're trying to do. You're trying to argue that basically this one sentence where she says two years ago, I became a spokesman for domestic violence, not only is referring to J Johnny, which, you know, fair enough, as far as it that is. goes. Yeah. But <laughs> it seems like you're having to argue that she's republishing from that one sentence. Everything basically she said in 2016. That is a lot for one sentence to do. Well, but here's, where domented domented lawyer, right, here's where you're a demented lawyer, guys. Here's where you're a demented lawyer. They're arguing law. They're arguing law to a jury. I yeah. think you're right, and that's yes. the way I see it, and that's the way a judge would look at it. But I look at it and think, if that was such a great argument, you'd have it knocked out as a matter of law right now. A jury's going to say, no, this is a, this is a pattern of behavior culminating in a, yeah. in an op-ed in a, at that time, and that. And that's they're gonna think they're gonna be emotional about it. If you don't have it motioned out, they're just gonna say 
is she the bad guy or is he the bad guy? No, I, I yes. agree with you. I totally I, agree. I, I agree with no, you. I've said that many times. That's the danger. <laughs> I might have kicked yeah. it out. No, I mean, yeah. I've said that, yeah, yeah, no, I've said that many times. Like, by the end, hey, Al- the jury's not going to care about anything except like the overall narrative. So <laughs> I, like the way oh, things sorry, are going sorry. in trial right now, I think the odds of Johnny winning a trial are pretty good. But I think that the odds of the appellate court saying trial court done fucked up is also pretty good on the legal technicalities. Yeah, I think there could be a JNLV. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. And, and sorry on civil law for calling you a demented attorney, even though no I problem. barely know you. <laughs> yes. All demented attorneys I'm a here, demented Ronnie. attorney who actually cares about the law. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's actually a compliment. <laughs> um, hey, Alita, I have a question for you. Yeah. Because you know this better than I think you know anybody else here does. Yep. Did she go through – I don't remember ever hearing about her. After 2016, did she – keep talking about like hey guys remember johnny depp beat the crap out of me and did she go on and on about that consistently throughout the I time don't, up to? i don't i don't think so and i think that that's okay. the reason why he didn't sue until 2019 was because this was the next time that she came out and spoke about it okay i just wanted to right 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 sure yeah yeah guys, maybe the reason maybe the reason he's no longer involved in uh fantastic beasts and where to find them is because he found a fantastic beast and sued her for defamation <laughs> right <laughs> He found them. He got out. He ejected. Yeah, well, there's him. problems with that one too. If it happens right after the Sun stuff, because the Sun's a different publication. You know, there's whole sorts of stuff there. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Alita, I know you put this up really shortly. The reason I put that photo up is you're. We're always talking about. Oh yeah. Amber Heard's dress, and this is uh, Lauren, Lauren Bacall, Bacall look from To Have and Have Not, which got mm-hmm. what six thousand references yesterday. Yeah. Um. And so I, you know, I think. I, I think she was Lauren Bacall today. That's that's my that's my opinion. I, on I think she looked better today. Yes. Yeah, she she looked the best that she has. I, so I, I really liked what she did. I thought it was uh, yeah, for, for me. I, was great. I hope the jury didn't see her smirking when Johnny talked about how literally his career imploded after this all started because from her that was the look of yeah, look what I can do. Yeah, aren't I? I cool? hope they did see it. Why? Why? Well, why well no, for her sake. Otherwise, for her yeah. Sake, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and people are mentioning in the chat. She had the shifty eye smirk of, of the entitled throughout the trial. Yeah. Yeah, but when Jenny really talked about what happened, she had the look of like, yes, I did this. This was yep. my handiwork. Mm-hmm. Look what I can do. It this wasn't just the shittiness. Where I jump in and say yeah. we should be cautious about bringing our own imagery to the party here and analyzing these things and looking at it from that particular perspective. But I will not say that today because this was a hell of a day for Johnny Depp and the recordings uh, and and everything else. So bare minimum, you can bring your thoughts to the party on how she looks in response to these things today. <laughs> because I didn't know any of this. No, uh, did not. And this is this is this, this really. is some I didn't. damning stuff. <laughs> if, if it's I'm just sitting back accurate. like, haha, now you understand. <laughs> well, if well, it's I'm still here to, still here to black pull you on the ultimate conclusions though. <laughs> I I don't care. I don't care. This is a jury trial, man. This is this right. isn't a, a, a trial by a by court. Who worries about trial. that crap? Well, and 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 uh, Rottenbaum. Um, I get... I don't not in Virginia because there's a lot of appellate law for for defamation by implication, and I think I think yeah. that that is that is pretty pretty well settled in this case. Yeah, that that yeah. I, I, yeah That's someone I, else's I, problem. I, I, yeah. <laughs> That's just yeah. another stream for Alita. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> hey, Nate. Hey, Nate. How's it Hi, going? Nate. Hi, Nate. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So, how did did you did you did you see the cross examination? Did you see any of it after you left? Nate doesn't Nate. want to talk to us. He just wants yeah, to yeah, to yeah. Talk. No, I'm, 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 my my computer's freezing up ridiculously oh, yeah. again. Oh no. Uh, but yeah, but like, no, no. It was, it was, people are talking yeah, about uh, the fact that she might yeah, have violated the NDA. Now. Maybe she did violate the NDA. But that's not a defamation issue. That's a breach of contract issue. Yeah, and so yeah, an alleged account. Wrong cause of it. action. It yeah. makes her look bad, though. Yeah, I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm just, yeah, again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if she breaches yeah. the NDA, there's avoidability of at least the provision kind of concept. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that kind of snowballs from there. Obviously, I don't expect him to bring up the first sentence, but it's on your screen when you're reading the thing that says, we're not going to talk about any of this. Um, and it's like the consideration she gave him, at, at least in those kind of terms for 2016 was uh nobody got beat right i agree that no false statements were made and you say there was no domestic abuse that was the statement so when 2018 comes out and you say there was domestic abuse i you're gonna get me on talking about the 2018 op-ed bullshit man get out of here Mm -hmm. yeah 
Yep. <laughs> Let me get some super chats here. <laughs> uh, Jocelyn Shelley says uh, he loved her so much that she that he still doesn't want to admit that she, that she abused him. Definitely not in the public. He tried to protect her from this very suit. That's lying See? to the emergency room. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, like that's what that. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. Think so. New Star One says brutal abuse aimed at erasing you. That's my experience. I'm sorry you had to go through sorry that. Sorry to hear that um mia miller says do we know if he also talked to the expert in ptsd i know he wasn't ordered to but it could help i don't i'm not sure i don't know uh stuff and stuff says thank you so much especially enjoy the recaps when i can't watch live well thank you yeah thank i actually so watch your recaps i actually watch your recaps to study to get on to get on your stream <laughs> I really do. Know. I'm, awesome. like, I'm endorsing your recaps right now. So if you yes. didn't know, yes. we doing recaps in like the middle of the night. I don't even know. I think I'm sleeping when these things are made. Uh, let's but just say I, every day. For me, for me, it's the middle of the night when we end these streams, and then I see the sun come up at some point. Yeah, <laughs> my life is crazy right now. Uh, Saturn Sun, she says, "H better outfit, but looks soulless will hurt the jury." She, I, I would agree. Um, I may be biased at this point, but yeah. Jay Watt says you can change clothes, but if she keeps looking like she wants to kill anyone in court, and even as a JD supporter, uh, how will Knives she be for on the <laughs> Yes, I, uh, I, 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 I am very much looking forward to seeing when until death on, on each one. <laughs> until death, right? I got, I got these knives for the jury. <laughs> how did you get those in here, ma'am? <laughs> there are security booths. You have to go through metal detectors. Um, Dan Richards says JD's story is very similar to my own. So much of the language used in this trial is eerily familiar. I'm in a better place now. Leave after the first hit. It will never get better. It just becomes normal. I'm really sorry you went through that, Dan. Very, very sorry. Glad you but got I'm glad out you're of in there. a better place. Yeah, yeah. Jackie Moya, uh, conspiracy theory. Elaine is being used because she could remind Johnny of his abusive mother. That is a conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think that might just be um, an effective cross. <laughs> Whimsical says, so Amber Heard is going for a Lauren Bacall look today. His testimony validates what the therapist said 100%. In my opinion, he seems very hurt, humble, and ashamed. Ignacio Campo says, Nate, you don't know what it feels like to talk about your pain. I have, and it's hard, so I... I, I study on oh my words and found difficult uh, found difficulty expressing myself. Yeah, yeah. I I think that's the. It's always okay to call out Nate, especially when yeah. he's not here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lynn Bain, thank you for the super sticker. Um, Aquarius Legal Bites. If uh, and some of the others said that they might bring in the tapes either during JD's testimony or Amber Heard. Go Johnny, we love you. Yeah, we did say that. So they they did end yeah. up bringing that. Awesome. And that happened. Yes. There you go. Gail Martin says, uh, that can't be right. That can't be real. Right. No, yeah. That the, 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 the it's Vagus Cecilia well, red wine is 1265. I believe it. I 100% believe it. Hey, Nate. It was All either right. this, this wine or another wine she was drinking. That was $800 a bottle. So yeah, I've, yeah. I've heard of these thousand dollar bottles of wine that they were drinking. Well, didn't he say they were doing like two house. bottles a day for weeks or something like that? Wasn't that the testimony? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, Abrandman says, Richard, we're too or, poor or a to understand man. that. <laughs> yeah. A brand man says, uh, great coverage as always. Here's 2% towards your next bottle, bottle of Vegas Cecilia. Apparently. Well, I was here when that super chat came in. That was like hours ago. <laughs> I know. I'm so late. I'm so behind you guys. Uh, Dapper Dave 2021 heard following legal bites court fashion advice. I hope not. <laughs> uh, Maria says, um, does anyone know if a DV expert will witness? I think so. I think there's one on the list at least. If, that, if that's seems... the case, that's going to be good for Johnny because he, good. he was ringing all the bells of a of a bad. I, would, I hate to say bad woman, but yeah. all everything like he rung every single bell. The yeah. I want to protect myself. The trying to get away from the situation. The feeling. The, the blaming himself. You know, she was it because I'm. You know, I made mistakes, and it was like wow. Like you know, I don't know if he yeah. read that out of a book, but he checked off every single box. Absolutely. Olive Green says he definitely seems like he would speak like this. I mean, yeah, I think I think we all kind of got used to his cadence after a while. Nathaniel says just joining in now, but OMG, no freaking way. They gave their lighter colors and did up her hair to make her look sweet. I know, right? Uh, needs distractions said, thank you so much for your coverage. All those recorded phone calls that were online, will they be played here? And if not, why not? Thanks again from Ireland. Yes, yes, they were played. Oh, yeah, definitely they were played. played. I got to yeah. go. All, All righty. Back. Thanks so See much, Mike. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Mike. Um, Matthew Payton says, it's called the itch. Simply hearing him talk about the addiction is making my own battle tick up. You never lose the need 
for the PK? I don't, I don't know. Painkillers. Pain oh, painkillers pain ever. Yeah. Uh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That sucks. That really sucks. Yeah. Um, Scott Bain says, is a unanimous jury verdict needed for a civil trial? Thanks to Legal Bites and the All-Star panel for this excellent coverage. Thank you In so Virginia, much. I think it is, right? In Virginia. Yeah, yes, Virginia. we were. We checked up on we, this. <laughs> yes, we, we, we were we were talking about this kind of backstage in, in the chat because I, I wanted to clarify because I knew that Andrea knew the answer. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's it's kind of funky because in a, in a lot of states, and I would say most states, the civil a civil jury verdict only needs to be a majority. Majority. But yeah. in Virginia, it actually does need to be unanimous, just like a criminal trial. So and there's some like nine out of twelve there. There's some all sorts. Yeah, there's, of there's some weird ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tails DM says, as someone with ADHD, memory for things such as times, dates, etc., are more difficult. Seeing Depp struggle with times for events isn't a surprise to me. Sure. Makes sense. Audrey Gino says, I'm pro Johnny, but to be honest, he seems to lay it a little too thick for me. And I think the ADHD is used to be a bit sneaky, the May incident. It's nice back to back on those super chats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Manny Fabani, Hogue is absolutely right. I don't even know about what you're referring everything. to, but thank, but thank you. Exactly. <laughs> All the things. Inger Ioana says, hey, guys, question about cross-examination, the process of lulling the witness into a rhythm of yes or no and getting them to confirm something by accident, maybe even untrue. Can they correct it? Yes, okay. you can You can rehabilitate um, on the redirect. This is what we saw yesterday with Sean Bett when he kind of mixed up where Rocky was on the night of May 21st. Was she in Penthouse sure. 3 or Penthouse 5? And then when he went, uh, when he was put back on redirect, meaning it was Miss Vasquez from the Depp team that got to ask him a few more questions before they let him go. She, she addressed that exactly. Like, you know, well, where, where was she that night? You know, when she was, you know, when you were here, when you were there and he was able to clarify it. that's, that's called rehabilitating the witness. This also happened almost masterfully with Isaac when he was testifying about like what he owes Johnny Depp and how thankful he is. And they were like, uh, they put him on what we call a yes pattern. We call this pacing and leading to where you set the mm -hmm. pace. And uh, they were like, he was like, oh, I owe him so much. It's that I can't repay. And they go, would you do anything for him? Yes, I would. And then they quickly said, uh, would you lie on the stand for him? And he goes, and he goes, yeah, uh, no. And he corrected himself. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you've got to, you've got to make sure that you're still paying attention. Stop him, um, thank you. Yeah. Gamer J Stewart says, if, or is it good or in JD's favor that he got Amber Heard the consent record during their conversations, whereas she didn't get his consent? Hashtag justice for Johnny. Um, if so, I know for a, so we're talking about Virginia law here, but these may have been in California. If this were in California, you would not be able to get that into evidence if there was if there was no consent um, from one of the parties. Um, and they could then turn it around and and sue you for a claim of an unlawful recording. I have. Uh, done this before where where we uh, going into settlement negotiations after we got discovery with exactly that where I had a um, a former employee who was fired after she made a report of sexual harassment by her boss she was fired fired by the owner of the company after there was a conversation with the owner of the company in his office basically saying like you're causing too much trouble I need to let you go which is 100% textbook retaliation um and uh, I, I, when we got that recording, going into settlement negotiations, I was able to say, hey, look, we have an amended complaint drafted up where we're going to add this as a claim on top of everything. Also, by the way, this 100% proves our, our case. So how much do you want to settle this for? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> well, a long-winded way of answering. Nice, nice, yeah. I, yeah. I got excited about that one. Uh, Mia Miller says, <laughs> oh, Oh, if he didn't admit to alcohol use, et cetera, it would look even worse. Elaine and co are all over his drug and alcohol use and demonizing him for it. To be I mean, clear, when I, when I was talking about this, I, I didn't say he shouldn't say he drank. The, yeah. the issue I had with that sequence of events that he went off on was the repeated statement that I'm not an alcoholic and the description of this particular set of events with Amber Heard. Um, not, yeah, I think we all know he drinks um, and he definitely shouldn't say he doesn't drink. Uh, so I, I'm in violent agreement with that super chat. I was just yeah. saying something slightly different. Absolutely. Natalie says, Professor Uncivil Law, let us know when you're ready to teach classes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Go your own way. Says, I know everyone reacts differently, but as someone who faced my abuser in court, she knows she shows no fear and looks directly at him. Johnny didn't even glance at her. It's an interesting point. 
Laura Smart. Yeah, I showed this earlier, but it's, it's worth showing again. Thank you so much for the super generous super chat. Um, thank you for your coverage. Loving Hogue. Sorry, still getting to know everyone's names. Playing devil's advocate. I, I, I do want to um, say something. I do want to yeah. mention something about the um, the, the, the cross-examination, the, 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 the little taste we got. Sure. Yeah. It really did smack me in the face with the law. Because I'm like feeling all sympathetic for Johnny. I'm like, Johnny's, you know, Johnny's, this is, I'm all team Johnny. But then when he started getting to the law and he was like, well, that's right. You know, I was just kind of, all those things Hogue was telling me, those evil things Hogue was saying yesterday <laughs> right. was coming to all those evil things <laughs> on Civil Law was saying. Jordan, and Jordan I just seen Black Pill. <laughs> and, at yeah. the, and, at, and right after that, after he went through it, he's like, this is, how do you know it's about Johnny? How do you know yeah. this? Hey, you know, Pirate 6 was done before this even came out. I it, I just, it, it, it seems like it's a nonsense death for me. I'm talking about from, the, from just that short thing. It, it took me from, mm -hmm. I'm so sympathetic to Johnny to the legally, like, I, st I don't see defamation. Here. And I know yeah. people are going to be upset in the chat. I know we're going to get a whole bunch of super chats. Nate's an idiot. I'm totally disagree Nate's with idiot. you. No, I'm well, with you. I think Rick is with us. We got, we got a little just, team of black, just, team black pill over here. I, I, no, and, and, and again, I, I just want to be very clear. She's hot. You don't person. see a black pill. I don't know who you people are, are anymore. I don't know who you people are anymore. I just don't see defamation here. I see, a, I see, a, I see a broken man, but I don't see. Come on, you guys. I think Johnny is wildly sympathetic. I see it. Joe, Joe, tell us your thoughts. I've been listening to Spidey. Can you analyze Joe? Spidey, wait, 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 Spidey, wait one second. Wait, wait one second. One second. Wait. Bye, Spidey. I want you to know something. I've been listening to this whole panel for the last half hour out of reception, and the only person I agree with from this whole panel is Spidey. Okay. <laughs> Everything. The, the rest of you lawyers. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm listening <laughs> to Spidey, and I'm like, this guy totally gets it. I know. I never saw you before. Uh, before Alita's channel, I develop utmost respect for you. I'm going to be like singing about Spidey's channel here. I like to the cows come He hasn't home even so done much. a magic trick on you One yet. One day I'm going to have to have you come on my channel, please. <laughs> anytime, because... guys. All of you, anytime. All is down for collabs. I'll, so, add you up uh, on I'll add you on Twitter. I'm going to have you do. on. Because that's your insight so was so nice phenomenal. Phenomenal. That, that, that's, thank you so much. It means the world. I'm so intimidated by all the stuff you guys you should know. Be. So always... You should be. You schooled all these lawyers. I'm going to explain how oh after God. you leave. You got to leave? That's fine. You schooled no, all these lawyers. No, I'll stay another five minutes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I can see exactly what you mean by my, yeah. this matter. Oh, speaking of that, I think I left my oven on. I can better go shut it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better. You better, because I'm coming after all of you. I'm coming yeah. after all of you. Like I don't know what you're talking hammers. about. At the end of the day, lizard, ba lizard brain dominates a jury. You have to get past the you have to get past the legal hurdles. I get that, obviously, and you're all correct that if you want to be hyper technical and say, "Well, it's only about this article and it's only about it's this," and if the judge hyper technical, I'm talking. I'm talking. All right, the I'm talking. you don't have the talking stick, Joe. Afterwards. You can respond afterwards. Joe has the conk, okay? I'm muting my <laughs> microphone, I, Joe. I have, I, I have the stick of, of speaking. I have the glasses of speaking, okay? I'll give them to you afterwards. And you can respond, okay? I, I agree with you that from a legal perspective, if you want to fixate on what the law directs, then in that case, his case is relatively thin. I am not disputing that. But if this is not... If, this, if there's no directed verdict here, which is unlikely that there is a directed verdict, and they, unless the jury instructions are very narrow, which is unlikely that they're going to be so narrow from this judge, unless the jury instructions are very narrow saying you must find not guilty unless you can establish that these statements and this thing and this was standing alone, out of con standing alone based on the context of the article itself, not in the context of everything, all the other history, that that was defamatory. If it's that narrowly tailored, I agree with you all. He's cooked. But I don't expect the jury instructions are going to be that way. And if they're not that narrowly tailored, you have a jury here who is more tuned on a subconscious level to the type of things that Spidey was talking about than that all the rest of you were talking about. The fact that he does comfortably use the term wife beater. No one who yeah. is a wife beater wants to use that term. It's something, and you, Hope, I love you like a brother. Your knowledge of the law like just uh, intimidates me sometimes. I'm not even exaggerating, but in this an, an analysis of how a jury thinks and reacts, when when they hear things like that white beater, you're saying, well, no lawyer wants to hear him say that. I say just the opposite. Johnny Depp can pull off saying white beater because he says it so comfortably. Like that's not who I am. And I understand that you're saying 
technically, technically, he might not believe himself to be a wife beater, even if he really is a wife beater. And that's a fair distinction that you and Kurt and Nate and Alita and, and, and every, every lawyer would see. But that's not how juries think. Juries and think. I've been saying the same thing here, Joe. So I don't know why I'm getting lumped I'm, in with I'm, everybody I'm, else. You're sitting here very nicely, being respectful to the other lawyers and your guests, because that's who you are. You're just no, a, I don't a disagree phenomenal with person. Anything you said. My I point is, I... the jury—if the jury is given an inch to yes. hang Amber Heard after she yes. sat there with her resting bitch face and her tight clothes and whatever—and she was better today. She had a she had a softer, calmer appearance to her today. But unless that happens, I'm telling you now, the jury is going to be looking to hang her. They hear those videos uh, where she comes across like a bitch and he comes across like an innocent nothing. Like, what do you want from me? Like, I'm just trying to like not have physical altercation with you. And then she comes out saying, oh, I'm a victim of domestic violence. Because of that, this guy's lost tens of millions of dollars. I'm telling you now, I'm telling you now, I think that if there's a room there, if the judge gives enough room, that that he will be successful. And that and that as far as being overturned on appeal, like Kurt mentioned earlier, I don't, I, I, that's unlikely to happen unless the judge gives really, really, you know, crazy bad instructions here. That's, Fiery, that's my, but mostly that's peaceful my Joe, everybody. I've <laughs> yeah. never been on the other side of a full on Joe screed. And I gotta, <laughs> Neither I, have I. I want to poke Joe more because that's fantastic. Look, I, first of all, here's my counterpunch, Joe. Do it. I concur. Yeah. I, I, I was no, going to say, we, Joe, have, yeah. we have, we actually have talked <laughs> about how, how, you know, this is, and, and I said this, I said this a little bit earlier too, that, that, you know, this is a, this is a jury of, of people. It's not a, mm -hmm. not a jury of lawyers. And yeah. yep. at the end of the day, they're going to think brain. emotionally, right? Hey, well, Emily, I mean, how's it going? My main problem Joe's is Joe's coming in Emily. hot. Like, yes. Joe came, uh, came in hot like an airstrike. Joe, Joe, Joe came in and just told everybody how we agree with them. I yeah. don't know what Joe. Joe yeah, <laughs> well, you're right, Alita. For an extra five minutes, yeah. Yeah. I, agree, I, agree with oh, I, 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 I don't even know what's happening. Joe's yeah, me too. I'm lost. <laughs> um, Joe wants to take a swing at me. It's all good. It's but seriously, you know, Joe. Joe, I. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go, go right ahead. Okay, I mean, Joe, we've all thought that it's once it gets to the jury, they're gonna say. Is Amber a complete piece of garbage? Okay, good enough for us. You know, it's her fault. And she did defame Johnny. Like, we, we've all thought that, but I do think it's important, you know, and I agree, you know, where is this going to lead and what can happen down the road? And I think Kurt had, you know, and Richard were bringing up some good points there about because, that. Because the model jury instructions are going to have, regardless of whether they're yes. broad or narrow or whatever, they are going to have, the statement is false, okay? And the, mm -hmm. and the statements are... I saw how Hollywood treated an accused man. It's true. Mm -hmm. uh, I became a representative of domestic abuse two years ago. True, right? Because the sexual, filed the for sexual, that training order. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Sexual yeah. violence, yeah. abuse or not, she did. Yeah, right. The underlying validity yeah. of the domestic violence, which is what we're discussing for six weeks, notwithstanding, that did happen in 2016. So but the, thing the is, title the thing is the best shot that they have because nobody's no, alleging no, sexual I still, violence. I still think it's the second statement. I still think it's the second statement because what she said specifically was, I became the face of domestic violence. And there are many ways of looking at I became the face because you could say the face, the photos of her face that, that came right. out you know, around 2016. The the allegation her. coming from Depp's team is that they were they were planted. They were fake. They were all of that. Is, her becoming the face was was all lies. So, well, well, so it's it's the implication of her becoming the face, the representative, her face being shown. The implication of all of that was that it was that it, it was Johnny that was doing that to her. Okay, but well, it's, it's her statement is I became a figure representing domestic abuse. That's even passive voice in that context. But how that do you represent? Work. There are multiple ways of reading that, and that's why I think mm -hmm. that there there is there is some space for there for them to find defamation in that. Well, yeah, I think so too. There's, there's, there's two things more, with, that, with that. Yeah, because with, with, with that statement, there's two things that I think that are problematic. How do you prove that to be false, right? And being becoming the face of something is inherently an opinion. I'm the face of black lawyers on YouTube, right? I, you I can know. say that, but that no, but no, you're way behind the right? lead attorney, brother. I love <laughs> you. I love you, but the lead <laughs> attorney has you owned. <laughs> he's, he's got me beat. But how do, but how do you, you don't even have a false? face to compare, Nate? What's yeah. going on with Not right now, you can't. <laughs> the avatar Nate, Nate, I think there's an issue, though. Her, She got 
splashed all over People magazine front page. Like her face is on the cover. That yes, yeah. You know she's defining the movement at that point. Yes. Yeah. So I'm it, the face of Jewish she rights, literally became way, the face I'm the of the only movement. Lawyer is that ever. untrue? <laughs> that she <laughs> in the face of the movement. <laughs> not, only is it, not only is it untrue, does she know it's untrue? <laughs> Right, right. We're talking yeah. about things that we can't even decide. No, I think it's hard, but I think he wins in court of public opinion. But can mm -hmm. I ask as a question about Cross? Yeah. Before sure. you get there, okay, was... before you get before you get to the question about Cross, can I ask one? Can I ask you guys <laughs> on this topic? On this topic, because you're switching to Cross. On this topic, do you think part of what the jury might want to punish Amber for is that she she wrongfully tried to grab the mantle? that I am the queen of speaking out for. Like she's looking, it's not yeah. just putting him down, but that she was looking to have herself put on a pedestal that yeah. I am the queen victim and you all yeah. should just bow before me. And that, and she didn't deserve that. She stole that mantle from someone else who actually was a victim of, of, of domestic violence. And that well, is a reason 100%. to punish her. I think, I think that's a very possible. easy to not like Joe, Joe, we just became best friends, by the way. You guys witnessed, <laughs> you guys yeah. witnessed friendship. Great. This is, a, this is a love connection. Yeah, right I love here. this one yeah, more. I feel like we should call on Spidey to get the the center square here. Uh, <laughs> we should be asking questions. I I, I do have to go, but but Emily, I'm Spidey. glad that we matched the lights in our background, like we discussed. I like Spidey. it. It's perfect. Spidey, hit me up. Hit me up on Twitter, Spidey, okay? Okay? Yeah. I love yeah, it. I'll, I'll ask Alita for your information. We'll connect. Thank perfect, you, guys. Thank you so much for having me. It was a Bye. blast. I'll Thanks so much, Spidey. Soon. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. So um so. Emily, you wanted to talk about the cross examination. I wanted to ask. Yes. Do you think that they are going to narrowly tailor it just to the defamation, just to the article, and ignore everything else and let Amber address that on direct so that they can point out that the rest of it's all bullshit and the article's all that matters? Like, I could see them going that way if yeah. they can just resist it, if they can just stop. Yeah. Well, he didn't and they resist that temptation. He, he said, to that so today. let's start there. He said, yeah. I liked how we got to the actual case at the end. So let's start there. So, no, I don't think they're going to do that. I know. Well, look, really I think, start. well, on course today, he started narrowing it. He's like, you're suing about this, right? And he pulled up the article. This article, this is what, and everything else outside that article, this is what you're suing for. So I think you started to see that narrowing of, you know, is are these statements false? And he's going through, it seemed like he was, to me, again, it seemed like he was going through some of the elements, right? How yep. is this true? What is this? What is this? This is this, this to put that all on the record. Because I I think as a matter of law, again, I'm going to say so another chest going to explode. I don't know how, I don't see how this got past the motion to dismiss. I, I honestly, I do. I'm looking, I do. I'm trying to figure it I, out, but I'm like, I, I don't. I, I've, got to, I've, got to send, all, I've got to send you guys walk us through it, Alita. opinion letters. Walk us through yeah. it, Alita. If, how if you get all the statements are true, I still don't good. see defamation. Yeah. Yeah, it's because it's because in the state of Virginia, they do allow for defamation by implication. They have had some long, long-standing appellate history, uh, case history of that. Um, and I've I've talked about it before, but the 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 main case on point is where there was a a school with a child that had allergies. The mom tried to set up a whole a whole plan for for the child with an EpiPen and like like treatment plan basically in case anything happened. She tried to provide this stuff to the school. They said, don't worry about it. We have it. Kid got an allergy, died. And then she sued the school. And in, in response, they made statements to the press that weren't exactly saying it exactly, but basically making statements saying, um, well, this is the, this is exactly why parents need to be responsible for having a treatment plan for their children when they know they have allergies, which is not exactly saying that that's what happened. Oof. That she did that, I but the implication is my she didn't kid. do that. You killed your kid. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That she's like, I'm sorry, it's not our fault. It's her fault. She's the one that, yeah. So, and they made multiple statements like to parents and then to the press and then like all over the place. And so the court found, yeah, no, this is defamation. This is defamation. Even though you didn't name her, even though you didn't, you didn't exactly say her, but the fact that the fact that, you know, by implication, people can understand based on the context that this is who you're talking about. So there's there's some longstanding, longstanding court uh, case law in Virginia on exactly that that issue. Well, That's well, great I mean, my, forum my, shopping. That's my, great forum shopping. Oh, it's yeah, but my, my issue with yeah, that. Be with, slap. My, yeah, but, my, but that that I think is a, you're speaking directly to whether the statement was about or concerning the plaintiff, right? That's one element of it. 
I'm still what my my objection to that is I still don't see how you get past whether this is false or whether you can prove this to be false or not. But the jury gets that, to that I'm that that I'm still but now and, and I, I do understand I what I'm saying is I'm looking at those three statements and I'm saying those statements are true. If those well, things, I, if I, 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 I don't, you know what? I don't, Let I don't, me ask I don't, you, Nate. I don't, get, Nate. I don't get. I don't get. I don't get how how I can say now how Nate. it can even even be proven those statements are false. Nate, riddle me this. Riddle me this. If Virginia considers defamation by implication, although they can walk a technical line to say word by word this is true, but if the overall implication that anyone reading the article is Johnny used to beat Amber. Even if it's not stated in the words, if that implication can be drawn, which I think most people reading that article do have that takeaway. So yeah, you can fix it in certain second sentences, but if that's the overall takeaway, in that case, perhaps mm-hmm. there yeah. is still that's that doorway point. open. Yeah, and, even and if I think not, that's plenty of space it, for them to come in with their emotions and say, this woman is insane. She has done so many horrible, horrible things to this man. She is the abuser in this relationship. We need to punish her. Justice yeah, requires right. it, you know, everything requires it. Even if you can do that, though, you'd still be only looking for any damages that went post the publication time. So, again, going back to the cross that we heard today yeah. with with the with the Pirate 6 answer. It's like they announced this in October, all right? And his answer was, well, I'm not surprised because for two years up well, to then, did she they announce it about or me. did the media speculate about it? I was going to say his, he could have also responded to that headline with like, well, you can, you can, we didn't get any kind of headline these yet, days. Right? It doesn't yeah, make it sources true. say whatever. <laughs> yeah. We don't know what they, we don't know what he was reading then. Right. We didn't get that published, but, but, but he didn't, oh, no, but, it, was, it was from the daily mail and, but he did, but he didn't deny it though. It's not like he, he didn't say that's not true. He, kind of well, he said, he said, he said, October is that. before December, October is before December. But other than that, I don't know. Oh, they said, was- you know that. And he said, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then he got snappy with, yes, yeah. it's two months before. Yeah. Yeah. He was doing a lot of that. I don't because think he's not in this to win money, though. That's no, not- no, no, no. He's not in this for money yet. No, right. And that, not. I think that became apparent when, again, as I, I, I said, his own attorney tries to set up how you're going to do damages. How many movies did you have before the op-ed? How many yeah, movies did you she, have after? He sucked and the at starting it point of that was, to set her up. I don't. I don't know how many a lot of movies. I, I don't yeah. know how many movies I did before the op-ed. Sorry. And I also I, love you could his, just feel his own attorney afterwards? being like, "All right." Yep. <laughs> yep. Kind of looked defeated. Yeah. Yeah. The most yeah. frustrating client ever because I'm just trying to feed it to you. Yeah. Like, he also doesn't the watch his movies for the damages. Like how no, did it go I, beforehand? How, what happened to you afterwards? Well, Emily, how do you read the snippiness? Because I, 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 you know, I think they're going to try to make him look belligerent, certainly. But how, how do you read the snippiness even just today in Cross X? Well, they, I mean, they called him an obsessed ex-husband hellbent on revenge in opening statements. He has to be aware that's how they're painting him um, because he kind of seemed wandering before that. But then when it got sharp, he got very sharp. And so the therapist testified that Amber said he, you know, or he said she got as good as she gave. And so it's letting some of that, like, look, he'll snap back. It's letting some of that out that they can use. Um, I was looking at the chat. Some of the chat was like, yeah, give it to the lawyer. And some of the chat was like, Ooh, I don't, I don't love that. Um, even yeah. when he was like, are they hearsay documents? Ooh, that was a good one. Like, th- I don't know how it's going to be read by the jury. I love the funny moments, but if yeah. my client in court, I would be sitting there clutching the table, taking deep breaths, going, please make it stop. Please make it stop. Cause <laughs> didn't, the, the male attorney didn't come in quite that hot with him. Johnny kind of started it. He was very restrained in objections. He was very respectful in objections. And Deb started saying, Oh, it's hearsay. Oh, it's this. He started clipping back during the objections on direct. So I don't know how the jury will read that. Though they did laugh a couple times. I don't know if it was the jury or just the gallery. There were laughs a few times to break the tension. But at the end of the day, it's going to give them this characterization of, oh, but there's another side to him. You saw this side, and now you're seeing the other side. And I was wondering, because I thought they'd done a great job of presenting him as essentially he won't fight for me. He doesn't fight. He's not aggressive. He's creative. He's doing these things for two straight days. And then that starts kind of stuff comes out and you say, well, okay, well he can fight. <laughs> and, and I, I was actually, when he was refusing to answer the Washington op-ed stuff, 
uh, in any way that was normal. I mean, he was, he, he's a smart guy. He was playing a little extra dumb. And uh, I, I thought, well, this battle is going to be, who's going to break first? Is it, is it going to be rotten bone or is it going to be depth? Because you, Never you gonna can get him. Aggressive cross X guy, you can get him. He's, he's gone nuts before. Yeah, it's yeah. never going to be Rotten Bomb. It's never going to be him that breaks. It's going to be like, but did you sign it? But did you sign it? But did well, you sign it? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. We have seen him lose his lose his cool, though, and kind of fall apart. So that was that was with uh, with Chrissy Dombrowski, right? That yeah, was he, he, he completely he fell apart there. That's so, why I call him aggressive cross-ex guy. But yeah. that's, that's fair. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, Emily's right, though, and I think I had that concern when he was making all the smart-ass comments during direct you know and like you said richard he was leaning really forward at that point and i'm concerned he didn't reel it back in far enough well i think this was a great break for him yeah I mean, yeah I thankfully it's helped perfect him, time to say, really... yep recalibrate yeah. yep and yeah. i think alita made a fantastic point to said hey you got you got 15 minutes of seeing what that's going to feel like so yeah. you can be ready yes. He's very um, lucky that they went into the afternoon and it woke the jury up. It woke everybody up when they got into cross mm -hmm. and picked up the cadence, but mm -hmm. he needs to find a way to sit back down and not look like he wants to fight because yeah. that's what they're trying to paint hurt as she wanted to fight. He wanted to retreat when he's leaning into the other attorney, trying to get little digs in. It doesn't paint the same picture and it could backfire. It really depends on how it feels yeah. in the room. It at least he at least has the benefit of having sort of laid some of those pieces during direct where he's kind of making jokes, objecting to his own hearsay. You know, like it, it comes across as kind of humorous and, and not threatening, but it could turn on to like him becoming annoying or annoyed and well, you know, I don't him like getting Mr. flippant. Rottenbaum. I, I, yes, I will, him I will referring stand to right his name saying, specifically. Yes, Mr. Rottenborn. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, or Rottenborn. That, Sorry, I don't. He he called his name out three separate times. It was like none he of those did. felt right. Yeah, yeah. It definitely it definitely felt like I see you. I see what mm. you're doing. This has been years. I wonder yeah. if Rod was the one who did his deposition as well. I mean, uh, yeah, he's been Good back in these attorney for years. So mm -hmm. that's a history the jury doesn't walk in on. But I wouldn't be surprised if Rottenborn is the one on the team that did his deposition and that's why he knows how he already wants to handle um Depp with it. I'm just glad they don't have Umbridge up there cross examining him because it would be a freaking <laughs> good <laughs> well I think that's I think that Emily's good. bringing it today. Johnny would probably be running circles around her. He would and oh, yeah, she would yeah. be yelling about amica cream. I and I don't know the rules enough. <laughs> but did the poop on the bed have amica cream on it? Do you know? How do you know? How do the sheets get cleaned? The dogs. That was one of the best moments today when he's like, "They're teacup Yorkies." <laughs> yeah, they're five, they're four pounds each, and also I've known them for a long time. Like I know how they are. Happy packages or something before. I don't know. I tweeted it. He'd picked up those happy little something before he called the poop a bunch of different things he speaks with so much analogy um it can be wandering but it also i think it i don't know i think it takes the sting out of his later text messages that are going to come up that are very very verbose have a lot of colorful language in them i think it takes the sting out of it letting him go that long because that's just yeah like, i'm dodging raindrops of lava i'm like what the fuck? <laughs> that's yes. a great that's no you should know that's that's a great that point great. emily when yeah. he's when he's talking about his finger being sliced open, he said it's like Vesuvius. He does you know? use yes. Vesuvius. He's very yes. dramatic. Picture I, mean, I agreed. Yes. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. That, crime is using the severed finger as their um, thumbnail, and part of ooh. me felt like it assaulted my eyes, and I should maybe report that video. I, I, I think I think you definitely should. After listening to him for two days, I, hey, viewer <laughs> discretion should be advised. That's not suitable for young children. Not. He, yeah, I mean, he's a very smart something. guy. I just. I, I kind of like the visual person. pun of using a fingernail as a thumbnail, but that's, yeah. that's just, me. <laughs> Oh, um, Joe, no, I think that's, I, I think that's a good point, but the, the drops of lava, I, I like that because I think that's another way, you know, that whole situation was a minefield, but you know, I think it's even cooler. The idea of like, you know, the volcano crashing down on them. Yeah. It's a and who else, kind of who else could picture Johnny Depp like either as Jack yeah, Sparrow yeah. or as any of his characters like you know running, <laughs> running. around like ah! <laughs> yes running for his life <laughs> but also when, like rotting corpse in the back of a Honda Civic now that you text understand. that came out earlier it, it it takes some of the sting out of that as well and especially when you're like okay I kind of understand based on all the stuff that she put him through oh I have a much better feeling for monkeys and footballs now yes absolutely <laughs> 
But I, I will say this though: the one one thing you have to admit is that his team did a good job of humanizing this A-list actor to just a yes. regular person, yes. right? They because made the yeah. most unrelatable the day, like, situation yeah, sure. relatable. Like, yes. like, I, yes. like, like I, I was sometimes captivated. I could relate to some certain things that he was saying. It was like, and this guy is, and we're not living anything close to the same lifestyle, but they were able to make it now where Johnny's just a regular guy. He's from Kentucky. I didn't know he's from Kentucky. I'm yeah. like, he's a regular yep. guy. From, he's not a Hollywood guy. And now you're seeing, you know, he, he, it's it was really good framing, but now are you going to get that Kentucky street brawler out on cross? And that, and that's what the cross guy is looking to do. He knows Johnny's ready to rumble. And I, and I think this break hurt cross examination a little bit because you could tell Johnny was already ready to get into it. So now yeah. it gives him some time to rest and some of his lawyers, you've got to calm it down. No, great, great yes. for Johnny. Great. Slow great his Johnny brain down a little bit again. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, and, and the, the, the worrisome part for me would be if the cross examination does end up taking all day, if he ends up getting to the end of the day and really just, I mean, after, after hours and hours of, of fighting, you know, or, or having to go through everything, then he lets something snap like right at the end. Um, so that's, that's the one way that I could see a long cross examination being effective here is just completely wearing him down, wearing him down. over yeah, time. Like, that's like, the like only so, way. Like when- yeah, like when you get a confession out of someone, you keep in the prison, you keep in the in the in the in the police station for like three hours. You sort of wear them down until like they're just exhausted and they just they they don't they don't have the the proper frame of mind that they have walking in. I will ask you guys strategically, seeing as how they knew they only had like fifteen minutes, the cross knew that they only had like fifteen minutes to work with. If I was doing the cross, I would not have start started trying to push his buttons today. I would have come in as the nice, try, to, try, make, try and make myself look look Lex agreeable him. to the jury, try and take some of the sting off the fact that my client sitting next to me for the last five days has looked kind of like a see you next Tuesday and try and make us feel like a little warmer, a little like whatever, t- kept it totally, totally calm so that he's not prepped tomorrow when you basically come in there ready to like bam, 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 snap his head off. Because now he's... He's processing how am I going to control myself during that, as opposed to facing it for mm-hmm. the first time while he's actually sitting there on the stand. And that way, they wouldn't be at this disadvantage that they have. I wouldn't have shown my hand that way if I knew yeah. I only had 15 minutes left. I would have held back mm-hmm. and been like totally nice, normal. Hey, I'm Joe. Everyone, you know, we understand mm-hmm. this is a process we have to go through. We ask him a few really irrelevant type of situations, and then tomorrow lace in there with like this is all about that article bam 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 you know and then go but from if there this is the art if this is the attorney that did his deposition the cat's kind of already out of the bag on what this is going to be like for them that's true for, that's, true. that's an assumption for, we're making though yeah at least yeah it could be i mean but but even if he had that memory that still is is however long ago and and like he's dealing now with the immediate of like how did today go in front of this jury, so I still I still think that it's it's it, there still is a disadvantage to the defense on that point because of the fact that they have let that out for this performance in front of this jury. Right. Did they have any option to say we'd prefer to start tomorrow? The they did. Court they did. Seems to be kind of hoping the court said wasn't that the court that said time is not in our favor. But yes. do you want to start? And they were like, we can start. I think that was the judge kind of indicating she hoped that they would start, but I think she gave them the option. Okay. Yeah, she did give them the option. Because I think actually Depp's team said, like, we're fine if we if we go today, if we, was, if we just cut loose. It was 445 or something like that, it, wasn't yeah. it? It was only 15 minutes. And Alita, you made a great point about them humanizing him. The moment towards the end that I thought was so humanizing is when they were talking about the divorce settlement and he kind of looked at his attorneys. He was like, it was $7 million, wasn't it? Like he's not attached to that, which also goes against this hell bent on revenge, crazy ex-spouse. Cause when you deal with family law stuff and you get ex-spouses, they know to the dime how much is being asked mm-hmm. for. And they are very, oh. they are very, yeah. she so got between- couch and the dogs he was like wasn't it familiar like i don't know and the tea kettle on the, on the on the mantle yes yeah. Yeah. between yes. the lines i really think he he came across most strongly as not caring about the damages or the legalities of the he she destroyed my life this is what the lawyers told me this should look like i want to get the stories out and i want you to know what she did and then like what movies was i in i don't know what money did i give her in the divorce settlement i don't know i i actually think the his lack of answers there really did present what i found 
to be at least a questionable premise when he started his testimony, which is I I don't care about fame and I don't care about money and all these things, which is at least in the human experience, say you do a little, right? I mean, like you're rich, you're famous, you have all these things and you get to the end of his testimony. And I'm like, I, I kind of believe you. I kind, yeah. I kind of believe you. Yeah. Drinking that $500 a bottle of wine and yep. even I, living I, in the multiple penthouses. Party, they didn't get into the fact that the news he had gotten was that he had lost six hundred and fifty million dollars yeah. or whatever? To, yeah. yeah, they didn't say a number. They didn't get yeah. into that because it was the objection to the documents. But I was like, it's his effect. It's what he was taking yeah. this evening. I wanted so much more information about that because he had gotten devastating news and walked into a party, and that's why he thought she was being bratty and childish. It kind of yeah. was the icing on the cake. So I'm bummed we didn't get into that a little bit more. Yeah. The chat was very into it. I was like, oh, I. That's a lot. And he owed a hundred million or something in taxes because yeah. the business manager had on money. He wasn't liquid on. Oh my God. Yes. And oh, so okay. <laughs> that's, that's the meeting he had before he went to that dinner where she's like, why are you late to my birthday? And that mm -hmm. context I think matters. And I felt like he's gave it up too easy. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, because yeah. I want to point out by the way, Richard, on what you said a moment ago, that yeah. like as far as him being like really just a normal guy, even when he's talking about his his ridiculous affluence, he's like embarrassed by it. He's like, yeah. he's talking about his rehab. He's like, I'm almost, I feel silly saying it, but we went to like, I, I own an island. My island. Like, really? yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I get it. And he's not like being arrogant about it. He's like, well, this is just something, you know, I have for privacy and whatever. And it's like, I, and I know how silly it sounds to an everyday person that I own an island in the Caribbean. But that's where we went for the thing. It's like it's almost like, yeah, okay, Johnny Depp has an island. All right. Well, and yeah. we know this from his ambition testimony, right? Because we saw text messages that he really came hard against Amber about her ambition. And then he has a sequence in his testimony where he describes what he means by that as wanting fame for the sake of fame and willing to do anything. And then he briefly, I thought too briefly, describes what he thinks of ambition as getting the art out there and getting creative creations out there. And I'm like. I, I, this is such, this is the kind of thing that I would discount in a magazine interview or in, as, as PR as, as completely airbrushed. It's like everything fits together with that for you. Um, so it's either just, you know, a grand opus, or I think that I, I, that all makes sense as to why you would be so disagreeable with someone that you see as fame seeking, um, and using you for that purpose. And I can understand mm -hmm. how that became a, a fulcrum for your relationship as well. And I can, I can be okay with some of the text because in that same text, when he's talking about ambition, he says some stuff. He talks about yeah. some rampages and whatnot. So it's it's a very interesting testimony because I really did come in blank slate and maybe maybe a little biased against Hollywood celebrities, period, regardless of Depp or her. Oh, I definitely did. Yeah. And I think that's it, a commonly held belief. I think the jury, they're probably members of the jury who, who feel a certain bias towards celebrities. So I think, and it's like, why do I go to worry about giving millions of dollars to a guy who's got so much money? Like, And like, I think he cares? did expose, I think he did a great thing. And, and, and Alita always, you know, she's good at walking me back from the ledge on this stuff. But he, he did <laughs> he did steer into the weaknesses. I mean, he did talk about his addictions. I don't love how Amber Heard and he met while they're both involved in other relationships. Yep. He told that story. I, I don't love that fact at all. Nope. Uh, but yeah. I think it is useful for him to put that out there. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you got, you got to feel like you got the good and the bad. It's mm. true. That first kiss was on a movie set and then it was two years later and you get, I mean, we've seen, I don't know if you guys are following the Kardashian trial that's going on right now, but we've gotten, if only I have the space I for I it. <laughs> I have limited brain space as well, but we've gotten reporting out a jury selection from a day or two ago that there were jurors being like, no, I can't be unfair. I hate them. I, saw that. I hate reality TV. I watched Kim Kardashian sex tape. Like this jury laid into the Kardashian. This is LA. Yes. This is LA. What are they trial places? for? We hate them. Defamation, I actually. Well, I guess two. Um, water, special water. Why did they get to walk in through the back? Like this jury laid it out. And I think that's yeah. really common of juries that they don't, they don't want to see celebrities being treated better than everybody else yeah. and they want it to be human and I don't think Amber is going to be able to pull the human side of it because even sitting watching her face in court there is nothing relatable there at all yeah yeah it's uh it's 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 very true very true and I think that 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 likelihood for bias is probably even more magnified in a place like Virginia as opposed to Los Angeles yep. so <clears throat> um for sure absolutely um let me get some more super chats because I've got I've got a lot. 
to try. Well, to I see. I did. Are, are you guys okay? This with that? super chat has been up here since I came on. This same I know. super chat. She <laughs> got her five dollars. Olive Green got her five dollars worth in ways that nobody has ever <laughs> milked a super so, chat. So before. did Rick. See, you see, you don't have to jump up and say, take that picture down. Yeah, I didn't say take that picture down. And I've got to, <laughs> I'm going to have to speak. Oh, okay. But okay. I, well, I thanks really for joining us. Everybody and see what you guys thought of today. Bye, Emily. Yeah. Bye. Because I was Emily. tired. Uncle, good to see you. Bye, Emily. Oh, good, good to see you, too. And comment on Hoag's drip. I got asked what I thought of the drip. The drip's great today. Yeah, I got to, <laughs> I got to ask if before you run off, can you help me out? Just brief. One colon description today. of what the hell is drip, Emily? The outfit. <laughs> Just like goodness? Outfit. It's your outfit. The drip is the outfit. So good the drip. Clothes you're wearing. The, good. the clothes okay. you're wearing is the drip. Drip just means clothes. Yep. The outfit. Okay. Outfit. I appreciate it then. Thank Skits you. It's a drip. Yeah. The drip is how's, good. It's how's, my the drop? how's my drop? I, how's my drop? Drip. It, uh, oh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I feel like we're, I mean, like mean girls are, are clueless and it's like, it's fetch. It's I like don't know. I'm surrounded by the two women here who are like, <laughs> yeah. Fetch, like, but... They're like the two <laughs> Heathers. You're going with the, like the open chested thing today. I don't know. They're, what is happening? Oh, I, I went, I went to Nona water obstacle course and basically just threw on a shirt afterwards. So like I, my wife is trying to kill me with fun. This week, <laughs> spring break. Yeah, no, we, we, are, we are, it's Passover, like intermediary days. So it's like we did. Uh, I don't. We did tubing a couple days ago. Yesterday, I'm being chased by a pack of wild teenagers and laser tag. Today, I'm like climbing up like this in the ocean, this obstacle course, and I'm like, <laughs> and it's like just people on my tail the whole time. So I'm I'm feeling kind of kind of dead, and like, and she's like, "Isn't this so fun?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Okay. It's wonderful. <laughs> it. Well, thank you for more. the compliment, Emily. I appreciate it. I did have to comment that I didn't know what you meant, but you did say mm. nice letter. So I think you look awesome. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah, agreed. We can differ um, in the background. It is amazing. <laughs> the red sweater is coming back. I only have so many, and this trial is long. But yesterday, Amber Heard blended into the court wall with her outfit. <laughs> it, <laughs> the hair and yeah. the, the greenish outfit blended right into the court wall. So, where the cameras are with her juxtaposed against that kind of puke green wall was just, it was a lot. It was a lot. No contrast. She kind of blended in. It was very interesting. And then the hair yeah. went down again today. Um, yeah. She was trying to look a little Lauren Pacall, I think. Yes, that's, that's, what, I, yeah. that's what chat was saying that I a, all day. I put a picture up, yeah. I yeah. agree with them. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hi, Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Olive Green says, we do love you, Rick, and all of the panel. It's great to have diversity overall. See, notice I didn't object to that being up too long. I just, Of course you know. not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Potato, <laughs> Potato Pirate says, the rambling may be ADHD. Could also be medications if he's sure. still on Xanax or... Neurontin, you can get serious brain fog. Um, I mean, I don't know about the the medications, but the, I mean, sure, that makes sense to me. Um, Craig DePaul says, "I'm a recovering addict. Watching his testimony makes me feel bad for him. He is saying everything an addict would say. We do recover. I I, I really really appreciate your um, your insight in that. Um, and I'm I'm sorry you've you've had to go through that yourself, but it sounds like you're in a better place, which is good." Um, DJ Smith says, I subscribe to everyone in this panel because I love you all and have grown to love seeing you guys every day, all day. LOL. I love this coverage and getting to learn, learn new legal stuff. LOL. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm really happy that you subscribed. And, and if there is anyone else that has been added since then that you haven't subscribed to, please by, by all means do. And to everybody else that, that is watching that hasn't subscribed, Go to everybody's channels. I mean, that's the only way that people are are benefiting by giving up their time so graciously um, for for the purposes of of this live stream and this trial and giving their commentary. It is just the best thing that you can do is to go and subscribe to their channels, watch their videos, like their videos, share them, all the great YouTubey stuff. Now you know, um, this, that's the second best thing they can do because the best thing they can do is like and subscribe to this channel that's putting uh, in hours and hours and hours and hours of content. And I know you're not going to uh, say it for yourself, so subscribe <laughs> to Legal Bites right now. We've got like seven thousand people still watching us wax philosophic with all of our 
various gestalty vernaculars. Uh, and so please do take the Good time word. to like and subscribe to Alita because she deserves it and she's killing it this week. She's going to be at Thank you. whatever number by the time this whole thing is over. Play button. Play button. <laughs> I, that, would be, that would be awesome. I don't want to jinx myself, but hey, I mean, that, if, if, if we can get there, that break, I knew you were hoping to break 10K today. We did. She yes, did. we, we did. did break. We, bro yeah. we broke 11K. Awesome. Yes. We broke I might have catched nice. I didn't see it. That's very yeah. nice. Yes. And, and nice. It's, been, it's been a good, it's been a good thing. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah. Um, 2012 Jameson says Amber did nothing to her wardrobe. She is only wearing Amica cream. Remember everyone, <laughs> Amica, it's no longer just for bruising. Yep. It also, yeah, you. also, you're up to 63,000 subs now. Whew. Like I a guess, bottle. Yeah, wow. it's, it's not reflecting up there yet, but I, I, I mm. may, I may have, I may have. Um, th uh, crazy. Um, Jameson, twenty twelve, Jameson. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Amica. <laughs> Mia Mina <laughs> says Amber looks like Lauren Bacall, just like Emily just said. Brandy says I have been following this case for a while and a JD supporter. I am here to hear all your commentary. Thank you for all of your, for your time and insights on this. Thank you so much. Law RN says, even you boys can't deny he's a handsome specimen. <laughs> Talking about Johnny, of course. He looked more yeah. hydrated today oh, than yesterday. Sure, right? He looked yes. more hydrated. His skin yeah, he did. better. He looks better. He did. No. Yeah. And, and especially with the hair back in the ponytail, it's a much smoother look. Yep. Jay right. McCarthy says, I can't with her constant smirking about his pain. There were some smirks. There definitely were. Evie Warner says, we'll be like... Oh, uh, will he will will be likely on all of today and tomorrow, meaning Johnny? Yes, oh, yeah, well, absolutely. He, well, he likes to be on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Darth Crypto says hello from Purgatory. I saw something hey, about Darth. his his Twitter his Twitter getting getting all messed up. His again. Twitter got nuked. It did. I think Ooh. so because he said that he he gave, I don't know made some kind of information public, um, and so I don't yeah. I don't know exactly what about happened Taylor there, Lorenz. I'm sorry. Was it about yeah, Taylor Lorenz? I think so yeah. Exactly. Really? A new one up though. Can you DM it to me? Um, <laughs> I'm not I, I want to walk the line. Contraband. I'll walk the line to, to go after Taylor. Jeez. Um, Let me email it uh, to you. Yeah, please do. Uh, uh, Trisha Chong, thank you so much for the super sticker. PJ, thank you. Um, Isaac Bruch is wholesome gabagool art says, how do I detox from law tube? I'm addicted. Yet you can't. Don't want it. The There's no detox. <laughs> there is none. There is none. The answer is more cowbell. It's just like Harder the knife. Than oxytocin. It's just like the knife till death be apart. Oh my God! What did you guys think of the knife? Horrible! It, it looks knife terrifying. Is horrifying, right? Yes, not till yes. death be apart till death. Yes, yeah. not till death. Well, and then a nickname for him is you know till death, Johnny. Basically, it's like whoa. Well, it's from her. Yeah. She's slim, right? He's Steve. He's slim. He's yes. oh. He's like Steve, yes, he's sure. slim, but it was it was from Slim. Yes. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, it's still it's creepy, creepy as hell. Nice. Very yeah. creepy. Uh yeah, absolutely. And especially sandwiched right after that Australia incident, it just looked, oh my God, she was going to kill him if she could. And when she made the statement, and it also reminded me of how he mentioned that um it, okay, excuse me. All right, thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I missed the knife thing. What happened with the knife? I missed that. Well, but hang on. on. But I was going to say, a picture of it's oh, on my get the cat. Please get the cat butt out of your face. No, <laughs> that's how they show up. It's on my Twitter. She gifted him a large Bowie knife with the yeah. inscription "Till Death" in Spanish, "Hasta la Muerte," yeah. and yeah. XX Slim with her nickname. It's a yes. it's, it's a big knife. It's a nice knife, but maybe yeah. it was maybe it was her digging at him. Because her allegation was he cut off his own finger, which we know mm -hmm. it's a velocity crushing injury, and that's not what happened. But I wonder if it was a dig about that. When did yeah, she send that? After divorce? No, no, it no, was it was right after the Australia. It was it was mm -hmm. uh, late twenty fifteen. Yes, yes. Wow. After she had cut his his finger with a vodka bottle, um, and smashed a cigarette into his face. Like because that's what people do after they cut off someone's finger is they put out their cigarette on their that face. That was an insane bit of testimony. Yeah. Yeah, that's hardcore. I, She's hardcore, baby. That's like, that's what crazy. is wrong with you? You're a freaking psycho. Yeah. Who puts out a cigarette? He's got his finger blushing out there. I'm sure he was screaming. Like, like, you know, like basically one of the best scenes of like any of the pirate movies where it's like, it know, the cannibals movie. are running after him. He's probably screaming like that as this blood is blushing out. Oh, he's like, oh, what you do with the blood? 
Let all this testimony here today is crazy, yeah. right? Because like the, even the May 21st incident is, it sounds like it's insane. She just starts screaming into the phone while he's 20 feet away, according to him. That's, yeah. that's, that's crazy stuff. Stop all day hitting me, Johnny. There. Stop hitting but me. That I will love sound up a case. Too. The lovely sound engineer with the great hair came in and was like, I remember this flight because she just unhinged on me. And, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at this guy going, who's yelling at you? You're yeah. lovely. Yeah. So, yeah. and he's like, no, he does love you. He was trying to be soothing. And she went off on him, which is why he remembered that flight. So it's consistent with the testimony we've seen so far that she comes unhinged. Can, mm -hmm. I, can, can, can I mention one nice. more of my yeah, favorite she's a parts? Psycho. Straight up. My fi one of my favorite moments is right before the finger slicing. He's like, you know, after he's so upset, think about this. He wanted her to get a post nup. She basically flies off the handle so much that she he calls his own attorneys and yells at them, why are you telling her to get a post nup? Which, if you've been a lawyer in that situation, you know that basically <laughs> you sit there saying, Because of that. Yeah, it's all my fault. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> you know, and, and then. And then he comes downstairs to the bar and he starts drinking. He gets a vodka bottle. I found one shot, another shot, another shot. She comes down there, yells at me, takes the bottle, throws it at me, and like smashes it behind me. Misses me, hits the misses wall. Me, hits the takes wall. Takes another one. And then, no. And then, what he is, drinks and then it's like, what does he do next? This is oh, so boss. Yeah. What does he do next? He goes behind the bar, gets a bigger vodka bottle. <laughs> And I loved shot. it. And yep. pours another shot. He's like, you want to throw a bottle at me? I got a bigger bottle. That's fine. It's very chill. It's like, move. wow, that's classic. That's an epic story right there. So. Yeah, and then he loses his finger. But what one of the things that she flipped about that I thought was so interesting that I had not heard in any of this was she was really upset that she wasn't in his will. Yeah. Yes. That, that was the that was the oh. thing that I was gonna mention with the knife. Yeah. It, was, it was it came out of that and I was like, oh yeah. yes. and we moved too fast over. She was upset that I'm not even in your will. And I'm like, whoa, 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 back, 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 back up. And, and so that all came out when the lawyer sat down with her to go over the post nup. And mm -hmm. that's why she flipped out, but it did give context as to why he called the lawyer and was like, You riled her up. Basically, you wound her up and sent her back at me with all this rage. What the fuck's wrong with you people? Um yeah. Although, frankly, Lawyers. frankly, a wife, does, even if a wife is out of a will, in almost any jurisdiction, it will vary dramatically from one jurisdiction to another. I can't speak to California or whatever jurisdiction. Share. Most jurisdictions, wives get, you know, an elective share of a minimum of like a third yeah. or like or something uh, of that nature. Like that's what we have here in New York. I don't know what it is in, in California. Not in California. No way. No? If you've got oh, if you've got wow. documents yeah, after a divorce, if you if you still have your your ex spouse in in your documents after after a divorce, they're in. Mm -hmm. You could you could die two days later and they get everything. No, you know, no, you no, could, no, Alita. You could I, die and remarry. They were talking about the other no, no, way, talking, where I'm if you have them about out if, of your will and you're still yeah. married. Yeah, if, if yeah, he you dies, can't, in New York, you, you, you can't disin disinherit your your wife. You Spouse, can disinherit yeah. everybody yeah. Else. She's well, a widow. If she's oh, a you're, widow, you're she gets a third sorry. automatically in New York. Uh, but if so, if he had if he had documents already that still pre-existed their marriage, doesn't matter because you have you have because otherwise you have you have okay, hang on, guys. Talk, think about this there are there i have seen many cases where uh mom and dad are married they get old mom dies dad remarries a younger woman mm -hmm. and then younger woman wants to take all the assets away from the adult kids that's what happened um, with nicole with that old geezer and that playboy girl who died young yeah. remember that playboy, um, like, nicole 25 smith? years ago yeah yeah, yeah, yeah nicole yeah, smith, smith. And nicole i can't smith. remember she married a billionaire yeah. and then there was a whole fight about the fact that you know when when he was like 95 and she's 20 and you know, twenty, you know, twenty five. But, but the thing is, thing is, new wife doesn't get anything unless there's mm -hmm. some kind of a modification of that trust or that well, will. Which is what Anna Nicole was fighting over is because yeah. she said there was a modification, and the adult children said that there wasn't, and that's mm -hmm. why the adult children took under the will and not her. That's yeah, why she in, was fighting. In, in, but in New York, in New York, by statute, though, if you're married at in, at the time you die. Your wife gets an option, either one third. Or it's called the elective share. So, so she gets. Yeah, I mean, so so no matter what the documents say by statute, she gets a third. And it's it's that you can't disinherit disinherit your spouse. Yeah, even if you say I hate my wife, I want her to get two dollars. <laughs> you, she still can say yeah. I will. From for the with respect to how I'm affected by this by by this um um estate, I can opt out of that mm -hmm. and automatically by statute say I'm taking a third of the assets. Yeah, and I can't speak to California, 000. but I can tell you just with the little internet research says California statutory amount is the elective share 30% of the decedent's estate to which the decedent's surviving spouse is entitled unless waived. 
I watched yeah. movies with my friends yeah, in the back row doing World well in Class. That's what I, I thought. Know. I thought every state has Did a limit. I don't know. I'm not. I'm reading an internet website. Yeah. yeah. Wikipedia, Emily, what did right? you watch so movies? Survivor spouse has elective share. I watched movies in the back row of my Wells and Trust class with my friend TJ through all of my three L year. I saw right. a lot of great movies. He should have been a film student, not a law student. I was. We watched Donnie Darko at least twice, but I didn't pay much attention in Wells and Trust, so I am not chiming in on this at I'm all. I'm saying she not should have asked her much. attorney whether she needs to worry about that that much, like yeah. about being yeah. in the will. I think it was a matter of control. It wasn't about the will. You're it's, probably right. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yeah. I agree with you on that. You it's are not putting me in the will. Right. Yeah. It's a statement. Well, Even it's though this was literally a month after they got married. Right. And the <laughs> thing is, she may not be a lawyer, so she might be thinking about what happens when he dies. And she doesn't know about, you know, the options and so forth. But And so she sent him a knife. Yeah, That's exactly. She wanted that will locked down. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, recommendation. We don't give legal advice here, of course. But if you are just recently talking about will issues, just general estate issues, try not to send you don't gifts that are otherwise engraved with the word death in any language. Any sort <laughs> of weapon. Any Strategically. Sort of weapon. Yeah. We also, did you guys talk about the fact that she had delayed the signing of the prenup till it got too close to the wedding? I don't remember what that time period is where you can't so sign it running up to the wedding, but there's that timing issue with prenups if you sign it too close that they're invalid. Really? So it was very really? interesting. I somehow missed that, duress? Missed that it's issue. essentially duress? Okay. Yep, it becomes duress. Mm. So she, wow. like she delayed it until it was too late to sign, and he talked about it a few times. I was like... Well, she's talking to someone who knows something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't happen by yeah. accident. Yeah. That wasn't an yeah. Amber yeah. original. <laughs> um, let me get the super chat. Marissa Bell says, I study criminology. A person who is abused will never, ever instigate their abuser and run after them to piss them off more. Makes no sense. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm always People uncomfortable with absolutes. I'm going to yeah. no on that one. When you see the mutually abusive relationships, yes. sometimes they spoil for fights with each yeah. other. Yeah. Um, Ignacio Campo says, Hogue, it's not funny to laugh about violence. Well, I will mm. say this. We have he had a lot hog. of testimony. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think they mean Hogue. So <laughs> we have had a lot of testimony in this trial about the idea of, of laughing through pain. When you're going through something uncomfortable, making a joke is sometimes, you know, it might seem inappropriate to some, but we've had a lot of instances that are inappropriate and you, you may hear jokes on this. We, we don't we we don't we like we don't like to go overboard, but occasionally we're going to we're going to crack a joke or two because we're all sitting here together. We're all uncomfortable and we're going to we're going to work our way through through this discomfort with humor as well. And sometimes that might be a little dark and sometimes not just like Johnny Depp. Right. So, I, yeah, I, and I appreciate the fact I think if I remember when this came in, the impetus was we were about to see the finger photo and I said, put away your meatball subs, I believe. <laughs> Well, and then, it, yeah, that it, one came in right after that. But no, I, yeah, obviously it, we're, we're trying to inform and, and also, you know, hopefully entertain and, and just talk amongst yeah. ourselves. I don't we're think we find any of the subject matter of this funny, uh, but certainly the presentment of it. We're years separated from it. And what this actually is in the moment can certainly exactly. be humorous, as Johnny Depp has demonstrated. Yes, exactly. And Nasia better not hang out with defense attorneys then because they'll yeah make all kinds of ghoulish or stuff. any attorneys. Well, that, that too. <laughs> Fair, fair point. Um, Steve Larive says, considering that there are around 1 million reported DV incidents against men and his children, um, we also need safe refuge centers for men, boys, and families. Maybe this case will be the catalyst. I don't know. That would I be mean, nice. Yeah. I it's needed, but it's not going to happen from this case. Yes. Yeah. 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 Elora said, how do you think Amber's team might counter that damning testimony from Depp? Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know which which damning testimony we're talking about at this point. Probably his entire testimony. Yeah, but... probably everything. Oh, maybe the finger. Probably the finger, because this was this was right around mm -hmm. the time of the finger. Fingers. Um, yeah. yeah. It's uh, probably uh, trying to make it look like he was so law. aggressive that he did it to himself. Or that focus he was on... so intoxicated that he did it to himself. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah I think if you go with he's on drugs and then and, it's and a different story on... entirely. Druggies focus on the law. Do. Yeah. Focus on the law. Focus on that article. Focus on limiting it as much as possible that you're suing yeah. over this. I'm, I think they. I would expect them to keep pounding that home. You're suing over this thing that she's supposed defamatory. This is not defamatory. What's written there? Yeah, yeah. That, that's they what can't they, just this, they can't just let psycho Amber stories go unanswered it completely. But, yeah, yeah. I, I think the jury will want to find what? for Depp just because they hate yeah. her. I I, I agree, Emily. Like, Screw the law. Yeah. We hate she this person. He also will be able to, to if rehabilitate they fight him too much on cross, it makes them unlikable, not him. So let her answer it because they know what's coming. 
hammer some of his other witnesses. I think they focus. I think they should focus just on the defamation hammer about what the point is and be like the rest of it's irrelevant. The rest of it's all mudslinging of, you know, all the things and then let her answer it. We'll see though. But I, yeah. I know you guys are getting back to super chats. I appreciate you. I just wanted to pop in for hello. I yeah. have with the kids. Thanks oh, for stopping by. Hey, everybody. Family. Hello, Law yeah. 2. Goodbye, Law 2. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> and Emily Cardwell says, do you think they'll play the audio recording at all? I feel like he's too scared to take the, to talk the full force of the abuse. He talked it. He, he went through we all do. of it. Yep. We do think they'll play it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. They did. And they did. Uh, Namie says, was I the only one who found it weird that she checked the contents of his will? We talked about this. Why would you want to verify if you're in it or not? Uh, we talked about it. I, I definitely agree. That was super sus, super sus. Love is a four letter word says Alita. You are a gracious hostess. I love and appreciate your style. Sending positive thoughts from California. Much respect to all the guests. Healing vibes for Johnny Depp. Thank you. I really appreciate it. That's really kind of you. Um, granddaddy otaku says if you shoot a bullet in someone's general direction and the bullet ricochets and hits the person in the arm is the shooter not responsible replace shooting a gun with throwing a glass bottle yep yeah no absolutely that's reckless behavior mm, uh you are regardless of whether or not you intended to to shoot somebody specifically if you generally know that that's the likelihood that that's gonna that is uh, something that can result you know that that person is there i uh, do you have enough for intent so absolutely the same thing with the with the bot with the bottles and it's a salt either way that's a heavy damn thing <laughs> yes yes Riakim kelly thank you so much uh, Ben's 310 says you can't blame him for lying. Many people lie to protect that person they care about talking about how he cut his finger to the ER doctor. I work in a medical setting and I see it all the time. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think that the what, way he explained it was very forgivable. It's super common in domestic violence files that you'll see somebody went into the hospital and they said, Oh yeah, I walked into a door. Uh, you know, and this is why hospitals are trained to look for certain injuries that are indicative of domestic violence. Yeah. And, you know, if you walk into a hospital and particularly if you're a woman, guys less so. But if you walk into a, a hospital with certain injuries, uh, they're going to go. Yeah, uh, we're getting the cops in here and we're doing a private interview. We're getting the guy out. We're, you know, we're going to have a talk about that. So, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's ridiculously common. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I would imagine. Lori Andrade says, is she constipated? It's like, she's forcing it. She did look like she was forcing some faces during this testimony. Sarah. The only said, time. <laughs> quick, quick question <laughs> for the, for, for the people who watched the, um, the, cro the, the last little cross examination piece, why did they use the, the article from the print article instead of the the article the headline. The online yeah they, they oh, use the print headline? one it's it's part of their defense the print one which is the one more widely circulated is part of their argument from the opening statement doesn't use the headline hold on i got the online version up i doesn't, i spoke out against sexual violence and i faced the wrath of the public as a result or something like that yep, yep. i you know i can't <laughs> it's slightly different words but that's it alita and what yeah. you saw on washington the washington post publication was this is a transformative moment, I think is what the, uh, the headline is on the something uh, on the text. Version. Remember. So one of the one of the statements they're bringing their defamation, their defamation claim against is that headline from the online version. So they don't just as a strategy pick, they pick the other one. But of course, Mr. Depp used that to uh, to come. I, you know, I haven't redlined this article. He, he was full. No, no, I, 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 just, <laughs> I found I, I just I just found it. So this is the, the one oh. I'm sharing now is the one from Johnny Depp's, um, yes. that's the one of his complaint. Yeah, the so online that, version. Yeah. yeah, of the online version. And this one I'll share is the one they put up in court. One sec. And this one they put up in court. You gotta, you guys gotta make this easier at, what's the name of the place? Um, Stream yard. Yeah. Uh, the, the what are you using? What is? What are we on here? Stream yard. Yeah, why this why is don't we one... see our names? Why don't we see? Our, oh, what's be, happening? It's because of the super chat. It's because of the super chat. So many yeah. of no, we never see yeah. our names. I'm saying when the super chat's down, no, we don't. Do. I've seen our names. You do. You're, yeah. You're, you're going crazy, Joe. It's I just. Know. I think. I think there have been super chats pretty much the whole time that you've been on here. I'm saying. Yeah. I don't. We, when I'm I looking at it, when I'm looking at it on your there. stream, I'm looking at it here and I'm looking at it on, on the stream and I don't see your name. Wait, I don't, don't see your name. Don't, don't because of this, 
Okay. Oh, Even with no, the sorry, sorry. Chat. I was telling Mike, get something. <laughs> Just yeah, this is a transformative moment for women. That's that right. title. Mm -hmm. So they're they're one of the things they want to establish is that Amber Heard didn't write the title. That that's a Washington oh. Post function. Oh. That's fair. But I, I I still think that there's a way that they can get it in if if there is information showing that she saw it before it went public and then sure. she assented to it. You know, approved it. It's that's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's it's is this, is this cool with you? Yes. Yeah, because he, they kept asking him. He's like, I really don't know what's in the one the next day. Like, oh, are, there, is there, are there, he kept even asking whether they're exactly the same. So, mm -hmm. but it's it's an inter interesting that um I don't know. It was interesting because all his questions today really were really about the. Since they're exactly the same, why not just use a regular one? Because why, why, why put up a fight over this? Well, I like that he didn't concede that they're the same. That would that would be very much yeah. what I would what I would say is it's like, look, I need a red line. Yeah, yeah, like I need I need a side by side comparison. I'm just looking at this now. You know, it was it was smart of him to to say like, I don't know, I'm not, I don't trust you. Well, <laughs> if you I say it is. You. And that is exactly the right thing you want out of a witness is not to just agree to that because who knows what editing has been done. Yeah, so true. No. So Sarah says, also a difference between them. Amber has told lies under oath. Johnny never did that. Her credibility is much worse than his. That was what Andrea was saying earlier today. Right. Um, Hayden, see, see, thank you. This, stop for one think, second sure. on the Super Chats. Yes. I'm telling you there's no names. People in the chat are also saying there's no names. Uh, there yeah. you go, Joe. See, they That's go away so when you weird. put the super chats up. That's really weird. Joe's freaking out over the day. I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out. How do we know who I am anymore? I don't know who I am. I was like, I don't know what I put. Because, no, some of the names I put up when I put it come in there are not names I necessarily would want to use on Alita's channel. So that's why I was like, oh, my God, I didn't check that out. If I don't see my name, I don't know what other people are seeing. And I'm just like, I don't even know what's happening here. So this is okay, though. This is, this is, we're good. But oh, please continue now. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Phoenix NSP, NSP, Cassie, she doesn't buy one. <laughs> Love Wiener Dogs. Thank you. Jack Adams says, didn't Amber Heard admit to hitting Johnny Depp with a hammer? I don't know about a hammer, but she Not definitely yet. said pots and pans. Yeah, definitely yeah. said pots and pans. Phoenix, with the Australia incident, there was not a problem with the dog permits with government. So being not in their country, having a DV incident could have caused JD more trouble being in a country. So maybe that is why he lied to his doctors. That could be another reason. And thank you so much for the very generous super chat. Um. Grace Fort says, I th I can't think of many victims of DV that complain that their abuser leaves the room slash many victims of DV that chase after their abuser. Just a thought. A lot of people are saying that. Um, I, I, I don't know from my own experience or anything like that, but um, yeah, that's what some, what some people are saying. Cherokee girl afternoon. Indy. Indy is still here. She's my, she's my other, she's my other goose <laughs> throughout this trial. <laughs> um, Michael Gaunt. Thank you for the super generous, super chat. I feel like they have also laid foundation for Depp being unable to grab and throw the phone due to the size of the bandage and how long it was on. It felt very deliberate how he mentioned the size and the and the pick to back it. Yeah, could be. Can he throw it uh, the hand? Could be. I, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of things. We haven't had a phone throwing, actually. In well, it was day. May 21st. There's the allegation that, well, we that he hit her with his phone. Okay, and and even then we know that that bandage comes off in August of 2015. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it would be like the overall dexterity of his hand sure. as a result of that. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't. I was worried he was going to pull tip of the finger off on the stand there when he's like messing with it. <laughs> it's a dummy <laughs> finger. <laughs> um, Talon says thanks for all the coverage. You guys are doing an amazing job. I feel a big part of this going in JD's favor it has to be his team getting heard argumentative, like in the 2016. <coughs> deposition i think it was then she was snacking yes yeah. if, if you guys have seen her her deposition she doesn't look good she definitely does not look good miss a says have you guys ever looked up cheek filler and tear filler bruising it looks so similar to her a b pictures i have heard this from a lot of people i don't i don't know exactly what it looks like but some people have said that some people have said botox sometimes it can create that create that kind of bruising um, that you see in some of her photos very interesting i wonder if they have any kind of medical records from any plastic surgeons or anything that would be that would be that would really be wild in this case right 
JJJ MMM says, thanks for hosting this commentary and for your panel. It's great having Natalie join. Sorry, Nick, the nose is splitting your audience. Love you both. Hey, you know what? There's plenty of audience to go around here. I am, I am very happy with, with the, the number of people that have chosen to, to choose. I'm very thankful. Um, JP Blake Live says, I have a case out of Florida, 400 pages of abuse. Laws don't work for poor people. JP Blake Live. I'm really sorry to hear that. That's awful, awful, awful. I hope you can get that, that case resolved um, in, in, a, in a favorable way. Uh, Jocelyn Shelley, welcome to YouTube membership. Duchess of Dub, thank you. Superion Maximus says, if you believe she caused the gash, you must award the gash. That's a good one. <laughs> That's like that's like what what was the what was the defamation when you came up with Rick? Oh yes, was... I, I I said if he was framed, he was ah, defamed. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Gecko probably Gamer probably more legally accurate. Yes. <laughs> Gecko Gamer says, could JD's testimony be a case of quantity having a quality of its own? I'm yeah. not sure what you mean by that exactly. The breadth of the testimony and mm. the meandering organicness of the vernacular could represent a certain sincerity, I think, mm -hmm. is, the, is the question. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Could be. People often take that as deceptive, though, uh, when you ramble. I think it's... you can read it either way. I, I, you know, I, I think that was the question, though. I, <laughs> yeah. I feel like his testimony is going to split. I think it's better than neutral. But I think it will that a lot of those little niche like nuances will split based on how you felt about him going in. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Fairly true. Yeah, probably. Um, Jessica Bookholt, welcome to YouTube memberships. Stephanie, thank you. Boogers says Amber's got some splaining to do. No prenup nor postnup. Yep. Stephanie says she's wearing yellow. You don't think she's trying to match Johnny's tie from yesterday? That might be a little bit of a stretch. He had a multicolored tie. There was yellow in it, but there was there was there were some other colors too. Um, K N E J T O one says punishment of twenty ambers for the guy on keyboard. <laughs> Who was tied? <laughs> I'm not sure. Me. Uh, but we we also have gotten have gotten some. I, I think I think we also have gotten some some from the court. It might be the court reporter breathing. Um, we've we've heard that from time to time. Um, Faces says. Will it be allowed to use UK testimony to impeach if testimony is fr uh, from this trial? Sure, differs? why not? It's a prior and consistent statement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it shows so. credibility. But it's what well, I think you could argue it's different courts, different legal standards. Yeah. Well, but you yeah. can also use other other statements that they've made elsewhere. I mean, outside of depositions, right? Yeah. yeah. I, so, that. I just in a different yeah. foreign court, I think that's where I would argue there's an issue. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. written, so it's not that different, but yeah. Um, Caitlin says, I've seen some reporting that according to Virginia jur jury instructions for civil state of verdict does have to be unanimous. Can we clarify this? Yes. It does. Yes. It's true for this, for this case. It is true. Um, JP Blake live says you guys deserve laws. Uh, us guys deserve laws to protect us. My case in Florida. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, these, these laws shouldn't be, shouldn't be gendered like that. Right. I mean, well. Johnny said on the stand too, he said, men, women, and children get abused and, um, and they should, they should, I, I think they should have justice as well. You're not lying, JP. Uh, yeah. JP Blake live also says hashtag JP Blake lives guys need laws too. Yeah, I agree. Jason Broyles. Thank you. Kristen and co says, hope they finish redirect with Johnny with audio. When Amber says you're such a baby, Johnny, tell everyone I hit you. Do you really think a judge or jury will believe you? <laughs> Is, is that it could be tape or somewhere? it is, it is, yes. it is on a tape, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'll be better, place. it'll be better coming Amber from Amber's that. testimony. Yeah, oh, yeah, Let's put that to Amber. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm um, waiting for that. That's gonna hey, be another moment. <laughs> hey, Kurt, you're licensed in Virginia, right? I am okay. I have a question because in Ohio, cross examination is open in scope, I'm not limited to what is done on direct. Is Virginia that way too, or no? Uh, depends on judge's discretion. Okay. Okay. Donnie I just didn't Stanley know how says, they might bring it up. Sorry, that was it. No, no, that's, that's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt. Donnie Stanley but there is a rule that you're not in, in Virginia. You can't impeach your own witness, so that's part of the problem. So, mm -hmm. like, like you can't call Johnny Depp can't call Amber mm -hmm. because they can't impeach her when she lies. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Donnie Stanley says Depp's team can show a pattern of behavior from Amber. She threw the water bottle at him. She threw the Red Bull can, Red Bull can, and she threw the vodka bottle. That's that's what they've shown so far. She admitted pots and pans. She admitted pots yeah. and pans. JP Blake Live says, "Hey, I'm not rich. I made a comedy out of my case of domestic abuse. I'm important too." Hashtag JP Blake Live. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, dude. Um, Aurelia Anderson Thompson, LMFTA MDiv says, question, physical fighting and emotional distress on both sides doesn't automatically eliminate the case for DV towards one party, legally speaking. Side note, love your channel. Emily D. Baker recommended you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So, so legally speaking, uh, it doesn't automatically eliminate the case for DV towards one party. I mean, yeah, we've talked about that, right? That, that you can have yep. cases where they both are are kind of shoving each other, but then one of them is is found to be an abuser, right? Nate Nate has talked about this about actually having cases like that. I think, right? Right. Nate? I've I've had tons of cases like that. It it just happens, you know. Lots yes. of mutually abusive couples out there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah unfortunately, it's <clears throat> way of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Lou, love, I need to, I need, I need to take a second. Love wiener dogs says, can JD show proof? He told Kipper the real finger story. Yeah. I don't um, think we got that from Kipper. I, yeah, I don't, I don't recall hearing that either. I mean, maybe he said it, but I, I think Andrea said that he had said that there were multiple different accounts um, what I remembered was that he was that he knew that Johnny told the ER doctor that he had cut it himself with a with a with a knife. He definitely said that. Yeah. Yeah. JP Blake Live says, Johnny, I don't have 20 million. You're fighting my case in Florida. I'm from Los Angeles. I lived in your same building. I couldn't deal with L.A. You, my man, stand up for me, please. And thank you. Thank you for for sharing that. IWD says she is a bad actress, textbook sociopathy, the pitch changing in her voice when she tries to play the advisor to Depp, et cetera. She's a textbook wife beater. Could be. Shirley Peralta, thank you. JP Blake Live became a YouTube member. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Jamie McClement says, okay, just listen to the third portion of that taped argument. Wow. First, I'm digging up from Xanax from uh, somewhere, and I'm convinced this guy needs that $50 million for counseling. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm probably I, I would I, I think I would agree with that. 2012 Jameson says biggest win for JD is in the tape. Amber Heard didn't deny her injuring JD's finger in Australia. So there goes her Australia lie. I agree. I think that was an admission by, by not denying by hearing the accusation and by not denying it. I think that is an admission. Kristen and co says an abuse victim does not gift her abuser a knife that is engraved. If Johnny had put her in his will, I don't believe he would be alive today. I mean, it could be. Eh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that she would have gone that far. It definitely felt that way, though. Yeah, it yeah. certainly it looks real bad. But I mean, she had to have known that if she, you know, stabbed him to death, she's not getting shit in the will. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, true, because there is there is a there is something called a slayer statute in California, where if it is shown that you actually killed the person that you were supposed to inherit from, you are disinherited. Completely. Yes. I've, I've, like actually, I've actually seen like that. Son of Sam Law. Son of Sam Law. Well, Son of Sam Law is like capitalizing no, you, on you can't profit from oh, your yeah, own right. crime. Yeah, that, I, I'm right. common, Damn it. What is it? At that's common right. law, it's like you can't... Yeah, but at, it is like Son of Sam Law, because at common law, you can't profit from your own crime. And that's what gen, that's what stopped that whole... Um, I forgot what's, what's the case. It's like a famous case where the, the grandson killed the grandfather because the grandfather wouldn't die fast enough so he killed the because so the statute here in new york was like 10 years he kills the grandfather and then it's like well you know i'll get inherit all this money in 10 years so what and then the court had this then came up with this rule that said you can't inherit um you can't benefit off your own fraud yeah yeah that was i think she time. was i i don't necessarily think she was like gonna kill him kill him but i think she would looking to drive him to you know accidentally have an overdose once and that would be it. Oops. I'm just going to go a little too far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Jane Dot uh, CA says, I hope they end Johnny's testimony with the audio clip of her telling him to go on, Johnny. Tell the world you were abused. No one will believe you. I think it's going to come out in, in hers. I can't it's believe this be is a clip. 
Oh, yes. it's a clip. I, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I've seen a lot of I it's it. it's incredible. She, to she's to definitely to. Uh, just, just to be clear. She's definitely lying. It's just now. It's just you know. My, I think any guavo that we have on this panel is really about the legal, whether it's legally sufficient defamation, not a moral judgment about about her because it seems like she's a monster. Yeah, yeah, she is the is. real monster here. 2012 Jameson says Amber Heard proved even crazy is bigger in Texas. Nate, she yours. Oh, she's yours. Oh yeah, I, say, <laughs> I love the crazy. I love uh, the crazy Amber. <laughs> 2012 Jameson <laughs> says, J, uh, Nate, JK, nobody deserves this stuff. It's still one across JD after those audio tapes. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Law RN says, Amber had no fear of Johnny Depp. Fear is primal. Find the fear. You find the true victim. She chased. He challenged. She escalated. Zero fear. That is mm. definitely what it's looking like at this point. Um, we'll see how, how testimony continues. Represent says, James Franco, Elon to testify. Look up James's history, Elon, and threesome with Amber. So, uh, I don't. So again, he uh, Elon has has managed to not be served a subpoena for a deposition. So I don't think that he's going to uh, uh, give testimony in this <laughs> case, unfortunately. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I think James Franco is on the list, and I believe he's been deposed. So uh, that is going to be James Franco get involved in this. Because he had an affair, she had an affair with him during her during the marriage. Really? Okay, that is what has been alleged. Keep adding wow. affairs. How many wow. affairs did she have? Is anyone A world anyone else? How many affairs didn't she have? Is more like the question. Am I right? Yeah. Ba-dum, yeah. Ba-dum. <laughs> I'm just gonna say not it. A cam with Elon, so. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm making jokes here, but I have no personal knowledge. Obviously I'm going off of what has been alleged in this case. Nobody sue me. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting when we hear from James Franco, <laughs> Debbie Dolan said, uh, has become a YouTube member. Welcome Gecko Gamer. Can you object an objection? No, you can, you can only argue against the objection. <laughs> Debbie Dolan, thank you so much for your super chat. Brap, Basement Radio Arcade Podcast says, Hogue, this is interesting. Yeah, B Rap and Gecko, you're starting to get some virtual legality regulars uh, I love out, it. out here in Legal Bites. So uh, I, I apologize in advance, but they're great people. I love it. You know, you know, I, lo- I love talking about video games from time to time, you know. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, I've got to, I've got to capture these guys, these new guys first. Um, Let's see, Debbie Dolan. Thank you so much. That shared Won't function be silenced. is great. What's that? That shared function is great. The fact that they put that up, the fact that you can now now for the super chats. Oh, to save yep. them and yeah, and oh my them. god, it's it's a lifesaver. It, I would like not. I, w- I would be. Thing ever. I would be. I would be. I, I wouldn't be able to to track all of these and the chat at the same time. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, us all. Um, uh, yeah. No, it's 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 been a lifesaver for for this whole experience. Um. Won't be silent says, thank you for your coverage. Such a huge Johnny Depp fan. Now that we can see him for real hashtag believe everyone. I think, I think listen and investigate is, is my, my motto now coming out of this trial. Andy Teef. Thank you. And again, thank you, Andy Teef. Go your own way. Says Amber Heard looks like she's trying to force herself to cry, but is unable to master the tears because of her poor ability to act. (laughs) Maybe so. Maybe. Arian Jackson says, if the grumpy don't fit. (laughs) The dog didn't do it. (laughs) <laughs> uh, Ignacio Campos says she has she said she she said he was right and took the high ground by refusing to hit her she did say that it's very true we heard it mm-hmm. Arian Jackson says what is going to be interesting to do is to compare the level of authenticity between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard you either have it or you don't JD has it I completely agree but, I, am, but, I cannot wait for her testimony now. I, I, I want to ask something that that that, that may, may be off color but do you Uh-oh. think that she has to cry <laughs> to be believed? No. Does she have to go up there? No. no. Does she have to go up no. there on the stand to cry? Because right now she's they've built her up as this ice queen. So if she uh-huh. goes up on that stand and it, it's all it's almost like right now people aren't seeing her as as this, as an emotional person. They they're seeing her as a stone cold. So are we at the point now where she has to kind of go all and she has to go to the acting and drop uh, a I tear? Don't... I don't think so. I, I think that whatever she does, so long as it feels sincere, it just can't feel off. And I, and it's like, and that's such a maybe maybe kind of like a like a cop out kind of answer. But there's really no way to to explain it until you're in the moment and observing it. Like this doesn't. There's something about this that doesn't 
doesn't line up with what she's saying and what she's doing and what she's responding to. And these are mutually exclusive narratives we're expecting to get. So, I mean, I think one of the problems is, is I, I, right this second, hearing Johnny Depp's direct case, we think she's going to look off, right? Like you, you can't have both mm -hmm. of some of these things exist at the same point. But no, I, I wouldn't say she has to cry. In fact, if, if you mandated that she did, I think you've, you've swung the pendulum in the wrong direction again, right? Mm -hmm. Like you should be allowed to be a victim and then be stoic and stone cold afterwards, uh, even however you feel about your jury strategy and, and management and whatnot. But I don't think she has to cry to come off as sincere. I think she has to be sincere to come off as sincere. And I think there are mm -hmm. reasonable people that can look at that and have their doubts that that's what's going to happen. Agreed. Because right, right now, when you look at when you look at everything that we've that we've seen right now, she is from everything from wife, well, my wife beater, husband beater. She's manipulative. Like everything that that he's been saying, especially from these tapes before we've seen. But we've only heard one side of the story, so so I am right. sensitive to that. But even with that, I think at, at this point, I, I think we're, we're at a point in this trial where it's not make or break for Johnny right now, but Amber, I think, cannot go on that stand. And hold on, what am I trying to say? The, her, her, her whole defense is going to be, Johnny hits me too. That's what, that, that's what she's, because she's suing him on the counter. So she's trying to prove that Johnny hit me too. Right now, I don't think there's anyone in the world who, who believes that that occurred. So I'm just, I'm just, it, even the dynamics that we've, that we're talking about, Amber's stronger, Amber's cunning, Amber, like, like everything, you know, we've even called her the male in the relationship. So I think we have, she has a lot, if she's trying to prove her case too, she's going to have an extremely high hurdle to now overcome. Because yeah. as of right now, I just don't, I, it's either Johnny's going to win or they're both going to lose. I don't really see any yeah. scenario where she can win and Johnny loses. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Amber's yeah. primary defamation claim is that she was accused of faking May 21st. A hoax. Yes. So, and, 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 and by the way, I've, I've, I've seen the question come up in the chat a couple of times. I see it, Don Baca. I'm, I'm sorry for not addressing it before, but I've, I've been trying to keep note of it. That There's been this question about what about Amber's countersuit? And that's exactly right, Hogue. Uh, mm -hmm. Back to you. <laughs> oh, no, I, no. It's just, you know, the, the statements that came out, the big one is it's a hoax. They keep it's a hoax. It's a hoax. She and her friends faked the May 21st incident. Um, and so her primary argument is I didn't fake it. Uh, and so then that's independent from whether Johnny hit her in 2014 uh, or something like that, whether or not she faked the May 21st incident. So I, we haven't even gotten to any of that yet. We've gotten yeah. first Although, today. This super chat addresses some of it. Uh, sure. Potato Pirate says, I feel bad for Amber. I've been beaten a lot, but never enough to make nail polish come out of my nose. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Some of the first stuff we got today was like Johnny in the room attesting to the fact that she was yelling into a phone 20 feet away from him saying, stop hitting me, stop hitting me, uh -huh. uh, and seize the nail polish and that kind of thing. So that'll be yeah. a big deal. We've that's got, Amber's case. And we've, that's got, where, we've got some more pieces of hoaxery. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I think, and I think Nate kind of might be going down this road too. I wonder if Johnny's going to poison the well so much that anything she does, they're going to be like, oh, she's trying to manipulate us and lie to us. So she's stone yeah. cold there. Oh, she's screwing with us. She's crying. She's screwing with us that there's i don't know if there's any way out for her necessarily yeah it looks which, it, she's got a tough a tough road for her performance yeah. um you know whether whether that's whether that's a sincere performance or or a canned one you know yes. either either way she's got it she's got a tough the performance of her life hill. Yeah. <laughs> it seriously is um, if you've seen her movies that's uh... yeah i'm not holding out and if, so. if johnny's performing you know this is the this is why he's an a-list actor because I believe, like, there's no, I believe he's being genuine, but he could yeah. be acting, right? He's a he's a he's a Hollywood actor, but if he's the acting, thing is, this is the best performance ever. I honestly believe he's being genuine. If he's if he's an actor, he's studied. Like this isn't just some off the cuff performance, because mm -hmm. the thing that you see over and over with like fake uh, domestic violence accusers is that they tend to tell their stories differently than the real ones, and like. Has this guy actually, you know, would he have sat in on, you know, however many trials to watch that distinction? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't think that this is within, you know, even when you see in movies, like movie actors, usually their portrayals are off. Um, I don't think he, I don't think this is acting. I don't think this is. Uh, yeah. So. 
Yeah, I don't think so either. It, it doesn't. It feel. It feels very sincere to me. Um, Luminia M says Natalie's audio is crackling. Yeah, unfortunately, we were we we're trying to figure that out backstage. What was going on with that? Um, Michael Gaunt said when he objected to himself, all I could see was Captain Jack. It was it a bit like that. Like, <laughs> he did. He did. Gromax says Hoaglaw getting beeped out is awesome. That was really funny. <laughs> <That> was <nice. laughs> the realistic mystic says random question. This may have been asked before, but advice for finding a great lawyer, especially in different areas like medical and family stuff. EVVO um, and Mardale Hubble are my two go-tos as recommendations. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I usually like to go with, with references. If, if there are people that, you know, who have, who have done good work in the past for other people, um, cause that, I mean, you, you can, you can also trick somebody with, with a resume, right? <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's nice to know if you, if you know someone that has pr been a client, especially in the past, cause you can know how, how they are with their client relations, with their communication style, with all kinds of stuff like that. Yep. Um, a state of Brett says Johnny's laugh was contagious when he was starting to talk about the poop on the bed. He did kind of laugh to himself a little bit. Love Wiener Dog says if the evidence against Amber or against Amber against becomes Amber. insurmountable, do you think it's possible she will admit to her behavior and claim some form of insanity defense? No, she's no. going to go ju full Justice Millette. No, <laughs> can't. it's too. This is if, it, if, it, if it becomes insurmountable, that means like half of these things are planned, like almost heist movie esque type things. You can't. You're you're out on insanity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. R. Finch says, what have you lost? Nothing less than everything. He delivered that so powerfully. Really effective and going to be hard for Amber to match that emotional intensity. Yeah, we'll see. It's a little bit much. I mean, he hasn't been led in total ruin and destitute. Yeah, you you know, know, he's not singing trailer. on the street for uh, passersby. Yeah, but I mean, when you think about the, the the craziness that is his life, the reality that is weird already, and then he's he's living in that reality that is Hollywood that only those people kind of can understand. And now he's a pariah. And, and all I have work. left is my private island and my $200 million. This is my point. <laughs> and yeah. I, okay. Like, a French actress. Okay. But money doesn't buy everything, right? Money it doesn't does buy, buy a you private reality. island. Damn near a private that. island would solve a lot of my problems. <laughs> <laughs> Not all, all right. of them, though. Ian gets real. a private island fun. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Mo Monaco says, hashtag justice for Johnny. Catherine S, don't forget the clause for financial gain. That was that sure. was part of it. That was part of it for sure. Marianne Talbot says the audio tapes tell the whole truth because you hear her admitting to what happened to his finger. She does. Reagan Weatherford says, feels like defense was grasping at straws in cross. Ah, they were they were starting to hit on some real points that that were mm -hmm. actual, you know, fodder for cross-examination. I I will I will give them that. Uh, Natalie says, wonder if JD wouldn't get as sassy with Elaine and that's why they chose Rothborn could be, could be, although if they had chosen Elaine and he got sassy with her, that would have been a doubly bad look for Johnny because it's, it's him reacting to a woman, um, him honestly, showing some kind of aggressive. Better. What's that? I honestly think he's just better. This is the most yeah. important yeah. witness they're yeah. going to cross. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. I mean, you, yeah. you say, you say the big guns for the, for the most important witnesses. For At sure. least so far he's done a good job. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i so thought far. he did a good job yeah. yeah in in the in the 20 minutes that we saw uh we'll see how it, how it goes tomorrow uh my opinion matters is i think amber's career is done after this court case we will oh, see yeah. Yeah, susan endlich thank you i mean it was a terrible career beforehand so yeah. well, she uh, she's been an aquaman thing. though aquaman, yeah, she's, she's, she's got she's those got those. that dc money Wendy Lizette Duran said, Turd's case is going to crumble once the document about the redaction of the op-ed comes into play. Oh, I'm being, I don't know anything about that. that. Yeah. Supposedly yeah. said well, there was another version of the op-ed. Yes, that, there were multiple versions, naming, I think. Yeah. A lot of redlining. Redlining that I went back like and forth. Velothiel says, Dutch late night show. Trust me, I'm Dutch. I know, I'm so sorry. I said it was, that she went on a Danish talk show where she said that she already <laughs> donated the $7 million. It's Dutch. I did apologize. Did you, just I'm, as a, an I'm, aside, I'm a dumb American. <laughs> just as an aside, did you see chat go crazy when he said there's something rotten in the state of Denmark, which is Shakespeare, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like people got offended on behalf of Denmark? <laughs> did people not know that. that that was from Hamlet? Some people uh, in the chat didn't. Okay. I was I was watching it. I was very humorous yeah. by this. Uh, it's like that's you know, yeah, Shakespeare folk. Attic Anyone who's offended in chat is illiterate. Okay. 
<laughs> Attic it. hatch. Well, don't offend the chat. I love the chat. We of course, it. we well, love the chat. Yeah, the whole chat now. <laughs> Somebody was commenting that Rottenborn would be a great uh, name for an Aquaman villain, and if I had any pull villain. on the production, I would totally make that happen. Just to watch her try to act through that twitch. Oh yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> that would be funny. At a catch sound, Bob Cowell says the way to sell it to the jury. Op as op ed is fruit of the two year old accusations in the public's mind. They are inseparable. Yes. Ergo op ed equals revisiting two year old allegations. Prongs of the same misdeed. I completely agree. I, I absolutely agree because in, in the, in the mind's eye of the public reading that after having seen all of these headlines splashed all over the place, it had metastasized all over the place. As Johnny put it, I hope they use that word in cross and closing. Hey, JD's team. If you happen to be watching this, like, like Rittenhouse's team <laughs> did, please use that metastasize. It metastasized everywhere from 2016 all the way through 2018. <laughs> and they're the same thing. It's all the same. And it's cancer. a resurgence please. of the same cancer. Use yeah. really that cancer. word. Yes. One Amber's a cancer. Use that word, please. Yes. Um, yes. So, yes, I, I completely agree. Prongs of the same misdeed. Completely agree with you, Bob. Completely. Susan Endlich said, did Johnny's divorce attorneys do him a disservice by not fighting her false allegations? I mean, they might have been timed out. They might have been timed out, too. I mean, yeah. well, I mean, it depends on. You would have well, to foresee me, too, as well. And yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of other considerations. Like he yeah. doesn't want that turning into a media fight. If he can, if he could just yeah. make it go away. Yeah. The problem is it just didn't go away. Yeah. He also so, didn't force me too, is what he said. Yeah. Well, he got what he wanted. He paid for, for the right. She says that I, there was no abuse. Like that's part of the joint statement. Uh, and, and so that's, that's what you paid for. You make this yeah. go away. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I, you know, and, that's probably the way it was done for decades in Hollywood. Everybody just settles and we leave it quiet and yeah. we just happen yeah. to be unlucky. Away. Yeah. LK well, she Ryden. She wanted to burn him down. So apparently so. LK Ryden says Hillary Clinton, fem famous feminist who used to wear light yellow suits, perhaps related. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's a little bit oh. of a stretch, I think. But that's funny, though. Uh, Yaniel Vargas says, are we looking at punitive or compensatory damages in this civil defamation case? Yes. Thanks in advance. Yes. I think so. I think that if they're so. egregious enough, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, definitely, definitely compensatory, compensatory right? for sure. That's, that's, yeah. the, I mean, like, that's yeah. the bottom. Yeah, that's that's the, the baseline. <laughs> that's yeah. Because you are compensating them for their injuries. That's, that's mm -hmm. the baseline for any civil case, actually. But punitive. I mean, yeah, punitive. I don't know. I think because, that because, in Virginia, they're limited to $350,000 anyway on punitives. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cardi B got so I won't worry about too much. Punitive. Yeah, oh. yeah. She did. She did. It's true. Um, Professor Fyeth, thank you so much for welcome to to uh, YouTube membership. Bernadette Bunskin says the joint statement is very limited in its word by using the term for financial gain, but false allegations by Amber about Johnny arguably was made to hurt Johnny and to defend her own abuse. What are your thoughts? Uh, that's that a tough statement. one to slice. That statement was negotiated to within an inch of its life. That the lawyers got paid from both sides to come up with some compromise understanding. That additional proviso that people are pointing yes. out absolutely comes from, you know, a, Amber's team or her saying, you know, we're going to limit this to make sure it doesn't apply more broadly. Uh, state, statements always have to be read with a very close eye. But one like that, you, I think I said when they read it out loud, every single sentence is wrong. We know that from everything else that has come out. Yes. So does it matter? No, we're not doing a breach of contract case. What the cross-examination brought out is just the nature of Johnny not abiding by that statement. And Amber doesn't abide by it either. There's no breach there. It's not a, it's not a litigation type thing. It's just pointing mm -hmm. out that it went against. He has unclean hands now. Well, you can't to trust to some them. extent, right? And you could say the, the, the same damn thing in Amber's cross X. So it yeah. doesn't, yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter. Exactly. Um, Bernadette Bunkin says the poop emoji is called grumpy. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> I don't know, but maybe we're calling it that now. Haley Kaufman says, did it feel like he was trying to trick JD by showing the different article? It did to me. It felt like he was trying to trap him. Yeah, it did to me too. It, it came off as kind bit. of weaselly, like, what, well, you know, what? I think he could bank on the fact Johnny probably never actually read that article in full. Just he was told, here are the bad parts of it, unlike the online article so if i were if i were his lawyer though in bringing a lawsuit i would have him read it 
I would have him read both versions just so that he could he could know and be aware. I don't know. I'm it's, sure the publication means... in the post print edition was part of their lawsuit. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they referenced. Yeah, them. yes, they did. Very unfamiliar with well, it. No, that's why because I, I saw the um because the, they actually put a picture uh, in the complaint of the online article and mm -hmm. referenced it because the online article was the day before. So yeah. the lawsuit was all about the online article, and then the print article was just was also another way of um, spreading the statement. Yeah, yeah. All righty. Oi, thy fleecy, or, or oh, thy fleecy says, can the Daily Mail Disney article be taken as fact? No. Uh, no. no. I mean, it's just like any other headline for any other article, right? Yeah. I mean, we've we've seen them be be misleading. Well, um, and that was that was one of the issues that that his attorneys actually could have objected to. They did. Um, they did. Yeah, they did. They did. They objected to it as, as you say, and he says, "I'm not putting it forth for the truth of the matter asserted." And I'm like, "And that was bullshit." It's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was coming in for the truth for sure. Yeah, it was for sure. <laughs> wink, wink, nod, nod. Right. Yeah. Um, no tax, good tax. Welcome to YouTube membership. But, but the thing is, is that I, I don't want to oversell this. If he has to prove damages, that goes at, that. That was a hell of a hit to the damages issue. Sure. Because yep. a lot of his damages were, I could be Pirate Six. Pirate, we've been hearing about Pirate Six a lot. And if Pirate Six was done before she, two months before this thing came out, then that I think does a real major hit to that particular claim. Well, and the whole thing, if you wouldn't do it anyway, even if they came crawling back to you. That yeah. was the most damning part with the a thousand alpacas or whatever it was. And you had mentioned, mentioned that in the deposition. Three hundred yeah. million dollars and a million alpacas. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that really yep. uh yeah. Th that that kind of mm. limits his limits him there. Yeah, but I mean, but that's that's specifically for Pirates of the Caribbean 6. What's to say that they wouldn't hire him for other projects? Sure. Or You know what I mean? Because it, that did yeah. so successfully. Why not continue to mm -hmm. use this phenomenal actor who created this character? I mean, maybe he can create another character that we can, you know, roll all the way until however many movies and so much merchandise and so many rides and, you know, like like what's Captain who, Spack who, who that? Darrow. But, 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 but Pirate yeah. 6 was something tangible, right? It was like we had done five of them. You know, we're, we're doing number six. It was something that people can relate to. Okay, and all of a sudden, now you're not doing, you know, the last one was a smash hit. Now you're not doing it all of a sudden. So it kind of gave you that, yeah. you know, what, what, what other reason would they have not to do Pirate 6? But now, you know, that reasoning came before John jumped before this. Or at least... Or, or at least it was alleged that in an in an article by the Daily Mail. And so there we, might be another rumor. There might be the so, other so. direction rumor. I don't know. I mean, I think to me, if you're proving damages in this, you go to the IMDb, you show 21 movies between 2016 and 2018. You show two from, since then, and you say, "Look, this is what happened." I, I, you know, you don't want to get into a fight over Disney, but I do think it's, I, I do think it's effective. I think the cross X for 15 minutes was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, giggles or giggle INSC says, does the divorce not say neither party? Does that not include her? It absolutely does. And, and it'll come up on cross. It will. I think Luna Wolf says, don't forget that there is a counterclaim. Yeah. I have not. Yep. We talked about it. Definitely. Definitely. Bernadette Bunkin became a member. Welcome. Jessica Buchholz says, can you go into hearsay a bit? A couple of objections confused me. Like the one about advice from his divorce lawyers from around 4 15 PM. Well, that that's nice. that that's privilege. It shouldn't have come in at all. Well, <laughs> he can wait for. Well, no, but he, yeah, he, 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 yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. So the the question, I mean, it, we should clip out was, yesterday's. You did such a great job, Alita. Yesterday, you had like a two minute primer on hearsay. You should, you should clip yeah. that and put it on your channel. I know. Yeah, yeah, let's talk to my editor about clip that guy, um true. he probably, Sorry, he probably editor, already did not trying to give you more work. you know what he probably did though because he, he likes to clip out those those portions that are like particularly educational like like 1l kind of stuff um yeah those are good so yeah so he, he probably actually did i've got to double check but um yeah so basically hearsay it's it, the 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 definition of hearsay is an out of court statement offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted so you know when we say that the that the daily mail headline was offered uh, to prove the truth of the matter asserted. And the defense counsel said that it wasn't. Um, the reason why we say that it did is because he's really trying to put that in front of the jury to show, yeah, that Disney actually was trying to get rid of him. That was the whole mm -hmm. point in putting that in front of Johnny. 
Um, yeah. So, you know, the, the, the out of court statement was the headline that a, 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 a statement can be either verbal or in writing. So the statement being the headline saying something like, you know, Disney wants to get rid of Johnny because of, you know, unreliability or whatever. Um, because of the fact that, that he, you know, he said that it snuck it in because he said that, no, it's, it's, it's like for his, his impression or something like that. Yes. His recollection so, of events. So or something. Yeah. <laughs> but then he said, he yeah, never heard this article, never heard about this article. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so that's, that's, that is, you know, either, either a statement's being offered for some other reason. So it's therefore not hearsay or to kind of confuse things a little bit, or it's hearsay, but it falls into an exception to hearsay. So there are a whole list of exceptions to hearsay, like business records, um, statements by an opponent, uh, a party opponent against their own interests. So statements, you know, Johnny can introduce statements by Amber that are against her interests, like her, like the, the recording of her saying, I threw pots and pans. Yeah. Okay. So what? <laughs> that is definitely against her interests. Um, and likewise, she can introduce statements against Johnny's interests. Um, there's, that's just a couple examples there. R. Finch says, JD doesn't care if it's overturned on appeal. JD cares about the court of public opinion and getting to wave a win. If it's overturned on appeal on a technicality, the public isn't going to care. Maybe. I mean, it, it well depends on. It depends. It depends on, on the nature of it, right? Tracy three says, since the Washington Post article references two years ago, which was in fact when she was with JD, claimed DV, divorce, et cetera, shouldn't all the events that happened two years ago come into play, even after the divorce statement, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, that's it, it all references back to that, um, is, is my position. I, and I, I, the, I, 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 think try, I think trying to do that is trying to do too much, for my taste. I, I, I think it's trying to do too much. So if the claim, if I think Johnny has to basically, to make his case work, for my mind, he has to prove the jury that he never committed domestic violence. Yes. He has to he has to yeah. basically prove that negative, and uh, so he still has some road to go. Trying and to we, import all that specific his testimony stuff from, so far, his testimony so far that's come out has yeah, been very helpful. For that. Trying to import all that specific stuff from 2016 to try to import all import all those specific claims based on mm -hmm. one sentence. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like you're trying to do too much. It's it's mm. it's it's not working for me. Okay, John, well, one thing Johnny Depp is what he's one thing I think he's really doing masterfully is he's trying is he's trying to kind of play this kind of kind of almost two games. One, he's trying to in, in one lane, he, he's essentially, uh, you know what? Forget about it. My, my kids are now <laughs> all jumping all over me now. So, <laughs> so I'm like, all right, now we have. Oh, all righty. Right okay. Dragon's Treasure says Alita is the black is a face of black black YouTube lawyers. Uh, that is a joke. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate it. Sonia Aranya says, did he lose the Fantastic Beast role after the Sun article or after suing the Sun? Would he have kept it if he hadn't sued? I think that he lost it because he lost the Sun the, the trial against the Sun. But the idea was that they were holding out. In, in not firing him until looking to see if maybe he was going to win that. But they were, it seems like they were on the fence when the allegation was made and then they decided no. Arif Arif says defense was crazy, not getting a younger female to do cross to let some of that snippy was uh, out to sink depth. Source wife does a lot of high profile and Texas oil money divorce trials. I mean, it definitely would have looked better, but it it's not going to look better if your person who's doing the cross examination is ineffective. Um, and oh. that's that's the thing about Elaine. And this is 15 minutes. I mean, there's nothing that says that they can't tap her in later. Yeah. I was going to ask if under uh, court rules whether you could have a second second attorney do part of it. You know what? I I would normally I, say say no, but it seems like in here that you could do that at least for opening statements. So yeah, I, I don't know specifically bizarre. about the court rules. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. They might, yeah. One attorney's handling the other case. One horse, one rider. That, I, I would agree. That's yeah, unusual, I, I well. or at least as a rule. At least, yeah. Well, I don't think here there's any limit that prevents that requires one lawyer to uh, to handle all of the cross examination or anything else like that. So, mm. hmm. Jan Beaton, thank you for your super chat. DBZRN says, those of us who have experienced childhood abuse have been dehumanized and don't always know how to feel, react in violent and physical confrontations as adults, so we escape. Uh, we have to learn via counseling. Yeah, I'm really sorry that um, it sounds like you you went through that. Um, 
but it's, I mean, it sounds like that's what, that's what Johnny's saying as well. Yeah. Rolf Peterson says payment for my 40 minutes of fame. Viva was skeptical of the emotional persuasions being not sufficient to prevail. Something to that IMO. Thanks. I disagree with Viva. I think there's plenty of emotion for, for the jury to latch onto here to, to decide in, in Johnny's favor. Um, I thought that before, um, and I definitely, I feel so much stronger about it today. I really like the way he's doing emotion too, because yeah. it's yeah. very softly presented, but it's mm -hmm. there. So it doesn't hit you over the head. And I, I appreciate he's, that. He's not overselling it. Yeah. Gecko Gamer says, law cathode ray tube. An old monitor. <laughs> for video okay. games right okay. so it's law tube with a cathode ray in it i get it thank gecko you. supports virtual legality a lot so i know i i, I, like rec it. I recognize his <laughs> thank you thank you um jan beaton says jd said he sent the payment to the charities in amber heard's name wouldn't she get the tax receipt i forgot to put my my question on my super chat duh oh um it, it depends on whether it's like for the benefit. I, there's a whole, yeah, yeah, not, not a tax, not a tax. Yeah, guy. yeah, I, I, <laughs> that could be difficult. I, I'm, I'm opting I'm, out. I'm parachuting out of this one. Okay, Let's just that's say okay. That Thank you for for joining for so uh, long today. Oh, no, 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 I'm not getting off the channel. What the hell? Oh, oh, no, oh I thought you were going to this question. tax question. Oh, parachuting <laughs> off of tax. I thought you were saying I got to go because it's been ten hours. <laughs> No, 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 no. It is going to be. 10 I was hours. like, I totally no, understand. We got, we got 44 super chats left. I'm in oh, it. Look Let's back. do it. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I've you. got to go in about 15 minutes so I can be on okay. with legal mindset on his channel. All righty. Oh. Um, Jan Beaton said, uh, JD said, oh wait, we, we just read this one. Okay. Uh, it, IFID says, Joe, can I get you to stay unleavened? Stay unleavened. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Happy says Amica cream can heal bruises, but not heal a cat. <clears throat> I see. Sneaking I like words it. in. He's sneaking out. words in. Yeah. I like it. Boston Andrea style. 44 says, my dream would be that Zellner could do the cross-examination of Herd. You know, I haven't I haven't seen her performance yet. So, but but maybe so. A lot of people are very excited about her being on the team. David Schaefer says, Did JD verbalize Rotten Bomb's name purposefully? Yes. I'm yes, sure he it was, did. It was to be it was almost like he was pointing a finger at him. Like that's uh, how thought... that felt was Mr. Rottenborn. Uh, yeah, no, and I thought it went it too far. It was very respectful. I thought it was nice. I, I, thought, it was I thought it was too far. Demeaning. You don't want to pick that fight with the lawyer because you just, as defense counsel, when I get somebody who's pissed at me like that, I love it. Mm -hmm. Like if the complainant or like a right, you yeah. know, an opposing witness it starts. It means you put them off balance. Yep. Yeah. Just and digging yeah. away again. You know, it means that, like, especially for Johnny, because he's got to. He's got to be so mindful of his emotions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he needs to not look like an angry dude. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, so, yeah. As, even the, even the, as I said before, as you've asked me three times before, yes, I, that's my signature. It's like, all right, come on, just, you don't need this. Yeah. Just answer <laughs> the questions and sit Although, there. Although. Be a smiling Buddha. That's what you need to be here is. Although. You know, the, Keep in mind, you know, just playing devil's advocate here, we also can't see the jury. And they they may be showing signs of annoyance at those kind of questions, too. Could be playing it up to the jury. That is true. Yeah. Catherine S. says, um, A should settle before she makes a fool of herself. Well, that that, that train has gone. That yeah. has left the station. That's not happening. I don't think Jay. I, and the other the other side is Jay and Johnny would need to settle as well. He would need to agree to it. And I don't, Takes two no to way. Absolutely no doing way. a public apology. Yeah. Yeah. Max Tribe says cheating on Rakeda because I enjoy the discussion. Oh, there's no cheating. You can go here. You can go there. Um, <laughs> super thrilled to have you, here, have you here, though. Thank you for the super chat. Joe says, if JD wins, how much money you think he could get? I mean, he's going for 50 million. So he could, he could at least in theory, get it. Bayunola says Johnny cares more about restoring his reputation than recouping monetary damages, which is why he didn't answer lawyer question the way he wanted. I, I think so. I think we, we've kind of we've we've kind of talked about that. Um, that may very well be true. Gregory Isms says poop scene is from Jenny McCarthy's Dirty Love movie, likely where she got the idea. Funny rom com, actually. I, That'd be a good defense. I was just trying to reenact a scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm method acting. 
<laughs> Manny Fabani said, let's get Hogue to 60K. He's almost there. We all love Rick, the Don of Video Wagos. <laughs> um, also, Rick, no, it can't all be for nothing. Best game ever. Hashtag TLOU2. <laughs> Talking about uh, The Last of Us. There's a lot of things to respond to, but I appreciate the effort. Yeah, you know, we're at uh, 59.6 today. So, okay. yeah, come on over. Nice. Subscribe to Virtual Legality. You need to just donate 400 of your subs to Rick over here. I just yeah, push we just over send the 400 over. I They'll know. be very surprised like when they come out and it's like, what is Activision? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely if you want anything on video games you want anything on elon musk and his tweets and the sec and and how all of that works together your brain will expand by going to rick's channel for sure absolutely and the same thing is with all of these other guys here too like i said before go 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 to their channels help them out subscribe watch their videos like and share all their stuff for sure so yeah thank you manny uh demo says it felt like amber was trying to set up johnny for abuse when she started to scream johnny stop hitting me when her friend ran in but security was near I, yep. I, yeah that's exactly what it, it looked like that was a setup for the hoax uh the hoax claim that that uh that johnny depp side came with booger said why all the hate for hogan nate i'm a realist and a jd fan he wins even if he loses anyway folks expose the turd yes i agree i agree no hate for either of these guys no hate for anyone on this panel i love all you guys Carlos Eduardo says, I own a beauty clinic that really looks like a cheek filler bruise. People are pointing that out. Black Shy Guy says, Alita, you are doing a recap of today's case. I live for those on the ride to work. Love ya. <sighs> yes. As soon as we get through these super chats. And she looks at the <laughs> clock. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and <laughs> I'm lucky it's a four day week. <laughs> I've got to head out, but uh, thanks for having me on again. And, of course. Uh, thanks for joining. Oh, it's Ian. great content. I yeah, also, thank you. I also need to sort of bolt. I, I've been yeah, swamped here. I don't See you, yeah, Joe. Of course. Get ready for Thanks your next for outing. Joe. Joe. <laughs> yes, everybody go and subscribe to both of these guys. They're linked in the description. Thank you. All thank right. You. Good luck, guys. Yeah. Hey, Nate's um, showing face. Hey, Nate. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Yeah, um, like my kids have put on clothes and I've given them their <laughs> desserts. So I'm, I'm free for a couple of minutes. There you go. Guns down in hail said, how big of a freak out will Amber have during cross? Oof, we will see. Yeah. Boogers said, uncivil law, you rock too. You're underappreciated by the chat. Agreed. All the love for oh. uncivil law. Katmando TNR says, still waiting for Nate Krause to say, sometimes you just got to take a beating. Oh. <laughs> uh, that was so oh. horrible. Yeah, it was bad. That was a bad closing argument, man. Olive Green says, I am definitely getting Phil and Bryn Hartman vibes. I'm glad he ran before something worse happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Phil Hartman, right? Killed yeah. by his wife. Yeah. 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 I definitely, I was thinking the same thing. Oh, that's a sad, that, uh, thanks for bringing that memory back. That was so sad. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Kelly House says, I don't think I've ever seen someone look at their abuser, quote unquote, in the eyes the way Amber does. The eyes don't lie, can see straight through her. Could be. P.S. says no one should underestimate the danger of DV, including permanent sleep for both parties. What if that bottle of vodka had hit his head? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Ariva said, what do you think about the judge's decisions on sustaining objections brought by defense, but not Depp's team? Judge likes Herd's team more. I thought most of her, de uh, most of her decisions have been fine. Yeah. yeah I, I, most of them have been we have, a, we have a quarrel here or there, but you know, nothing like yeah. major. And, yeah. it's, and it's Johnny's case, so the most objections are coming from Herd's team. Yeah. But, yeah. There, but there was like one of those directs where it was like, where they just weren't laying, laying any foundation. So you're going to get yeah. a lot of those objections. So, you know, until Especially they Especially because this judge, end. this judge is biased for, uh, for uh, foundation objections. That's what she's biased for. She likes things to be structured in a certain way. And so you got to capitalize on that. I can't hardly argue with her. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Yang, thank you for your super chat. A train, everyone, mark your calendars. Uncivil got a fact wrong. LOL. Hashtag son of Sam Law. Never thought I'd see the day. It happens. <laughs> it happens from time to time. Um, but that's why we're here, right? Is we're all here to learn together. Rachel Mills, interesting fact. James Franco settled a Me Too suit. He did, and that doesn't imply liability of course i have to say that as a lawyer settlements do not imply that that any party has been uh his is actually liable for what it was that they were accused of um but it is interesting 
Angela Yang says, can defamation cases be settled outside of court? Absolutely. Of course. Every, every of civil, course. every civil case can be settled outside of court. Uh, the question is, do they want to? Yeah. I don't think Johnny Depp ever would have settled this case at all because he needed his story to get out. Yes. And you can see that today. 100%. Yeah, really when you yeah, yeah, yeah. his story had to get out. Yes. Yeah. And that's, and that's, that's why, that's why, you know, I was talking about my, my, my own trial experience in civil litigation is getting my foot into the courtroom. I have a lot of hearing experience going to hearings and arguing motions and that kind of stuff but not actual trial experience in civil litigation because it is so 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 rare because judges want their dockets to be cleared they want the parties to settle their cases and a lot of that has to do with there's just a lot of money that's getting spent all the way mm -hmm. around to to get a case to trial um Dern wellesley says he lost over 50 million in in fbo uh or maybe fantastic wb films fantastic alone. beasts Fantastic beast. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that's a lot of money. Yep. Yep. And that may be where a lot of his damages numbers are coming from too. Sir Ella says, be careful what you say on what she needs to do to be believed. She has changed everything to what you guys have said every day. She is watching you. I mean, it's possible because nah, it has happened in the past. Us. Yeah. No. It, ha it has. Okay. They definitely have got a. They've got definitely got a lawyer or two in the back room watching the entire thing. They might be watching our stream <laughs> and getting commentary. That's possible. It could make be. The lawyers I, I, make it look nicer. I. I, you know, I, I've said this before. I, I never want to be, you know, assuming that anybody is paying attention to anything that I do, but. The only reason why I say maybe is because we, the reason why we had Natalie Wisco on today was because she became aware of our stream and yeah. she reached out to me after trial and was like, Hey, thanks for sticking yeah. up for me. You know, when, when people were talking smack about, the, about, about our judgments, <laughs> you know, um, and that's, that's how we became friends yeah. um, is, is through a, a, a trial stream like this. So, you know, it's, I, I can't discount that entirely. It's, 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 it's possible, but you know, I'm, I still want to call it like I see it. For, for both sides, you know, whether whether that's helpful to one side or the other. Sailing East says, how relevant is the fact that JV lost the Sun defamation trial to this trial? Isn't the the evidence similar, if not identical? It's different legal claims. It's, there are differences because yeah. you're, he wasn't suing Amber. She wasn't a party. There was a lot of evidence that couldn't come in. They, they didn't allow experts to come in, which is crazy to me when you're talking about, you know, fingers getting cut off and psychological damage and, and DV issues. I mean, this is a case that needs experts in order to explain certain things to lay, lay people. It was also one judge as opposed to a jury of peers. Well, there well, are, there are, and it was against a publishing company in, in, instead of instead of her. That's the oh, big Nate, distinction. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, that's Sorry, right. I, 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 think that's, I think that's the big distinction here is that she was suing the son. I mean, he was suing the, it was the son. And, mm -hmm. and you couldn't get a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that we're hearing now from doctors and all that stuff. You couldn't get without her consent or if, or if she mm -hmm. was on the other side of the day. So I so I think you're right. I think just that evidence wasn't available in that particular case. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And yet they were able to get all of the damaging evidence against Johnny from her because she was more than willing to give that. So it's, it's uh, on an evidentiary level. It, it's a really weird, um, weird thing that happened there with, with the evidence um, in that case. Hey, Chris Alina, says, you, yes, I gotta, I gotta head out. You guys have a nice okay. night. Yes. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for, for coming. It was great having you. So yeah, Chris says, do you think that they're angling towards the argument of it's not technically defamation because it's becoming more likely, more unlikely of proving that she's an, that he's an abuser, uh, like Kay, she's an abuser, but she, he, she's an abuser, but she's not a defamer. Yeah. I mean, that's, that it is probably their more. best bet. That's probably their best bet, honestly, um, at, at this point from, from the testimony that we've heard. And especially if, if she doesn't, uh, if she isn't able to, you know, put on a good performance for her own case. Well, you know, I, I think that that really is their best bet is bringing it down to how, how narrow of a claim, um, yeah. that it really is. She, she can stare into it too. She can stare into the whole mutual combat piece of it. It's like, yeah, I gave as good as I got, you know, I'm not going to let a man. So I, so I think there's a way to get in there that gets you a little bit of this public relations piece. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think for her, it's about the case. I think for Johnny, it's about the yeah. story. And like you said earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. getting the story out. Yeah. yeah. Jay McCarthy says JD's testimony is consistent with his deposition. I haven't seen his deposition, actually. It's one thing that I probably should watch over the weekend. Bohemia says, just watched the live. What does it mean for Johnny that he signed that contract Rottenborn brought up? Um, it uh, He would make me furious, too. 
Well, they agreed. Uh, the reason they brought up the contract is because the the joint statement was in the contract that he specifically signed. So it wasn't just that you know it was something the PR teams did behind the scenes and he had no real control of, right? That would be the idea. It's like, no, you saw this exact language. You signed off on this as your joint statement. You are actually saying these words like he, she never did that. So the point of the signature was to prove that the words in it were his, which, you know, fair enough. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the, the counter is, is that she says there's no abuse in that same statement. And before yeah. going before going to the Washington Post. Yeah, at the end of the day, that statement doesn't really help help either of them. Um, it doesn't move the needle that much one way or another, I think. Crash Mondo says money doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy things that make me happy. Stability can and money can be exchanged for goods and services. It absolutely can. Malarkey Machine says, What sort of audio, video, or photographic evidence do you suspect Amber's team might bring forward, if any? <sighs> I well, they're oh, so the photos, the photos that they're going to bring up is the photos of her injuries that she has. That she says, she says these are these are photos that, that depict you know my face after a certain period of time after Johnny smashed my face in you know whatever whatever. Um, that's one of the biggest ones. As far as video, I don't know of anything that is. Well, oh, there is video of him like slamming doors in the in the in the kitchen. Because it was like, you know, he was like opening them and closing them really hard. And it looks, depending on how you cut that, there was an original version that was released to the media that was a cut version where he finds the camera that she's hidden in the kitchen. And then he says, are you recording me? Are you recording me? And then you see a bunch of like, like there's, there's like, like flashes of like black and white. And then the, and then the video ends and it looks like, oh my God, he has now like, he has now like mauled her basically. But the problem Damn. is that's a cut it's a cut version of it. If you play the whole thing, then he says like, what is this? What is this? And it like, it like, you know, stuff kind of flies around the black and white stuff. And then you see that he walks away. She picks it up. She, you know, it's showing her face. She's like walking into another room. She kind of smirks at it. Um, Very different. Very uh, different between yeah, the two. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, so, but, but I don't know if they would want to introduce that now because then Johnny Depp's side is going to be like, well, if you're going to introduce that, we're going to show the whole thing. Um, and that, I mean, that just would look so bad. So I don't know, maybe, maybe that, maybe, maybe some, maybe something else that I don't know about. Isaac Baruch's wholesome gabagool art says sassy Kurt plus angry Joe plus skeptical hoag equals great stream. Absolutely. I completely agree. Amanda Coelho says, since she keeps copying him, when Amber Heard testifies, he needs to wear a bright red nail polish. That'd be good. That actually... I don't know. I, I feel like he's the only he's the only party that I feel like could get away with having having like a like a man having bright red nail polish. But you don't I don't want to chew. No. It would it would look it would look petty though is the only thing. That's the only thing. Pendulum has maybe, a bright red fingernail. Maybe if maybe maybe if his female attorney, if maybe Miss Vasquez did though, or someone on his legal team, like the women on the good. legal team, where yeah. because they can get away with that kind of stuff. They can they can get away with being hated. So so like you know, have them where wear red nail polish or something, or at least one of them that's like sitting up, up front and just, you know, like eh, very subtle, you know, that would, that would be okay. If Johnny Depp's team is watching this, maybe think about that. Think about it. I'm not saying do it. Just think about it. <laughs> Little Panda Cup says Amber looked different with no makeup and fancy clothing. I got weird vibes though. She looks almost less genuine that plain quote unquote. She is such a character all the time. I still don't think that she's completely without makeup. I think she's got skin makeup on foundation, um, you know, some concealer and stuff, um, but she just didn't have any eye makeup, but I, I, yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks different. That's for sure. Miss Morgan says, hi from Finland. Thanks for your coverage. Hashtag me poo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Angela Yang says, can defamation cases be settled outside of court? Yes, 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 they can. KH8 says, this is defamation per se. Damages are automatically a given if found for JD, aren't they? It is defamation per yes, se. It is so defamation it's, per he, se he technically too. does not need to prove his damages. Yes, he, 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 prove will, he, he damaged. will nominal damages at the bare minimum. So he, say, he doesn't need to prove he will win $1. Right. He doesn't need to prove his damages to win his case. Yeah. He does need to prove damages to you know his damages, receive yeah. damages. Get money, yeah. yeah. But but the thing is, I, that's I think that's why he's not worried about talking about his movies though, because it's like he doesn't care about the money. He just cares about being them saying, "Yeah, you win." 
Linda Poulon says, is there a statute of limitations on defamation? There is. There is it I'm is sure. in Virginia. One to two years, I think. It some is. states one year, some states two years. I think it's two years in Virginia. I think it's two think. years, too. In Virginia? Yeah. yeah I think I've even she, heard as much as three somewhere. Because but. the reason, oh, yeah, the reason why that's that's relevant is her original counterclaims. She's got a whole kitchen sink of stuff that she alleged against him, including GQ articles where he, you know, he had a sit down interview and like other stuff. And so she claimed all this stuff. And the court was like, outside of statute of limitations, these things don't don't refer back to uh, back to 2016, the way that yours does. So, um, these are all new statements that, that originate elsewhere. So within one bye-bye. year says the code of Virginia. Is it one year? Oh, it is one year. Okay. I Sorry, can send I it, it to you. you. <laughs> I, I believe, believe you. I completely believe you. And if you're looking at it, I believe you. You can interpret a statute. Every action for injury resulting from libel, slander, insulting words, or defamation shall be brought within one year after the cause of action accrues. Boom. There you go. Cool. There you go. Um, yeah, Rick with the, uh, with a quick research, Jorin Wellesley says, <laughs> uh, uh, fantastic piece was specifically about DV. That is why Rowling defended him till studio forced her to back down after her issues. He lost huge money after the 18, um, the 2018 article. Article. Oh, 2018. yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes. I think the f- fantastic uh, beast argument is a better argument than the, um, than the, the, Pirates. Pirates of the Caribbean. yeah, 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 I think so. Little Panda Cup says, I agree with the guy in orange. That's you, Kurt. To Kurt. complicate the to complicate will will probably seem like some cray movie plot and will probably remind the jurors that they are actors. Yeah. Jay Mill says, What are the chances Disney makes an offer slash apology to Depp and attempts to bring him back? Good first step away from woke. That is a compound question. Because think- apology is zero percent. Uh offer is slightly higher. I don't know. I think the apology is zero. It, dep- it depends on well, and the offer may 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 be the 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 form that the apology takes, that right? Apology, right. <laughs> like I that thought, is that is their but, version of an apology. But I thought WB owned on Fantastic Beasts. Fantastic Beasts, but Pirates of the Caribbean is Disney. Oh, because but but the, Disney but Disney. All right, from what I'm understanding, I thought Disney shelved it before this whole Me Too thing. Or is he or is he still claiming or is well, so regardless of whether he, he found out, because... he he found out publicly that he was fired from from Pirates of the Caribbean the same way that everybody else found out because it was like Disney made a statement to the public and it was like the day after her op ed went out. Yeah, okay. and, and either way, with respect to the op ed, even while he's not giving what the cross examiner wanted today, he's saying, "Well, it's all a part of the stew of whether I'm a oh. domestic violence uh, person, right?" Because mm-hmm. 2016 yeah, yeah, yeah. comes back in and. And Me Too's happening. Uh, so, you know, if 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 you got to the end of this lawsuit and Amber Heard's team just explodes, and it's obvious Johnny Depp is just deserving of this win and is an innocent person in all this, then, yeah, I, I, as I said, I think at one of these streams uh, when we were talking about this, I, I think Warner Brothers, I think Disney, I think most people would be willing to get back into the Johnny Depp business if he at least had a W to, to hand them to show them that that they could be okay, that they would get some political cover for bringing him back on. Yeah. And I got to go because I got to be on with legal mindset and 10 and I need to throw some water on my face. Okay. (laughs) Um, Yes. And tell tell him I said hi. And I'm sorry. He asked if I could join on his stream earlier and I obviously have blown past that. Um, So (laughs) if you want to join us to talk about Disney and uh, the revocation (laughs) of the, uh, of their city. Oh, I almost did a Reedy Creek. Oh, I almost yeah. did a Reedy Creek video in the middle We're of the day. We're talking about that in ten minutes. <laughs> oh my god, that sounds so uh, fascinating. But I, I have to, I have to, fill, I have to work on my recap after this. Yeah, all right, talk to you later. This. this is already gone on super long. All right, see ya. Um, let's see. Okay, Talia Eve says, "I know JD shouldn't be snippy with Rottenborn, <laughs> but it was hella entertaining, and I'm here for it." Yeah, oh, I, yeah. I agree. I was entertained too. Manny Fabani, how did Amber Heard poop in the bed if girls don't poop? It's a great question. That's funny. Very great question. Um, Caboose, uh, Caboose, a.k.a. Kyle, says touchdown on paper. I'm breaded. All right. Alay says it just proves uncivil law is human. Wear your hat. Absolutely. Completely agree. Manny Fabani says Baca coined hashtag me too. Bah, ha, ha, ha. Yes, we did see. We did see that in the chat. Hashtag me, me poo. 
I, let me, I get, I'm, unfortunately, I got to run because my, my okay. daughter now is just sitting in my lap. She's like, yeah, ah. I'm kidding. Not, I'm flying. I had to turn off the camera. So now ah. so I'm out of here, guys. Yeah, I, I'm All here, right. Thanks, Nate. Here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Guys. you. See you guys See ya. See ya. Um, and then there were two. We're almost done with Super Chats, though. We are. Oh, God. Rick, I can, thank I you so much. Count. You're such a champ. I can see the count. So it's like, all right, yeah. I, I know where we are. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're such a champ. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. No Olivia problem. Darling Finan says, can Amber Heard still use photos with dodgy metadata? It looks like they're allowing them to come in and Amber or and Johnny's team is able to comment on them. So we'll see how they how they handle that. Steve C says, Amber Heard is Ruth from Ozark. I haven't seen it, but I heard that's a really good show. That's Justin Bateman. I haven't seen it either. Yeah. Uh, Lil Panda Cub says, Amber going to lose. Will Smith normalized physical violence. I don't know about God, that. I don't think so. <laughs> Anyhow, that for me about does it. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. I can't believe we still have 5,000 people in the chat right now. I, that's incredible. It's just, 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 just I just love it. The experience, yeah. I absolutely love it. Today was a, Today was a fantastic day. Thank you so much for everyone for joining me. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, everybody else that was here uh, with me today. I, I mean, the commentary was amazing. I mean, I I, I didn't even. I, that's why that's why super chats took so long was because the trial we didn't want to interrupt it, and I didn't want to interrupt the commentary. So I oh my gosh, one more, one more, Manny Fabani, hug to sixty k. Let's do it. Let's get him to sixty k, guys. If you if you're watching right now and you haven't subscribed, please do. Please go. Please go subscribe. Check out his stuff. It's really really good. It's so educational. You will learn a lot. Um. So all right. For me, that about does it. Uh, I will see you guys. Okay, so there will be there there will be a recap. So help me. Um, and then we've got tomorrow. Tomorrow we've got more Johnny Depp. So be sure to be here. Nine thirty is when we start streaming. Ten o'clock is when trial stars. Be here for sure for more of this awesome, awesome, great stuff. See you in the next video.